In southwestern and south central North Dakota on any given day at any given moment, a Dakota Community Bank and Trust customer is logging in or signing on to do their online or mobile banking. We believe that community banking can blend both the past with down-home customer service in-house and the future with modern banking conveniences and technology for our customers anywhere, like here or here, all while honoring our long-standing tradition of community-first oriented banking here at Dakota Community Bank and Trust. Many of our clients come to us already accomplished in their lives and on the right track. However, whether it's in response to a life-changing event or you are nearing retirement, you can sleep well knowing that together we have planned for both life's opportunities and challenges. And no matter what happens, we are here to help guide you. This broadcast on the PSP Network is proudly brought to you by... Broadcast on the PSP Network is proudly brought to you by...
Yeah, there's your first look inside the MSU Dome as we get set for, if you're a Class B boys basketball fan, this would be a late Christmas present for you. A plethora of Class B boys basketball on the air on the PSP network. 20 teams, 14 games in two days. We started off with the Dale Brown Classic today, followed up with the Hoopster Classic tomorrow. Should be a lot of fun. First up, it's the TGU Titans and the Stanley Blue Jays. Hi again, basketball fans, alongside Chuck Claremont, Todd Domrys from our PSP Network broadcast booth. High atop, almost in the rafters at the MSU Dome. Great vantage point for us to bring you some Class B boys basketball. And Chuck, when you throw in the Mandan Holiday Tournament, which we'll have Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday this week, that all of a sudden expands to 28 teams, 26 games. One day. Should be a great afternoon and uh, morning as we welcome you to our Shields pregame show. Shields offers clothing, footwear, and gear for all your passions from fishing to fashion, and they're dedicated to offering you the best retail experience. Take a break. We'll come back and we'll dig into the matchup. It's the TGU. That's Townville, Towner, Granville, Upham, uh, the Titans, and the Stanley Blue Jays. That's game number one. We'll set our calendar for today along with taking a look at the most recent cl Class B boys basketball pool. More of our Shields pregame after this timeout on the PSP Network. Finding the right bank can be transformative for your small business. The best bank for your business will offer competitive fees and so much more. At BNC National Bank, our team is proud to offer you a helpful, supportive, above and beyond banking relationship. Starting to stress about the complexities of qualifying for a small business loan? BNC can guide you through the process with much less stress and likely far more success. Speak to one of our team members today. The right way to top a sub is with real red wine vinegar made from red grapes and no food coloring. And the right way to film it is in slow motion, obviously. Because authentic ingredients make a sub above. It's water. Boom. Agent Winston Otter. He's been called the human sponge. Our stylists are trained to understand the uh, nuances of cutting men's hair. Less pomp, more adore, huh, Brittany? <laughs> Square face, wavy hair. Mid fade with a textured top. Finish it off with a hard part and taper that neckline, coach. Cowlick, what's the move? It's not just all about hard work here. Hit off! Seven, pressure, point, yeah! It takes expertise to be a sport clip stylist. Here? Ah. That's a spot! Right there, huh? Sport clips, the pros in men's hair. Happy holidays, everyone. Got the whole gang in town today. Nick Hallberg, got the beaters, Ch Todd Darmies, Chuck Claremont, and right now it's our national anthem. Now they snuck the anthem in on us today. Is, uh, you just don't know when there's seven games uh, to take place in the course of about seven, eight hours. Didn't look like the 
Right, the players knew either. Now, exactly. All of a sudden, they put the music on and everybody <laughs> turned and saluted. All right, Chuck, let's talk a little bit about the TGU Titans and the Stanley Blue Jays. TGU, Billy Seawright's their third-year head coach out of District 11 in Region 6. And uh, the Titans come in, a uh, team that's 2-2 two and two on the season. Yeah, they third of the season out beating Leeds by 10, then got knocked off by Rugby, beat Redeemers by five, and then a tight one against Tioga. You watched that one a little bit. TD said came down right to the end. They lost by just one point. So, you know, two and two in TGU. It's a team that, hey, looking to get back to state at some point in time. It's only been one time in, or twice in a row with Kevin Bowl. Talked to him this morning briefly. Kevin gave us a, a little bit of an update. He said, hey, my Sawyer Bowl's a distant cousin. The rest of the guys, he said, I've been gone too long. Chuck, we're old. I don't, people <laughs> have came and gone since I was there. So uh, this TGU team, we think they're going to be a scrappy team, though. Uh, versatility, I think, and depth is a key to this team where they can guard in, they can guard outside. They got uh, just, just nine guys dressing today, though, uh, which just seems kind of odd that some guys have gone for Christmas vacation or whatever. Uh, life's different, maybe, in the Class B world. <laughs> yeah. And then the Stanley Blue Jays, Chuck, a, a team a year ago that made it to the state tournament out of Region 8, uh, out of District 16. Corey Anderson, their longtime head coach, and the Blue Jays got a lot of pieces back from that state tournament team. Yeah, they do. Uh, you said almost all the kids back, and ranked number one in the region, number 11 in the preseason power poll. I was watching them in warm-ups, TD. They got some kids that can put it down. I saw Barstead, Laramie Smith, both those two kids were dunking easily. You know, and they got uh, Josh, Josh Hetzel. He's really the kid that kind of makes them go all district, all region from last year, dropped 50 two threes on them and you know Stanley uh, they, they're probably favored a little bit tonight but we think this Towner Granville team the TGU that they, the Titans are scrappy you know we think they're going to come out and you know they play fast they play hard so we're hoping this is going to be a good one a rematch of last year where Stanley beat TGU 50 to 39 in this event tip is up and it's controlled by the TGU Titans in their black uniforms outlined in blue and whites Ty Schmidt sets the offense Sage Hansen, they come up top. Now we're on the wheel to Johnson. Brooklyn throws it in the post. Jackson Nelson inside out to Hansen. Man-to-man -man defense for Stanley, but they lose Hammond down low and an air ball and a two-footer, and then there's going to be a foul and a rebound. Yeah, they, they play kind of a four-out offense where they just got cutters going, diagonal cuts. They post up whoever the heck the guy is making the cut, and that was an attempt to get it down low, but unfortunately a little reach-in foul on Jackson Nelson. Just underway from the MSU Dome, first of seven for you from the Dale Brown Classic. Drake Slosher sets the offense. Tristan Barstead. Handoff, Sloshin is taken away. Here's those starting lineups. First off for the TGU Titans, Ty Schmidt, Brooklyn Johnson, Carson Hammond, Jackson Nelson, and Sage Hansen on the court for TGU. Hammond has it up top. Now Johnson on a dribble drive. Running floater one-hander, missed everything. Hetzel had a rebound, but then he loses control, and that goes back to the TGU Titans. Two shots, two eeny any overs for the Titans. Getting good, the getting good looks. Here's Stanley's starting five. Drake Schloss, we mentioned him. Cal Sorensen is out there. Josh Hetzel, stop and pop for Nelson, no good. Also out there is Jackson Heenick, Tristan Barstead, and Laramie Smith, the starting five for the white-shirted Stanley Blue Jays. Barstead reverses it to Hetzel, catch and shoot for three, no good, short. Tied up on the weak side rebound. Nobody touches it and it goes out of bounds. No harm, no foul. Yeah, nice box out by Jackson Nelson as that ball went to the weak side. But that's what you're supposed to do in that weak side. You box your guy out and you don't have to get the rebound. Let it go out of bounds, you get it back. Both teams won't go real deep. They'll go about six, seven deep. And uh, that's about all the guys you're going to see on the court today. No score, just underway from the Dale Brown Classic. Hansen reverses it to Hammond. Not an Nelson. Straightaway Johnson standing on the Beaver insignia. Back to Nelson. Cut from the weak side. They try to get Ty Schmidt. He's bottled up by Barstead. Schmidt's going to have to shoot it, and he just loses the handle. That's good man-to-man -man defense. Here comes Stanley, three on two, and they're going to turn it over. Well, that was a nice look by Hetzel, though. He had Barstead filling the lane on the left side. He just couldn't handle it. Yeah, this might be a good opportunity for an early Hubbard National Insurance timeout on the court. We're going to get reset and recalibrated. 11 a.m. at the Dome, and we've got no score here. Is it Hubbard National Insurance? You can call them today for all your personal and business insurance needs. Back after this timeout on the PSP Network.
Boom, Agent Winston Otter. He's been called the human sponge. We look forward to well, some token pressure applied by Stanley as TGU comes into the front court. Catch and shoot. Hansen fires it up for three. No good. Rebound Schlosser. Stanley has it. No score here on your BNC Bank scoreboard. 530 to play first quarter. Josh Hetzel sets the offense for the Blue Jays. They dump it down low. Sorensen, one-hander off the glass, and the first two goes to Cal Sorensen. Yeah, what a nice dish by Hetzel again. He should have two assists. I like this kid. He got great handles, great vision. Stanley is really extending some defense here. Let's see if TGU can take advantage. Johnson, Schmidt on a cut back to Johnson. Inside out, they come to Hansen. Nelson on a post-up. Inside to Hansen. Uh, Schmidt on a drive. It's tipped out of his hands, out of bounds, and it will belong to Stanley. The, uh, the offense reminds me of a amateur offense, TD. Four out, guys cutting on occasion. <laughs> yeah, thus far. You just, yeah. TGU and uh, Billy Seawright not getting much going on the offensive end. No, not good. I think they had one good shot. Heenick comes straight away. Three-pointer for Sorensen, no good. Heenick rebounds in the middle of the paint. He's triple teamed. And somebody got caught with their hand in the cookie jar there for the TGU Titans. Yeah, he came all the way from outside the three-point line on the baseline to get that offensive rebound. Ty Schmidt picking up the foul. TD, it looks like they got the tropical Skittles shoes on the floor today. <laughs> hey, there's a return to sender. Block shots is... Heenick got his shot and returned to center there as Sage Hansen got a piece of it, the 6'6 freshman. We'll talk about him throughout yeah. the course of the broadcast, but uh, had a lot of production last year as an eighth grader for TGU. And Hansen, he's he, little John going on. I like it. He's got a little chip. He, got, he liked the fire in the freshman's belly right there. Hansen has over the timeline. Johnson now to Hammond from the right wing. Well, the Blue Jays really extending this man-to-man -man pressure and has taken TGU out of sync here. Now they're running into each other and they turn it over. Cal Sorensen takes it away. Back comes Hetzel. He's just going to stop and pop and transition in and out. No good. Hammond rebounds for TGU. Neither team can really buy too no. many buckets right now as it's 2 nothing. as TGU is going to turn it over one more time. Stanley on top by a deuce. And our first sub into the game is Laramie Smith for the Stanley Blue Jays. And now you get another Hubbard National Insurance timeout. Hubbard National Insurance located on 4204 Boulder Ridge Road in Northwest Bismarck. Two zips, Stanley on top on your BNC Bank scoreboard. Back with the Dale Brown Classic after this break on the PSP Network. Bank can be transformative for your small business. The best bank for your business will offer competitive fees and so much more. At BNC National Bank, our team is proud to offer you a helpful, supportive, above and beyond banking relationship. Starting to stress about the complexities of qualifying for a small business loan, BNC can guide you through the process with much less stress and likely far more success. Speak to one of our team members today. Back at the MSU Dome, the Dale Brown Classic on the PSP Network. Stanley leads 2-zip while we have a second here. Let's take a look at most recent Class B boys basketball poll released by the sportscasters and sports writers on December 26th. Four wins, been a walk -in, leads the way. You'll hear and see them later today here in the Dale Brown Classic. Central Cass, Bishop Ryan, Shiloh, and Bowman County round out the top five. Grafton, Thompson, North Star, Hillsborough, Central Valley, North Border, and Delax, Burlington, St. John, Dixon, Trinity, Linton, HMB, and Sargent County. So you're going to see a number of ranked teams and teams are getting votes in this tournament. Yeah, a few of those teams. Uh, we're going to stick around TD, although we're not doing the four wins game, but I kind of wait to kind of watch that four wins Trinity game, game number four today. 
Well, they try a little post give and go there and Heenick couldn't get it to Barstead and boy, the turnovers are mounting here for both these teams. Three turnovers for both teams and probably six or seven possessions. So when your turnover stat is about 45 to 50% of your possessions, that's not good. This is kind of how Stanley, the last time we saw him on this court was against Four Winds Minnewaukee in the State B last year. And that's kind of how they started the game, turning it over. And now the Blue Jays force a turnover. Sorensen has it. They push it into the paint, shot up no good there by Laramie Smith. Rebound, cleared out of there by Schmidt, almost at his pocket pick. Sorensen diving for it, but it's gonna be out of bounds to TGU. Yeah, they got to the state tournament last year after winning, beating Powers Lake in that Region A championship, but then they got thumped by four wins by 40. That's a game they wanna forget. Grafton too, that only that was much better, lost by 30 plus. They did have a close one against Bowman, <laughs> even, even though they finished eighth. Tipped pass there. TGU collects. Now they get in the post to Hansen. Out to Hammond. Stanley has got TGU out of sorts right well, now you, with this man-to-man -man defense. It's, you know what they're doing. I mean, it's kind of a predictable offense. Brooklyn Johnson trying to create something. Went into a triple team, and he's lucky to keep possession there oh. for the Titans. Yeah, that was a swarm. <laughs> Once he got in the lane, three Stanley... Blue Jays, what do I want to call them the Stanley Steamers? It's saying Stanley Blue Jays. <laughs> it's got a good ring to it. I mean, <laughs> Hammond's going to have to beat the shot clock buzzer, and he cannot do it. Turnover. Five turnovers now. Well, I guess if you're TGU right now, you've gone an entire quarter here almost without scoring, but hey, you've only let the opponent have two. Yeah. Scott Woodmancy is at. The spicy pie says it's on TV. More importantly, he says he's getting a grinder. <laughs> he, he needs to bring a couple here, doesn't he, TD? <laughs> sure. Hetzel thinks about a corner three. Comes near side, now in the corner to Sorensen. Sorensen, baseline attack, and that's tipped away Ooh. off of Sorensen. You know, we got to give a tip of the cap to the Titans defense oh, here, too. Absolutely. I, they, they've been playing aggressive man-to-man. -man. We talked about that scrappy, kind of versatile on defense and where picks, they're just switching some of those picks. So impressive defensively, but offensively, when you haven't scored in the first quarter, that's not good. Cooper Ship is on for TGU. He has it up top. 5'9", sophomore. Hansen, Hammond, double oh, pump. Oh, boy. blocked, but then Barstead got a piece of the arm. Yeah, boy, he Barstead. He, he was up in the air. The only way the guy would have had to either shoot through his face and for some reason he tried to do a volleyball spike, got called for the foul. Yeah, just a little bit too aggressive at the top of that because he was going to block that shot no matter what, but he went for the the uh, emphasi emphasized return to sender and he got yeah. called for a foul and Hammond can't break the ice yet for TGU. Carson Hammond, the 6'3 sophomore, a lot of underclassmen for TGU. Start a junior, two sophomores, three sophomores, and a freshman in that starting oh. five as Hammond misses them both. Rebound cleared out of there by Laramie Smith. Still two zip on your BNC Bank scoreboard. Two zip. This isn't a hockey score from the Mesa. We're at the MSU Dome. There's another misfire by Hetzel. Just, I mean, they're just doing a good job boxing out. I mean, you can see the fundamentals for TGU and Billy C. Right, the head coach. They, they have got that down. Ty Schmidt sets the offense for the Titans. Leaves it off for Ship. Almost a takeaway on a kamikaze steal attempt. Somehow, Jackson Nelson gets it back. He comes to Hansen, extra pass. Schmidt for three. No, Ooh. too strong. It's three of those. Here's the thing that I'm thinking it is, you know, you don't play in the dome that often. The, the trying to figure yeah. out the distances and everything else is, is tricky for your first uh, couple minutes playing at the MSU Dome as yeah. a transition, you get a foul on TGU. That's, that's a great point, because ultimately you're usually used to having a, a backdrop, you know, uh, the wall of your gym in these, any Class B gym for the most part, in any gyms, as opposed to the, this standard kind of sitting in the middle of nowhere, so that's difficult. They're sure, and, and they're showing right now for TGU. Jackson Nelson just picked up his second personal foul. Misfire from point blank range for Barstead, and then he ricochets it out of bounds, and it'll belong to TGU. In for TGU is the sophomore, Luke Jordy. 6'3. Stanley going to pitch a shutout here in the first quarter? Wow. What do you get for that? You get a free piece of spicy pie for that? 
Hansen got clobbered in the forehead there by Barstead. Did a little FIFA Euro Cup selling it and got the call. Or Planet Pizza. Maybe that's what. Sorry, I'm thinking of food. I got to get the game's going. Hey, to get food out of my head. Speaking of Planet Pizza, they've been <laughs> serving the Magic City for 25 years. TD, are we hitting there on the way out? We got it. The 30 inch galactic pizza, it's out of this world. And call order now at 852 1700. Planet Pizza is out of this world. That's going to be two on Barstead for Stanley. Ooh, almost turning it over there was Johnson. Pirouetted at the side line, and now he comes back into the front court. Under a minute to play first quarter. Two zips, Stanley on your BNC Bank scoreboard. Schmidt, Jordy, now Johnson. They try to post up Schmidt on that guard post, and it's wrapped out of bounds by Stanley. Stanley just playing such aggressive D. Man to man, they're picking him up. I mean, three-quarter court, and they're staying right with him. I don't remember too many scoreless quarters in my 25 plus years of broadcasting. Yeah, you think you could rem you'd remember those? Oh, they just heard you, TD. Whoop, oh, Jordy had it blocked. Straight away, Schmidt for three. Oh, off the iron. Rebound and a kick out. Hetzel has it. Down to 30 seconds to play in the ha in the quarter. I beg your pardon. Turn shot put up there by Laramie Smith. He can't hit it. On for Stanley is Carter Rudin. Hansen thinks about it, and on the way in, he's going to be held. And uh, about the only thing that's working here for TGU in the first quarter is number one, their defense, and number two, they're drawing some fouls on Stanley. Yeah, they got 14 fouls now. Heenick on the foul. Or no, it wasn't. They called it on Rudin. Stop and pop. Hansen knocks it down from the right wing off a nifty inbounds play, and we're tied at two. The freshman gets them on the board. 10 seconds to play. Down to five. Sorensen cuts back door. That's tipped away. It's loose. In the middle of the lane, it's still bottled up. And that's kind of the way that one should have ended. Yeah. A bit of a scrum. Two to two at the end of one. Stanley and TGU locked in a battle here from the Dale Brown Classic. Back to the second quarter after this break on the PSP Network. The magic of what we do really comes down to combining different aspects of patient care. Here at Premier Chiropractic, we love combining soft tissue work, the adjustment, and exercises together. We found that this gets the best results for our patients. We have three chiropractors to fit the needs of the entire family, a rehab area for our exercises and equipment for any athlete to improve performance. Give us a call and we will get you back to doing what you love. Are you moving your business or your home across the town or across the country? We know it can be stressful. To ensure your possessions arrive on time, intact and on budget, make your move with Jobbers Moving and Storage. Jobbers can help you with every aspect of your move. With our efficient step-by-step -step approach to move management, we can tailor a plan to suit your needs and schedule. With locations in Bismarck, Fargo, Minot and Aberdeen, Jobbers Moving and Storage is your choice. Visit JobbersWarehouse.com. It's Jobbers. Moving in storage. I'm a grateful person on a lot of levels. I've been given so many great opportunities. But most of all, even as a little kid, I was taught a set of values. Like tools for life, hard work, responsibility, and the key to making it all work, commitment. First Western Bank and Trust. You can bank on us. We're set for a second quarter offensive explosion as we're tied at two. <laughs> Does that mean four? Is that an explosion? Double the points. Left elbow, Hetzel misfires. Rebound, Schmidt tries to weave through some traffic and he almost had it taken away, tied up. No, it's gonna be a foul, I believe, on Cal Sorensen. And Sorensen doesn't like it. He thought he was playing aggressive D. Same with the coach, Corey Anderson. He's kind of talking the official saying, man, that's just tough defense right there. I think it's just offensive guy choosing to go into a bad position. Right. You kind of get bailed out there. I thought that was pretty good defense. Brooklyn Johnson sets it for the Titans. Sage Hansen, Schmidt, Johnson, back to Hammond. Comes a couple weak side cuts. They go cross court to Jordy. Hansen looking down low, a nice step in front defense there by Drake Schlosser. Here comes the Stanley Blue Jays moving right to left. Schlosser mixed, fakes the handoff, almost taken away there by Johnson. 
Now a lofted pass is going to be ripped out of bounds, and it's last touch by TGU. TGU just playing that, I mean, the extended aggressive man-to-man, -man, getting their hands in the passing lane, almost forcing a turnover. Hey, fans, be sure to vote for this week's Jersey Mike's Player of the Week on the PSP Network Facebook page. Jersey Mike's is a sub above. Screen and roll for Hetzel. Schlosser, jab step, throws for three, Ooh. ring it up. That was deep outside the white line, and that was nearing about 25 feet TD. Nice shot by Drake Schlosser. And now a turnover. Cal Sorensen in the passing lane. Stanley on top, 5-2. Slosher thinks about another one. Laramie Smith down low. Shot put up, no good. Rudin from point blank range missed a five-footer. Hansen, another rebound. He's probably got five already in the game. Sage Hansen gives it off to Hammond. Now back to Johnson. Stanley and TGU have both been man-to-man -man throughout. Free throw line Hansen, quick dribble, inside out. Pull up jumper, Schmidt off the iron, no good. Rudin with a big rebound there for Stanley. Hetzel, Drake Slosher sets the offense from the left wing. Now comes top of the key, back to Hetzel. Rudin, the big man, looks high-low. Can't get it in there. Schlosser, this one's about three feet farther back. Nothing but nylon. You, hey, if there's fog in the dome, that, that he could, wouldn't have saw the rim. That was way out there. But hey, when you're feeling it, you're feeling it. I said it was going to be an offensive explosion in the second quarter. Thus far, Stanley's had the better of it. 8-2 on your BNC Bank scoreboard. Sorensen went for a steal, got out of position. Jordy muscles a shot out from the right block. No good. Weak side rebound, Hetzel. Now they got a three on two. Sorensen streaking, Sorensen laying it in. Nice pass up ahead by Hetzel again. Hetzel gets the assist. Sorensen's got four now. Left hand layup. TGU wants to talk about it. A Hubner National Insurance timeout on the court. Hetzel and Schlosser have combined for 10, and Stanley leads 10 2. Back after this timeout on the PSP Network. For a full service financial plan or planning for farm or business succession, Planning Team Financial Advisors is here to help you work toward achieving your financial goals. With locations in Bismarck, Garrison, and Center, our full service team of professionals are dedicated to helping you work towards achieving your financial goals. Visit us online, planningteam.com. Securities offered through LPL Financial, member of Finra and SIPC. Investment advisory services offered through New Edge Advisors, LLC, a registered investment advisor. New Edge Advisors, LLC, and Planning Team Financial Advisors are separate entities from LPL Financial. Well, just what you didn't want to see if your head coach, Billy Seawright, is you call timeout and you come out, and what do you do? Jeez. You immediately turn it over. Number eight. Yeah, as a coach, like we just wasted a timeout, set up a play. Couldn't even get it entered to the wing. High, low, Rudin, drop step, inside out. Schlosser feeling it. Got another one. That's not even getting close to the rim. Nice inside out. You get the ball inside a touch to Rudin, right back out to the hot guy, Drake Schlosser. Schlosser had made three threes the entire season in Stanley's three games. He's got three here in the second quarter. Stanley is powered out on top, 13 to two. Oh, there's a little back door. Isaac Wagner, oh, oh jousted at the top by Rudin. Now a three on one. Schlosser, oh, and he's gonna run over a guy. Drawing a charge there was Hammond. Yeah, you got that, as a point guard, you gotta know that, Todd. It's three on two. You fill the lane, you gotta stop. Pass the ball off. There was a guy actually filling the lane on the right side. I couldn't see who that was. It was Sorensen, but Drake Schlosser, he knows it. He kind of was shaking his head like, I got that. Yep, that was me. Stanley's been extending here, but they've really just been kind of digging in on the half courts yep. and causing problems for the Titans. Hammond has it on the right wing. Straight away Hansen. Schmidt thought about it. Hansen reverses it back. Hammond stops, pops, too strong off the glass, rebound. Tipped around a couple, two, three times. Saved by Hammond, but he throws it right to Sorensen. Schlosser gets it up to Laramie Smith, and there's gonna be a reach-in foul there on Brooklyn Johnson 
for TGU. Yeah, Johnson got him from behind. Stanley's starting to kind of get that the break now. That's probably one of the things Coach Anderson talked about is, hey, when we get those rebounds and those misses, let's get going, let's get to the outlet, let's fill the lanes. They're getting some opportunities on the break. Hayes and Bison and the West Hope Newburgh Sioux waiting in the wings here. Game two from the Dale Brown Classic. Now Hetzel's trying it, and Hetzel's knocking it down from downtown. Well, they're heating up now, fourth three of the quarter. You said it, Todd, an explosion right now. Hetzel, his fourth of the year. TGU plays catch out front. 14-0 the scoring here in the second quarter, and now TGU just whips it right into the scoring table. Another turnover on the Titans. That's nine. JV game we got it here. It was what 42 to 5, I think, at half. Stanley was leading that one. But they ended up winning by about 40. Heenick reverses it to Sorensen. Double screen. Fires for three. Hetzel. Yes. Get it to the hot guy. Set it up on the backside. Down screen to Hetzel. He squared up on that left wing and knocked it down. 19 to 2. It is an offensive explosion Jeez. for the Stanley Blue Jays. Jordy looks back door for Schmidt. He collects in amongst the trees. Inside out Hansen. Yes, from downtown. Yeah, nice look by Hansen. Wide open. Gave him the clap. Got it out to him. Five points for Hansen. That's the one guy you do not want to help off of for no. the Stanley Blue, or if you're the Stanley Blue Jays. Hetzel, can he hit another one? Oh. Yes, he can. Schlosser pass the, the turkey baton to Josh Hetzel. <laughs> Man, now you get a shuffle the puppies. As Hansen to rest in the backcourt, gonna turn it over. Number 10. Both the turkey of threes here <laughs> for both Drake Schlosser and Josh Hetzel in the second stanza. Oh, nice little pick to picker play. Misfired shot by oh. Heenick. Put back by Hetzel, no good. He wants that one back. That was a wide open put back on the off on the weak side. Quick reversal to Johnson on the far side. Hansen thought about a three, instead puts it on the deck. Euro steps through the defense, no good. Jordy rebounds, puts it up and in. Yeah, good strong rebound on that back side by Luke Jordy on the aggressive move by Hansen. Quick in transition. Oh, there's a jousted shot. Ty Schmidt blocks it away. Schlosser thought he had an easy one. Hammond back to Hansen. You know, that last score by TG was completely set up by the attacking nature yep. of Sage Hansen. Now he's attacking again, and this time took an extra step. Yeah, he had a good move. He had it to the point where he drew the defense, actually. He had a guy open on the baseline. Timeout. And you get a Hubbard National Insurance timeout on the court. Hubbard National is a leading North American insurance brokerage. 22-7 on your BNC Bank scoreboard. Second quarter action. Game one from the Dale Brown Classic. Right way to top a sub is with real red wine vinegar made from red grapes and no food coloring. And the right way to film it is in slow motion. Obviously. Because authentic ingredients make a sub above. Hey fans, today's game brought to you in part by Roger Ward Moving and Storage. Been helping the region for their moving and storage needs for, or since 1942. You can find them online at rogerwardmovingandstorage.com. Today's game also brought to you in part by Northern Plains Heating and Air. No other choice to seal your heating and air game than Northern Plains Heating and Air. You can find them online at northern-plains.com. Rudin has it. Post up down low, Heenick turns right to his left shoulder and banks it home. Yeah, I like what Stanley's doing is they're getting that, that post flashing down low and they're really looking for him hard. Heenick with a nice drop step. Hammond gets it to Schmidt. Tries to weave his way through the defense. Pinballs off of Hetzel. Shot in the paint, Jordy no good. Hammond rebounds, Hansen. Be a reach and foul on the way in there. And that's going to be a bonus upcoming for Sage Hansen. That's 17 fouls as it's the second there on Drake Slosher. So would, would you call this offense chaos? Looks like chaos. 
I'm just gonna, I, I'm, I'm gonna say that Stanley played these guys last year, and after you've had a chance to kind of see this one time, as Hanson misfires on the front end of the bonus from the serve pro free throw line, I think you have a chance to pretty well defend it. And Hetzel turns it over. Hanson flying down the court, the 6'6 freshman layup, good. Boy, nice job with the handles and chewing up real estate going by some Stanley Blue Jays, left-handed finish. Down to 40 seconds to play first half. Stay tuned, our premier chiropractic halftime report comes up in about a half a minute. Sorensen gets a screen from the wing, dissects the lane, no good, rebound tipped up once, twice, Sorensen has it back, goes up, through some body contact, no good. Put it up again, count it, oh, and a foul. Sorensen staying right with it for the end one potential. Missed the first one, a wide open, and wanted it back, stayed right with it, finally got a second offensive rebound. Went right up, got hammered. Strong play there for Sorensen as he got six, trying to get seven. I think the foul is gonna go on Luke Jordi, I, I believe, yep, his first. And Sorensen converts the old fashioned three point play. Boy, it's been these three, three guys in the backcourt for Stanley that have been doing some damage here in the second quarter. Nine apiece for Hetzel and Schlosser and seven for Sorensen. Down to 10 seconds to play. Brooklyn Johnson, Jordy off a screen, they get it to Hanson. Couple dribbles, kicks it out, straight away free throw line, Jordy stops, knocks it down. You know, that was good ball moving there right before the end of the half as everybody almost touched on that offensive possession and you get a wide open look at the free throw line. Well, we had 34 points put up in the second period, second quarter. You called it, TD. It was an offensive explosion. Absolutely. It, it couldn't go downhill after a 2-2 tie at the end of one. A <laughs> <laughs> premier chiropractic halftime report comes up next. 27 to 11, Stanley on top at halftime. And we're back after this break on the PSP Network. Finding the right bank can be transformative for your small business. The best bank for your business will offer competitive fees and so much more. At BNC National Bank, our team is proud to offer you a helpful, supportive, above and beyond banking relationship. Starting to stress about the complexities of qualifying for a small business loan? BNC can guide you through the process with much less stress and likely far more success. Speak to one of our team members today. The right way to top a sub is with real red wine vinegar made from red grapes and no food coloring. And the right way to film it is in slow motion, obviously. Because authentic ingredients make a sub above. It's water. Boom. Agent Winston Otter. He's been called the human sponge. Our stylists are trained to understand the uh, nuances of cutting men's hair. Less pomp, more adore, huh, Brittany? <laughs> Square face, wavy hair. Mid fade with the textured top. Finish it off with a hard part and taper that neckline, coach. Cowlick, what's the move? It's not just all about hard work here. Hit off, seven, pressure, poise, yeah. It takes expertise to be a sport clip stylist. Here. Ah. That's the spot. Right there, huh? Sport clips, the pros in men's hair. The magic of what we do really comes down to combining different aspects of patient care. Here at Premier Chiropractic, we love combining soft tissue work, the adjustment, and exercises together. We found that this gets the best results for our patients. We have three chiropractors to fit the needs of the entire family, a rehab area for our exercises and equipment for any athlete to improve performance. Give us a call and we will get you back to doing what you love. 
Are you moving your business or your home across the town or across the country? We know it can be stressful. To ensure your possessions arrive on time, intact and on budget, make your move with Jobbers Moving and Storage. Jobbers can help you with every aspect of your move. With our efficient step-by-step approach to move management, we can tailor a plan to suit your needs and schedule. With locations in Bismarck, Fargo, Minot, and Aberdeen, Jobbers Moving and Storage is your choice. Visit jobberswarehouse.com. It's Jobbers Moving and Storage. I'm a grateful person on a lot of levels. I've been given so many great opportunities. But most of all, even as a little kid, I was taught a set of values. Like tools for life, hard work, responsibility, and the key to making it all work, commitment. First Western Bank and Trust, you can bank on us. Ackerman Svold, your neighbors, friends, and family who are working for you. The local team with local availability and accountability for all of your engineering, architecture, environmental, transportation, and land development needs. Your project can rely on Ackerman Svold. Find them online at ackermansfold.com. When you start your project, talk with Ackerman Surveying and Associates. Our experienced surveying team guides you in the right direction with planning, planning, and lot and boundary surveys. The trusted name in land surveying, the trusted name in architecture and engineering is Ackerman Survey and Ackerman Svold. Find them at ackermansfold.com. What you're witnessing actually happens. This is a sad story about bad math. Bad math? Does your online company include mounting? You can't beat the online pricing. When you have the mounting, the shipping, and all the extras, it's just simple math. We guarantee the lowest prices. Our plus plan is simply better, a less expensive way to buy tires. Thinking tires, think tires plus. This broadcast on the PSP Network is proudly brought to you by... Broadcast on the PSP Network is proudly brought to you by... Domery's Chuck Claremont back at the MSU Dome. It's our premier chiropractic halftime show. Kirk Mason, Dr. Kirk Mason, Dr. Cody Haugen, Dr. Becky Perry Domery's can be found at premierchiropracticnd.com. 
Had to reset the cockpit a little bit there at halftime. It was extended to halftime as uh, Chuck was digging into the numbers here as Stanley leads TGU 27 to 11. All right, for TGU, just nine points or 11 points in that first half. Two in the first quarter, nine in the second. Sage Hansen, the freshman, as seven of those as a three, a couple twos, and missed his only free throw attempt. Luke Jordy has two points or four points in that second quarter. And that's it. Carts, Carson Hammond was over two from the free throw line. Just two guys scoring their 11 points for the TGU Titans. For the Stanley Blue Jays, four guys in the scoring columns. It's a the triple threes for Josh Hetzel and Drake Schlosser, each of those guys with nine points, all of them in the second quarter. Then Cal Sorensen, he's got seven, two buckets and then an and one. And then Jackson Hinek has a finish on a fast break. So he's got two, so 29 or 27 points total in that first half for Stanley. It was two to two after the first quarter and then 25 points scored and a 25 to nine second quarter for Stanley as they lead 27 to 11 at the end of the first half. I mean, uh, just one, two, three, four free throw shot in the first half. So, yeah. I mean, it was just kind of a free flowing green flag type of first half. Yeah. As Stanley has a lead and we'll take a short time out here. We'll come back. Actually, let's just keep it right here so we can highlight our uh, upcoming uh, action here. Game two will be the Hazen Bison and the West Hope Newburg Sioux. We'll follow that up game three as it'll be St. John, the Woodchucks, and the Velva Aggies, four wins in Trinity following that. Powers Lake, Burke Central, and Beulah in game five. Game six will be Shiloh and Thompson. And the nightcap tonight, our Redeemers and North Star, a full slate of Class B boys basketball for you today as there's the schedule. As uh, We're just in game one here at halftime. Hazen, West Hope, Newburgh, Velva, St. John after that. and. Uh, Rounded out with our Redeemers and North Star. So should be a great day of action. Keep it locked right here to the PSP network as we are underway in the second half. Same lineup out there for TGU as Sage Hansen operates from the top. And he drug that pivot foot. He's got a It's almost the third time I think he's had that turnover where he, he gets in the lane and then he, he, he does a good job drawing the D, but got to go to the jump stop. 27 to 11, Stanley on top as we start our third quarter of action. Heenick, Sorensen, Hetzel, post up Barstead, inside out, Schlosser weaving, and nice play with the scoop on the left hand. Yeah, kind of the in and out dribble, left-handed finish off, that, off the left foot too, so. Impressive first deuce of the game by Schlosser, double figures with 11. Yeah, that was nifty right there. And another takeaway, TGU loose at the basketball. Sorensen, hey, back-to-back left-handed scoops to the hoop for the Stanley Blue Jays. Sorensen, he's got nine on the, the 13th turnover for TGU. Stanley on top by 20. Nelson, Jackson gives it off to Sage Hansen, slips his way through the defense. Couldn't finish it. Hetzel in attack mode. Tries to go coast to coast. Uh oh, three left-handed scoops by three different guys. <laughs> it turned on the Jets. Hetzel when he turned the corner and just blew by his defender. Hetzel in the double figures with 11. Nelson extra pass. Hansen shot fake, steps in, 17-footer. No good, Hetzel rebounds. Blue Jays want to run. Hetzel attacking, whoa, return to sender. Fly swatted out of bounds by Sage Hansen. Already tired, That's and that's exactly what Stan Stanley wants. They want to crank up the, get this steam engine going, moving up and down the floor, and you got three possessions, and Sage Hansen's already leaning over, grabbing his shorts. The Stanley steamer engine? <laughs> I gotta get that out of my head. <laughs> like we don't even have one in our town. What are you talking about? Well, there's an inbounds play as they get it down to Barstead. He got bodied a little bit, missed the shot. Heenick had his pocket picked. Taken out of there by the Blue Jays, or excuse me, by the Titans. Wagner in the front court. Oh, found a wide open Hammond down low. Oh, missed a bunny. Sorensen rebounds. Gets it up to Barstead, leaves it for Schlosser, layup, good, count it, and a body foul. That's the way you run a two-on-one break, TD. You draw the defense, underhand dish over to the right side <clears throat> to Schlosser from Tristan Barstead. Very unselfish play there. Barstead hasn't scored 
but yet still, you know, I like the extra shuffle pass over to Schlosser, get a chance for an N1. And Drake does convert the old fashioned three point play. Drake still has not hit net today. <laughs> He's got the left-handed finish, but it hit the backboard and went through without hitting the rim. It's kind of smooth 14 points to lead the floor. Johnson in the middle of the paint. Nelson goes right corner to Brooklyn Johnson. Wagner. And a missed shot by TGU. Schlosser has a Schlosser has a hand on it. He and it clears. Gets it up to Barstead. This time Barstead's going right to the 10. And he scored it. Yeah, just a strong move there. He's like, okay, I was unselfish last play. This one I'm going right at the freshman and good strength and just kind of hung in the air for the 23 Michael Jordan number. Stanley forces another turnover. And they have outscored TGU 11-0 here to start the third quarter of play. And we get a third quarter shuffle the puppies whistle there. On Jackson Heenick. Put his head down, didn't like it. Hey fans, today's game brought to you in part by the UPS store. They're located in the Marketplace Foods Plaza in South Broadway in Minot, and they're there for all your packing and shipping needs. Today's game also brought to you in part by Prestwich Orthodontics, as the basketball will remain in the hands of TGU. You can get started with a free consultation today as you can visit them at MinotBraces.com or call 852-2646 Press Switch Orthodontics. Hey, now you got the PSP feed on the Jumbotron here at the MSU Dome. Almost as good as how they took care of us in center the other night. Oh, well, that was impressive. <laughs> oh, there's a takeaway. Sage Hansen in the passing lane. Back comes the Titans. Hansen crosses over, leaves it down, down low for Barstead. Extra pass to Wagner. Back to Hansen, back to Wagner. And now you get TGU just playing Butterfingers, and they turn it over. Barstead got upended. Yeah, Isaac Wagner, the freshman, had checked in TD, the 5'11 freshman. He's the one with the undercut. I'm going to get Luke Jordy back in. Yep, that's exactly what they do. He played get, a good first half. Yep. Scott Woodmancy with the MVP move of the day. <laughs> it's a long game with or a long day with seven games, and you got to sneak a few food, uh, some vittles in. Exactly. Another takeaway is the teams trade turnovers here as Stanley leads 38 to 11 on your BNC Bank scoreboard. Brooklyn Johnson has a step blocked from behind by Slosher. Little old man D gets by you, but Schlosser stayed right with him, and when he tried to hit the, the scoop to the hoop, blocked it out of bounds. BNC Bank, they make life easy. Manage your money, managing your money is also easy, as there's a corner three by Brooklyn Johnson, no good. Locations in North Dakota and Arizona, visit BNC Bank at bnc.bank online. Sorensen out hard on the break, TD. Pushing the basketball, got another two on one break and a finish. Stanley, folks, has got 40 points, and there are three guards today, Sorensen, Slosher, and Hetzel have 36 of them. Yeah, 14, 11, and 11, and they push it. They push the pace. And they and they have been doing much of the damage on this defense, too. Yeah. There's, when you start looking at steals and forced turnovers, they're probably five apiece in that, too, is just no room. I mean, you, they get right in your face and just dare you to try to go by them. A couple subs in for Stanley is Laramie Smith and also Carter Rudin. As Stanley leads big here, 40 to 11 on your BNC Bank scoreboard, 325 to play in the third quarter. Stop and go move, Hetzel pull up, 12 footer, no good from the left side of the lane. Rebound into the hands of Ty Schmidt. He's double teamed in the backcourt. Gets it up to Johnson, not a ship who just checked in. Carson Hammond attacking and leaning home. Yeah, nice rip move. Goes, went to the baseline, got past Schlosser, finished with that right hand. His first two of the afternoon. Nine of the game. It's not quite afternoon yet, still morning. First two of the morning. Laramie Smith better get out of the lane. He's gonna call for three seconds. You don't hardly ever see that called anymore though. No. He can be in there and put some tent stakes down. <laughs> oh, there's a passing lane defense by Ty Schmidt. Schmidt gives it off to Brooklyn Johnson. Checked out that was free throw line. Jordy no good as his shot is blocked. 
Here comes Laramie Smith for Stanley. Bodied up, count it! Oh. He finished it with the contact. How many times do you see the block and then the fast break? You go on, on yourself with the big finish. He wanted to dunk. He was one doing some big rips in the pregame. Cooper Finally gets himself on the board. Cooper Ship gets the foul whistled on him. His first, Laramie Smith, will step to the serve pro free throw line. Train technicians, advanced technology, fire and water cleanup and restoration. It's serve pro. Oh, we can't get the serve pro and one. But it's the first deuce of the afternoon for Laramie Smith. Stanley increases that lead to 42-13. Jackson Nelson gets it into the hands of Hansen, fading from the free throw line too strong. Rebound, Nelson, and a reach in on Stanley. Yeah, Sorensen, I think, was a little bit too aggressive defense, and it's hard not to when it was a nice offensive rebound. Then he brought the ball down below his waist, and Sorensen just, it was too, that sacred apple. He just could not leave it alone. Jackson Nelson almost poked away. Now it's loose. Good hustle by Sorensen. And Corey Anderson smartly whistles and asks for a Hubner National Insurance timeout. Hub is a leading North American insurance brokerage. They bring you this timeout with Stanley in cruise control here in the third quarter, 42-13. Blue Jays on top. We're back. I don't know where this goes. <laughs> I don't know. Are you sure it wasn't clicking and not a zoom, zoom? I think your quash litter goes stuck. Do you even have insurance? If we soak it, so it should be good. <laughs> no matter how much you know or don't know about your vehicle, trust the experts at Tires Plus. Real answers from real mechanics. Inspections are free to ensure your vehicle is always in peak condition. Thinking service, think Tires Plus. Well, now we officially have the whole team here. <laughs> Brandon and Jenny Beater, Nick Holberg, Scott Woodmancy, Chuck Claremont, Todd Domries. Everybody's. Oh boy, he's giving us a little sniffy, sniffy some TD. Early Christmas Under presents here. Oh, we got, that's big. Heartbreak Hotel is Laramie, Laramie Smith misfires. Sage Hansen got away with a walk there. Yeah, Cooper Ship has it. Picks up the bounce when uh, Jordy was coming to set a screen on him. Now Luke Jordy is going to try to reverse it. Kamikaze steal attempt. Hansen leaves it. Nice pass. Jordy finishes it. Yes. Oh, I like that as Hansen got the dish initially up top from Jordy. Then Jordy just broke hard to the basket and got it right back. Now the TGU defense was on vacation and in transition. Laramie Smith got it point blank range and then he got fouled. Jackson Nelson's been uh, the mosquito to the bug zapper today for the fouls. Is he's got he's got four. His hands on his side, just it's not getting any PT. Laramie Smith from the serve plural free throw line, no good. It's missed two in a row now. Serve Pro, emergency service, trained technicians, fire and water cleanup and restoration, bringing the free throws on our PSP network broadcast. Laramie Smith, that one looks short and it comes yeah. in and out. Oh, big boy rebound yeah. for Rudin. Hetzel thought about a three back on the baseline, Rudin. Inside out, hey, new guy in there. Tyler Gelstead for Stanley. Six foot junior. Down the right side of the lane, Laramie Smith. Yeah, the kind of the, the glide to the hoop right down that right side, pulled up from uh, probably six, seven feet outside the, 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 oh, the lane. That was pretty. TGU sets the offense with Luke Jordy. Ty Schmidt, they get a post up Sage Hansen. In amongst the big boys, Jordy extra pass, Hammond. Leaves it for ship. Straight on Hansen. Floats through the lane. Ooh, slippery play, and he scored it. Yeah, the Euro step by two Stanley defenders. I thought he was under the bucket, but reached back with that right hand, spun it in. Sorensen has to collect on the sideline, gets it up top to Hetzel. Hetzel, oh, nice pass, gives it to Laramie Smith, and he's fouled. Nice little dry, yeah. drawn dish there by Josh Hetzel. A strong play, strong finish. 
Laramie Smith, 6'4", senior. He's a big-bodied kid. Got some bounce to it, too. And Laramie Smith right back to the serve pro free throw line where he's not having Ooh. any success. Uh, 0 for 4. He Try something different. Misfired his last two. That's when you got to just kind of step off the yeah, line. You, got, you can't stand on there. You got to reset. A little, take a little mental break. Mm. Yep. That's usually what happens. Yeah. Easy for us to say when we're <laughs> 90 feet from the court. To beat the buzzer, Hansen from downtown, no good. We shot that one from about Surrey. <laughs> At the end of three, on your BNC Max scoreboard, Stanley in cruise control, 44-17 over TGU. Fourth quarter comes up next on the PSP Network. Many of our clients come to us already accomplished in their lives and on the right track. However, whether it's in response to a life-changing event or you are nearing retirement, you can sleep well knowing that together we have planned for both life's opportunities and challenges. And no matter what happens, we are here to help guide you. Every 10 minutes, three people in the United States will die from a preventable incident. More people are dying on our roadways and in their homes than ever before. But that's where the North Dakota Safety Council can help. Safety is our mission from the workplace to any place. We're a private nonprofit that offers more than 150 training courses that are dynamic, hands-on, and effective. From CPR and first aid to driver safety and even workplace violence preparedness, we want to make sure your loved ones come home safe each night. Go to ndsc.org to see how together we can make a difference. Oh, it was like that end zone view here at the MSU Dome. As we get set for fourth quarter action. We're gonna get some subs in here now as Mason McPeak is on for Stanley. Barstead has it, looks for a posting up. Josh Hetzel, they get it into him. Hetzel, little jump hook, flipped it up and home. Yeah, nice play on the out of bounds or on the timeout there. Got it in the Hetzel, the jump hook in the middle of the lane. I mean, the funny thing is, I think we're gonna see the starters chuck a little more than you would normally see in a game that's Clearly not in doubt anymore, yeah. but these teams have not played. They've right. had so many cancellations. They've been probably tired of playing against each other. That's so a double dribble. Away with a double dribble. Well, that's an easy game when you can dribble twice, <laughs> unless they say it got tipped away. I, I, that's, the, the assistant coach is kind of going, wait, wait a minute. Wait, what, did we, what did he just do? Look at him. He's still, the coach is still going, how did he just do that? He had a jump stop on the baseline. Well, hey, give him two more. Coach That's 13. Is, coach he's, is, coach he's Anderson is still talking to Sage Hans. Like, how did you get away with that? I don't know who the assistant coach is. He's the one that's even more perplexed. <laughs> They're knifing through the defense was Jelstead, partially blocked. One minute into the fourth quarter, Jackson Nelson, Hammond, Ship comes cross court. Ty Schmidt, oh, pass fake, running shot, yes, nice play. Yeah, another Euro step with a pass fake, totally got the defense to move, use the glass. Ty Schmidt's first two of the afternoon. Hetzel, contested shot, nice defense there by Ty Schmidt. Rebound cleared by... We have a camera on the floor. Man, we got, we're picking it. A mic. He's got a little wireless mic down there. That's amazing. That's yeah. like, holy cow. We get all the action. I guess. I heard somebody saying, let's go. Have we had that the entire game? Or all of a sudden, I just hear that? <laughs> wow. You've been so dialed in. That's it. I'm focused. <laughs> <laughs> My wife says, you got to get your ears checked. Maybe that's been on the entire time. And <laughs> it's not selective hearing, honey. I think I've it, literally it, got something going we, on. We have done a lot of games with Jack Michaels and Scotty Cattell over oh. the years. They keep that thing turned up oh. way too Jeez, loud, folks. You got so that right, man. Maybe, maybe our, our, our hearing has disintegrated a little bit. <laughs> I, I seriously think that might be part of it. <laughs> Heenick, his pass in the lane for Barstead tipped. Extra pass, Hetzel left, high left side three, no good. Oh, Barstead <laughs> cleans the Ooh. glass and puts it down. He's got some hops. He went way up on the weak side rebound to rip that one down. Oh, now you get a little high school hideout for Ty Schmidt. Yeah, Schmidt trying to be that, got almost like standing next to the sideline going, hey, I'm looking at coming in, and then all of a sudden, boom, he's there. 
Mason McPeak sets the offense. Comes near side to Heenick. Barstead thinks about a straight on three. Back to Jelstead in the corner. Now to Heenick. Now to McPeak. Don't reach, just pressure. <laughs> pressure, Cooper. Don't reach, <laughs> just pressure. Good, good call by the coach. <laughs> McPeak thinks about it, takes it short to beat the shot clock. No good. Cooper Ship lost the handle. And it'll be Stanley basketball. 17 turnovers for CGU. And Stanley not a whole lot better. They got 12. Should be quite a battle in Region 8. Well, you got Stanley, the defending Region 8 champions. You got Powers Lake, Burke Central, the Ranchers. Good squad is there's a deep three there by McPeak. That's off the iron. You're going to rebound foul on Tristan Barstead as uh, you know the Ranchers and the Blue Jays should be the class of Region Eight. The Ranchers. Powers Lake is uh, last year. Powers Lake had beaten Stanley three times in the season in the regular season and the district tournament, and then obviously Stanley beat him in the Region Eight championship. As there's a. I'm going to zig, but you're going to yeah. zag, and that's another turnover. Looking at each other, just kind of put their head down. And Hansen's talking to himself down in the baseline, <laughs> having a conversation. Well, it's not my fault. Well, and, you, and you talk about um, TGU, obviously a team that's got a lot of youth. Uh, they really don't have a senior that's in the starting lineup, don't have a senior on the roster for that matter. And. Oh, yeah. uh, uh, they're in a region six that's very good. Obviously, you got Bishop Ryan, you've got West Hope Newburgh, you've got Velva that projects to be very good. So there, you know, there's a lot of quality clubs in region six, along with DLB. We didn't even mention uh, Delax Burlington. And we'll be doing that region on the PSP network. Absolutely. Coast to coast, Heenick leaves it for uh, Rudin, and he's going to be hit. Sage Hansen was down. You hope, <laughs> hope he wasn't hurt. He just got a little hip pointer, it looks like. Yeah, Heenick, he's a little thicker. He just took out Hansen. Hansen wanted to foul, but he, <laughs> he was well underneath the half circle. Carter Rudin will step up to the Sir Pro free throw line and knocks down a free toss. Gets in the scoring column for the first time. I, th I am predicting at some point somebody's going to get a dunk tonight because watching these guys, both Rudin, Barstead, and Smith all were they're high flyers. They can get up. Wide left on the second free toss for Rudin. Keep going, keep going. Ty Schmidt up the far sideline. Tries to get it on to Cooper Schmidt. Another tip pass for Stanley. Minor after the game, we'll have our Shots Crossroads Planning Team Financial Advisors post game show. Hand out our player of the game and a move of the game. Nelson gets it off to Schmidt, stops and pops from the right side, no good. Rebound McPeak. And here comes Stanley into the front court. Jelstead reverses it to Hetzel. Ooh, that's a quick first step. Yeah. Right to the rim, and Hetzel laid it in. Yeah, just that hesitation is just from before he just kind of stood up, like lulled him to sleep, and just boom, put her in third gear immediately. Well, they're in transition. Good for him. Jackson Nelson got one to, got one to drop. Hansel, nobody Ooh. stopped the ball. And and Josh Hetzel. He's looking at trying to get interviewed after this game, TD, as he's coming on strong. Takes it coast to coast. Timeout on the court. Hubner National brings you this timeout. 53-25. Stanley on top over TGU. We're back with the rest of this one after this break on the PSP Network. The right way to top a sub is with real red wine vinegar made from red grapes and no food coloring. And the right way to film it is in slow motion, obviously. Because authentic ingredients make a sub above. Hi, 
Hey fans, today's game brought to you in part by the UPS store, located on South Broadway in Minot. They're there for all your packing and shipping needs. Today's game also brought to you in part by Prestwich Orthodontics. Call them at 852-2646 or visit MinotBraces.com today to get started with a free virtual consultation. TGU still got that, uh, pretty much the starting five out there as Sage Hansen has it. Ty Schmidt sets for three, way too strong. Schlosser rebounds, oh, ahead of the pack is Heenick, and there's a long pass for a touchdown and, a, and one. He got taken out like after he made the basket. You know, it was kind of weird that he, he made the basket and then he went underneath the hoop and there was somebody who, I don't think it was even guarding him, TD. It was coming from the opposite side, took him out. Ty Schmidt kind of trailing the play, got tangled up with Heenick. And Jackson Heenick, the 6'1 junior, will be at the line as Stanley's going to send in Cole Rogers, the 6'1 junior. Heenick will come off after getting in the old fashioned three point yep. play from the serve pro free throw line. Cal gets back in, Sorensen. And now you get a running clock. Oh, is that what it is? Second half, 30 point differential. Okay. So that means at about the one minute mark, I'll work my way down the 40 <laughs> steps and two flights. That's all right, I need to get a few steps in after this week of Christmas. Oh boy. Food, fun, and festivities. Ooh, that was a wide open TD. That shouldn't happen. It's Jackson Nelson. Yeah, he, nobody even picked him up on the out of bounds play. The beneficiary, as you also get uh, Cade Schneider, the sophomore, in there for Stanley. Yeah, he played some JV ball. Sorensen. Yeah, you're going to get a little nickel and dime riding time there for Ty Schmidt, I believe. Yep. Sorensen, just a quality game for him. 11 points. Just been that gnat out front on the defense for the Blue Jays. Yeah, the, the senior kind of setting the tone, right? Yep. No, got to decide. Is it Hetzel? Is it Sorensen? Who are we going to talk to? Schlosser had a heck of a game, too. Cal Sorensen saying, hey, don't forget about yeah, me. Yeah, wait a minute, he, I'm, I'm here. He knocks down the free throw. <laughs> Pick me. Second one for Sorensen, looks good, oh, and it is. Got 13. Stanley on top, 58-27 over TGU in our opener. Left elbow shot, Schmidt no good. Rebound, Cole Rogers. Gets that baby off to Clay Papa, who's on, the sophomore. <laughs> there you go, Jackson. And you get the good passing lane defense there as TGU's gonna tip that out of bounds. With under 140 to play in the contest. Boy, that clock drips down fast when they Ooh. don't when they don't uh, stop it for any out of bounds or anything. Running clock as Sage Hansen has it. Hammond's gonna attack. Extra pass taken away. Cal Sorensen streaking. Sorensen coast to coast. Rebound tipped out of bounds. As they say, it was last touch there potentially by Sage Hansen. Sorensen will trigger it in with 101 to play. Looks for Papa. Schneider back to Sorensen downtown from the right wing. No good. Rebound yanked out of there by Rogers. Gives it off to Jelstead, back to Rogers. Looks for cutting Sorensen. Jelstead crosses over, extra pass Sorensen. Down low, Schneider operating. Kicks it back out. Jelstead lost the handle. Rogers is, I don't know if Stanley's gonna shoot it. Papa's gonna take it. Oh, and he got hit. Clay Papa, the sophomore, gonna look to get in the book here at the Dale Brown Classic. And he'll step to the serve pro free throw line. Trained technicians, advanced technology, fire and water cleanup and restoration. It's serve pro. Couple free tosses coming, and Clay Papa's in the books.
sophomore is going to set the second. And he twines both of them. Stanley is going to improve to three and one on the season. TGU is going to fall to two and three. Hansen from downtown. Book it. Sage Hansen. Got 14 points in the game to lead TGU today. The lone guy in double figures. And that's going to be a final and a wrap. Game one from the Dale Brown Classic is in the books. Final score, Stanley 60, TGU 30. And we'll welcome you right away into our planning team, financial advisor, Shots Crossroads postgame show. Shots Crossroads, your postgame headquarters. You can order online at shotscrossroads.com. And planning team, financial advisors, helping clients work towards financial freedom. Chuck Claremont's made his way down on the court here at the MSU Dome. Get a word with head coach Corey Anderson and also looks like he's got one Cal Sorensen. Take it away, Chuck. All right, thanks, Todd. Defense set the tone in the first quarter, gave up two points. And then your offense, 25 points that second quarter, uh, kind of turned it on and they, they couldn't catch up. Yeah, we were focusing all week on just the defensive side of things. Um, and, and basically turnovers, that's our two uh, primary responsibilities. But, you know, they run a tough offense where they set so many back picks. It's no one else is doing it. Everyone's now ball screen, ball screen and spread it out. So we've had to talk a lot on uh, talking and communication and taking away all those cuts. And I thought our guys did an excellent job today. Yeah, the ball pressure your three guards were putting on them. I mean, they had almost 20 turnovers tonight, and that was such a major key to the game. Yeah, we got to turn teams over. We got to push it. We're not the right now. We have a turnover problem ourselves, and so we want to play in transition. So we have to focus on that until we get this turnover uh, issue fixed for it's us. Nice to finally get a game in after all this weather issues. Yeah, it's been tough to get a flow. It's been really hard, and I think it probably showed for both teams that, that first quarter. No one can take care of the ball. No one can shoot. It was just a tough first quarter. There's hard. It's hard to get rhythm right now. Good win, coach. Congratulations. Thank you. All right, step on in here, Cal. Great game today for you. I mean, I, I felt you set the tone defensively. You were a leader. You got out in their face. Couldn't score the first quarter, but, well, that second quarter, you guys got it going. Yeah, we did. I think we were trying to get better on our half-court offense, and we kind of had to lock in a little bit and start waking up from this morning. So. You know, and for you as a senior, obviously a leader in this team, what's your expectations for the season? Got to, you know, got to state last year. What are you looking at this season? Uh, this season, cut down on our turnovers, obviously. That's been a problem for us since last season. And then our work on our half-court offense. And then, like, the turnovers will just help in the transition points that we need and then half-court offenses. You know, one thing you're very balanced, it looks like you guys are in tune with each other, too, especially your guards out front in terms of moving the ball and, and, and not afraid to get the ball inside either. Yeah, uh, we try to get a post touch at least once every possession, but hopefully more than once possession, and then shoot the three maybe, kick out three. But, yeah, we're pretty in tune with each other, cutting and stuff like that. But. We were thinking somebody was going to get a dunk tonight. Didn't happen. Yeah, no, we were too tired today, I think. <laughs> Congratulations. Good game. Thank you. All right, TD, back up to you. Yeah, well done down the sidelines. You heard from 14th year head coach Corey Anderson and one Cal Sorensen, who was senior who had his fingerprints on the contest this morning. Take a break, and our planning team, financial advisor, Shots Crossroad postgame rolls on from the MSU Dome and the Dale Brown Classic. Final score, BNC Bank scoreboard it is. Stanley 60, TGU 30. Post game rolls on after this break on the PSP Network. Whether you're looking for a full service financial plan or planning for farm or business succession, Planning Team Financial Advisors is here to help you work toward achieving your financial goals. With locations in Bismarck, Garrison, and Center, our full service team of professionals are dedicated to helping you work towards achieving your financial goals. Visit us online, planningteam.com. Securities offered through LPL Financial, member of Finrun Sipic. Investment advisory services offered through New Edge Advisors LLC, a registered investment advisor. New Edge Advisors LLC and Planning Team Financial Advisors are separate entities from LPL Financial. Oh, easy, easy. I think I'm good. You got my good side, right? <laughs> Not too many lights. I don't want to get fried before my time. <laughs> oh, it's egg-tastic. You never know what dish you're going to end up in. My dream dish is a 99. It's so popular. 
Me and a fellow egg tag teaming with some crispy golden hash browns. Have you seen those hash browns? Those guys are shredded. <laughs> Throwing some diced ham, onions, and melted cheese. Oh, it's a party for your taste buds. Oh, here comes Chevy. Hold on, Chevy. Did you guys get everything that you needed? 99, here I come. Shots Crossroads. It's an excellent place to eat. It's time for the Shots Crossroads and Planning Team Financial Advisors postgame show. Now for a look at game stats and analysis. Let's go to the postgame show. And we're back at the MSU Dome, Dale Brown Classic, putting a wrap on game one as Stanley was impressive after a scoreless, well, it was almost a scoreless first quarter, two to two, Stanley got it rolling and they put up uh, 25 points in that second quarter, turned over TGU a bunch and they win this one 60 to 30. As that's a final on your BNC Bank scoreboard, game one's in the books. Uh, you've got uh, the Hazen Bison and the West Hope Newburg Sioux getting set for game two. But first, uh, Chuck, a couple things to take care of here. First, let's run through the uh, final game numbers, and then we'll get to our MVP and move of the game as well. For first, here's the team and final numbers. All right, thanks, Dad. Four of the TGU Titans. Sage Hansen led him with 16 points. He had a couple threes to go with five deuces for his 16 points. Nobody else in double figures. Luke Jordy had six, Jackson Nelson four, and then Ty Schmidt had four points for the total of 30. For the Stanley Blue Jays, they had eight guys in the scoring column, three in double figures. They were led by their big three. Josh Hetzel had 17 points, nine in the first half, eight in the second, 14 for Drake Schlosser. He had three threes right in a row there. He finishes with 14, 13 for Cal Sorensen. We heard from him as he was just consistent throughout that basketball game, made all three of his free throws and four or five other field goals for his 13. Five for Jackson Henick, four each for Barstead, uh, Tristan Barstead and Laramie Smith. Two for Clay Papa off the bench late and then Carter Rudin had two points as well as the TD said two to two after in the first quarter it was 27 to 11 at halftime and then Stanley did not slow down at all they kept moving ahead as they ended up doubling up the Titans 60 to 30. There's the final game numbers as Stanley has three in double figures today the three guards and TGU led by the 16 points of Sage Hansen. All right, it's time now for our move of the game. Brought to you by Jobbers Moving and Stores. They can help you move across town or across the country. Locations in Bismarck, Minot, Fargo, and Aberdeen. Find them online at jobberswarehouse.com. All right, well, hey, when this first quarter was 2-2 two to two and there wasn't much going on, the move of the game has got to be something early in that second quarter. Yeah, and it was Drake Schlosser got him going. He hit a three from the top of the key about 25 feet and then he came back then he moved out another foot hit another three and then they, they set another one for him all in the same area so three threes back to back to back for Drake Schlosser those would be our jobbers moving in storage moves of the game yeah congratulations Drake Schlosser there's your move of the game where jobbers focus on the details of the process without ever losing sight of the big picture their efficient step-by-step -step approach to move management keeps everyone on the same page locations in Bismarck Minot Fargo and Aberdeen Find them online at jobberswarehouse.com. One game is in the books. Stanley victorious over TGU. St. John and West Hope Newburgh warming up as we get set for game two. And the last thing here in our planning team financial advisor shots crossroads post game is our sport clips MVP of the context. Sports clips keeps you looking your best. You can check in online with a hairstylist today at sportclips.com. And this morning, this afternoon's MVP is. I got to go with Josh Hetzel. He was uh, throughout this basketball game. He had an assist to Sorensen, the only bucket in the first quarter, and a couple other ones blown for him. And then after uh, Drake Schlosser hits the trio of threes, he comes back and he hits three in a row as nine. And then he just that second half, he was just he was clearly the floor leader. So junior Josh Hetzel, 17 points to lead the Blue Jays. He's our Sport Clips MVP of the game. Yeah, congratulations, Josh Hetzel, the junior. Sport Clips is the home to the MVP haircut experience. Nothing comes close to making you feel like an MVP, like the experience at Sport Clips. 
Congratulations today's game MVP, Josh Hetzel from the Stanley Blue Jays. Stanley improves to three and one in the season. TGU falls to two and three. That'll put a wrap on game one. We turn our attention next to the St. Or not St. John, they're coming up in game three. Next up, it'll be the Hazen Bison and the West Hope Newburgh Sioux. We'll set the stage for that after this break. Final score in game one, Stanley 60, TGU 30. Game one's in the books from the Dale Brown Classic. Whether you're looking for a full service financial plan or planning for farm or business succession, Planning Team Financial Advisors is here to help you work toward achieving your financial goals. With locations in Bismarck, Garrison, and Center, our full-service team of professionals are dedicated to helping you work towards achieving your financial goals. Visit us online, planningteam.com. Securities offered through LPL Financial, member of FINRA and SIPC. Investment advisory services offered through New Edge Advisors, LLC, a registered investment advisor. New Edge Advisors, LLC, and Planning Team Financial Advisors are separate entities from LPL Financial. Our stylists are trained to understand the uh, nuances of cutting men's hair. Less pomp, more adore, huh, Brittany? Square face, wavy hair. Mid fade with a textured top. Finish it off with a hard part and taper that neckline, coach. Cowlick, what's the move? It's not just all about hard work here. Hit off, seven, pressure, points, yeah. It takes expertise to be a sport clip stylist. Here. Ah. That's a spot right there, huh? Sport clips, the pros in men's hair. Are you moving your business or your home across the town or across the country? We know it can be stressful. To ensure your possessions arrive on time, intact and on budget, make your move with Jobbers Moving and Storage. Jobbers can help you with every aspect of your move. With our efficient step-by-step -step approach to move management, we can tailor a plan to suit your needs and schedule. With locations in Bismarck, Fargo, Minot and Aberdeen, Jobbers Moving and Storage is your choice. Visit JobbersWarehouse.com. It's Jobbers. Moving in storage. Oh, easy, easy. I think I'm good. You got my good side, right? <laughs> Not too many lights. I don't want to get fried before my time. <laughs> oh, it's egg-tastic. You never know what dish you're going to end up in. My dream dish is a 99. It's so popular. Me and a fellow egg tag teaming with some crispy golden hash browns. Have you seen those hash browns? Those guys are shredded. <laughs> Throwing some diced ham, onions, and melted cheese. Oh, it's a party for your taste buds. Oh, here comes Chevy. Hold on, Chevy. Did you guys get everything that you needed? 99, here I come. Shots Crossroads. It's an excellent place to eat. This broadcast on the PSP Network is proudly brought to you by... on the PSP Network is proudly brought to you by...
Nine smiles come from Vibetta Orthodontics. Vibetta Orthodontics is a certified Invisalign provider. Invisalign fits your budget and your lifestyle. Braces for children, teens, and adults with affordable monthly payments. Schedule your complimentary consultation and exam by logging on to VibettaOrthodontics.com or by calling 701-839-6010. In southwestern and south central North Dakota on any given day at any given moment, a Dakota Community Bank and Trust customer is logging in or signing on to do their online or mobile banking. We believe that community banking can blend both the past with down-home customer service in-house and the future with modern banking conveniences and technology for our customers anywhere, like here or here, all while honoring our long-standing tradition of community-first oriented banking here at Dakota Community Bank and Trust. Many of our clients come to us already accomplished in their lives and on the right track. However, whether it's in response to a life-changing event or you are nearing retirement, you can sleep well knowing that together we have planned for both life's opportunities and challenges. And no matter what happens, we are here to help guide you. Outside the MSU Dome, fans filing in. See the skywalk going over to Swain Hall where there's a ton of JV basketball going on today. Got a lot of snow around here too. And we're back inside the MSU Dome. Todd Darmies, Chuck Claremont as we're back in our Shields pregame show. Shields. Sporting goods, hunting and fishing gear, clothing, and more at Shields of Minot and Bismarck, bringing you our pregame and all of our PSP network broadcasts. And we turn our attention to game number two, the bison and the Sioux, or the Sioux and the bison. <laughs> I guess however you prefer to put that in, in order, whichever you prefer, I guess. I wish it was still like that in football, TD. <laughs> it's the Hazen Bison and the West Hope Newburgh Sioux, both teams two and one on the season. Hazen coached by John Ward in his fourth season. West Hope Newburgh, Anthony Lee is their seventh year head coach. The Bison out of Region 7. West Hope Newburgh out of Region 6. And uh, hey, the Hazen Bison had a great run last year and uh, looking to get back to a championship game in Region 8 or Region 7, I beg your pardon. Yeah, lost to Bowman County in that uh, cha or championship game of Region 7. It, the game was close until the fourth quarter. They got blown out 27 to 7. They want that back. Not yep. a good finish for Hayes. And so how about closing your year out with that in the back of your mind? Maybe it's a little motivation for these kids as they got a couple studs back in Talon Batke and Tyson Wick. They lost uh, Tyson's big brother, Mason, and he, he, speaking of studs, he was definitely one of them. Uh, but a lot of kids back, and this is a team I think they got uh, Coach John Ward in his fourth year, as you mentioned, Todd. They're coming off that 17 and 7 season. I think they're feeling like this could be a, a, a potential, you know, top of the region. They were picked number two in that Super Region 7. I can't, was, I can't remember who was picked one. I'll have to look that up. I don't think it was Bowman uh, County it, again. It was either Trinity or Bowman oh, County because yeah. those three are at the top of the list. Yeah, and yeah. so uh, but anyway, they feel like they got a team to potentially win that region. And then you look over to West Hope. Newburgh. I mean, you look at enrollment, that's what's crazy to me. 51 kids is all they got out at that school, but yet, you know, West Hope Newburgh, good football team. I mean, they were they were just a whisker. They lost to New Salem in a tough, no, not New Salem, they lost to North, North Prairie, Prairie. Yep. In, a, in a hard fought game <clears throat> and uh, where they got some stud football kids. So I'm anxious to see how these kids turn the Walker Brattons of the world. And um, I guess one of the, some other kids are, didn't got hurt in football. Beckett all won't see him, but Walker Broughton's like one guy, TD. He's the guy we're going to be looking at as he is uh, just a sophomore. It's crazy. Watch, you know, I watched some tape of him as a quarterback 
and uh, he was special, a special kid at 6'3", a sophomore, watching him shoot, he's, he's smooth. Yeah, and he, um, he stuffs the stat sheet, I tell you what, as uh, Bowman County is your number one team in the Hoopster prediction in Region 7. Dickinson Trinity is uh, number three, Beulah four, and these Hayes and Bison are number two. Yeah, let's take a look at the starting lineups. First off for the Hayes and Bison, they'll go like this. Kaysen Kaler is a starting guard along with Talon Batke. A couple seniors there, Riley Walters is one forward along with Tyson Wick. Those two young men are juniors, and I'll call him a center, but he kind of moves all over the place. Tate Sage is a 6'3 senior, so John Ward's club will start three seniors, two juniors in that starting five. For the Hayes and Bison coming off a 17-7 season a year ago, they're 2-1 and one on the season. They lost to uh, Bishop Ryan in their opener before winning their final two games here before the Christmas break. For the West Hope Newberg Sioux and their head coach Anthony Lee, they'll start like this. At the guards, you'll have Will Arts. He's a 5'11 sophomore. Joined in the backcourt by the 5'8 junior Dalton Hawkins. One forward is Maddox Juntinen. He's a 5'10 junior. Joined on the front line by the guy you talked about, Chuck, Walker Broughton. 27 points a game for Walker Broughton, who uh, also scored 20, almost 23 a game last year. He's just a sophomore, but he's already eclipsed 1,000 career points in his uh, in his young career, and uh, he's a good one. Uh, he wears number 13, stands six foot three as a sophomore for the Sioux, and in the middle is Morgan LeMay, the 6'1 junior. West Oak Newberg will start a young lineup, two sophomores and three juniors in their starting five. Sands a senior. Don't have a senior on the roster. Do the West Hope Newburgh Sioux. And we're set for basketball. Thanks to Shields for bringing you our pregame. Dedicated to offering you the best retail experience. They offer clothing, footwear, and gear for all your passions, from fishing to fashion. Broughton and looks like uh, Van England gets a start for yep. the Hayes and Bison. Near side pass, Ertz fires for three and knocks it down. Oh, check that, Dalton Hawkins from downtown. Yeah, nice back pick as they set that up right away. A wide open look on the weak side. They don't put your head down because the Bison like to run and Case and Kaler in transition answers for Hazen. Walker Broughton, there's Tyson Wick on him, chasing him around. Went hard at the basket, spun back to the middle, shot it over top of a Bison defender. Batke's head man pass for Tate Sage off his fingertips, out of bounds, turnover, Hazen. Yeah, we uh, we went from 33 speed up to 45 now, TD. Yep. I don't know if we're at 78 yet, but we're surely at 45. Walker Broughton sets the offense for TGU, or excuse me, for West Oak Newburgh. LeMay driving and his shot fly swatted out of bounds. I think that was Sage who got that. Uh, Kaler was in the vicinity too, but I think it was Sage. Dawkins will send it in. Way up top, taken away by Batke. Here comes Talon Batke, one on two. Oh, nice pass. Oh. Leaves it on the dime and trailing the play is Van Ingwig. Yeah, that's just a great pass for the leader Batke. The two and one fast break. Inwagen has his first two of the contest and it's 5-4. West Oak Newberg on top. Broughton crosses over on Wick. Pulls up, baseline shot, short. Rebound tipped and cleared by Hazen. West Hope dribbles like his father, doesn't he? He's kind of got his father look. West Hope Newberg on top, 5-4 early on here in your BNC Bank scoreboard. In wagon, comes near side to Wick. Comes to the elbow, leaves it for Sage from downtown. Nope. Rebound. Weak side pulled out of there by Juntman. Walker Broughton wants to go, and he's wrapped around and poked away from behind by Tyson Wick. A little old man D. Well, they look back door. Deep three for Arts. Oh, heartbreak hotel in and out. Kaler rebounds, quickly ahead Batke. Thought about a three. 
drives into the lane, high off the glass. Friendly touch for Talon Batke's first two. Yeah, nice take as he got a nice pass in the baseline, went right hard to the hole, hung long enough, threw it up high on the glass and just tickled in from the rim. Pull up, Broughton missed it, got it back, went up, blocked away by Sage. Wick has it. Wick's got some flow. He does. <laughs> Hair's, he got the hockey hair. In wagon, comes to Batke, post up Wick. Oh, and he shuffled the puppies, yep. Took a little hop step in the bunny patch. Uh, he had a good good move though, set up maybe the, I don't know if the, anybody moved when he did, he did that, but nice drop step, got to the middle next time. Just gotta make the move without jumping backwards. Yeah, just took that little hop. And yep. Got whistled for the walk. LeMay has it as he sets the offense for the Sioux. Looks for a cutting Dawkins, gives it off, screen and roll with Broughton. Behind the screen, Walker Broughton from downtown. Back iron, no good. Batke on the pogo stick, rebound. Hazen likes to run as Batke, little hesitation dribble drive, splits the defense, count it, and a foul. That hesitation is lethal right now for Batke. He's got that down, and West Hope Newberg is struggling. As Talon Batke will go to the line for the potential and one. Morgan LeMay picks up the personal foul. Speaking of struggling, struggling to speak. <laughs> That's what the cough button's for their partner. Yes, I can't reach it. Thank you for helping me. Talon Batke from the serve pro free throw line knocks down the and one. And first substitution in the game is Riley Walters for Hazen along with Mark Laura. Walters, the 6'1 junior, and Laura, the six foot sophomore. And in for West Hope Newber is Hunter Tolstead, is going to get a little nickel and dimer there. Laura going to get called for a hold on Walker Brott. West Hope Newberg, the Sioux, triggered way into the backcourt. Will Arts. Take it on his right. Bounces it to Broughton. It's a screen there. Broughton still on the bounce. Good hedge there by the Hazen Bison. Broughton step back three from the right wing. Got it. That's tough because you had Mark Laura all over him, but Walker Broughton was not going to be denied on that step back three. Hazen couldn't tiptoe the sideline. You even heard the Hazen coaches saying, hey, good hand, good defense. Yeah. And uh, sometimes better offense just beats yeah. better defense. I mean, that, that was good. That was impressive. <laughs> Walker Broughton hits from downtown, makes it 9-8. Hazen on top. Arts. Right wing. Diving down to the block there is Hawkins. And now they throw it away is Will Arts. He thought Walker Broughton was going to come all the way up on that one. Instead, he stopped at about the 28-foot line, or the the 20-foot line. Is the 28-foot line is where they thought he was going. All right, communicate, White. Kaler sets the offense. Batke thinks about a 25-footer, gets a screen from Laura. Batke steps into a 20-footer, no good. Long rebound, cleared by Tolstead. Gives it off to Junton, and here comes West Hope Newberg. Into the paint, Junton and lost it. Thought maybe there was some contact there. Batke gets it off to Wick. From the right elbow, extra pass. Walters attacks baseline, gives it off to Kaler. Straight away, Wick from downtown. Yes! Well, that's a quick release. Nice pass in the corner from Kaler. And then Wick, boy, just barely touched that, squared up, hit it. And you get a quick Hubbard National Insurance timeout whistled for the Sioux. You can call Hubbard National today for all your personal and business insurance needs. Hazen out to on, on top, 12-8, midway through the first quarter. Back after this break on the PSP Network. Start for the Hazen Bison here in game two from the Dale Brown Classic at the MSU Dome. 
West Hope Newberg has it. Arts drops it down low. Tolstead layup good. Hunter Tolstead gets his first two of the contest. Now the Sioux will extend some pressure. Almost turn over the Bison. Kaler's pass tipped and it is taken away. Hot and Hawkins collects. Kaler can't save it. Is good hustle by both teams. Well, Kaler's been in the weight room, TD. He's got the full tights on. <laughs> you see kids wearing nowadays. I don't. I, I could not play in tights. Uh, sleeves either for me. No way. <laughs> no. West Hope Newberger into the into the front court. Arts way deep to Dawkins. Oh no, a right side three fired up there by Trayton Leesman who just checked into the game. No good. Hazen rebounds, one and done for West Hope Newberg. Batke rifles it down low, Van Wigan, his shot blocked by Brock. And Wigan had it denied at the 10. Oh, nice pass, Tolstead cutting, count it, and a foul. Well, he faked the pass initially, uh, what, what Hawkins did, and then he let the trailer go all the way down to the baseline or to the block in Tolstead, and then he threw that one-handed snap pass down to him. Tolstead with a nice finish. Too strong from the serve pro free throw line. Broughton rebounds, puts it back up, and he's fouled. I think in wing and got him from behind. In Wagon, I beg your pardon. Yeah, he's going to get two shots in Broughton. What a season he's had. You said he averaged 24 points a game last season. Well, he, a 25, 29, and 28 point games. And not only that, he's averaging almost 14 rebounds a game. Free the, throw. Uh, basketball genes are in the family, though, TD. <laughs> yeah, you think? I mean, a sister Ellie, 2,000 point score, number 35 in the list. Just a, she's a senior. She's gonna get in the 2600. She could be in the top 10 yep. before she's done. And what brother was it, Hunter, right? Hunter Broughton had 1800 career points. That's not bad for the family. Yeah, a standout career for West Oak Newberg. Talon Batke behind the defense, scoops it up. Might have been partially blocked. Laura rebounds, might be tied up. He clears. Gets it up in Wagon for three. Oh, in and out, Heartbreak Hotel. Broughton tips the rebound, but he can't get it on the end line. What, what are they saying there? He was the one, he was trying to save it hmm. out of bounds. That's why you, you get 13 rebounds a game if you get those counted in your Did stats. Did you get that? Did, did they give him a rebound, <laughs> whoever's close enough to it, or is it just a... Uh, I'm just joking. I don't know. <laughs> he could. Hawkins gets into the paint. Kick out Arts for three. Nope. Little knuckleball delivery on that one, no good. Batke on a sideline fast break. One more, one more, keep going, no, reverse it. Back to Batke. Sage down the left side of the lane. Oh, lost the handle, and that's a double dribble. Well, not last game, that'd have been okay last game, but this game, <laughs> they had to call it. You could pick it up and dribble it? You could. <laughs> that's Sage, speaking of Sages, Sage Hansen was the one who did that last game on the baseline. Officials didn't call it. Game was a little uh, more out of reach there. This one is a little tighter. You got to call those. 14 12. West Hope Newberg on top. Double screen. Sets for three. Hawkins. Ring it up. Second three of the game. He is a shooter. Good down pick. Set him up wide open on the left wing. Sage reverses it to Badkey. Thinks about a three from the left wing. Drives through, leaves it for Kaler, taken away. Nice play by Broughton. Tries to headman a pass up to Hawkins, and it's tipped last by Hazen. Yeah, he was open too. He is behind the D. And I think they're going to change that one as they say that Hawkins was the last yeah, one to touch that. It looked like it was to me. I think the Zebras got together and got that correct, yeah, as I we can tell you that. One. Today's game brought to you in part by Roger Ward Moving and Storage. Contact them at rogerwardmovingandstorage.com. Schedule a move. Find a quote. That key lets the defense fly by. Sets for three. Missed everything. Yeah, that's, that's a hard one to do that one when you have somebody coming at you too. Broughton rebounds. Oh, and he dribbled it off his toenail. <laughs> Batkey Bat has it, and back comes Hazen. He's going to lean in too strong. Looks at the official like, hey, what the heck? Yeah, how do you not call that one? It's perplexed. 
Rebound goes to the Sioux. Hazen has it. Now they got a developing four on one. Sage into the corner. Batke three ball in and out. That was taken away by Kaler. He put it up. Wick keeps it alive. Kaler still has it. Batke's going to drive baseline. Fires it cross court to Sage. He dissects. Leaves it for Kaler. Toes on the line. 18 footer. Got it. Hey, that was great ball movement right there for Hayes. And it cr went cross court three different times in that possession after the big offensive rebound set that one up. 10 seconds to play in the quarter. Hazen by, th or check that, West Oak Newberg by three. Broughton, oh, good defense there. Good help by Inwagen. <laughs> Coach Ward up saying good job. Yeah, that was great defense. Stepped up from the baseline, came off his guy to pick up Walker Broughton. And you get some subs here in with 2.6 seconds to play in the first quarter. West Oak Newberg by three. Kaler has it. Gets it back to Wick from the timeline. And the first quarter will go into the books with West Hope Newberg up by three and one. BNC Bank scoreboard, West Hope Newberg 17, Hayes and 14. Second quarter is next on the PSD Network. Be transformative for your small business. The best bank for your business will offer competitive fees and so much more. At BNC National Bank, our team is proud to offer you a helpful, supportive, above and beyond banking relationship. Starting to stress about the complexities of qualifying for a small business loan? BNC can guide you through the process with much less stress and likely far more success. Speak to one of our team members today. The magic of what we do really comes down to combining different aspects of patient care. Here at Premier Chiropractic, we love combining soft tissue work, the adjustment and exercises together. We found that this gets the best results for our patients. We have three chiropractors to fit the needs of the entire family, a rehab area for our exercises and equipment for any athlete to improve performance. Give us a call and we will get you back to doing what you love. because I was, that's <laughs> my bad. Now back in action. And on the three ball for Inwagen, you're going to get an offensive foul whistle there on Hazen. Is it it's down, going to go on Riley pick, yeah. I beg your pardon, at the end of the quarter when Hazen had that great uh, ball reversal, it was Kaler that knocked down the shot, not Tate Sage. He missed the first one. He's the one that started the, the offensive possession. Three-pointer put up there by Ertz. Cleaned up by Tolstead. Uh, Tolstead, and then a great head fake, TD. Got two buys and buys and off their feet to finish that. Ooh, that's how you play transition basketball. Riley Walters drops a dime down there for Kaler. He's got two more. Wow, nice little tic-tac-toe down the floor to Walters after a nice pass by Walters. Broughton leaves it off to Juntman. Broughton now in the corner to Arts. Bingo from downtown. Will Arts on the assist from Walker Broughton. Wick coming back quickly. Kaler back in the corner to Wick. Tyson Wick. In Wagon, little hesitation, dribble drive. Ooh, that's shot. Blocked out of bounds by Riley Juntnan. Maddox Juntnan. There must be a Riley Juntnan at some point that I've heard or I've seen or older brother or something. Maddox Juntnan comes off and trading Leesman back on for West Hope Newberg. Batke back on for Hazen. Sage, open three in the corner. Wick, no good. Kaler battling on the weak side, but Leesman comes out of there with it. Walker Broughton sets the offense, crosses over, step back, right side three, nope, off the iron. Laura battling on the weak side, along with Hawkins, and it's going to belong to West Hope Newberg. Well, that's a good battle, Mark Laura. He is, he's a pest, and he is tough D, he was on the floor, almost got the ball for Hayes in there, but West Hope's going to keep it. My fans, today's game brought to you in part by Northern Plains Heating and Air. 
No other choice to seal your heating and air game than Northern Plains. Heating and air, you can find them online at northern-plains.com. Broughton had to go into the backcourt to get it. Gives it off to Arts. Crosses over there and Batke slaps that one out of bounds. They are picking them up. I mean, it's tough man to man all the way off the 28 foot line. Safety valve to Arts. He comes into the front court. Will Arts, who almost had that taken away by Batke. Arts still has it. And it's slapped out of bounds, but it's last touch by Will Arts. That's one of those where the official, he wasn't going to bail him out. It's like, I am not bailing you out with a foul after that dribbling display. Kept control of it, almost got it to go. If you'd have grabbed that basketball, you'd have been wide open in the layup, but couldn't quite get through those two defenders. Sage, sideline fast break to Batkey, back to Sage. Down low, Laura. Extra pass, Wick open, top three. No, wide right. And it ricochets out of bounds to West Hope Newberg. Will Arts wanted another 10 seconds of a rest period instead of grabbing it, <laughs> let it go out of bounds. It seems like Hazen to me has kind of controlled the action here, but West Hope Newberg is up by six. Yeah, exactly. You look up and go, wait a minute, how are they down? I keep thinking it's Hazen with 22. Yeah, yeah, that's kind of the vibe that I'm getting too, but West Hope Newberg has been a little bit more productive. Walker Broughton comes flying into the lane. And he got Ooh. pinballed into and he got her right in the Right where the sun don't shine? Yes, he's, he's hurting here. <laughs> in the lower groin area. He's, in, just yes, put it that he's way. an opera, I think. He's going to be a soprano right now. He's, <laughs> he he's run right to the line, though. He's, he's OK, uh, deep breath. Right up to the uh, serve pro free throw line. <laughs> <laughs> Train technicians, advanced technology, fire and water, cleanup and restoration. It's serve pro. Walker Broughton knocked down that free throw and extends the West Hope Newburgh lead to seven, missed the second one. Laura rebounds and Hazen controls in the hands of Tyson Wick. Free throw line to Mark Laura. Little give and go with Wick. Can't get it there. Turnover Bison. Seventh turnover. Yeah, look at this West Hope Newburgh team, TD, and I think of, man, they are good now. When you, yep. you got two kids out with Braden Bailey, he was a 17 point a game score, 52 threes. He's out, they're not sure if it's the whole season potentially or or what's the situation from him, but man, with him out and then that Ethan Beckett all, a big post, I mean, they 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 would be hard, they would be a tough, they're good now. Mm -hmm. Leesman in the lane, nice play. There's that Kaler, Case and Kaler with the block for the Bison. Les Leesman almost stole that away. Now Wick has to play it off of Broughton. Smart play. And now you get a foul on West Hope Newberg. Yeah, he was falling into the backcourt and sort of like, you, like you're falling out of bounds. Same difference, right? So then he threw it off the defender and went right back to him. You don't see that at the half line very often. No, I don't know if I've ever seen that at the yeah. half line. Smart play. That was really good recognition by Wick. You see that on the sideline and the end line a lot, but yep. you don't see it very often. Now this time Batke tries to wedge his way through a couple defenders and he's going to get rewarded and go to the free throw line. Yeah, the, the head coach Anthony Lee says you, you, you didn't bail out our guy on the other side. Now you let Batke go into two guys with the old Euro step. That shot was going nowhere, but you call him, you get it. We get called for a foul. That's going to be the second foul on, Le, or on LeMay too, starting junior. Talon Batke at the free throw line, the senior. So we didn't talk about his father, Greg, not a bad basketball player at Hazen and then went on to Mary, was a what, Mr. Basketball finalist and a first team All-Stater. So he, he got dad's genes. He's, this kid's a solid player. He'll be one of the, he'll be a potential All-Stater. You can hear him as our crowd mic's picking him up. He's an assistant coach for the Bison. Oh yeah. He catch his voice a lot, says, that ball is tipped, last touched by West Hope Newberg. Good uh, convergence there by that Hazen Bison defense. Hey, last time I saw him, he had this big beard. <laughs> was, you know, was playing amateur basketball. Oh, Batsky, Batsky would go 100 miles an hour. <laughs> he, that, he only had one one gear, and it was full throttle. <laughs> and now you get Sage, get whistled for a shuffle the puppies. He had a wide open look too. That's coach who looked at him saying, "Hey, you got a wide open look. Let her rip." He's made a couple threes in the season. Four, as a matter of fact, you got to have some confidence when you made four in the season. You got a wide open look in the baseline. 23 18. 
West Hope Newberg by four and I think they're going to get a legal pick. Yep. It was going to happen. Somebody was chipping that entire possession. Yeah, Tolstead, he was getting into it with Tyson Wick, or actually it was with Sage. Sage was the one who gave him the first push. It's always the second guy who gets called. Wick fires it up the sidelines. In wagon, had his pocket picked from behind by Dawkins. Nice play for West Hope Newberg. Here comes the Sioux. Dawkins into the front court. Oh, he had his pocket picked from behind by Batku. Thought he might have got away with that, but instead he gets whistled for it. Late whistle by the official. First personal foul for Batke. Yeah, 24 points a game for Batke. He's got seven threes in a couple games here now. Four, three assists, three steals, two rebounds. <clears throat> On the back side, Tolstead missed the shot. Sage and Tolstead battling, and they're going to tie it up. And the arrow is going to belong to West Hope Newberg. So got a little bit too quick on that first one. That's a tough play to defend when he got brought and set in the cross screen because he gets so much attention that uh, Toss Tolstead's going to have some attention on the weak side. Tolstead has it. Hawkins thinks about it. Now he takes it deep, right side three, short. Rebound. Tolstead puts it up. No good. Tipped by Br uh, Batke. Extra pass Arts. Now to Broughton for three. No. Rebound in wagon, kept it alive, cleared by Sage. Tyson Wick into the front court. Hazen tries to leave it between Batke and Wick, and those two guys, boy, they've had a lot of playing time on the court together, but they did not have her all in sync there. Now 10 turnovers for Hazen in this first half. Sloppy play offensively. That's why they're down, TD. This offensive efficiency ratio is not good. West Oak Newberg tries to get in a post to Walker Broughton. You know, the one guy who I've been impressed with here in the first half is the, the defense that Tyson Wick is playing on Walker yeah. Broughton. Oh, absolutely. And he, yeah, it's, not everybody wants to guard guys like that, yep. you know? And he's accepted the challenge. Juntman has it on the safety valve. Hand off to Broughton. Crosses over. Gets deep this time, flips it up off the glass and banked it home. He had Carson or Wick right in his face there, but just better offense is kind of a fade away from eight feet off the glass. Sideline fast break again for Hazen. Sage, extra pass open. Batke sets for three. Yes. And finally gets one and good skip pass to Batke, who had his feet set on that one. 25 21. Now Broughton wants to go. Wick. Defensive stance, trying to take that away is Tolstead. Throws it, taken away by Tate, or excuse me, Mark Laura. But then he had his pocket picked by Junton and Broughton trailing for three. No. In wagon rebounds for the Bison. He has uh, the, the go sign every time <laughs> he touches it, doesn't he? <laughs> Four point lead for West Oak Newburgh with uh, approaching two minutes to play here in the first half. Wick crosses over, floats, no good. Rebound, Laura kept it alive. Cleared by Broughton. Wants to go against Batke. Spins, oh, and he got tangled up. Ooh, that's, that's hard, because he had great defense. Batke forced him to spin back to the middle, and when he did, the legs got tangled up, and as an official, what do you do? You, don't, you almost have to call it, even though if you looked at the replay, you probably would have noticed that it was more the two quick feet that you kind of he got his feet tangled up and as opposed to a foul. Broughton shoots the bonus and he knocks down the first. That's two on Batke too. Defense today's game also brought to you in part by Planet Pizza. Probably serving the Magic City for 25 years. The largest laser tag playground in the region. You could call them at 852-1700. Planet Pizza is out of this world. Ten points for Walker Broughton. Well on his way to another 25 plus point game. It's, it's almost a quiet 10. It, it? I, it, I was totally going to say that TD. Because it just he's done nothing spectacular. Batke just about drew his third on an offensive foul. Yeah. But instead he gets a block call whistled on Tolstead. Yeah he's got two. Tolstead has two. LeMay has two for West Hope Newburgh. And that was, that was danger right there TD. Aggressive play going at the defense. Well, he's a good Batke. free throw shooter there. Yep, swish. You can see it's four for four. You just watch kids 
walk up there confidently and just got a great stroke. Just you want to watch somebody shoot free throws right there. That's he has done a little bit at the Casey hoop shooter you call TD. Yeah, he's <laughs> He's probably got a couple trophies. Uh, he may missed one already. Did I he mean, really? So, Where do you? Oh, maybe he did. No, he did not. Uh, okay, he made it. So he's he's smooth. I was gonna say was five for five. Five for five. Okay, well that's <laughs> that qualifies for the case. Does it? Shoot. Yep. Okay. <laughs> It'll get you in at least the semis. Broughton forces one up. Oh, he went up and got the rebound. Blocked from behind on Wick. Broughton now kicks it out. Hawkins has it. He's quadruple teamed. Gets it out to Leesman. Straight away, Juntinen stops and pops in the lane and scored it. Good ball movement there by the Sioux, and then a take up top. Maddox Juntinen has his first two. Wick double team. Oh, that's a good find right there. Oh, oh but Sage missed the bunny. He's he's done getting back on D. He's mad at himself. That's one you better sprint back on defense, Todd. Not be the last guy down after you miss one of those. Broughton trailing to play for three. Actually, Sage contested that. <laughs> yeah, if he'd have gave up that three, that was his guy. Boy, he, he might have got the yank by head coach John Ward. <laughs> Tate S Sage. Sit by me for a little while. <laughs> Sage just said to the coaches, take me out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wick forces oh. one up and scored it. Contorted his body and finished it. Yeah, he was kind of leaning with that left shoulder under uh, too far ahead and somehow looked up. So he was had some room, spun it up on the glass. Four point lead for the Sioux with under 30 seconds to play here in the first half. Juntinen on the weave. They come up, talk to Walker Broughton. He wants to go, tries to cross over, can't. Leaves it for Arts. Down to 10. Back to Broughton. Let's uh, so just clear the runway right here. It's gonna clean out the top. Couple guys trying to hedge in there and help. Broughton just pulls a deep three oh, off the back iron. And that's the way the first half will go into the books. Back and forth, entertaining action. Game two from the Dale Brown Classic at the MSU Dome has West Hope Newburgh with a lead of four at the break. Our premier chiropractic halftime report comes up next. BNC Bank scoreboard at halftime, West Hope Newburgh 29, Hazen 25. magic of what we do really comes down to combining different aspects of patient care. Here at Premier Chiropractic, we love combining soft tissue work, the adjustment, and exercises together. We found that this gets the best results for our patients. We have three chiropractors to fit the needs of the entire family, a rehab area for our exercises and equipment for any athlete to improve performance. Give us a call and we will get you back to doing what you love. Are you moving your business or your home across the town or across the country? We know it can be stressful. To ensure your possessions arrive on time, intact and on budget, make your move with Jobbers Moving and Storage. Jobbers can help you with every aspect of your move. With our efficient step-by-step -step approach to move management, we can tailor a plan to suit your needs and schedule. With locations in Bismarck, Fargo, Minot and Aberdeen, Jobbers Moving and Storage is your choice. Visit JobbersWarehouse.com. It's Jobbers. Moving in storage. I'm a grateful person on a lot of levels. I've been given so many great opportunities. But most of all, even as a little kid, I was taught a set of values. Like tools for life, hard work, responsibility, and the key to making it all work, commitment. First Western Bank and Trust. You can bank on us. Ackerman Svold, your neighbors, friends, and family who are working for you. The local team with local availability and accountability for all of your engineering, architecture, environmental, transportation, and land development needs. Your project can rely on Ackerman Svold. Find them online at ackermansvold.com. When you start your project, talk with Ackerman Surveying and Associates. Our experienced surveying team guides you in the right direction with planning, planning, and lot and boundary surveys. The trusted name in land surveying, the trusted name in architecture and engineering is Ackerman Survey and Ackerman Svold. Find them at AckermanSvold.com. What you're witnessing actually happens. This is a sad story about bad math. 
Bad math. Does your online company include mounting? You can't beat the online pricing. When you add the mounting, the shipping, and all the extras, it's just simple math. We guarantee the lowest prices. Our Plus Plan is simply better, a less expensive way to buy tires. Thinking tires, think tires plus. Todd Domery's Chuck Claremont. Good to have Nick Holberg pushing the buttons for us today on the PSP Network. We're back on our premier chiropractic halftime report where they're focused on improving the health of the Minot and surrounding areas to the most cutting edge advances in natural health care today. In case you missed the final in game one today, Stanley defeats TGU 60 to 30 here in game two. West Hope Newburgh leads by four, 29-24 at, or 25, 29-25, easy for me to say at halftime here. And uh, let's take a look at the uh, remainder of the schedule for today here at the Dale Brown Classic. Of course, you got Velva and St. John coming up next. Should be a great matchup in game four. Four wins in Trinity. That's kind of the game that stood out to me right away when you, um, when you looked at this thing. I thought that was going to be really good, as is that second to last game. Shiloh and Thompson, a matchup of ranked teams there as well. Those are the couple of highlighted games that I picked out right away. Oh, yeah. Shiloh or four wins number one. I'm getting all 14 votes. Uh, by the media and then Trinity getting some votes too so that's going to be like you said a good one and then boy you go Shiloh 4 Thompson 7 two undefeated teams uh, we will be listening to that one TD probably yep. be on our way uh, back to Bismarck as we just got the first three but yeah that's that's those two are the ones you kind of pick out but the powers like Buell you never know how that could be that could be kind of a mutter potentially well and you're, you're going to see some great athletes too I mean uh, four wins Minnewakan has got Deng Deng is one of the best athletes in the state. Tyson Engett for Powers Lake Burke Central is a great player. The leading returning scorer in Class B boys basketball. Shiloh and Thompson got some great athletes. And then Dane Hangler for, from uh, North Star is one of the best around. So you're going to see a lot of great uh, players today and teams for that matter as we have the entire round here of the Dale Brown Classic. And then we more for our attention tomorrow. Uh, we've got seven more for you starting at 11 o'clock tomorrow, the Hoopster Classic. Uh, I guess any games that jump off the page for you there uh, in the in the matchups tomorrow, Chuck? Uh, the Ryan Thompson, that those that could be surely a good one. As yep. Ryan's gotten uh, their number three, Thompson's number seven. So uh, Thompson's got two, uh, the number three, number four teams. So they're going to have, a, so speaking of a good back-to-back, -back, you know, basketball games, uh, that's one there too. And, you know, I, I look at this West Hope Newberg team, and they've impressed the heck out of me. Mm -hmm. They're going to give Shiloh everything they got to handle. Now, Shiloh with Wanzik in the middle, yep. I mean, they got a, he's, a, he's a difference maker. We haven't seen anybody like that in terms of taking up space like he does, uh, inside out guy, Shiloh. I and mean, he's kind of a one guy. Those That's the two games there, the Shiloh, West Hope, Newberg, and, and then the uh, Ryan Thompson that stand out to me. I'm curious to see game three, DLB getting yeah. their, their pieces back together and getting uh, Carson Yale back in action. And you'll see Trinity today and tomorrow in the uh, uh, the Shobes and uh, Kovash uh, lead them, a uh, team that was at the state tournament a couple years ago. And so that should be a good matchup, I think, as well. Yeah, you talk about DLB. I mean, they slaughtered Stanley 73-36 in their opening game. So obviously a DLB team, uh, they're, they're just forced to be reckoned with. They're 2-1. and one. They got some votes in the poll. Did you, did you vote, vote for them, TD? Uh, I, have, you? I have not voted for DLB, no. Okay. Not yet. <laughs> We're not supposed to disclose that. Oh, hey, I'm I, sorry. I, 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 didn't I wanna, just did. Was it inside information <laughs> that? Uh, <laughs> and then, of course, we got the Mandan Holiday Tournament. Uh, this should be good. Is uh, if you're not familiar with those mascots and those teams, uh, from left to right, Glen Ellen Heber and the Bearcats will be uh, playing in Mandan. You got the Flasher Bulldogs, the Surrey Mustangs, Linton HMB Lions, the Wilton Wing Miners, the Botno Braves, Standing Rock Warriors, and the New Salem Elmont Holsteins. As that should be good. Uh, we get it started with Wilton Wing and Glen Ellen Hebron at 3 o'clock tomorrow, followed by Flasher and Surrey. Linton and Botno is the first game of the evening session, and the nightcap is Standing Rock and uh, New Salem Elmont. So, and all four of them, TD, you and I. Should be a great day tomorrow from the Mandan Holiday Tournament. As we said uh, last game, if you don't like Class B boys basketball, you might as well not tune it into the, the PSP network the next couple days because we got everything uh, here at the Dale Brown Classic, the Hoopster tomorrow, and we'll simulcast as well, bring you the Mandan Holiday Tournament as well uh, on the, uh, streaming live on YouTube on the PSP network. I love that look. 
the end zone? That end zone look is such a good <laughs> camera feed. That is so awesome. All right, Chuck, while we're here on our premier chiropractic halftime show, Drs. Kirk Mason, Dr. Cody Haugen, Dr. <laughs> Becky, Becky perry Domries can be found at premierchiropracticnd.com. Let's run through the halftime numbers. All right, for the Hayes and Bison, they were led by Talon Batke, their leading scorer, 24 points a game. Oh, well, he's right there. He's got 12 halfway through. He's got a three. He's five for five from the free throw line. He got a couple other buckets for his 12 points. Six for Case and Kaler. Five for Tyson Wick, a three and a two. And then Van Inwagen, who's played a good defensive game today, he's got two points for their 25. For the West Hope Newburgh Sioux, they were led in scoring by Walker Broughton. Just one for seven from outside the arc, though, as uh, he finished with 10 points and double figures. But it's volume shooting for Walker Broughton. He's made five of six free throws, a two and then a three for his 10. Six each for Dalton Hawkins and Hunter Tolstead. Five for Will Arts, a three and a two. And then Maddox Juntinen has a bucket as they lead 29-25. I mean, it's been close throughout. That's what's good. This game has been kind of back and I don't say back and forth. It's been uh, the, the, a lead. West Hope got a lead early on. They went up 12-8, and then it's kind of been that four to six points kind of stuck right on that number as uh, now they lead at halftime 29-25. to Second half comes up next. Thanks to Premier Chiropractic for bringing your halftime. 29-25. West Hope Newburgh leads as we get set for the third quarter after this break on the PSP Network. from Vibetta Orthodontics. Vibetta Orthodontics is a certified Invisalign provider. Invisalign fits your budget and your lifestyle. Braces for children, teens, and adults with affordable monthly payments. Schedule your complimentary consultation and exam by logging on to vibettaorthodontics.com or by calling 701-839-6010. Great smiles come from Vibetta Orthodontics. In southwestern and south central North Dakota on any given day at any given moment, a Dakota Community Bank and Trust customer is logging in or signing on to do their online or mobile banking. We believe that community banking can blend both the past with down-home customer service in-house and the future with modern banking conveniences and technology for our customers anywhere, like here or here, all while honoring our long-standing tradition of community-first oriented banking here at Dakota Community Bank and Trust. Many of our clients come to us already accomplished in their lives and on the right track. However, whether it's in response to a life-changing event or you are nearing retirement, you can sleep well knowing that together we have planned for both life's opportunities and challenges. And no matter what happens, we are here to help guide you. Back in action. Get an early whistle. I don't know what that was about. Not Maybe either. the shot clock. I don't think started right away. Okay. So the had the, there had been six seconds had gone off, but the shot clock was at 33. So the math doesn't sh work. Should have been at 29. Yep. <laughs> there you go. So we get a restart. Hazen has the basketball in their green uniforms outlined in white. Double staggered screen. Here comes Batke floating a shot up. Nicely done. Degree of difficulty there, about a 9.4 as he came off a screen. As you mentioned, he wasn't open from the three TD, but went right at the rack. Pulled up from six, nice little floater. And now Batke with a takeaway. Here comes a two on one with Wick. Batke lost the handle of it, has to go up, drew some contact, no call. Good one on one defense there by Walker yeah. Broughton. Batke's just got a glide to him. He does. He? I, yeah. I mean, that's why I say I watch his father. It's kind of his, his dad had that too. Yep. Now he picks up the offensive charge on Broughton. Right on cue. We're just talking about him, and he draws a charge. Looks like Hazen might have switched it up. They yeah, they put, did. Put Badke on uh, Broughton for a while, and those yep. take turns. Kind of like uh, tag team wrestling. Hey, you got him the first <laughs> half. I'll take him the second. <laughs> you watched that TD back in the day? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the crusher and... <laughs> Straight on three off the feet from Batke. Sage, no good. Kaler, no, nope, excuse me, Wick battling. Couldn't finish it, but Tyson Wick. Oh, they call a shuffle the puppies. Yeah, he tried to do a drop step, and instead of getting called for a foul, I think he got wedged out from 
Will Arts, I mean, kind of the, the knee underneath. Well, if you don't call that one, yeah, whew. you should you should have called the one on Batke a couple seconds yeah, before that. Yeah, that right. Double screen up high for Hawkins. Oh, poke checked away from behind. Now here comes Wick with an easy breakaway layup. Everybody wanted a dunk. He said, nope, we're just going to do a nice lay in after the poke check away by Batke. Four straight for the Bison, and we're tied at 29. Good one brewing here in game two from the Dale Brown Classic. Walker Broughton forcing the issue. Good help there by Kaler, and Broughton has to save it off of Case and Kaler. You know, we haven't even talked about the game Walker Broughton had in football. Oh, yeah. The, uh, the 70 to 66 win over Divide County. I mean, that's a legendary game, TD. We can't get by without that one. We'll have to hit that one on a break. 300, let's go into it right now. Okay. 300 plus yards rushing and six touchdowns. Over 200 yards passing and two more touchdowns. 500 yards of total offense and eight touchdowns. That's ridiculous. That's a game. That's a, that's a career for some guys. Oh, <laughs> I mean, that's just unbelievable. Talk about willing your team to victory. Yeah. And then, as we mentioned, you know, the next week, they didn't put up quite those kind of video game numbers against North Prairie. But still a good run for the Sioux in football. Hazen misfires on a couple chances on the other end. Hawkins thought about a three, got an itchy trigger. Now he's double tier, has to pick up his dribble. And is that a five count? Nope. Quick timeout. Asked for and received by Anthony Lee. I think this is a short timeout. If it is, if it is, we're just going to keep it right here. Yep, short timeout. Get a chance to tell you that today's game brought to you in part by Jersey Mike's. You can vote for this week's Jersey Mike's Player of the Week on the PSP Network Facebook page. Jersey Mike's is a sub above. Today's game also brought to you in part by Prestwich Orthodontics. They offer free consultations, financing options to make it easy to take your smile to the next level. Visit MinotBraces.com today. And our scoreboard is always brought to you by BNC National Bank. Locations in North Dakota, Minnesota, Arizona. BNC National Bank provides you with banking and wealth management services for your business and family. Visit BNC Bank online today at bnc.bank. Tied up at 29. West Hope Newberg on the floor. They had Will Arts, Dalton Hawkins, Morgan LeMay, Walker Broughton, and they tried to lob it down low to oh, Maddox Chuntonen, and guys got tangled up and went down hard. That's like looked like a guy was a sack as Kate Case and Kaler on that lob all the way to the opposite side on the out of bounds play. I mean, Broughton caught it as a quarterback, and the defensive end brought him down. <laughs> yeah, maybe tangled it up was a little too gentle for uh, that one. Yeah. Broughton looks for a roller in Lemay. Now Juntonen flies into the lane, shot fakes and hits. That was a wing and a prayer right there for for Maddox Junton and his little jump stop and last minute decide to, decides to fade away. Batke, oh nice pass, layup good. Yeah. Sage on the fun side. And you know Batke, he is so unselfish. Could have went into uh, taking a layup by himself. Instead, the guy trailing Sage. Right side three ball, short for Juntonen. Flat-footed rebound to Tate Sage. And here comes Hazen. Bison haven't had a lead. As there goes Wick slipping through the defense, and he got hit. I think Couldn't. it's going to be a Broughton, wasn't it, Todd? As Broughton came down to help out on that one. Yep. Yeah. Good move by uh, Wick. Second foul on Walker Broughton. So you got to talk about Aaron Wick, or his dad, Aaron Wick. And you talk about fathers. You yeah, know, he, I mean, he, good I, basketball player, obviously, for Carrington, but the, he'd known for what? The state championship with? Yeah, played for one of the legendary teams in North Dakota, coached by Jim Jeske. Oh, yeah. And uh, Jimmy Kleinsaucer, Aaron Wick, uh, led the Carrington Cardinals to state title back in 1995. His dad went on to play at Minot State. Yes, indeed. Big, tall drink of water. Yeah, he play, play, played against him. A few times in amateur basketball, it's a little younger than me, but Hazen has a lead. Now of two is Tyson Wick strokes home two free throws. Seven points for him. They're led by Batke's 14. Hawkins tries to hand it off to Walker Broughton. Now he's cornered, gets it way up top to Hawkins again. Wick almost took it away. He did take it away. Now you got 
Wick leaving it for Riley Walters. Back in, now it's taken away by Walker Broughton, who throws it off of a foot. Now he gets it up ahead, Tolstead layup good. He can't make that up. That was purposeful. He threw it off the foot a, ahead of the, on a haze and buys and went right back to him, and he gets the assist and the layup to Tolstead. 4.18 to play third quarter, tied up at 33. Misfired straight on three for Wick. Rebound comes down to Broughton. Gives it off to Arts. Open, Hawkins for three. No, short. Rebound, Tate Sage. I'm watching, they're rotating. There's been four different guys that has guarded Brott in the second half. What? I didn't catch what that was. I didn't either. It was like 21 something. Okay. Is there a 21 plan right now? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They didn't put any points on the board. They didn't put any fouls up or anything. So you get Batke on a post up. Forces a shot up, went up and got a rebound. Still wants to go up, and now you're going to get a hook. Oh <laughs> man, that's that's <laughs> you don't see that one. That's blackout right there. You 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 get called for the hook on after a great offensive rebound, but it's probably pretty blatant. The official was right there underneath the basket. You know what I mean? When you're probably taking that left hand, reaching around, grabbing the guy, it's probably pretty blatant. Tolstead banging his way into a shot, missed it, got it back, scored it. Tolstead, he is, he's relentless. 10 points with his freshman. He's always around the basket. I mean, he, I wouldn't call him a big leaper, but he just gets good position. Yeah, I like his game. He, he, he get a 10 second call on Hazen. Somehow, with no pressure, the Bison couldn't get it over the timeline in 10 seconds. Hey, one thing to note here, Todd, that was the third personal foul on Talon Batke, that offensive reach or, you know, reach around, if you want to call it. Yep. Or, or I guess not necessarily a reach around, a pin. Broughton Ooh. streaking through. There's Tolstead ripping it away. Got it cleaned out, though. Dawkins thought about a three. Oh, wide open, Tolstead. Oh, he just about missed it, but it fell in. <laughs> he almost dolphin armed that one, <laughs> but somehow got it to roll over the rim. But yeah, good find as he was wide open under the basket. That key double team steps through it, comes near side. In wagon, thought about a three, comes in the corner. Newly into the game is Jaron Reinhardt. He misfires. Back comes Hawkins. Oh, and Hawkins couldn't get it to Walker Broughton. A little bit too big a hurry there. We're the Sioux. Yeah, and Batke picked him up. I think he was, thought he was going to have a free flow across the end line or the half court line, and Batke was right there, forced that turnover. Hazen That's... had taken a lead, and now the Sioux have rattled off six straight. 37 33. West Oak Newberg on top by four here with two and a half to play in the third quarter. Batke slips into the defense. Ooh, they, got a, that's just, they call an offensive charge on that one. That'd be four. Well, he got hit before the charge. Okay. Everybody was kind of standing there, didn't know what he was going to do. The official made that one pretty dramatic as he kind of, you know, shuffled to the side, went up the sidelines, kind of waited like, what is he going to call? Hunter Tolstead gets his third personal foul. Got him on the arm before the charge. Okay. And Batke at the free throw line oh, off the back yeah. iron. We just talked about him. Bit of a free throw shooter he is, and he misses one. Tay Sage back in. Morgan LeMay on for West Hope Newberg. Second one, Batke gets the drop. 15 points now for Batke, leads the way for the Bison. Three point game, Broughton slams on the brakes, gives it off to Hawkins. Leesman. Back to Broughton. Catch, shoot, no good. One for eight. Extra pass and a rebound attempt. Three-pointer by Hawkins, no good. LeMay banging inside. Back outside to Arts. Third chance now for the Sioux. West Hope Newberg, high post, LeMay. Backs his way in, inside out. Ooh. Leishman, no good. I thought he was gonna bank that one in TD and hit the backboard. <laughs> I don't, how, I don't know. He was about right in the baseline. Sage from the left side for three. Straight on, no good. Wick rebounds, splits through, scores. I like Wick's game. We talked about him on the way up, and he is, he's just relentless. Got the, that rebound went right at the basket, scores. He's got 11. 
One point game again. Straight on deep three for Arts, no good. Wick rebounds, Hazen's got a three on two if they hurry. Batke on the right side and he stepped out of bounds. Oh. <laughs> Coach was right there, he looked at his assistant Greg and said, was he out? And he kind of nodded, he said he was, he touched the end line. Hey, you, you can't really get mad at guys because you preach all the time, get wide, get yeah. wide on those fast breaks. Yeah. Just not quite that wide. And not outside the black line. Hawkins attacks, missed the shot. Batke picked away from behind by Hawkins. I like this Hawkins game. Three-pointer oh. for Broughton, finally knocks one down. Well, what do shooters do, TD? They keep shooting. They keep shooting, and <laughs> he's, he's catching. There is no lack of confidence for the sophomore Walker Broughton with 13 points now. Wick off a screen. Oh, nice leave on the pick and roll, but Kaler couldn't finish it. West Hope Newberg by four. Hawkins from the right wing. Broughton, now well, you better get on him. After that first one goes in, yeah, no doubt. now he's gonna go around the defense, lay up, good, count it! And he got hit on the head. The and one for Walker Broughton. Well, Kaler wasn't gonna be beat by the step back, but this time he kept control of the dribble and the step back and then blew by. Kaler drew the foul, got the English. Get the basket to go in. 15 now. He's going to get to 25 TD before the game's up. I just like his game, though. He's just, just kind of how he obviously must have how he played football. Case and Kaler just picked up his third personal as Walker Broughton gets the old fashioned three point play. All three the second half, too. Half a minute to play here in the third quarter, and West Hope Newberg leads by seven. Walters. Hand back to Wick. Walters, reversal, in wagon. Extra pass, Sage. Look inside to Kaler instead. Come to Wick. Sage, Kaler, corner three ball, off the iron. Long rebound, in wagon. Down to three, down to two. Do they know it? Down to one? Sage knew it, but that was not good clock recognition no. there at the end of the third for the Bison. Nice finish to the third quarter for the West Hope Newburgh Sioux. 43-36, West Hope Newburgh on top at the end of three. Fourth quarter is next on the PSP Network. This broadcast on the PSP Network is proudly brought to you by... The right way to top a sub is with real red wine vinegar made from red grapes and no food coloring. And the right way to film it is in slow motion, obviously. Because authentic ingredients make a sub above. Uh, happy holidays, hope you're enjoying our broadcast today. Wall to wall coverage for you, the Dale Brown Classic, tomorrow's Hoopster Classic. And I got the Mandan Holiday Tournament to boot Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Just two games in the books here. This one's been a good one. West Hope Newburgh leads 43-36 here at the end of three quarters. See if the Hazen Bison can mount a run. Happy to have Coach Nick Walker. Speaking of teams that have battled against Hazen in the past, right? Coach Nick Walker, they were his Bowman County team. Yep. Was Duff the one who knocked them off to get to state. The Duffield Twins. Now he's at Kildare. Hazen, man-to-man -man defense starting the fourth quarter here. Hawkins for three. No. Arts rebounds. He's double teamed. Fires it up top to Walker Broughton. Oh, nice poke check away. And here comes Talon Batke. Oh, he let the defense fly by. Slams on the brakes and puts it in. A little top gun move there by Batke. I'm going to put on the reverse thrusters and let him fly by. Broughton, he could feel him coming in from behind, and he just flew right by him. You're going to do what? <laughs> <laughs> 17 now for Talon. Good contest by Tate Sage on the Mor 
Maddox Junton in shot. Hazen has a stop after scoring a hoop. Batke from the left wing. Goes to Sage, feeling it for three. Missed Ooh, everything. Man, he was feeling his head down right away. <laughs> Tate, you got to get, get that figured out. Batke almost has a steal. Wick tips it ahead, fires it now to Batke, and now he wants to attack. Shot fake, goes up, missed the shot, got it back, put it up and in. It's unselfish play, a couple extra passes got down to Batke, misses the first bunny, but got the rebound and maneuvered his way in for a layup. Hazen defense says dig in as they have trimmed this West Hope Newburgh lead to three. Walker Broughton comes off the screen. They leave LeMay down low, got it. Yeah, lazy defense on that one as somehow LeMay was wide open as they were double teaming on the ball side. First bucket for Morgan LeMay, the junior. 45-40. West Hope Newburgh by five. Kaler. In wagon, Hazen's really playing yeah. five out right now. Yep. There's not much movement, just a bunch of guys standing around. Batke has to pull up and create. No good. Kaler rebound, score. Long rebound on that tough shot by Batke, but Kaler was right there for the cleanup. Walker Broughton pull up free throw line area jumper. No good. Tipped up by Lemay. Rebound cleared by Sage. See if Hazen make sure they get it over the timeline before. <laughs> Court screaming on that one. He almost, almost didn't get it again. John Ward had to call a Hubbard National Insurance Jeez. timeout to avoid a second 10-second call with no press on. 45-42, West Hope Newburgh on top by three, and we're back. Fourth quarter action from the Dale Brown Classic. Really thinking about the shots, honestly, it just the shots came to me. Derek and Eric especially had some great drives, you know, which led some great kicks. Shout out to them. You know, it feels good. For you to come out here from a defensive effort against Eagle Staff, I mean, you're way smaller than him. Obviously, I mean, how did you get yourself pumped up for that? Well, you know, Coach, that's the thing that says, height doesn't matter your heart, and I strongly believe in that, you know, I got the heart. And it doesn't matter if I got the height or not. That line, good luck next week. Yeah, thank you. All right, great job. I don't have the height, but I got the heart. That was a pretty cool sign right there by Jagger Gundo. Back up to you guys. Yes, and now... The right way to top a sub is with real red wine vinegar made from red grapes and no food coloring. And the right way to film it is in slow motion, obviously. Because authentic ingredients make a sub above. If it's fire damage, Agent Fred Iyer. From burnt to unburnt, he does that. Good one brewing here from the MSU Dome. Good to have you tuned in to the Dale Brown Classic here on the PSP Network. Hazen gets a handoff to Batke. Searching and probing the lane and there's gonna be another block call as Hawkins was in the restricted area. He tried to come over and help out, uh, draw the offensive charge on Batke, but set play on the uh, for that timeout to Batke coming off a, a pickup high. Same play happened before as he, he's got a chance to shoot the three, but they definitely overplayed him for that one. So he took it to the basket. Talon Batke to the serve pro free throw line. They got trained technicians, advanced technology, fire and water and cleanup restoration. It's serve pro. Batke. 21 now. Sticks both those free throws. Eight for nine from the free throw line. Cuts it to a one point game. Open three ball for Hawkins, no good. Batke rebounds. Back comes Hazen. Talon Batke, and he traveled. So if he'd have shot that one, TD, you think he'd have called it on him? <laughs> I mean, you know, I, I don't know. I think if he'd have put if he'd have put it up, yeah, I think the official might have let that one go. Got John Ward in his ear saying, I think that's just a Euro step, isn't it? It just it just looked odd. It you did. know what I mean? It, it, it looked like it's an extra step. It looked like it was. I, NBA, that's surely not a call. Leesman. Hazen has cranked it up out of this timeout now. They are down by a one. Sue lead by a point. Hawkins off the high screen and roll. Gets it off to Arts. 
Will spins in against Batke. Deep three, Leesman missed everything. Tolstead rebounds and scores. The freshman's got two more. Assist by Hawkins, or a whiff. <laughs> or not Hawkins, uh, Leesman, excuse me, but you're right. Right there was Tolstead. Quick step around the defense there by Kaler, and they're gonna be a reach in. And I think they got Hawkins. It's just funny, Tolstead. He's only 6-1. Yep. But man, he is just around the basket. Just good position, smart young kid. 14 points for him. He had 10, 4, and 7 in the first three games of the season. Wick off the old number two inbounds play. Comes to Kaler. Open is Sage. Right side three ball, short. Long rebounds to Lesman and West Hope Newberg has a sideline fast break. Tipped out of bounds by Sage. You know, again, it just feels like I keep looking up thinking Hazen's ahead. You know, here's the thing about Tolstead's baskets today. They've all come at great times. They have. You yeah. know, it's been, it seems like Hazen's kind of just creeping back into it. going to take a lead, and then here comes Hunter Tolstead again. Whether he makes one inside or whether it's an offensive rebound. Yep. And he's, he's just been around the basket. Leesman turns the corner. Broughton catch and shoot for three. No. Rebound to Kaler. Wick on the fast break. Bodied up there by Braun. Kaler has it. Gets a screen from Laura. Batke now between the rings. Gets a high screen. Batke still attacking, shooting, scoring. Who faked it to the baseline. Guy Sage, and it got the defense just looking the other way. Walker Broughton, who almost had it taken away. So who are they going to get the foul on? Because it was Kaler came from behind and knocked it away. Call on oh, a, I don't like that call, TD. Oh, they called it on Wick. Wick's going, what? Yeah, I don't like that call at all. I thought that just was good defense. Good hustle. Yeah, good hustle. He knocked it out of bounds. I mean, let it go. Arts, kick out Hawkins. Good look at a three. Back iron, no good. Good weak side box yeah. out there for Sage and Hazen. Down by one. That's, Wick likes taking his time getting it over the timeline. Yeah, he does. He made, it, he made it by a second there again. Sage open for three in the lead. Off the iron oh. once, twice. Laura battling. And you're going to get a timeout. Both, both coaches were calling for timeout. Yep. Anthony Lee is the one who gets the Hub International Insurance timeout. Your local Hub agents, Josh Cattell, Michael Borm, you can contact them at 355-3100 for your personal and business insurance needs. Keep it right here, West Oak Newburgh by one. The magic of what we do really comes down to combining different aspects of patient care. Here at Premier Chiropractic, we love combining soft tissue work, the adjustment and exercises together. We found that this gets the best results for our patients. We have three chiropractors to fit the needs of the entire family, a rehab area for our exercises and equipment for any athlete to improve performance. Give us a call and we will get you back to doing what you love. It's water. Boom. Agent Winston Otter. He's been called the human sponge. If it's fire damage, Agent Fred Iron. From burnt to unburnt, he does that. West Hope Newberg has led just about at every break by yeah. three at first quarter, four at halftime. And now it's a one point contest. West Hope Newberg 47, Hazen 46 on your BNC National Bank scoreboard. And now you get an offensive foul on Will Arts. And just great defense by Batke. Even with those three personal fouls, he was all over Dalton Hawkins. Or it wasn't Hawkins, it was Arts, right? Yeah, Will Arts. Arts. So that goes up as a turnover, so 11 turnovers in the game. Not too bad. This has been a pretty well-played game. Batke gets a post-up, kind of double-teamed. 
Fakes it to Sage, slips through one, two, three defenders, and Batkey gives Hazen a lead. Oh, he's crafty. He was double teamed and just spun to the middle. Will Arts on the other end, contested by the Bison. He missed it. That was Batkey who contested it. <laughs> Wick's got her in road gear coming up the court. Oh, you don't have her in overdrive. No. Almost a steal by Broughton. Wick has it. Open in wagon. Extra pass yeah, Sage. Not even close he to him. He didn't want to take it. Wick gets a screen from Batke. Wick thought about a free throw line area. Hand back from Sage. Wick has it with five to shoot. In wagon from the corner for three. No. Rattles off the iron. Tolstead rebounds. Fires it cross court to Broughton. Hawkins might have shuffled the puppies there. Way up top to Brat. Pass tip there by Mark Laura. As they're almost double teaming Broughton off of Leesman. Broughton gets a high screen, doesn't use it. Leaves it on the baseline. Leesman tipped by Inwagen. Broughton had a hand on a rebound. Leesman, Laura battling. And you get another timeout quickly there for Anthony Lee of West Hope Newburg. Leesman on the ground, nice hustle there. Hub International Insurance brings you this time on the court. Hub is a leading North American insurance brokerage. 48-47, Bison by a point. Back with this one after this break on the PSP Network. Right, right Bank can be transformative for your small business. The best bank for your business will offer competitive fees and so much more. At BNC National Bank, our team is proud to offer you a helpful, supportive, above and beyond banking relationship. Starting to stress about the complexities of qualifying for a small business loan? BNC can guide you through the process with much less stress and likely far more success. Speak to one of our team members today. One oh six to play. Hazen leads by one. West Hope Newburgh coming with their best set out of the timeout, and that's all they can get is a shot off the side of the backboard. They only had a few seconds to shoot it, but that's not quite the execution I think that Anthony Nee was looking for there. No. Force three by Will Arts <laughs> after the timeout. Hazen by a point. Oh, and they throw it oh, away. Oh man. Coaches are just perplexed by that one. As Wick, usually he keeps the basketball. I don't think Kaler was expecting that one. And he wasn't really pressured that much. I no. mean, it was kind of some token pressure, but turnover there. Broughton gets it to Tostead. Pinballs off a couple guys, and they call a charge. Tostead trying to drop step right into Kaler. I think it was either a charge or a travel. Yeah, it had to be one of those. I, th I think that's... The turnover resulted is okay. Well, now you get a timeout. Be a full timeout. We'll take a break. 48 47, Hazen by a point. We're back with the finish of this one on the PSP network. All right, bring it up, bring it up. Come on, come on, come on. Someone's got to call a play. All right, let's go. I ride Zoom, Spider 2 Y Banana. You don't like that one, okay? I ride 40 Power. You don't want that one either? Yes. All right, go kick off. Get out of here, let's go. First Western is your independent community bank with all the online conveniences you want and an experienced team you can count on. First Western Bank and Trust. You can bank on us. If it's fire damage, Agent Fred Iyer. From burnt to unburnt, he does that. All right, bring it up, bring it up. Come on, come on, come on. Someone's got to call a play. All right, let's go. I ride Zoom, Spider 2 Y Banana. You don't like that one, okay. I ride 40 Power. Wow. You don't want that one either? Yes. All right, go kick off. Get out of here, let's go. First Western is your independent community bank with all the online conveniences you want and an experienced team you can count on. First Western Bank and Trust. You can bank on us. Hazen into the front court. Bison lead by a point, about an eight second differential, make it about a seven second differential between the game clock and the shot clock. Now the Bison will go. Batke 
They're double teaming them. They give it off to Wick. Sage in Wagon, corner three ball. Oh, bang! First bucket of the second half since the first quarter. Now you're going to get a timeout. They're going to put some time back on the clock here. As Ryland Van Inwagen Jeez. just knocked down a huge three for the Hazen Bison. I mean, it was the dribble show by Batke, and then a quick reversal from Tate Sage to Inwagen. Inwagen, he's missed that shot, same shot about three times in the game already. Um, and bat, <laughs> one, I mean, one was almost a bank from the side. And so w what a great way to step up, averaging just three a game, only one three in the season in three games. And he hits the biggest shot of his career probably. <laughs> yeah. I mean, didn't put him ahead, but it might have put him ahead to to stay. Uh, I'm just, I'm looking to see what they're, I think they're trying to put seven seconds on there. It says seven minutes, but um, obviously 7.1 seconds, there we go. You knew there was going to be some extra time on there because after Van Inwagen made the shot for the Bison, West Hope Newberg immediately called timeout. And now if you're Hazen up by four, just don't foul anybody. I mean, you can contest and everything else, but just get out of the way. Probably apply some token pressure here. And they get it to Broughton moving forward. Hunter Broughton's going to pull up for three. Off the back iron, no good. Broughton's going to lay it in at the buzzer, and that one's going to go final. An entertaining game two goes into the books. As the Hazen Bison win this one, final score on your BNC Bank scoreboard, 51-49. Hazen improves to 3-1 and one on the season. West Hope Newburgh, the Sioux fall to 2-2. Two and two. Welcome you to our planning team financial advisors, Shots Pro Crossroads post game show. Planning team financial advisors helping clients work towards financial freedom and Shots Crossroads. Your post game headquarters you can order online at shotscrossroads.com. Chuck's got John Ward and Talon Batke. Take it away, Chuck. All right, thanks, Todd. Coach, what a battle. I mean, you guys were down the whole game up to seven a couple different times, but just relentless. You wouldn't give up. Yep. Big shot at the end of the game or by your, uh, you know, that three by. Uh, in wagon. Yeah, Van Wagen does a nice job. He, he got himself open, did some different things, and we know they're going to get on Talon and Tyson and those type of things. And, you know, my team, you know, everybody thinks we're just an offensive type of team, but we can get out and play defense when we want to, and we worked hard. And I really appreciate the way the effort the boys played. And we had some tougher things where we kind of was pointing fingers and we came together at the end and did a nice job. So, well, I mean, and you held uh, the other big scorer, Walker Broughton. I mean, he volume score, he might have scored 18, but it took him a lot of shots to get to that. Well, when you got a kid like Tyson Tyson Wick and, and a case in Kaler, those two kids on defense, I mean, their right defense in football is amazing. Their defense on the court is amazing. Those two kids can just get out, flat out, play D. Nice to have good, tough, close games like this this early in the season. Well, nice to play a team like that. That's a very good team. Nice young team there, and they're going to be exciting to watch this year. So that was fun. Congratulations. Good win, Coach. Thank you. Step in here. Great game tonight. I, I, I mean, you were the leader on the floor tonight. You didn't take a lot of shots, but the shots you made were good, and it felt like they were picking you up in the three-point line. You were going to the basket a lot. I, yeah, uh, Dad always told me this year I'm going to be getting chased, so I got to go to the rim, got to be more aggressive. Can't just rely on the three all game. It worked me through that last possession, too, where you got the three. I mean, they hit, you had the basketball a long time. You dribbled the ball down, and they just they were not going to let you shoot. Yeah, I mean, at that point, you just got to take control of the game. They got to foul me. They got to do something. So they, they left our guy open. He knocked it down for a big shot. And for you guys to come out and go against the guy with Broughton scoring 28 points a game, everybody took their turn defensively on him. Yeah, he's a great player. I mean, yeah, he, he plays good. We played better, I guess, but it was a good game. He's a good player. It, I mean, for, for you guys, a, a big win early in the season like this. Oh, yeah. I mean, with the snowstorm and stuff, we basically felt like we had to restart, but we played good today. It was a good win, so, I mean, we got another one tomorrow. Come back. It will be another big win, a big chance tomorrow. Yeah, should be. Should be a good game, so. All right. Congratulations. Great job. All right, TD. That was our... Potential sport clips player of the game, Talon Batke. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's got an odds on chance of potentially having that game high 
25 points, not to let all the cats out of the bag here, but uh, yeah, Talon Batke, you heard from him, the senior standout for the Hazen Bison and their head coach, John Ward. Our post game rolls on from the Dale Brown Classic at the MSU Dome. Final score, BNC Bank scoreboard. Hazen 51, West Oak Newburgh 49. Our post game rolls on after this timeout on the PSP Network. Whether you're looking for a full service financial plan or planning for farm or business succession, Planning Team Financial Advisors is here to help you work toward achieving your financial goals. With locations in Bismarck, Garrison, and Center, our full service team of professionals are dedicated to helping you work towards achieving your financial goals. Visit us online, planningteam.com. Securities offered through LPL Financial, member of Finrun Sipic. Investment advisory services offered through New Edge Advisors, LLC, a registered investment advisor. New Edge Advisors, LLC, and Planning Team Financial Advisors are separate entities from LPL Financial. Oh, easy, easy. I think I'm good. You got my good side, right? <laughs> Not too many lights. I don't want to get fried before my time. <laughs> oh, it's egg-tastic. You never know what dish you're going to end up in. My dream dish is a 99. It's so popular. Me and a fellow egg tag teaming with some crispy golden hash browns. Have you seen those hash browns? Those guys are shredded. <laughs> Throw in some diced ham, onions, and melted cheese. Oh, it's a party for your taste buds. Oh, here comes Chevy. Hold on, Chevy. Did you guys get everything that you needed? 99, here I come. Shots Crossroads. It's an excellent place to eat. It's time for the Shots Crossroads and Planning Team Financial Advisors postgame show. Now for a look at game stats and analysis. Let's go to the postgame show. A nice comeback win for the Hazen Bison. They trailed at the end of one. They trailed at halftime. They trailed at the end of three. Somehow the Bison outscored West Hope Newberg in that fourth quarter to win this one 51-49 in an entertaining game two from the Dale Brown Classic. You got St. John and Velva warming up on the court as we get into more of our post-game show brought to you by Planning Team Financial Advisors. Whether you're looking for a full-service financial plan, planning for farm or business succession, Planning Team Financial Advisors here to help you work towards achieving your financial goals. You can visit them online at planningteam.com and Shots Crossroads. Get filled up on their delicious menu that includes the famous old 99. Order online at shotscrossroads.com. Team buses are always welcome. All right, so I guess final game thoughts. Uh, he's in nice comeback, I guess, but that's all, about all you can say. They just, uh, they hung around, they hung around, they hung around, never let West Hope Newburgh build more than about a three or four or five point lead, and the Bison made the plays down the stretch. Well, I think the one point to make too, as we mentioned it in the pregame, they lost in the regional championship with, they went down on 27 to seven to Bowman County, the run that Bowman County made in that third quarter or fourth quarter against them. This one, they turned it around. They cranked up the defense and played efficient offense. And then Talon Batke took over as they outscored uh, West Hope 15 to six in that last quarter. So it's nice for a coach to see that where, you know, in, in a year older and year more mature with Batke and uh, Wick make a big difference and you know Batke when you got a leader like that in the floor that's the guy you need a closer those are the, the teams that are successful and uh, uh, impressive win for Hazen Bison coach John Ward seems like Batke his blood pressure doesn't get up about, about, about uh, 90 over 40 now when I was interviewing him I was kind of mesmerized by that Charlie Chaplin mustache or whatever else he had going there that, that I, I was looking at that I, usually I lost my train of thought on one of those questions <laughs> that interview didn't come across as well because I was thinking, did you shave it like that on purpose or what was going on with that? <laughs> uh, I didn't, I'm not saying it was a bad looking one. I'm just saying I was just never seen one of those little thin stripped <laughs> mustaches before. Sorry. 
<laughs> All right, it's, it's time now for our move of the game, brought to you by Jobbers Moving and Storage. They can help you move across town or across the country. Locations in Bismarck, Minot, Fargo, and Aberdeen. Find them online at jobberswarehouse.com. Obviously, uh, Batke had some huge plays down the stretch, but I don't think anything was bigger than that no. late three-pointer uh, by the Hazen Bison. And, and uh, you know, knocking that one home was, uh, was none other than Rylan Van Engwegen, and I think that's the leading candidate for our jobbers oh, move of the game. There's no doubt. I mean, at two points up to that point, and uh, just Batke and Sage just recognizing, hey, okay, we're not open. Somebody's got to be wide open, and let's reverse the basketball. Gets in the corner to uh, Riley Van Inwagen, and he hits a huge shot for him to put it uh, un unreachable, basically, at that point. That's your jobbers move of the game. they got locations in Bismarck, Minot, Fargo, and Aberdeen. Find them online at jobberswarehouse.com. All right, before we get to the uh, MVP of the game brought to you by Sport Clips, Chuck, let's run through those uh, final game numbers uh, brought to you by Planning Team Financial Advisors and Shots Crossroads. All right, we'll hit these quick. Walker Broughton, 18 points on volume shooting for him. 14 for Hunter Stolstead, a good game for the freshman. Six for Dawkins, five for Will Arts, four for Maddox Juntis Juntinen, and two for... Morgan LeMay for their total of 49. For the Hazen Bison, it was the 25 of Talon Batke. 10 down the stretch in that big fourth quarter. Also in double figures was Tyson Wick with 11. 8 for Kaysen Kaler. 5 for Ryland Vanenwagen. Uh, none bigger than the 3 uh, late, uh, the last best score of the game. And then Tate Sage had 2 points for their total of 51. They were down, like you said, 17-14 after 1. 29-25, 43-50, 43 43-36. And uh, still down 47-44. They come back and score seven of the last nine points. And uh, the Bison win 51-49. to All right, last thing in our postgame, Chuck, is to give you our Sport Clips player of the game. Sport Clips home of the MVP haircut experience. And today's Sport Clips game MVP is? Uh, Talon Batke have to be. Just great defense with the offense and down the stretch. 25 points for him. He hit the bucket to put him ahead, 48-47. Um, and then he had, uh, if it was hockey, he'd have got an assist. Uh, and then that last pass is one extra pass. He was before that. So Talon Batke, our Sport, Cl Sport Clips MVP of the game. I might have let the cat out of the bag on that one. Uh, when you're coming up to doing your wind sprints up the stairs, I said, yeah, he's probably a leading candidate. Yeah. You know, with his 25 points. Yeah, had uh, to be. Congratulations, Talon Batkey. Sport Clips keeps you looking your best. Check in online with a hairstylist today at sportclips.com. Puts a wrap on game two. Two games are on the books. Your final scores, Stanley defeats TGU 60-30. to And in game two, a final score, the Hazen Bison 51, the West Hope Newburgh Sioux 49. Take a break. We'll come back, turn our attentions to the St. John Woodchucks and... The Velva Aggies will set the stage for that after this timeout on the PSP Network. Hard work, responsibility, and the key to making it all work, commitment. First Western Bank and Trust. You can bank on us. The right way to top a sub is with real red wine vinegar made from red grapes and no food coloring. And the right way to film it is in slow motion, obviously. Because authentic ingredients make a sub above. This broadcast on the PSP Network is proudly brought to you by...
Hi, I'm Agent Simon Irv Pro with CRSF. What is CRSF? We're the Cleanup and Restoration Special Forces. Hoorah! We're SurfPro's first responders to your property's disaster. Admit it, you're no good at handling disaster alone. Like when you got dumped in high school by Janet Fillmore. She married three-time world champion yodeler Jovan Bovich. With the Janet disaster, you didn't have a team. Now, you have a team. Elite Surf Pro operatives highly trained in disaster cleanup and restoration. If it's fire damage, Agent Fred Iyer. From burnt to unburnt, he does that. But oh wait, it's water. Boom, Agent Winston Otter. He's been called the human sponge. But Simon, what about mold? Agent Marlon Old. He holds the world record for fastest mold remediation. And finally, Agent Smith. He's in charge of restoring your property to its original state. So if you sprung a leak, lit your curtains on fire, or your insulation looks like weak old bagels, call SurfPro. In southwestern and south central North Dakota on any given day at any given moment, a Dakota Community Bank and Trust customer is logging in or signing on to do their online or mobile banking. We believe that community banking can blend both the past with down-home customer service in-house and the future with modern banking conveniences and technology for our customers anywhere, like here or here, all while honoring our long-standing tradition of community-first oriented banking here at Dakota Community Bank and Trust. Ackerman Svold, your neighbors, friends, and family who are working for you. The local team with local availability and accountability for all of your engineering, architecture, environmental, transportation, and land development needs. Your project can rely on Ackerman Svold. Find them online at ackermansvold.com. When you start your project, talk with Ackerman Surveying and Associates. Our experienced surveying team guides you in the right direction with planning, planning, and lot and boundary surveys. The trusted name in land surveying, the trusted name in architecture and engineering is Ackerman Survey and Ackerman Svold. Find them at ackermansvold.com. Back on our Shields pregame show. Shields dedicated to offering you the best retail experience. They offer clothing, footwear, and gear for all your passions from fishing to fashion. Game three of seven from the MSU Dome in Minot. Todd Darmes, Chuck Claremont in the PSP Network broadcast booth as we get set for the Velva Aggies out of Region 6 and out of Region 4, the St. John Woodchucks. I'll tell you what, I can't get too far into the broadcast. I, I know you followed the Blast of the Past uh, oh, website. Yeah. Yep. 
and uh, they have their nickname and best nickname uh, things. I always vote for the Woodchucks as number one. <laughs> so that's our football team. Woody and I are the Woodchucks. I may, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So no, no stranger <laughs> to you guys. I may say Woodchucks, folks. Just I'm just letting you know right now. It may come out a couple thousand times in the next hour and a half. Not calling it St. John. Nope, it's going to be the Woodchucks. It's going to be the Woodchucks today. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. St. John out of Region 4. They've been tangled up with four wins Minnewaukan over the years uh, trying to get out of that region. But a good ball club comes into town under the direction of Chris Thomas. And uh, the Velva Aggies, uh, their captain and coach in his eighth, six, check that, sixth year is Isaac Sandro uh, for the Velva Aggies. First, Chuck, let's talk about Velva for just a moment. Obviously, a lot of these kids we recognize from the football season. And just a great uh, football run that they had and uh, head coach Larry Sandy's kind of swan song, and now the Aggies bring a, uh, I'll call it a physical, a tough style uh, to the basketball court. Yeah, they talk about, you know, playing ugly. Well, they, what's the, what was the comment? Play so ugly it looks pretty sometimes. Yeah. And I uh, watched a little bit of their one of their games earlier this season, and they just play hard defense. They get in your face. They're tough. They're physical. They're confident group of kids, you know, and it's going to show. It's going to show tonight when you watch this game. And, you know, you mentioned that football championship. That's that's big. There's a lot of these kids, uh, the, the football players, some of them are wrestling, too, that played, uh, that played in that football team. But there's quite a few playing basketball, including their quarterback, Ben Shep, who had a stud game. You got Kyle Sandy, Reggie Bruner cut that long touchdown pass. I mean, multi-sport athletes, and that's one of the keys for Velva is these guys been there, done that. I don't care what sport you're in, Todd. When you get to the biggest stage, like the Dakota Bowl, it gives you confidence in every single sport you play. And I expect to see these guys tonight go against this, uh, you know, undefeated and, and good St. John Woodchuck team who's receiving votes. Uh, that uh, you know, it's a solid basketball team. And it's got, you know, some good kids back from last year's team. Yeah, and uh, I got a nice mix. I mean, uh, Brayton Baker's going to be a kid you're going to hear about. Six foot four, lanky kid, about a 20 point a game scorer. But he, he's not alone. He, no. he has some help on that front line, and they're without uh, Jaden's McLeod. And you know, you talk about the football tradition that Velva has. I would contend that in nine man football, St. John has had a good run in nine man football. We haven't necessarily seen them playing on the biggest stage, but year in and year out, St. John has a good football team. And this year, they got all kinds of two sport athletes that were all region all state in football that are now on the basketball that's team. That's what's so fun about seeing these class B teams is these kids all of them play like you know you're, you're almost forced in a in a good way to play every sport and sometimes in class A you see kids just play one sport and that's it and that's cool where you get these multi-sport athletes and St. John has a bunch of them. Yeah you hear their names a bunch. I mean I don't do as many class B football games as you do or follow quite as close but St. John is always a team in nine men right that you're, that you're seeing because they're not Nine men in football, they not? Yep, 100%. Yeah, it says their enrollment's one 400, but I, it's not. That's not true. We looked this morning, and what was it? Uh, I think 110. Yeah, 110 or something like that. So they're really in the the C level or whatever it's called. It's not A, B, C in the three the three proposal, but we're gonna call it that. It's a lower level. And, and Velva, it's crazy to see Velva's in the same group. So I keep thinking them as a a bigger city team just because they're so good in wrestling and they're so good in football. Um, you know, but ultimately, it's two good multi-sport locations, let's just say that, and, uh, and they got a, a lot of good athletes, and that's going to show tonight. I could see the Velva Aggies still got the bleached, uh, the bleached lids. I was talking about, so let's see, November, so six weeks, how long does it take for that to grow out? <laughs> <laughs> Here's their starting five. Preston Kraft is a starting guard. Joined the backcourt by Reggie Bruner. He's a sophomore. Kraft is a senior. Peyton Bodine is a 6'2 senior forward. Ben Shep is their leading scorer, the quarterback himself, the 6'1 sophomore. And in the middle is the 6'3 senior, Kyle Sandy. For the St. John Woodchucks, they'll go like this. Tough Longy is a starting guard. Cashman Belgard is a starting guard. The third guard in the line, line is Grayson, Grayson Gray Bear. And the two big fellas, Ethan, or uh, Brayton, Baker, Bra Brayton Baker, Baker is your 6'4 senior forward. And in the middle is Isaac Charbonneau, the 6'2 senior. He didn't even make the 
the roster that they printed out, Isaac Charbonneau. <laughs> he was on ours. He was on ours for sure. <laughs> we got him listed as a starter even. Yep. <laughs> All right, Somebody here we go. Made a mistake. The Velva Aggies, one and one on the season. Lost to Delax Burlington before defeating Kenmare Bobells. St. John, two and zero oh on the campaign. Defeated TGU, Towner Granville Upham, and uh, then defeated Rugby. Baker and Sandy will tip it up, and the tip is controlled by Baker, but it is going to be tracked down by nobody as uh, St. John was on the sideline. It'll be Velva Aggies basketball. If you're going to do the tip forward, you got to let your guard know. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, Baker was way up he, there. He totally was, man. He was way up in the air. Reggie Bruner sets the offense. Kyle Sandy looks for a post up. They get it down low. Shep turned, shoot, short armed it. And a rebound pulled out of there by Bruner. Nice pass. Sandy layup. Oh, he missed it. Charbonneau rebounds. Here comes Longy. Flying into the front court are the Woodchucks. Baker has it from the high right side. Comes near side. For zone Bell TD, sorry. Bellegarde, yeah, we haven't seen too much zone today. Been a lot of man to man. Yeah, we haven't heard that call today. Yeah, man. Where, where, what am I doing? <laughs> Charbonneau has it. Straight away three. Bellegarde off the iron, no good. Rebound put back by Charbonneau and he got hit. Charbonneau's big body inside, 6'2", but he's Wide shoulders and way up in the air on that rebound. Got the cotton candy shoes. Yeah, it was got yeah, great call. It's exactly what they are. <laughs> I don't know if I'd ever wore those. I couldn't. Uh, I wasn't good enough. No. Isaac Charbonneau from the. One thing I didn't do is jump high enough. <laughs> from the serve pro free throw line. <laughs> where they got trained technicians, advanced technology, fire and water cleanup and restoration. It's serve pro. Charbonneau looking to give us our first points of game three at the Dale Brown Classic. Can't do it. Rattles in and out. Sandy rebounds, gives it off to Ben Shep, who leaves it for Reggie Bruner. Here comes the Velva Aggies. Kraft has it. Between the rings against man-to-man -man defense for <laughs> the St. John Woodchucks. Off a of screen, here comes Bruner. Leaves it straight away for Shep from downtown. No. Braden Baker, oh, they get a high school hideout. Gray Bear got tripped up. And there's going to be a foul call there on Ben Shep. Yeah, Shep almost looked like he stepped on his foot, right? Shep was going backwards. And, you know, one thing he didn't realize is how wide his shoulders Ben Shep has. Yeah, foot, I was going to say, foot, the, you know, in football, man, he didn't see how big and thick he was. He, he's, he stands out here in the, on the basketball floor. Oh, St. John got a little lit on it from the free throw line. Here's Grayson Graybear, the senior. Got a little bit of cotton candy and some periwinkle <laughs> in those shoes. He missed a, he missed a couple Ooh. after Isaac Charbonneau missed a couple. And the rebounds wrapped out of bounds and it will belong to Velva. Yeah, that's not a good way to start it. 0 for 4 from the charity stripe. You know, you can you look at the arms on every one of these Velva kids out there and you can see that they have uh, spent a little time pumping the iron. Yeah, that's why the football team is so successful. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Shep has it on the right wing. They look for a post up and Sandy gets it deep, scored it. Yeah, nice high low entry came from the wing, popped up high outside the free throw line, just dumped it right down to Sandy for the drop step. Peyton Bodine with a nice post entry feed there and Velva leads two zip. Early on here in your BNC Bank scoreboard, Belgard sets the offense. Comes out between the rings, Velva switching defenses, now they are man to man. Yep. Gray Bear, Longy from the right wing. Charbonneau tries to get it down low to Baker, tipped away. Bodine now had it poke checked. Baker muscles his way in, went up, missed the shot, rebound kept alive. Bellegarde shot fake, leans in, shoots it up. Thought he had some contact, oh. but it's tipped home by Baker. Baker leans back with that right hand and somehow got, got some English off it to bring it back from, man, that was parallel to the ground when he brought that thing up. That was that was a tough look. 2-2. Two, two. This one feels like it might be a mutter. Yeah. Off the uh, hands of Ben Shep. Shep's a quarterback, not the receiver. <laughs> Turnover, Velva. <laughs> Hank Bodine is in that for the Velva Aggies. We called that one a little few times. As you know, he'll be on sophomore the, running back. He'll be in the middle of everything. Yep. <laughs> Look at him. Yeah. He's, he's <laughs> down low. Gonna, I'm surprised he didn't slap the floor, TD. 
<laughs> He's staring at the 11-11 of <laughs> Brayton Baker. Yeah, he is. <laughs> Look, it's exactly what he was doing. Belgard, oh, nifty oh, dime. Wow. And Charbonneau lays it home. Wow, the wraparound one-handed pass to Charbonneau for the two. That's the thing about that, these these <laughs> these bigs for, uh, you'll see uh, Ethan Dakota in a moment. Uh, they're, they're versatile. And there's a takeaway. Charbonneau making plays right now for St. John. Here yeah. come the Woodchucks. Bill Guard looks cross court. Baker has it. He likes it. He fires it short. Rebound kept alive. Nice play by Gray Bear. Longy pulls up from 15. Got it. I like how long he didn't take the three. Took two steps in. Shorten it up to 15. Short time out on the court. Hubbin National Insurance brings you this break in the action. Call them today for your personal and business insurance needs. Quick start for the Woodchucks. They lead 6-2 over Velva. Back after this timeout on the PSP Network. Stylists are trained to understand the uh, nuances of cutting men's hair. Less pomp, more door, huh, Brittany? Square face, wavy hair. Mid fade with a textured top. Finish it off with a hard part and taper that neckline, coach. Cowlick, what's the move? It's not just all about hard work here. Hit off, seven, pressure, points, yeah. It takes expertise to be a sport clip stylist. Here. Ah. That's a spot right there, huh? Sport Clips, the pros in men's hair. St. John, of course, out of Region 4. It's been dominated recently by Four Winds Minnewaukee. North Star, a good club out of there this year as well. First year for that Super Region. Yeah, they've been uh, Region 7 and 8 prior to this, and now it's going to be Super Region 4. Do you like that better? Um, kind of getting mean, rid of the districts? I guess if, if you only have two districts of five teams and you're eliminating one team or yeah, something crazy like that, sense. I mean, why, why do you even have a district? So I think that's what most of them are now going to is seeing less and less of these Class B teams. Misfire on one end, turns into a bell guard shot fake. Longy, elbow, step back, straight on, 17, got it. Didn't like the 15 footer, so took a step back and took the 17 footer. Longy. I think it's more the movement, right? It feels like yeah. he's like a guy who likes to dribble and step back and shoot, going to his left. Yeah, rhythm shot there for tough Longy. Bruner hounded at the timeline. Crosses over, poked away from behind, last touched and saved. Baker, oh, they might have traveled. <laughs> he did shuffle the puppies. <laughs> he had a high school hideout developing, but he just couldn't get it out of his hands. Fifth turnover for the Aggies. Ethan Dakota is on for St. John. Preston Kraft back in for the Velva Aggies. Hank Bodine comes straight away to Kyle Sandy. Post up, Bodine turns, contorts, and finishes it. Somehow, Peyton Bodine got that yeah. to drop. I mean, that wasn't, I wouldn't call it pretty, but hey, whatever works, right? Got a fade in with that right hand. Baker's oh. gonna crank and fire from the left wing. No good. Kind Chuck of a kind of a jump hook. Yeah. Something like that. Shep open in transition. Lofts it back up top to Bodine. That's Peyton. Corner three, ring it up for Kraft. Preston Ooh. Kraft from downtown. I like that, Kraft comes in. Nice ball reversal, was all ready to go. Ready, he had the left hand ready to let it ride. Velva out of the timeout. Let's cut this to a one point lead. St. John eight, Velva seven on your BNC Bank scoreboard. Oh, and Baker just lost the handle. Now in transition, Velva, that's not their game as they Throw that one into the first row here at the MSU Dome. Oh, that's our perfect new, timing for the DC right our there. Our new MVP. <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Beater. <laughs> I'd pay $20 for this Diet Coke right now. Mm. <laughs> I needed some caffeine, TD. <laughs> it's early morning, the last couple of hours. Late night last night, not an early morning. There's Dakota twisting and turning in transition. Bodine with the defense. I like the no call there too. Yeah, I do too. These I, the officials have done a really good job these last three games. Wrapped away from behind, still loose. Sandy collects. Crap for three. The lefty sniper, no good. The lefty, they're always good shooters. That was smooth too. Baker with a quick first step on the baseline, fires it to Longy. Straight away, Belgard. Oh, taken away. And now you got to run out for Kraft. 
Offhand layup is good. Hey, you're not catching Preston Kraft as no wonder it looked kind of awkward for him. <laughs> it didn't look super smooth in the right hand. I'm like, that didn't look like the same guy who looked smooth hitting the last three. Belgard gets it to Dakota. Wants to operate from the wing. Leap and leaner, no good. Tipped up and in. From the backside, just into the game is Caden Belgard, the first team All-State offensive lineman yes. for St. John. The 6-1 senior comes in and tips it in with the right hand. <laughs> Offensive lineman, yeah, you see those guys will outwork everybody. <laughs> First team All-Stater, he's got like uh, two points a minute right now. He's got his average going. <laughs> Second chance for the Aggies. Kraft will collect and fire from downtown. Baker, long arms of the law, yanks that rebound out of there. Back comes St. John. Under a minute to play first quarter. Woodchucks lead by a point. They clear out the top. Baker. Longy, free throw line, Dakota. Oh, and he had it knocked away by Shep and taken away. Here comes Kraft, wants to attack. And he drew some contact there against Belgard and Preston Kraft to the free throw line for Velva. I, I mean, it's just that, that really good, strong defense that Velva plays on you and they're smart where the ball's going, passing lanes. Leaning on you constantly, and that's you know that's one thing that you know if I was talking about a key to the game, it's this contrast in styles where Velva's going to get in your face, they're going to lean in you, they're going to muscle you a little bit, and St. John's want to move and keep you know more flowing, free flowing than Velva is. It's kind of more of a like I would say St. John has more of a kind of a finesse game, right? Yeah, totally. Not to say that. Uh, Caden Belgard, you look at him. Oh, yeah, he's looking at you saying, time out. He, he, there, there's no part of me that's... He says, finesse this. <laughs> right. <laughs> As Kraft gets one and two from the serve pro free throw line. Six points for Kraft of the 10. Tied up at 10. Kind of had a notion this is going to be a close ball game with this Region 4 St. John team and Region 6 Velva Aggies. Belgard wasn't feeling it there. Oh, man, you got to use the backboard. Tough angle for Caden Belgard off the feed. 20 seconds to play. Coach Sandro says, let's go for one. Bruner says, let's go for this one. He missed it. Oh. Now you got St. John with a chance. 10 seconds to play in the quarter. Dakota fires it down low. Belgard, shot fake, step through, goes up, count it, oh, the trees. Nice, had Bodine all over him. Didn't go, wasn't going left, going back right, used the glass. Cashman Belgard ends the first quarter in style for St. John. End of one break. We'll come back with the second quarter. 12-10 on your BNC Bank scoreboard. St. John by a deuce. Back after this timeout on the PSB Network. Water. Boom. Agent Winston Otter. He's been called the human sponge. This broadcast on the PSP Network is proudly brought to you by Getting set for the second quarter. Matter of fact, we're in the second quarter. Velva down by two on your BNC Bank scoreboard. Reggie Bruner pulls it up from the left wing. Mr. October misses it. Rebound. Fight four on the back side for Ben Shep and Caden Belgard. And it goes to St. John. I think Bruner had a, like a 76-yard touchdown in that championship. He's a good player. And yeah. uh, you get it done on the basketball court right now. What are they he's like shooting like? 60% from downtown oh, yeah. in the first couple games. Yep. St. John 
Puts it in the hands of Graybear. Belgard gets a screen from Belgard, and it's poked away and saved and stolen. Shep runs over a guy. Sandy gets it back to Ben Shep. Here comes Velva working his way as Shep looks for Br Bruner on a cut. Uh, taken away, no space. No, that was not a good pass. Seventh turnover. Sideline fast break. Belgard, Cashman, straightaway three. Gray Bear. Yep. The trail three for Grayson Gray Bear. Nothing but net. 5'11 senior buries that one from downtown and St. John has their biggest lead of the contest. No, oh, maybe not. Was it 8-2 at one point in time? It, no, 8-4. 8-4. So this is the biggest lead. Oh, there's a slippery move. Yeah. And Shep got hit. Good call by the weak set official there. Yeah, you give him a little Hake Hakeem shake in the baseline. That left shoulder kind of looked like you're going to go to the middle and you drop step to the baseline. How good was Ben Shep throwing the football in that oh. state championship game? I mean, Velva can run it, but, man, it was Shep uh, just doing a number through the air for you the know, Velvia Aggies. He didn't come in with the crazy stats no. either. You that know, is. I mean, and, but man, did he deliver. In fact, I got those stats, GD, shocking enough. Ben Shep knocks down the first from their serve pro free throw line. Misfires on the second. Four point lead for the Woodchucks and they skip it cross court. Gray Bear thought about a three and you're gonna get a little nickel and dime foot in the way there for Ben Shep. Okay, I take that back. He had 2,000 yards and 20, 22 touchdowns, just four interceptions. Plus, he rushed for 634 and 14 TDs. Yeah, not not a. He was he came into the state doing pretty well. Yeah, he was <laughs> doing just fine for himself. <laughs> just a sophomore. Just picked up his second personal foul, Ooh, however. That's not good. Hank Bodine with the tip away. Baker has it. Comes to Belgard. Reverses it now to Gray Bear. Got the high post if they wanted. Instead, straight on three. Oh, oh. he crotched it home, did Belgard. Shoots it long, but in the absolute perfect spot that it hits behind the basket on the back of the rim and just stops and rolls in. He kind of looked around at the bench like, did you guys see that? How about that for shooter's touch? <laughs> Hank Bodine for three. Nope, that rattles off. Bruner has it. Rips through. Oh, his shot is blocked. Dakota got a piece of that. Gray Bear pushing the issue. Woodchucks fire it to Belgard. Shot faking. Craft on him like a postage stamp. Straight on Gray Bear for three. Hello. Deja vu. This time wasn't on a trail, but it was in the exact same spot. Top of the key. That's his favorite spot. Six for Gray Bear. Well, it's been uh, Belgard and Gray Bear from downtown here in the second quarter. Belva needs a bucket. Bucket. Hank Bodine from the free throw line. Kraft, can he answer with a three of his own? Yes! Great down pick by Kyle Sandy. And he's used to that as a tight end. Oh, then he left the guy get by him. Oh, and then you get a leap and leaner. And Gray Bear gonna go right to the free throw line as, you know, Velva's been extending some token pressure on made hoops, but for, or St. St. John had been making him pay. Foul's gonna be whistled there on Peyton Bodine. Sandy didn't even see him. He went right behind, sneak right behind Sandy on that. Yeah. Serve pro free throw, emergency service, trained technicians, advanced technology, fire and water cleanup and restoration. It's serve pro and Grayson Graybear. He's, he'd be on my all Dale Brown classic name team oh, yeah. right there, Grayson Graybear. Didn't take him long to get his average in this quarter. Yeah. Eight for the season, he's got eight like in three possessions. Gray Bear knocks down both those free throws and St. John include, or increases their lead to nine. Five minutes to play second quarter, BNC Bank scoreboard, St. John 23, Velva 14. They got Sandy on a post up, middle of the lane, kick out Kraft, thought about it, takes it short, weak side rebound, good contest there by Peyton Bodine, and it turns into a Hank Bodine layup. Yeah, Hank Bodine, but Peyton, you're right, tipped it high in the air, but then Hank got it, a little eyebrow fake. St. John got bodine yeah. <laughs> Tag team by the Bodine brothers. <laughs> Belgard. Baker crosses over. There's Hank Bodine, a fly in the ointment. And now you got some, got some back points there for Velva. And it's going to be Velva Aggies basketball. Well, you, you knew there was no doubt if the ball was on the floor, there was going to be 
somebody on the floor, and Hank Bonin was going to be one of them. Yep. Well, and Isaac Charbonneau had his his, his nose right in there too for right. for St. John, but I mean, that's Hank, that's Velva's game yeah. right there. I mean, Bodine's he, he was a good running back, but it was middle linebacker spot that that's kind of where he shined. It's high low, they get it down low to Peyton Bodine, turn shot, banks it home. They love that high low entry, and they just jam it inside. I didn't think there was a, a prayer that he could get that in, but he, he likes that turn to the right side with that little jump hook. Operating on the block, Charbonneau misses that. Sideline fast break, and there was nobody home there, but it luckily for Velvet, got tipped out of bounds by the Woodchucks. Ethan Dakota back on, Gray Bear comes off. And this is where, this is Isaac Sandro. This is, see, sometimes it's so ugly, it's pretty. Yeah. That's kind of how the last few possessions have been, right? Absolutely. <laughs> You're like, what are you, okay, that wasn't bad. I'm just gonna run our stuff. <laughs> I'm gonna get a post up, I'm gonna execute. Now we get it in low to Ben Shep, turns into a double team. That one was just UGLY. Yeah, Isaac Charbonneau, good job coming over and expected him to come to the middle. Just walking into a three yeah. and knocking it down is Dakota. Ooh, then he looked over at the, the bench. The Aggie bench and kind of gave him the low three TD. <laughs> Ethan Dakota. The low three looking at him. That was smooth, though. He's a shooter. You know what? Ville would be the last team I want to make mad. Yeah. Right? Like, what, the, <laughs> it's like, okay. Kyle Sandy, the putback and one. <laughs> All right, that's cool. You're going to do that, but how about you want to go outside? <laughs> what show was that on? Come on, that was, oh, that's my one of my favorite shows. With, uh, that one's not ringing a bell for with, me. Uh, usually we have trivia in the Good Will now. Hunting. Okay. He's, he says, you know, how do you like, you know, they were doing in the bar scene, and and they were talking about, he was, they were trying to up, talk about how dumb his, his partner was, and he walks over and, you know, does this whole thing, then he's, like, hey, you know, that's cool. If, they think, if that's all right, you don't talk about this. How about we just go outside? <laughs> you know, this tough Boston guy. That's what it feels like this is. Brayton, Brayton Baker. Baker knocks down a 17-foot straight, straight on shot and makes it a seven-point lead for the Woodchucks and a timeout for Chris Thomas and St. John. Hubbard National Insurance timeout on the court. 28-21, St. John on top. Back after this timeout on the PSP Network. Ackerman Esvold, your neighbors, friends, and family who are working for you. The local team with local availability and accountability for all of your engineering, architecture, environmental, transportation, and land development needs. Your project can rely on Ackerman Esvold. Find them online at ackermanesvold.com. When you start your project, talk with Ackerman Surveying and Associates. Our experienced surveying team guides you in the right direction with planning, planning, and lot and boundary surveys. The trusted name in land surveying, the trusted name in architecture and engineering is Ackerman Survey and Ackerman Esfold. Find them at ackermanesfold.com. Out of that Hub International Insurance timeout on the court, your local hub agents, Josh Cattell, Michael Borman. Contact them at 355-301 for your personal and business insurance needs. Woodchucks by seven. And St. John is man to man, and they're gonna force a Velva turnover. Yeah, it looked smooth, Reggie, but Bodine wasn't anywhere close to it, so turnover number eight for the Aggies. Two twenty to play in the first half. I think they're man on makes and zone on misses. Baseline shot put up there by Isaac Charbonneau, misfires. Reggie Bruner has it back for Velva. Longy on him as Velva is going to go high screen and roll with Sandy. Bruner splits the defense, leaves it for Ben Shep, floats a shot up the left hand, physical rebound goes up, powers it home. But ben stayed right with it. The first left, he wasn't pretty at all, but blocked it right back to him, and he was in the right place at the right time for the finish. Aggies down by five. Now they're back in that zone. 
Well, they better find Grayson Graybear and Cameron Belgard, Cashman Belgard. Long G puts it inside, layup no good for Charbonneau. Shep comes out of there on a jump stop. Gives it off to Kraft and he's gonna attack. Flies in, misses the shot, rebound, put back. Peyton Bodine. Peyton Bodine, hey, you gotta stay with it, right? You gotta bust your butt down to the other side even when you, got, you think a guy's got a fast break. Baker misfires on the three. Sandy fires it up ahead. Peyton Bodine tried to get it to Shep, take it away. Back and forth we go. It's a green flag run here at the Dome. Baker flies into Sandy and it's good defense by Kyle Sandy. Let's do a wind sprint to the other end. Here comes Kraft, gets it off to Shep. He's got a lane, he goes, he scores. Dakota went for that steal and when that happened, it gave Ben Shep a wide open lane on that fast break for Velva. Nice little end of the first half here for the Velva Aggies. Yeah, they were down 11, 21, 10. High post, Charbonneau. Outside Belgard for three. Ooh, in and out. Rebound Reggie Bruner. Oh, Ooh, almost a carry. That was an interesting shimmy shake there. Yeah. Kraft for the lead. No, off the iron. Rebound, Peyton Bodine gives it in the lane. Shep, shot up, no good. Sandy, rebound, missed it. <laughs> rebound pulled out of there by Belgard. And there's Sandy taking it away from behind. Good hustle by Belgard. Good hustle by Sandy. Good hustle by Shep. Here comes Kraft. Ten seconds to play. And a foul as Kraft attacking. And this is how Velva plays right here, yeah. folks. Aggies all over the floor. <laughs> Just creating chaos. Yard sale of people everywhere. And somehow the ball gets to the right guy at the right time. Again, and that's Kraft. Yeah, short Gee, in the shot. Yikes. We could tie it up here with a made free throw. You gotta use your legs there, my hey, friend. Hey, I've been doing basketball, like we said, for a long time, and I've never heard the word yard sale describing a play <laughs> on, in, in, on, a, on a basketball court, and that was perfect. That's exactly what that was. It was just like somebody showing off underneath the lift. <laughs> Buddies out everywhere. Out at Big Sky, and he yard sales it. <laughs> free throw by Kraft, no, no good. St. John still has their lead, down to five. Pull up three. Gray Bear, no good. Sandy rebounds. And they can't get a shot off. As Velva got in the hands of Brayson Bossert, Braden Bossert there to end the first half. And an entertaining first 16 minutes will go into the books. St. John has a lead of one here in game three from the Dale Brown Classic at the MSU Dome. Our premier chiropractic halftime report comes up next. Halftime score, St. John 29, Velva 28. The magic of what we do really comes down to combining different aspects of patient care. Here at Premier Chiropractic, we love combining soft tissue work, the adjustment and exercises together. We found that this gets the best results for our patients. We have three chiropractors to fit the needs of the entire family, a rehab area for our exercises and equipment for any athlete to improve performance. Give us a call and we will get you back to doing what you love. Are you moving your business or your home across the town or across the country? We know it can be stressful. To ensure your possessions arrive on time, intact and on budget, make your move with Jobbers Moving and Storage. Jobbers can help you with every aspect of your move. With our efficient step-by-step -step approach to move management, we can tailor a plan to suit your needs and schedule. With locations in Bismarck, Fargo, Minot and Aberdeen, Jobbers Moving and Storage is your choice. Visit JobbersWarehouse.com. It's Jobbers. Moving in storage. I'm a grateful person on a lot of levels. I've been given so many great opportunities. But most of all, even as a little kid, I was taught a set of values. Like tools for life, hard work, responsibility, and the key to making it all work, commitment. First Western Bank and Trust. You can bank on us. Ackerman Esfold, your neighbors, friends, and family who are working for you. The local team with local availability and accountability for all of your engineering, architecture, environmental, transportation, and land development needs. Your project can rely on Ackerman Esfold. Find them online at ackermanesfold.com. 
When you start your project, talk with Ackerman Surveying and Associates. Our experienced surveying team guides you in the right direction with planning, planning, and lot and boundary surveys. The trusted name in land surveying, the trusted name in architecture and engineering is Ackerman Surveying and Ackerman Esfold. Find them at ackermansfold.com. What you're witnessing actually happens. This is a sad story about bad math. Bad math? Does your online company include mounting? You can't beat the online pricing. When you add the mounting, the shipping, and all the extras, it's just simple math. We guarantee the lowest prices. Our Plus Plan is simply better, a less expensive way to buy tires. Thinking tires, think tires plus. A nice look at the MSU Dome on the campus of Minot State University in the magic city of Minot. That's the home for the Dale Brown Classic. 28-27, the St. John Woodchucks lead over the Velva Aggies as we welcome you to our premier chiropractic halftime report. Doctors Kirk Mason, Dr. Cody Haugen, Dr. Becky Perry Darmers can be found at premierchiropracticnd.com. That was an entertaining first half. Uh, Velva plays just the way we thought they would. They're physical, they get after it, they're not gonna get outworked. And hey, I like some of the stuff that I saw from St. John. Um, obviously Baker's a good player and they got some threes that they made in the first half and then they got a physical presence that they can bring into the game as well. So a lot of versatile things that you see out of St. John. And I think this one's gonna go right down to the wire, it feels like. Yeah, I mean, they had 11 point lead, St. John did. and. And Velva just came right back, and it's that gritty defense. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes you got teams like St. John who they're just free flowing, right? Shoot it when you catch it. But sometimes you let teams back in too quick. And Bismarck High did that a number of times last year because they just shot the ball, and they didn't in, in the, on the Class A side of things. And I felt like St. John kind of did that same thing. They got that lead, and sometimes with the lead, I know you got to keep doing what got you that lead, but what. Sometimes you got to do is instead, instead you get that first look from deep three. Hey, you might get that same look on the ball reversal, make the Aggies play a little bit defense. And that would that would be my coaching discussion at halftime. If I'm Chris Thomas, it's like, hey, guys, I want you to shoot the open looks, right? I want you to, to have confidence, but be smart. And when you take those first looks, don't be afraid to make that extra pass, which they have been in the first quarter in the beginning of the second when they got the 11 point lead. Um, but it's just that Aggies just the toughness they have that's just going to keep them in you know almost every game yeah absolutely in case you missed our games earlier today as you had tgu and stanley in our opener stanley wins that one 60 to 30 hazen outlasted west Oak newberg 51 49 of course here velva and st john locked in a battle four wins and trinity come up next followed by powers lake burke central against the beulah miners shiloh and thompson and two ranked teams and our nightcap today at the Dale Brown Classic. You can catch all these games on the PSP Network, our Redeemers, and North Star. Tomorrow, the Hoopster Classic. There's your full slate of games. Uh, started off with Berthold and North Prairie, and uh, end the day with our Redeemers and Hazen, wall-to-wall -wall coverage of the Hoopster Classic. And uh, then we got the Mandan Holiday Tournament as well. There's uh, uh, four games for you from the Mandan Holiday Tournaments uh, starting tomorrow at three o'clock. It's a full fill uh, for your holiday serving of Class B boys basketball. Take a time out. We'll come back and dig into the numbers here as your Premier Chiropractic Halftime Report rolls on. Premier Chiropractic focused on improving the health of the Minot and surrounding areas through the most cutting edge advances in natural health care today. St. John by a point here at halftime. Back with the numbers after this break on the PSP Network. You remember where this goes? I don't know. Are you sure it was a clicking and not a I think your quash litter bell's stuck. Do you even have insurance? If we soak it, so it should be good. <laughs> no matter how much you know or don't know about your vehicle, trust the experts at Tires Plus. Real answers from real mechanics. Inspections are free to ensure your vehicle is always in peak condition. Thinking service, think Tires Plus. 
The magic of what we do really comes down to combining different aspects of patient care. Here at Premier Chiropractic, we love combining soft tissue work, the adjustment, and exercises together. We found that this gets the best results for our patients. We have three chiropractors to fit the needs of the entire family, a rehab area for our exercises and equipment for any athlete to improve performance. Give us a call and we will get you back to doing what you love. Our stylists are trained to understand the uh, nuances of cutting men's hair. Less pomp, more adore, huh, Brittany? Square face, wavy hair. Mid fade with a textured top. Finish it off with a hard part and taper that neckline, coach. Cowlick, what's the move? It's not just all about hard work here. Hit off, seven, pressure, point, yeah. It takes expertise to be a sport clip stylist. Here. Ah. That's a spot right there, huh? Sport clips, the pros in men's hair. Finding the right bank can be transformative for your small business. The best bank for your business will offer competitive fees and so much more. At BNC National Bank, our team is proud to offer you a helpful, supportive, above and beyond banking relationship. Starting to stress about the complexities of qualifying for a small business loan? BNC can guide you through the process with much less stress and likely far more success. Speak to one of our team members today. Back in our premier chiropractic halftime report, the Woodchucks lead the Aggies by a point, and let's run through the numbers from the first half. All right, Todd, for the Velva Aggies, nine points for Preston Kraft, a couple threes, a deuce, but struggle from the free throw line as he was one for three, including missing two of the last, and the, the would, would have put him ahead with a couple seconds left in that first half. Six for Peyton Bodine, five for Kyle Sandy on a two and an N one, three for Ben Shep, and two for Hank Bodine for their total of 27. For the Woodchucks, 28 were made up by, they have seven guys in the scoring column already. Grayson Graybear, two threes and two free throws for his eight points, five for Cashman Belgard, four for Tough Longy, Brayton Baker, Ethan Dakota had three, Isaac Charbonneau off the bench had two, and then Caden Belgard also had two for their total of 28. It was 12 10. Then it was 11 0 run to start the second quarter. It put the Woodchucks up 21 to 10. And then just, they just, Aggies just chipped away with that lead and ended up with a, a little run on their own, 17 to 6 to finish the first half. They still trail by one, though, 28 to 27 at halftime. I get set for the second half of play here. While we have a moment, we can tell you that you can vote for today's and this week's Jersey Mike's Player of the Week on the PSP Network Facebook page. Jersey Mike's is a sub above. Today's game also brought to you in part by the UPS store. They're located in the Marketplace Foods Plaza and South Broadway in Minot. They're there for all your packing and shipping needs. Today's game also brought to you in part by Planet Pizza. 30 inch galactic pizza that's out of this world, the largest laser tag playground around, and you can call an order now at 852 1700. Planet Pizza is out of this world. And last but not least, today's game brought to you in part by Northern Plains Heating and Air. Factory authorized dealer for AeroSeal, no other choice to seal your heating and air game than Northern Plains Heating and Air. Find them online at northern plains.com. Misfired three by Grayson Graybear. Here comes the Velva Aggies. St. John man to man to start the third quarter. Reggie Bruner goes baseline. Peyton Bodine shot no good. Kyle Sandy foot put back is down. That's what we're talking about at halftime, T. Uh, so you throw that kind of weird baseline, you know, tough look, but right there, Kyle Sandy off the board to clean it up and put him ahead. Aggies have a lead of one. Charbonneau, excuse me, Dakota, get it on in the corner to. <laughs> Brayton Baker and he was lining up a three and didn't realize the uh, two feet standing out of bounds. Well, he, he was using the out of bounds line as the, the three point line. He he's, looked, he's got D, he's got good range, TD. They looked, they blew the whistle and he looked down like, oh, look at that. <laughs> I'm standing out of bounds. <laughs> I got that range though. He probably shoots those in horse yeah, I, in, in the pregame. He probably, yeah, starting in halftime, he was probably shooting all those from right in front of their bench. Misfire there for Reggie Bruner. Rebound pulled out of there. Here comes Dakota. Comes up top to Cashman Belgard. Back to Dakota for three. Yes! Ethan Dakota from downtown. Gives him the second 
three ball low sign to the crowd this time. Fake ball reversal back to him on that left wing in that two three zone. Sometimes that's a spot that's open. St. John now up on top by a couple points. Kyle Sandy looks down low to Kraft, reverses it now to Bruner. Catch and shoot for three. Ooh, in and out. Rebound to Cotto. St. John comes in the corner to Gray Bear. Attacks, got some contact, missed the shot. Rebound cleared by Peyton Bodine. Gives it off to Ben Shep. Over the timeline come the Aggies. In their blue uniforms, outlined in yellow. Traditional Aggie colors. You know what an Aggie is? Um, I, I don't right now off the top of my head. Three-pointer for Kraft. Inside, shot blocked there for Reggie Bruner. Velva gets it back. You gonna tell me or will you? Yeah, I'll get to that. Okay. <laughs> Free throw line, and now you get down low Suspense for is me, TD. Kyle, Kyle Sandy. Uh, Aggie is one of those uh, long-standing terms because uh, I knew this because we played the Park River Aggies, uh, and I had to look it up one time. Okay. So it's another word, it's the code word for farmer. Oh, Aggie. Aggie. Okay. Far farmer. Yeah. Right. Hmm. Nice pass oh. down low. Oh. But Charbonneau couldn't finish it. He felt Ben Shep behind him. Ben Shep driving into the defense, and he got tangled up there with Gray Bear. Nope, checked. He got tangled up with Baker. Baker. Baker trying to go hard right in front of him. So many times that helped. That makes a difference. But he just got his just just touched his toe. I think on Shep going in, caused him to trip. Now ben Shep to the serve pro free throw line. Serve pros got emergency service, trained technicians, fire and water cleanup and restoration. It's serve pro. So the owner, if they already have somebody set up to take over Coach Larry Sandy's. No, that's range. a good question. That's a really good question. Is I mean, he's how many years was he there? And it was forever. Shep gets one of two. Now the Aggies in that zone defense. Belgard has it up top. 33 years he was there. He had to replace the coach. That's a that's a generation. Yeah. Tip pass. Gray Bear out to Belgard. Ten to shoot for the Woodchucks. Gray Bear thought about it. Now it's down to five to shoot. Post up Baker turns fire 18 footer. Passed it down low. Dakota caught it and scored it. Oh, they reset the shot clock. TD. He missed it. There was two seconds left in the shot clock. They reset it to 35. I mean, it would have been close, but it doesn't matter. It's Dakota, right? He's the one who got the rebound put back. Five in the second half. Now Eight take the game. Take away by Charbonneau. Here comes Dakota. Little hesitation, dribble drive. Puts it on the deck a couple times. Comes out top to Belgard. Open, Gray Bear sets, fires, short. Weak side rebound, Charbonneau twists, turns, fires it up, no good. Tipped a couple times off the hands of Hank Bodine. Touched last by the Aggies. And that's, that's a big oh, shot clock potential change there. <laughs> Two points that you don't notice that necessarily. I suppose you're not looking at the shot clock, although you should that late. And Baker looks to operate, not a bell guard. St. John a little more patient here in the second yeah. half. That was, that was your kind of pick to click in the, at halftime. Little runner for Brayton Baker, no good. Rebound. There's good work on that glass by Dakota. Yeah. And here, here's the. This is what I noticed in watching some tape on St. John is Baker, Dakota, and Charbonneau. Those three guys, they get a lot of mileage out of those three, and they're they're very versatile in how they play. Yeah, you're looking at six two, six four, and six four. So. Inside out there, I mean, they can go outside, hit the three, but they're also not afraid to go inside. And so many times you see, you know, kids nowadays, are, they're outside. I don't care if they're 6'4", you know, you don't see those true posts. And uh, the one thing with St. John's, you can't say, or St. John, you can't say it enough. Versatile offensively is exactly what they are. From the serve per free throw line, Dakota gets one of two. Oh, they had somebody on a high school hideout as the defense didn't find the Velva Aggies, but the pass was tipped and hit the basket. Now you get Belgard weaving through traffic, missed the shot, rebound, last touch by <laughs> Gray Bear and St. John <laughs> loses possession. He tried to be smooth and he pointed, hey, that's that's off of him, I got that one, but official wasn't buying that one. Tough Longy and Caden Belgard. my favorite player, Caden Belgard, offensive lineman in there. <laughs> 
He, he probably won't get a post touch, but he's going to get a rebound put back before he gets out. Woodchucks by four. Braden Bossert is in for Velva as well. He has it on a post touch. Inside out for Bruner from downtown. Yep. Yeah, I, I mean, it, when you get a post touch, man, good things happen. And you know, as a shooter, TD, you, it just, you get yourself set when you the ball gets inside. And what a good inside out play. And Bruner, he's been kind of, he's been cold. Actually, he's been really cold because he hasn't made a shot yet until yeah. that one. The leading scorer for Velva just got on the board. St. John by a point after that Bruner three ball. Makes it 34-33 on your BNC National Bank scoreboard. BNC Bank, your life is busy. We make managing money easy. Locations in North Dakota and Arizona. Visit BNC Bank online at bnc.bank. Dakota, oh, it's a pass. They go alley-oop to Caden Belgard. TD, I told you. The <laughs> Eniani over on the Dirk Nowinski step back. And right there was Belgard with the rebound put back and this, from the, the, the long rebound. Belgard's got four. He's, that's the only way he's getting it. They're not passing it to him. Bossert to Bruner. Bodine for three. Yes! It's raining threes for the Aggies. Well, TD, we were talking about Bodine and the, the kind of catapult that he throws up. That one was nothing but nylon. Again, he's out of bounds, TD. <laughs> Last time it was Baker. This time it was well, Dakota. Is, I'm telling you, they're playing horse before the game on that, right? That corner right there. <laughs> Coach just sat down like, guys, <laughs> have some court awareness. Know where we're at. The court in St. John's a little wider than it is at the Dome. <laughs> Must they be. Get a little more room down there. Bruner on the bounce. Hands it off for Kraft. Now Sandy will reverse it to Shep, who's back on. Shep with a baseline drive, draws contact, oh. finishes it. And Velva comes storming right back. Contorted his body, leaned back as he was falling down to find him the rim, threw it over it. A chance for an and one. And Chris Thomas from St. John wants timeout. The Hub International Insurance timeout on the court. They're located at 4204 Boulder Ridge in Northwest Bismarck. We break. 36 for the St. John Woodchucks, 38 for the Velva Aggies, and we're back after this timeout on the PSP Network. Whether you're looking for a full service financial plan or planning for farm or business succession, Planning Team Financial Advisors is here to help you work toward achieving your financial goals. With locations in Bismarck, Garrison, and Center, our full service team of professionals are dedicated to helping you work towards achieving your financial goals. Visit us online, planningteam.com. Securities offered through LPL Financial, member of Finrun Sipic. Investment advisory services offered through New Edge Advisors, LLC, a registered investment advisor. New Edge Well, Ben Shep couldn't finish the old-fashioned three-point play. And it remains a two-point lead for the Velva Aggies out of that Chris Thomas St. John timeout. Velva's going to extend some defense. Longy, baseline Belgard, pass fake, free throw line, bounce it down low, Dakota, wrapped out of bounds by Kyle Sandy. A little 1-3-1 one, one trap out of that. Timeout, usually it's 2-3, but every once in a while like that, I like how coaches just change the defense up after a timeout. Now they fall back in the 2-3 zone. Now a lob up top, safety valve poked away by Reggie Bruner. Here comes Bodine, leaves it for Bruner. Nice play, layup good. I like it. Bruner just waited, waited, waited until Baker committed to him and then dumped it over to Reggie Bruner, who was filling the lane. Velva by four. It's the biggest lead. And they take it away. Zone defense is causing some problems all of a sudden here for St. John. Bruner comes up top to Shep. Driving, leaving it. Sandy got it. Uh, almost lost the dribble. It was down by his ankles. A two-handed shuffle pass over to Sandy, who was diving to the basket. These last couple minutes, the Aggies can do no wrong. Most plays look like they could result in a train wreck, but they end up in baskets. That's exactly what's happening. <laughs> Guard. It's so Longy. ugly, it's pretty. <laughs> Dakota <laughs> thinks about a three, drops it down low. Baker, easy layup. Yeah, Baker in a great spot. He came from the weak side, had Bruner stuck behind him, and a good dump down by Ethan Dakota. Cuts the lead for Velva to four. Under half a minute to play here in the third quarter. Now you get an unnecessary reach in foul. 
Brayton Baker is going to pick that one up. That's his third. Ooh. Scott Woodmancy's. He wants the MVP back. He's taking it over the planet pizza. We got the Diet Coke, and he came in hard with the Diet Mountain Dew. <laughs> he could. He knew I was shaken from not enough caffeine. Half a minute to play third quarter on your BNC Bank scoreboard. They clear out a shot for Shep. Ben tries to get it down low. Somehow got it there, but Peyton Bodine was underneath the basket, shot it into the bottom of the tin. Longy on a trail, gives it off to Gray Bear. Back to Longy. Gray Bear thinks about a three, weaves through the traffic, and you can't do that. Too many guys in there to dribble through. Now down to two, down to one. Kraft. Can't beat the third quarter buzzer. And we go to the fourth with the Velva Aggies on top by four. Velva 40, 42, St. John 38. On your BNC Bank scoreboard, fourth quarter is next on the PSP Network. Many of our clients come to us already accomplished in their lives and on the right track. However, whether it's in response to a life-changing event or you are nearing retirement, you can sleep well knowing that together we have planned for both life's opportunities and challenges. And no matter what happens, we are here to help guide you. If it's fire damage, Agent Fred Iyer. From burnt to unburnt, he does that. The right way to top a sub is with real red wine vinegar made from red grapes and no food coloring. And the right way to film it is in slow motion, obviously. Because authentic ingredients make a sub above. Impressive third quarter there for the Velva Aggies. You know, as we were researching this game, we realized Velva had never been to a state class B boys basketball tournament. Got to the regional championship last year before falling to the Bishop Ryan Lions. Well, there's a wraparound pass there for Shep. Sandy then had it ripped away. St. John, Chuck, has been to one class B boys basketball tournament. That coming in 2018. And how'd they do? Um... They won their opening round game against Winemere Lidgewood, and then uh, a huge three there for Grayson Graybear. Graybear, you can't leave him open. He's got three threes, 11 points, only guy in double figures on either team. I, I think they ended up getting fourth, but um, I, I'm, I uh, have to research that real quickly. I think that's correct, though, as Graybear makes it a one point game here. Sandy gets good position. Nice play. And he's just so good around the basket. And, and he, it's almost one of those guys, he knows his strengths, right? He keeps right around that 15 foot and in and good with his feet. Aggies stretch their lead out to three. Longy in the paint, Charbonneau. Not a breaker on the right wing. Repost Charbonneau operating against Sandy who leans up in him. Good defense by Sandy. Kept alive, saved, but it can't be saved by... Oh. St. John, but St. John was trying to save it, but it's going to be Velva, going to be St. John basketball. If, why are they trying to save it so much? Yeah, I don't, he clearly thought it was off of him. Yeah. I'm understanding is Matt Weidler TD is the, going to be the new football coach. Oh, there you go. As there goes Cam, Cashman Belgard for two. Seven points for Cashman. He's got 10 points uh, average per game, so... It's a guy that rely on to score. That was a nifty little reverse move off the hesitation from the top. I didn't see it. Sandy, and you're going to get Baker. Is that going to be four on him? Yep. Oh, he missed a few. He's That's gonna, big. He's going to come out right away. Yeah, he's the 20 point a game guy for St. John. Doesn't have that today, obviously. No, he just, just has six. six. They're, and they're playing good defense against him. Frustrated a little bit, I think. Sometimes it, certain guys, there's certain defenses that kind of in your face, tough, that they don't like that. Shep off the inbounds, going to fire for three. That might have been blocked by Dakota. Yeah, I think it was a little bit. Well, it had to be, or it was a really, really bad shot because <laughs> it almost hit the standard on the left side. Longy 
Oh, deep three. Gray Bear, no good. Heat check. Shep rebounds, gives it off to Kraft. Bruner. Oh, a little nifty pocket pass. Shep floating in the lane. <laughs> Wild shot up, no good. Sandy rebound, put back, no good. Rebound Sandy, can't be saved by Peyton Bodine. And it'll be St. John basketball. Uh, had a couple good looks there. You got to make those good, hard offensive rebounding for the Aggies inside. Missed a couple bunnies there. You better bring your lunch pail when you play the Aggies. Oh, yeah. <laughs> better not be afraid of a little contact. Yeah. St. John gets a little cross screen in the paint. Belgard shot faking, rising off the 10. No good. Contested. Rebound is going to be off of Charbonneau, <laughs> and it will be Velva basketball. And here, Velva was going to try to save it. On that one. All you <laughs> got to do is try to save it. You're going to get the ball. No kidding. We are missing the boat, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's the closest to it, like, well, what is it? Not soccer, but whatever the one of the shows you're games you're closest to gets it. Ben Shep is working. Shep, that was nice, crafty inside, right-handed jump hook. Got it in deep, and it's back to a three-point lead. Now the lane opens up and Gray Bear converts. Kind of the slow roller. Just the casual kept going like he was going to stop and just kept moving the lane open wide up, wide open for Gray Bear. There's a cut to the basket. Excuse me. There's Reggie Bruner. A little dive from the top. And you're going to get a 30 second timeout here. We'll keep this one right here as get a chance to tell you that today's game. It's brought to you in part by Roger Ward Moving and Storage. Find them online at rogerwardmovingandstorage.com to schedule a move or find a quote. And our thanks once again to BNC National Bank for bringing you our scoreboard with locations throughout North Dakota, Minnesota, Arizona. BNC National Bank provides you with banking and wealth management services for your business and family. You can visit BNC Bank online today at bnc.bank. It's been a good one all the way through. St. John had the better of the action for most of the first half, but now Velva getting some things done here in the second half. He started out down, got down four, 34-30. They tied it at 36, got the lead up to 42-36, four, to and you know now kind of cut it in half. So yeah, we, you talked before the game, you thought that this could be a, a good back and forth battle, and it has been. St. John will bring Bray Brayton Baker back into the game with his four fouls with four and a half minutes to play here in the contest. Belgard. Gray Bear. Belgard open for three. Steps into the free throw line area. Ooh. Air banked it. Long rebound. Baker has it. Shovels it to Belgard. Fires it over to Gray Bear who fires for three. Oh. Hello. Steps into it. I like how he shoots a little set shot. Fourth three of the game. And he's shot him from left wing, top of the key. That was from the right wing. Gray Bear ties it up at 48. Halfway through the fourth quarter. Now St. John has got some zone. First time we've seen that out of the Woodchucks. See how Velva reacts to that. Hank Bodine's going to say, I'm going to crank a three. No good. Rebound to Cotto. Baker into the front court. St. John looking to get the lead back. Belgard operating from the top. Gets a screen from Charbonneau. Behind the screen for three. Nope. Rebound. Cranked out of there by Ben Shep. Gives it off to Reggie Bruner. Now back to Shep. Bruner for three. Off the 10. Rebound out of bounds, and it'll belong to who? Well, they haven't, he haven't said anything yet, has he? Or he, if he did, he did set it down low. Well, everybody's walking to the other end, so that's a telltale sign that all the kids thought it was St. John basketball. Well, St. John's was the one that was trying to save it again, so that makes sense. Falls right in line with how we've been following for the last three out of bounds <laughs> plays. <laughs> you know, I mean, it didn't look like Charbonne was down below or, or Baker trying to save it, and I guess we'll give it to you. 48-48. Stay tuned. You got four wins, Minnewakan, and Dickinson Trinity should be a good one next. Down low, Dakota. 
banging into Sandy and spinning it home. Well, Charles Barkley, two bumps and a drop step lean in. And Sandy's not going to flop. No, I tell you that much. No, I was, I was surprised. I was about to make a comment about good a defense he had. And man, a nice sneaky uh, drop step by Dakota. Big second half for Ethan Dakota. Shot put up in the middle lane for Peyton Bodine. No good. Bodine gets it back and then he got mugged. There's from behind, Belgard hit him hard, but he's going to make Bodine earn two of them at the free throw line. Into crunch time now. Yeah, not a, I don't think that's a bad foul. I, no. mean, I think that's, hey, make him earn it. You're right. Get under three minutes and everything is huge. Belgard has the third foul whistled against him. And now from the serve pro free throw line, Peyton Bodine buries a free throw. 50 to 49, St. John, the Woodchucks clinging to a one point lead. Bodine can tie it. Back iron, no good. Bodine fighting for a rebound off him, out of bounds. He slaps his hands. He could have had that one too, as he knew it was going to be shorter or long, excuse me, and he went hard left. And that's right where the ball went, but just kicked it out of bounds. All right, she's officially in the pressure cooker. Yes, she is. 2.28 to play, one point lead. Baker from downtown. Wide left on that delivery. See, and that's that, that's one of those shots I'm talking about, Todd. You walk right down and you throw up a three. You got a one point lead. How about a couple ball reversals? You know, I mean, that just that, that that's the shot I don't like. St. John has some has had some good luck here in this zone here. Better get on Reggie Bruner. Steps in 18 footer, and it's good. And Velva leads. You call it TD. That's a big shot right there. Is well, he's the, the three wasn't there, and why not step into that hole in that two-three zone? Uh, if you're going to play zone, he's the zone buster. Yep. Charbonneau working on the block comes out to Baker. Baker wants to attack. Baker driving double pump. Nice play. Baker right back at him with his eighth point. These, and these guys are so crafty around the basket, you know, back to the basket, whichever way. Ben Shep in the lane, converged on. Gives it to Bruner, nice cut from the weak side. Yes. Oh. Bruner gets in double figures. That's what you got to do when you're in weak side. Come over, come across, gets to the middle, finds an opening, gets the pass. Back and forth we go, trading hoops. Velvo by a point. Now the Aggies come back man to man. Post up Dakota, operating against Sandy. Inside out, Gray Bear didn't have his feet set on that one, almost shanked it in off yeah, the backboard. That was, that was gross. <laughs> that, that was a heat check that was not hot at all. The, the furnace was out. Baseline, we go to Sandy. In the lane, Bruner fires, no good. Sandy crashing the glass off his hands. Last touch by Peyton Bodine. And with 54 seconds to play, Velva has a lead of one, and we get a Hub International Insurance timeout on the court. Hub is a leading North American insurance brokerage. Pressure cooker from the Dale Brown Classic. Velva with a one-point lead. St. John has the basketball, and we come back after this break on the PSP Network. This broadcast on the PSP Network is proudly brought to you by... coverage of the Dale Brown Classic on the PSP Network. Crunch time here in game three. Velva has a one point lead. St. John with the basketball. Woodchucks can take a lead. See what they come up with out of the timeout here. They weave it up on top. Gray Bear gives it off to Belgard. 15 to shoot. Post up, Dakota. Tries to operate, and 
one, they're going to say Peyton Bodine bodied him up a little too much. Oh, that's a that's good defense, but just kind of got a little bit too close. He knew he was trying to drop step. He got got over in the play in front of him, but the good thing is there's only there's only two team fouls. Yeah, I was uh, just going to say so that. You got is, time. Velvo's got some fouls to give here. Is now you get a full timeout for the St. John Woodchucks. Is that just the second team foul? The second half? Yeah. Holy second cow. team foul. Minor, we got four wins, Minnewakan, and Dickinson Trinity coming up next. We'll follow that up with Powers Lake, Burke Central taking on Beulah, Shiloh Christian and Thompson, and our Redeemers and North Star is your nightcap. In case you missed it earlier, your two games uh, that went final earlier today, Stanley defeats TGU 60 to 30, and Hazen outlasts West Hope Newburgh. 51-49. There's your finals from the Dale Brown Classic, and then this one. And we still got th some things to settle here. Yeah. Is so now what are they going to do? You're down one. I mean, I, I think you want to get the ball back inside. It feels to me like they're most comfortable getting the ball in, inside with a move, uh, and then it creates obviously some inside-out stuff. Yeah, I think if 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 Velva is going to play man-to-man, -man, somehow you got to get either Baker or Dakota a touch. Yeah. I mean, uh, yeah. that seems what they've been most comfortable trying to do here. Watch the out-of-bounds guy. Dakota's taking it, uh, taking it out of bounds, but. 27 seconds to play. Shot clock is off. Baker has it on the inbounds, and Velva does indeed go man-to-man. -man. Dakota thinks about a drive from the right side. They clear out a side for him. Dakota, double team, goes up anyway, and he's fouled. Yep, as so we talked about, get the ball inside to one of the bigs, and they're the guy that had the moves, and he kept that, he kept the pivot foot, re revolved around it, leaned in, split the defense, drew the foul. Ethan Dakota, a 6'4 senior, one for two from the stripe today. Two big serve Ooh. pro charity tosses here, and he misfires on the first. Now he's got to make one to tie the ball game. Bodine Hank comes out, and they bring in Kraft. The lefty. So let's see. It takes me about eight seconds to sprint downstairs unless I can repel from here to the next <laughs> level. Let's not start with that one. There's not enough rope. There he goes. Dakota line drives and ties it. 53-53. What can Velva do here? St. John is going to be man to man. Reggie Bruner down to seven. Down to six. Oh, he lost the handle. Gray Bear has possession and they're going to get a timeout and they're going to put some time back on the clock as it was down to, it shows point one, but. I think I, it was around three ish. Yep. Between two and three seconds is when. The zebras are conferring. Now we'll keep this right here as Hank Bodine will be coming into the basketball game. I needed, I needed Woody downstairs for me to get the guys to not leave. Are we not resetting? Oh, yeah. oh it's going to be 3.2 yeah, seconds. Yeah, that makes sense. Yep. That's between three and four. So you're going to have the ball near the timeline with 3.2 seconds to send this baby to conclusion here in regulation. Otherwise, we could have bonus basketball from the Dale Brown Classic. If not, that'll get us into our planning team financial advisors. Shots Crossroads post game. Well, and if I'm Velva right now, Chuck, with just three fouls, as, as long as anybody's not shooting, you still got three fouls to give yeah. with three seconds. I mean, exactly. if they're there's, going away from the basket, just there's no way you should get a shot off. Let them take a dribble and just. I don't even want a half court shot. Play a little hack a shack. All right, here we go. Baker, Belgard, Longi, Dakota, and Gray Bear on the court for St. John. Timeout. And Isaac Sondral says, all right, I want to see what kind of formation you're going to come out in. And is this a full timeout? I think it is. We'll take a short 30 second break here. With our game tied at 53 on your BNC Bank scoreboard, final 3.2 after this short timeout on the PSP network.
So how you combat the logic of Velva trying to get fouls is if I'm St. John, I want to get something going to the basket. And as soon as I see somebody getting close to me, like they're coming for a foul, I'm going into the shooting motion. And with 3.2 seconds, why not? Why not? Because that might be the best look you're going to get. So you do the line. I'm getting something moving. You, exactly. You want to get the ball this way in, in the fork, front court. You, you don't want a, a defensive ball entry. Dakota will trigger it in. Fired across court to Longy. Gets it to Belgard. Shot put up. Driving. Banker. No good. It looked like Velva was even trying to foul him there. And I'm just like, Ooh. what are you trying to do? Once he's in a shooting motion, wow. you do not go for the foul. That was pretty good execution there yeah, by St. John to get a look from the top of the key. But we got bonus basketball upcoming. From the Dale Brown Classic, our overtime session is next. Tied at 53 on your BNC Bank scoreboard. We're back with OT after this break on the PSP Network. This broadcast on the PSP Network is proudly brought to you by... Two minutes wasn't enough to settle game number three, so we tip it off. And four minutes are on the clock, and we got OT. And now you get the same thing as we had earlier, where game clock was rolling, but the shot clock was not. Those need to be in unison. Uh oh. Okay, I missed what happened there, T. Well, the shot clock and the game clock were not synchronized. Okay. They had non-synchronous swimming. <laughs> and so the game clock was once again rolling down and now they're having all kinds of problems as you can see on our BNC Bank scoreboard there. We got 35 minutes in overtime. That would be a long session considering regulation was only 32 <laughs> minutes. <laughs> and so we got 30 seconds on the okay that'd be six. Okay now we're good. We got six seconds ran off off of four minutes, and we got the shot clock, which should be 35, down to 29. All right, now we got synchronized swimming. Tip pass, Kraft collects. St. John got into some zone here. In the paint, Shep tried to bounce it down low. Too much congestion there. Now it's loose. We got a scrum, and the alternating arrow is going to belong to St. John. It's a right execution in that zone. You got it to the middle, tried to... Bounce pass it down low. I'm not sure that was the best one with yeah, that's on, on the bottom of that zone. That might have been just a little yeah, a little lob pass down low or something, but the bounce pass was not getting through. Yeah, I mean, they got a post touch, but man, there was so much congestion down there. Just not, not smart there. Belgard operating, gives it off to Baker. Baker stepping through, leaning in, free throw line, violating off the glass, got it back, put it in. Almost like he knew that, hey, I'm going to throw this hard against the glass because if I miss it, I'm going to get it right back for the layup. I think one of the keys to overtime here is how long St. John's going to be able to keep uh, uh, Brayton Baker in the game with those four fouls, right? Because he's, he's a difference maker for oh, the totally. Woodchucks. Bruner for three against that zone. Hello. He said a little backpedal with the blonde hair flowing. That left wing, you can't leave me open, boys. He is a shooter, and he's a zone buster. Velva by a point here in OT, 56-55. Oh, there's a step. But then his shot was blocked. Gray Bear. Now Dakota had his pocket picked. Peyton oh. Bodine fires it up ahead, but it's intercepted by Gray Bear. Gray Bear leaves it for Charbonneau. He fires one up, no good. Couldn't get it back. Peyton Bodine bangs into a couple guys. Coach is saying, hey, Peyton, slow down, buddy. This is like a NASCAR. You're just waiting for the wreck. This is not a wreck. Bodine gets it to Bruner from downtown. 
When you're feeling it, you're feeling it, TD. Right early in the shot clock, but when you're a shooter and you feel it, man, you want it. You ain't looking at the shot clock. Reggie Bruner back to back gives Velva a lead. Baker to Belgard. Not a gray bear. High screen and roll, a hard hedge there by Ben Shep. Down to five to shoot. And a takeaway. Peyton Bodine yeah. with a step around. Coach was screaming, stop! <laughs> he was ready to fire that was, up ahead. He totally was. Kraft leaves it from a tough pass, and Sandy had it at his shoe tops. And it was, again, the right pass. Yep. Got to the middle of the zone. Sandy did exactly what he was supposed to do. He dove to the basket from that baseline, and then you throw it at his feet. Yep. <laughs> It was it was all set up there for the taken. Could have been an easy land oh, for Sandy. Totally. And a six point lead. Baker wants to attack. Got it. Leap and leaner. Man, he he is turning it on now. It's both points in overtime. A bucket late in the game. A little hesitation dribble. And he's so long too, you know. Ben Shep picks up the personal foul. Now Baker at the line for the end one. Free throw rattles in, knocks Shooters it down from the, the Serve Pro free throw line. Serve Pro with trained technicians, advanced technology, fire and water cleanup and restoration. It's Serve Pro. One point advantage for Velva. Now they get a cut. Bruner, oh, denied at the 10, but it goes right to Kyle Sandy. Well, who else? The garbage man, Kyle Sandy, cleaning up. And you get a timeout on the court. This will be a full timeout. We'll take a short break. 107 to play in the contest. And it's a three-point lead for the Velva Aggies. St. John will have the basketball when we come back. All right, bring it up, bring it up. Come on, come on, come on. Someone's got to call a play. All right, let's go. I right, zoom, spider two, Y banana. You don't like that one, okay. I right, 40 power. No. Don't want that one either? No. All right, go kick off. Get out of here. Let's go. First Western is your independent community bank with all the online conveniences you want and an experienced team you can count on. First Western Bank and Trust. You can bank on us. The right way to top a sub is with real red wine vinegar made from red grapes and no food coloring. And the right way to film it is in slow motion, obviously. Because authentic ingredients make a sub above. Uh, happy holidays. Good to have you on the PSP Network this afternoon for our wall-to-wall -wall coverage of the Dale Brown Classic. Here, Velva leads by three. St. John, the Woodchucks have the basketball. Looking for a tie, hit one from downtown, or get an and one. They look backside, Baker tipped away as Hank Bodine's on him like a postage stamp. They leave Belgard open for a three ball, yes! Oh, oh, oh. Nothing but net, wide open. Somehow in the scramble defense, they left him open that left wing. <laughs> we looking at a double OT session here possibly? St. John switches the play up top. They try to get it down low, almost tipped away. Peyton Bodine leaves it for Hank Bodine, short. Rebound, tipped St. John, and it's tipped again as Peyton Bodine wraps it out of bounds, and St. John will have a chance here with 22 seconds to play. Hank had a good look from 15 feet, left it short, and then they almost got the rebound back. Velva's gonna extend some pressure. St. John gets it in to Brayton Baker. Velva still with a couple fouls to give. Down to 14 seconds. Baker off a high screen. Gives it off to Gray Bear. Gets into the lane, leaves it. Longy layup, put it up too strong. Rebound Shep, and now you get a foul. Ooh, I guess that's only the sixth, but that's actually, man. That's actually a pretty good foul. Yeah, it was. Until, as long as you realize that they weren't in the bonus. <laughs> If that would have been... We're going to give him credit that he knew. That his coach had talked to him the last time out. We got a foul to give. Gray Bear picks up his first personal, so that's good recognition. <laughs> We're going with it. 
All right, so now not, not frustration, it. he just missed the layup, but <laughs> recognition. That's right. Uh, we'll keep this right here. 2.3 seconds to play. Velva is going to have to go the length of the court. I know they got a guy with a good arm back uh, there yeah. in, in uh, Ben Shep. So you think he's going to take it out. I'm betting he's going to take it out <laughs> in Bruner somewhere. The, the the trick for me is, you know, some people like to put pressure on the basketball. Like they're going to have Brayton Baker, somebody long and lanky, stand there, you know, taking away his vision and so on and so forth. I, I have never liked that. I, I've, I'd much rather flood the other end and try to take away some sort of deep pass and uh, play a little more zone coverage, if you will. And it's after a foul, so you can't run the baseline. And so there you yep. have Ben Quarterback Shep. Ben Shep. Who's going to be taking it out. And it uh, looks like St. John is going to put somebody on the ball. So they'll be man to man on the backside. Charbonneau at 6-4, excuse me, Dakota go at 6-4. Coach Thomas says nothing behind you. Ben Shep gets it into Bodine. Kyle Sandy from the timeline. Oh, good off ball. the backboard. Yes, it was another good execution and a good look. Both teams have had yeah. chances here. And uh, hey, more bonus basketball. Double wow. overtime from the Dale Brown Classic. Our second overtime session comes up after this break on your BNC Bank scoreboard at the end of OT. St. John 61, Velva 61. Jeez. <laughs> Transformative for your small business. The best bank for your business will offer competitive fees and so much more. At BNC National Bank, our team is proud to offer you a helpful, supportive, above and beyond banking relationship. Starting to stress about the complexities of qualifying for a small business loan? BNC can guide you through the process with much less stress and likely far more success. Speak to one of our team members today. Every 10 minutes, three people in the United States will die from a preventable incident. More people are dying on our roadways and in their homes than ever before, but that's where the North Dakota Safety Council can help. Safety is our mission from the workplace to any place. We're a private nonprofit that offers more than 150 training courses that are dynamic, hands-on, and effective. From CPR and first aid to driver safety and even workplace violence preparedness, we want to make sure your loved ones come home safe each night. Go to ndsc.org to see how together we can make a difference. Thirty-six minutes haven't been enough to settle this one, so we're playing forty. Reggie Bruner gets the tip, and he has a land. Yeah, Baker was behind him, TD. There's no way he was going to get his fifth foul. Bruner is just, he's the guy that's been turned things on. He's got 10 points in the, probably the last six minutes. Vilva has a lead here in the second overtime. And a takeaway. Peyton Bodine with a step around on the post. Gives it off to Bruner, the man of the hour. Leap and shot, no good. Rebound, Dakota. Oh, he just hoists it down court. The high school hideout. Here comes Baker. Layup good. Yeah, the high school hideout. The recognition by Dakota, and he just threw it up in the air. Knew his friend. He heard the voice. TD, he heard it. He, he said, that was an I'm open voice. He threw a catapult pass. He totally did. St. John still in this zone defense. Kraft straight on. Haven't heard from him in a while. Preston Kraft from downtown. Kraft, yeah, he had missed badly his last few threes. Confident for the lefty. Dakota crosses over. Gets it out to Baker. Collects. Drives against Sandy. Lost the handle. Almost traveled. Shot three-pointer put up there by... Gray Bear, now you get a high school hideout for Shep. He wants to drive, reverse score. Oh, what a play. Good defense, getting back on defense for Belgard. But what a finish by the quarterback, Ben Shep, as he took the reception that time. Velva by five here in the second overtime. Baker spinning against Sandy. Gray Bear, shot fake. Another shot fake. And he shuffled the puppies. And see that one right in front of the official, but it was the the defense by Bruner who stayed on him. I think the Aggies are starting to feel a little, so a lot of time left. But yeah, there's 
They were up, last time they were up 59-55 in the last overtime. Reggie Bruner just walks into the front court, goes screen and roll with Shep, rejects the screen. He almost walked. Yeah, it looked like he did too. Sandy almost walked. Kraft leaves it for Peyton Bodine. Bruner fires, oh, in and out. Rebound Belgard. St. John wants to run. Belgard, Gray Bear, back to Belgard for three. Nope, short, a little short on these shots here in overtime for St. John. Bruner wants to attack, leaves it, oh, and a play. Peyton Bodine for two. Wrap around, back pass by Reggie Bruner to Bodine, who was running the floor with him. Well, that was a pretty play right there. Reggie Bruner has been the man of the hour for Velva, setting up his teammates, scoring and doing it all here as the Velva Aggies lead 70 to 63 in overtime. We're back with the finish this one after this break on the PSP Network. Fire damage, Agent Fred Iyer. From burnt to unburnt, he does that. The right way to top a sub is with real red wine vinegar made from red grapes and no food coloring. And the right way to film it is in slow motion, obviously. Because authentic ingredients make a sub above. Big shots here in overtime by Preston Kraft. Peyton Bodine, Ben Shep. Velva's gonna play full court man to man. They still got two fouls to give, TD. St. John oh. gonna turn it over. And you know what, it's the pressure by Preston Kraft. He was all over the guy with the ball. I think that was Gray Bear and just forced a bad pass. Now St. John wants to extend some pressure. Reggie Bruner. Just meanders his way in the front court, crosses over a couple times against Gray Bear, leaves it for Ben Shep. Shep collects, weaves his way, shovels a pass. Kraft open for another three ball, in and out, no good. Rebound, Ben Shep. He turns and fires, no good. He didn't I mean, shoot it. You got 33 seconds in the shot clock yep. when you get that offensive rebound. Yep. Scoring time. <laughs> right? Scoring time. Holy cow, TD. That, I mean, they're up seven, but that is a mistake. You do a great job getting an offensive rebound, and you got to know I'm going to dribble it out, and we got the clock just potential reset, or I can look at it at a minimum and go, oh, we still got 20 seconds left. Inbounds comes to Baker. Oh, almost taken away by Shep as he did a great job of kind of creating an inverted double team there at the yep. timeline. Under a minute to play here, seven point lead for Velva. Aggies looking to improve to two and one and give St. John their first loss of the season. Dakota freeze for three, hit it. I think he was on the line, wasn't he, TD? Couldn't tell. I think he stepped in and he, this is what they give him. They're oh, still, he said two. Yeah, he, they, the ball fake and stepped in and he was just inside the three point line. I know all about that. I'd have about 8,000 career more points <laughs> if I wouldn't have my foot on the three point line. <laughs> we would digress if we got into that story though. <laughs> 70 to 65, St. John gets a two when they needed it. And now you, know, you might be in a situation if you're the Woodchucks here where you, you may need to put in some designated foulers and see if uh, Velva's gonna give you some favors here by missing some bonus free throws. Yeah, I'm with you. You gotta, you gotta foul guys right away and who you're, see who's in the basketball game. Obviously should, should be your best free throw shooters. We don't have stats from Velva, so we're not sure who that is. Well, I wouldn't foul, I wouldn't foul Bruner. You know, probably if uh, Ben Shep has missed a few free throws today, he might be the designated guy. He's now inbounding though. St. John will extend full court pressure. Bruner has it. Shep, oh, that's gonna be Baker. That's the last guy you wanna. Yeah, holy cow, you had an opportunity for the other, for the other guy up there, which was Gray Bear, who has, I don't know, I'm for any fouls, I'm sure that's not right, but Baker is not the guy that should have fouled. Hey, no, uh, tip of the cap though to Brayton Baker though, he played a long time with four fouls. So, you know, you, yeah. got, you got to learn those lessons sometimes. Yep, no, yeah. he really, and then you know what? Effectively too, he's the one who scored in overtime and down the stretch. 
Ben Shep says, you know what, I missed some in the third and fourth quarter, but I'm not missing them in double overtime. As he knocks down the front end of the bonus from the serve pro free throw line, second one, rattles in. Clutch free tosses for Ben Shep. Belgard back for St. John. Gray Bear open for three. Oh, and he traveled. Oh, I didn't see that. I did not see I that He either. must have took an extra step as he caught it and turned. He must have just kind of walked into it. And he misfired on it anyway, but nonetheless, 36 seconds to play here in double OT. Velva having a hard time getting it in, and it is taken away. And down low, Gray Bear puts it up, double pump, scored it. St. John will turn and burn a timeout. 72-67. Grayson Graybear just scored that one after a nice steal for St. John. Minor after the game, we'll have our post-game show is always brought to you by Shots Crossroads. You can get filled up in their delicious menu that includes the old famous 99. Order online at shotscrossroads.com and planning team financial advisors helping clients work towards financial freedom. 29.6 seconds to play here in game three of the Dale Brown Classic. Double overtime as Velva leads by five and still just seven team fouls on St. John. So, you know, in theory, you could make you could make Velva shoot two more bonus free throws here. That's what you got to do, and that's what you can't do is turn it over if you're yeah. Velva. Yeah, you got to be smarter than that. Just not. I don't know what there wasn't a guy coming back. I think on that it was just a two-man press breaker. It's gonna say look deep, but they've got somebody back. Well, St. John's gonna be playing all the passing lanes here and trying to take things away. Double team if they can. Velva just gotta be strong with the basketball. As Shep will trigger it in. Gets it into Reggie Bruner, and he's mugged right away by Belgard, and will walk to the other end, and Reggie Bruner will be shooting a bonus free throw. That was the first step. Let's get the ball inbounds, and they did. They trapped him. But as a coach, that's what you got to do is foul right away. Extend the basketball game. We'll see if Bruner. Belgard picks up his fourth, and now St. John only got two guys in on the rebounding lane. Free throw up, didn't matter. That's a confidence stroke right there, huh? I don't think this guy lacks any confidence shooting the basketball. No. Reggie Bruner sets another one. That one's too strong. Sandy mops it up. Peyton Bodine now to Kraft, and yeah. St. John couldn't corral. The re but here's here's my point about that. You you got four stalls in the barn, and you only got three guys in there on that last rebound. You only had two in there for a while, and so yeah. that's just uh, that's just a uh, lack of execution for St. John. Now a bonus free throw for Preston Kraft, and he knocks it down. Well, now I think the singing's starting, maybe. Yep. All right, I'm going to try 40 steps. Here we go. <laughs> Second one, short. Seven-point lead, however, with 22 seconds to play. Longy has to force the issue. Hesitation dribble drive. Fires it in the corner. Gray Bear, three ball, corner pocket, no good. Rebound, Ben Shep, and he's going to be fouled with 11 seconds to play. And this one is just about in the books. Velva is going to pick up a signature win against a ranked, I shouldn't say ranked, a team receiving votes in the latest Class B boys basketball poll. Reggie Bruner did a lot of heavy lifting in the fourth quarter in overtime and in double overtime and now Velva has a double bonus. Braden Bossert checks on for Velva along with Hank Bodine as Reggie Bruner. Free throw, second one, no good. Missed them both, but another Sandy rebound. Velva doesn't need to shoot it. St. John's not going to foul and this one's going to go final. On your BNC Bank scoreboard, game three in double overtime. Velva 74, St. John 67. The Velva Aggies improve to two and one, and they get a signature win over the St. John Woodchucks. And St. John will taste defeat for the first time this season as they fall by seven here in double overtime to the Velva Aggies.
We're on our planning team financial advisor, Shots Crossroads postgame show. We're going to get a word with head coach Isaac Sandro and Reggie Bruner. Chuck Claremont down on the sidelines has got his particulars taken care of. Take it away, Chuck. All right, thanks, TD. You got to love these early season games going on overtime. I know as coach, right, you maybe lose a little sleep, you get some more gray hairs, but from a strategic standpoint, they're good games. There's a lot of things we can learn there. That was a lot of fun. Um, you know, early in the season we, with these snowstorms or whatever, we haven't had a lot of rhythm, so I guess we got to play some extra free basketball. That's a good thing. A lot of teaching moments there we'll go over, but these guys have a hell of a lot of fight. It's a lot of fun to coach them. And that's the thing about these guys, as we talked about, you know, when whether you're successful in whatever sport, it, it everything kind of flows together, and clearly the basketball success you can, or football success, you can see the guys confident in those situations. Yeah, they don't want to lose. They just they work hard at all three sports. So they're like. I Said they're a lot of fun to coach. Um, this this one right here, I don't think he, I don't think he had a point before halftime. He's just he's a gamer. He'll just show up. If he gets if he ever learns to practice harder, he's gonna be an awesome player. But he's pretty damn good now too. So, <laughs> and you know, the rest of your guys too. You got guys like Kyle Sandy. For some reason, he always seems to know where he needs to be. He's in a great place time and time again. Incredible worker. That's the only way to describe Kyle Sandy. He works so dang hard. Um, he's been sick all week too. He barely came to practice yesterday. So I was worried. I would like to put him on the, on the number 11 there earlier in the game. But yeah, all day they work hard. So like you fun. said, a lot of coaching moments. And that's the, group, the fun part about games like this. Yeah, and they make the coach look pretty good because I made a couple mistakes there. So, well, congratulations, coach. Good Thank job, you. Reggie. The first question I got to ask you is, what's more fun, catching on a 76-yard touchdown pass in a championship, or making a three to potentially win a game? Probably the championship one. Okay. Now, if this would have been in a championship game, maybe it's different. Yep. Yeah, that would have been way different. And, you know, for you, the confidence you obviously showed, the coach just talked about it, saying you struggled shooting the first half, but your confidence didn't wane. When you got open, you hit that first shot, all of a sudden the floodgates opened. Yeah, just team needed me. They, yeah, it's easy when Kyle, Sandy, and Peyton get in there. They double them eat right for the kick out, wide open. You know, talk, talk about what defense means to you guys, because it seems to me like that's where you thrive. You guys are kind of like kamikaze chaos defense, and that's what really keeps you in all these ball games. Yeah, we key on our defense. Hopefully, offense comes as the season goes, but we key on our defense a lot. And for you, winning, uh, you know, winning one game isn't going to be a big thing for you. Looking at that super region and moving forward like that, a lot of confidence your basketball team to have good success this year. Yeah, just got to keep playing like we have been. Get a little better on the offensive end, and I think we'll be fine. Congratulations. Great job. All right. Get a little better on the offensive end. Hey, that's what it's all about, right? Reggie Bruner, back up to you, TD. Yeah, well done. You heard there from Isaac Sandro, the head coach for the Velva Aggies, and Reggie Bruner, the sophomore, again, uh, had his mark on this game today, especially in the second half, as the Aggies win this one over St. John in double overtime. Final score as we will bring back uh, our post-game shows. We'll Wrap up this one and give you our MVP of the game along with our move of the game as part of our planning team financial advisor, Shots Crossroads post game. After this timeout, a final score, Valva in double overtime defeats St. John 74-67. For a full service financial plan or planning for farm or business succession, Planning Team Financial Advisors is here to help you work toward achieving your financial goals. With locations in Bismarck, Garrison, and Center, our full service team of professionals are dedicated to helping you work towards achieving your financial goals. Visit us online, planningteam.com. Securities offered through LPL Financial, member of FINRA and SIPC. Investment advisory services offered through New Edge Advisors, LLC, a registered investment advisor. New Edge Advisors, LLC, and Planning Team Financial Advisors are separate entities from LPL Financial. Oh, easy, easy. I think I'm good. You got my good side, right? <laughs> Not too many lights. I don't want to get fried before my time. <laughs> oh, it's egg-tastic. You never know what dish you're going to end up in. My dream dish is a 99. It's so popular. Me and a fellow egg tag-teaming with some crispy golden hash browns. Have you seen those hash browns? Those guys are shredded. <laughs> Throw in some diced ham, onions, and melted cheese. Oh, it's a party for your taste buds. Oh, here comes Chevy. Hold on, Chevy. Did you guys get everything that you needed? 99, here I come. Shots Crossroads. It's an excellent place to eat.
It's time for the Shots Crossroads and Planning Team Financial Advisors postgame show. Now for a look at game stats and analysis. Let's go to the postgame show. Three games in the books from the Dale Brown Classic here at the Minot State University Dome. Hope you enjoyed the wall-to-wall coverage up to this point on the PSP Network in double overtime. Velva defeats St. John 74-67. Stanley won the opener today. Hazen came back to to beat West Hope Newburgh in game two, and now the Velva Aggies improved their overall record to two and one as St. John falls to two and one as we're back on our planning team financial advisor shots crossroads post game show. Whether you're looking for a full service financial plan or planning for farm or business succession planning team financial advisors here to help you work towards achieving your financial goals. Visit us online at planningteam.com and shots crossroads your post game headquarters order online at shotscrossroads.com. All right, a few things to take care of here in our post game. Chuck, first let's run through the uh, final game numbers here as the Aggies win this one in double overtime by seven. All right, for the Woodchucks, 14 points for Brayden. Brayden Baker before he fouled out, four for Tough Longy. 10 points for Cashman Belgard. 18 for Grayson Graybear. 13 for Ethan Dakota. Two for Isaac Charbonneau. And then four for Caden Belgard for their total of. Six was it 63, right? The final 70 63, they took it down 74 67. Hello, not even close. 74 67. Okay, 74 67 for their total of 67 points as they had 14 points in overtimes. For the Velva Aggies, <clears throat> they had five guys in double figures led by the 20 points of Reggie Bruner. All of those after halftime. 15 for Kyle Sandy. 13 for Preston Kraft, and then 12 for Ben Shep. Peyton Bodine also just short of the double figure. Mark at nine, five for Hank Bodine for their total of 74. It was 20, 12 to 10 after one quarter, 28-27 after at halftime. So the Woodchucks led both at one and two quarters. Then they were down four, 42-38 after three quarters. And they're actually down late. They were down 53-52 came back and tied it at 55 at the end of the regulation or it looks like it was 53 all excuse me regulation and then it was uh, tied at ha- 61 all at overtime and then it was just too much Velva kind of crank up the D made some big shots Bruner hit another shot as did uh, Kraft hit a big one in overtime as they ended up pulling away 74 to 67 <laughs> that's my man Mr. Kevin Ball right there <laughs> and so uh, Velva Aggies finished with a big victory right there that's a good win that's yeah. a really good win nice win for the Aggies couple things to take care of here as we first bring you our move of the game brought to you by Jobbers Moving and Storage Jobbers can help you move across town or across the country locations in Bismarck Minot Fargo and Aberdeen find them online at jobberswarehouse.com and our move of the game today is well there's a bunch of them but the one we like TD was in overtime Ben Shep going to the hole drawing the defense late and then a wrap around behind the right kind of behind the guy with the right hand a back pass over to Peyton Bodine for the layup that was a big bucket in the actually the double overtime that he made that one that was a big move that's our jobbers moving in storage move of the game as Shep to Peyton Bodine. Yeah, it looked like it was one of those, probably a number of plays that for Velva looks like, is this going to be a turnover? Is this going to be a car accident, kind of a wreck? And it turns into a great play. It's absolutely. Just a, another one, and it's the Shep to Peyton Bodine layup in OT. It's your move of the game brought to you by Jobbers Moving and Storage. Their efficient step-by-step approach to move management keeps everyone on the same page. Locations in Bismarck, Minot, Fargo, and Aberdeen. Find them online at jobberswarehouse.com. Four wins, Minnewakan and Dickinson Trinity warming up here on the court. They're game four. And last thing for us here is our MVP of the game brought to you by Sport Clips to make you feel like an MVP with the experience at Sport Clips. And today's MVP is a testament to it's not how you start the game, it's how you finish the game. <laughs> well, Reggie Bruner did not score at halftime, and maybe he got a halftime pump me up speech from the coach Isaac Sandro saying, hey, we are not going to win with you scoring zero. 
Well, he stepped up, he hit a three, and when he did that, you made a comment, Todd, saying, wait, look out, he hits a three from the left wing, and then he ends up scoring 20 uh, points and 11 big ones in overtime and double overtime. So he was a finisher right there, and he was cool as the other side of the pillow and that uh, that extra of that, the interview, too, is just just out there, man. The blonde hair fits him well, you know what I mean? <laughs> he looks like he could fit right in with the surfboard out in California. He's our Sport Clips MVP of the game. Reggie Bruner, 20 points. Yeah, the sophomore with all 20 of his coming after halftime as Sport Clips will keep you looking your best. Checking online with a hairstylist today at sportclips.com. Three games in the books. Stanley, Hazen, and Velva pick up wins in games one, two, and three. None better than that double overtime win here for the Velva Aggies, 60 or 74-67 over a very game St. John Woodchuck's ball club. We'll take a break. We'll come back and we'll change the cockpit here. Scott Woodmancy, Perry Hansen will bring you home for the rest of the day. Next up, it's the four wins Minnewakan Indians and the Dickinson Trinity Titans. This is the Dale Brown Classic. And this is the PSP Network. I'm a grateful person on a lot of levels. I've been given so many great opportunities. But most of all, even as a little kid, I was taught a set of values. Like tools for life, hard work, responsibility, and the key to making it all work, commitment. First Western Bank and Trust, you can bank on us. The right way to top a sub is with real red wine vinegar made from red grapes and no food coloring. And the right way to film it is in slow motion, obviously. Because authentic ingredients make a sub above. This broadcast on the PSP Network is proudly brought to you by Hi, I'm Agent Simon Irv Pro with CRSF. What is CRSF? We're the Cleanup and Restoration Special Forces. Hoorah! We're Surf Pro's first responders to your property's disaster. Admit it, you're no good at handling disaster alone. Like when you got dumped in high school by Janet Fillmore. She married three-time world champion yodeler Jovan Bovich. With the Janet disaster, you didn't have a team. Now, you have a team. Elite Surf Pro operatives highly trained in disaster cleanup and restoration. If it's fire damage, Agent Fred Iyer. From burnt to unburnt, he does that. But oh wait, it's water. Boom, Agent Winston Otter.
He's been called the human sponge. But Simon, what about mold? Agent Marlon Ohl. He holds the world record for fastest mold remediation. And finally, Agent Smith. He's in charge of restoring your property to its original state. So if you sprung a leak, lit your curtains on fire, or your insulation looks like weak old bagels, call SurfPro. In southwestern and south central North Dakota on any given day at any given moment, a Dakota Community Bank and Trust customer is logging in or signing on to do their online or mobile banking. We believe that community banking can blend both the past with down-home customer service in-house and the future with modern banking conveniences and technology for our customers anywhere, like here or here, all while honoring our long-standing tradition of community-first oriented banking here at Dakota Community Bank and Trust. Ackerman Svold, your neighbors, friends, and family who are working for you. The local team with local availability and accountability for all of your engineering, architecture, environmental, transportation, and land development needs. Your project can rely on Ackerman Svold. Find them online at ackermansvold.com. When you start your project, talk with Ackerman Surveying and Associates. Our experienced surveying team guides you in the right direction with planning, planning, and lot and boundary surveys. The trusted name in land surveying, the trusted name in architecture and engineering is Ackerman Survey and Ackerman Esfold. Find them at ackermansfold.com. They're in the book here at the Dale Brown Classic on the campus of Monarch State University. As we've got four more to go here on the PSP Network. Glad to have you aboard. A big thanks to TD and Charlie for getting this thing started here this morning at 11 o'clock. If you're just tuning in, glad to have you aboard on the PSP Network. Scott Woodmancy, Perry Hansen with you for the next three right here. Uh, courtside, uh, I shouldn't say we are courtside, but up a few levels at the Monad State Dome in game number one. It was Stanley knocking off TGU by a score 60 to 30, and then Hazen over West Hope Newburgh by a score 51 to 49. And then a game that just ended a good one, it was Velva knocking off St. John in double overtime 74 67, and that sets up our fourth game of the day at a heavyweight tilt. It is, it's the number one ranked team in the state of North Dakota, the Four Winds Minnewakan Indians taking on the Dickinson Trinity Titans who received votes in the most recent Class A basketball poll. So it should be a fun one here. And Perry, I, uh, hey, welcome welcome to the broadcast, man. I know you've got a big day tomorrow, the Hoopster Classic tomorrow, but uh, boy, gr great two days up here in Minot. Yeah, a chance for a lot of these teams to uh, get a couple of games in. Uh, not much practicing going on the last 10 days with the weather, so you can kind of tell these teams are a little tired, but uh, it's a good, good, good time to play. Yeah, I talked to Rick Smith before the game. He said, I said, how you doing, coach? He goes, I said, I'm tired of practice. Yeah. And no question about it. Well, you look at these two teams, Dickinson Trinity led by two, I mean, two veteran coaches 
Greg Grinsteiner, 29 years at the helm. Rick Smith in his 24th year. Uh, Rick Smith running, they're going wire to wire last year, winning the state Class B Boys Basketball Championship, 27-0. And you look at these two teams, Dickinson Trinity, 13 state Class B basketball appearances. Four wins, been a walk in nine. Dickinson Trinity, two titles, 2004 and 2006. And four wins, been a walk in. They won titles in 2016 and 2022. So when you talk about a heavyweight matchup, when you talk about two historic teams in Class B basketball, Perry, these are the two teams that are at the top of the list. Right, you know, and Rick Smith just does such a great job year in, year out. He's bringing back a couple of All-State candidates. And coach, coach Grinsteiner over there, and you got McBandy, who was a longtime college coach. Those two are going to always have something uh, up their sleeve a little bit. This is going to be a fun game. I, it's going to be kind of a, a lot of defense from Trinity and a lot of up down the court from four wins. Yeah, well, you look at Four Winds Metawakan as uh, they've only got one game under their belt. Uh, that was a 70-54 win over Four Winds Metawakan and Dickinson Trinity. Well, they've got a couple under their belt, or they've got a couple under the belt as Dickinson Trinity comes here two and one. Four Winds Metawakan comes in at one and zero. As you're listening to the uh, Shields pregame show, glad to have you aboard. Shields offers clothing, footwear, and gear for all your passion from fishing to fashion. They're dedicated, to offering you the best retail experience. Experiences. They introduce the starting lineups on the floor. They'll go like this. First of all, for the visitors on the scoreboard, the four wins Minnewaukan Indians, they'll go like this. That one guard will be Kelson Kaja. He's 5'5 and a senior. The other guard will be Kylan Kaja. He's 5'10 and a junior. At another guard spot will be Wade Nestel. He's 5'8 and a junior. At one forward will be Dalen Leftbear. He's 6'2 and a junior. And another forward will be, and he's electric, folks, a 6'4 junior. Dan Dang, dang. Their head coach in his 24th year is Rick Smith. For the home team on the scoreboard, the Titans from Dickinson Trinity, they'll go like this. At one guard will be Luke Schaub. He's 5'11 in the junior. The other guard will be Anthony Spradley. He's six foot in a senior. At one forward spot will be Jake Schaub. He's six foot in a junior. At another forward spot will be Jace Kovash. He's six one in the junior. And in the middle will be Cade Fitter. He's six three in a junior. Their head coach in his 27th year is Greg Grinstatter. So two veteran heavyweight coaches going at it. It should be a fun one here on the PSP Network. Stay tuned. Lots more to come here. We'll be back here tomorrow after tomorrow morning again. In, uh, for the Hoopster Classic, but folks have filed in a little bit for this one. The crowd is a little thin early, but now pretty decent crowd at hand as Four Winds breaks the huddle with their black uniforms with royal trimmed in white numbers, home whites for the Ch Trinity Titans. And tip is in the air, dang, dang, and it is controlled by Four Winds Minnewakan as they get it off to Nestel. He controls out near the timeline, man-to-man -man defense for the Titans. They it left side, that's to Kaja, that's Kylan, oh, dang, dang, drops it down low, left bear, shot up and good. And just like that, Four Winds Minnewakan is on the scoreboard. Four Winds coming with that traditional pressure, they're gonna, they're gonna do it full court. Pretty much the whole game. Yep, as Fitter controls. Now they throw it up the near side, and that's going to be a 10 second violation against Trinity. So their first tur turnover of the game. Just underway, quarter number one. Boy, I got to get transitions. Number one, I got to get transition to the basketball. I haven't done a game since the start of the year. Holy smokes. Here's Dang Dang, top of the key. Straight away three on the way. Bingo. Boy, he can do it all. Step out, go to the 10. Dang Dang gives him a 5 0 lead on the BNC Bank scoreboard. Quickly breaking the huddle with Jake Schaub. Left hander throws it up off the glass. That's going to be short, but there's going to be a foul. And we'll see what goes on. Foul's going to go on Kylan Kaja, first personal. That'll be the first team foul for Four Winds Minnewakan. Hey, we got a box here. Schaub misses the first one. He will have one more. Left hander sets and delivers. And he breaks the ice for the Titans at 5 1 Trinity. Back with it comes left or Nestel for Four Winds Minnewakan. Comes near side. That's Kylan Kaja. Out top of the key. Dang, dang. Crosses over. Pulls up straight away. Three rolls off. Rebound. Left bear layup. Got it. 
pretty athletic play there. Uh, left bear with that offensive rebound. Here's that pressure again. Yeah, there's a poke away, and Schaub does a good job of running it down. Now he gets it to Luke Schaub. Luke, trap out in the corner. Now he cross courts it to Kovash. Kovash down low to Fitter. Fitter dribbles on the right wing. Now he comes in the middle of the paint. Kovash. Kovash, that's Luke Schaub with it. Schaub, cross court. They go to. Shot is no good. We got a substitution in there for Trinity. That's Thomas Jacobs. He must have got the start. Kasia just picked up his second foul early in the game here. Kylan Kasia with two. Here's Jacobs with it, looks inside, nobody home there. Now to Schaub, that's Luke with it. Around the wheel they go, right corner to Fitter. Fitter up high to Jake Schaub. Now around the wheel they come left side to Luke. Luke on the bounce, nowhere to go. Right elbow they go to Kovash. Down the baseline. Cut off there, ball's on the ground, loose ball, and it's gonna be a jump ball, possession arrow in favor of Dickinson Trinity. This afternoon's game brought to you part by the UPS store located in South Broadway and Minot. They're open Monday through Friday, 8.30 to 7, and Saturday, 8.30 to 3. The UPS store located in the Marketplace Foods Plaza for all your packing and shipping needs. Trinity has 11 to shoot here now with the jump ball. And inbound is poked away and taken out of there by Kelson Kasia up the right side, dang dang in the corner. They go to Nestel. Round the wheel they go, left bear. Jabs goes in the 10, spins baseline, fall away. That one's off. Oh, that was a quick move there by Dalen Left Bear. Here comes Trinity back with it. They trail 7 1 on the BNC Bank scoreboard. Here's Shelb, left corner, Jacobs. Jacobs, nowhere to go. Now puts it on the floor. Now Jacobs crosses over, goes baseline, nothing there. Good pressure defense by Florence. Skip pass to Schaub. That was J Luke Schaub. Now to Jake. Now Luke. One bounce. Left hander. Stop and go move in the paint. Reverse layup. Rolls off. Dang, dang the rebound. And Forwin's been walking. Wants to run. Dang, dang. Crosses over down the left side to the 10. Flips it up. Loses it on the way there. That was knocked away by Cade Fitter. And it goes out of bounds. It will stay with Forwin's been walking. A little separation on that crossover from Dang Dang at the top. <laughs> As Nestel will inbound it, he does the Dang Dang. He goes baseline, turns, oh, suitcase violation. We'll go back the other way. As Dang Dang got a little too quick with the feet, turnover, and it'll be Trinity basketball. 7-1, they trail on the BNC Bank scoreboard, 459. Left to play here in the opening quarter to play from the Minot State Dome on the campus of Minot State University. Here's Luke Schaub with it. Now he gets it back to Jake. Now Jacobs, left wing three on the way, too strong. Weak side rebound, dang, dang. Up the near side comes Nestel. And Forwin's been a walk and wants to run. He attacks the 10 and flips it up, comes off. Rebound comes down to Fitterer. Gets it off to Luke Schaub. Now Jacobs. Here's a cutting fitter. Jump stop and swatted out of there by Dang Dang. Here's a lead pass to Kelson Kasia, taken away, and they're going to say Schaub was out of bounds. As Kasia couldn't corral it, and he goes out of bounds. Substitution coming in. And Max Leffer here coming in for Trinity. Max Leffer. Is it Leffer or Leffer? Leffer. It is Leffer. Yep. You see the contrasting styles already between the two coaches. Trinity likes to be very deliberate offensively, and four wins is on the goal yep. all the time. They inbound it, dang, dang, left wing. He's going to spot for three. That one rolls off. Rebound, kicked out to Luke Schaub. Here comes Schaub up the near side. Reverses his dribble, now goes up high to Jace Kovach. He's going to fire for three, two strong, long rebound. Comes down to, that's... St. Pierre. Keyshawn St. Pierre in the ball game. He gets it on the left wing. St. Pierre, now to Dang Dang. Now Nestel will reset. He attacks. Now inside Dang Dang. Dang Dang turns, baby hook in the paint, rattles it in for Dang Dang, and he's got five. Nice high low look there from Four Winds. Got Dang Dang all alone underneath the hoop, and that's tough to guard when he's straight out of the basket. A 9-1 start here, Trinity and Four Winds. They drop it down low. Kovash goes up, or that's Fitter, he goes up. Shot 
was no good, and the rebound putback was no good, and goes out of bounds. And Kelson Cajun is going to check back in. Left Bear is going to sit down. 319 to go on the BNC Bank scoreboard, 9-1. Here's a substitution as Thomas Jacobs comes back in for Dickinson Trinity. Dufiné was in for four wins here. Be set, be set. Oh, did I miss that one? Well, I think we both did. <laughs> that's him. Oh, that's him right there. Yeah, Dufiné yep. has it. Yep. Now dang dang in those pink shoes in the paint. Drops it, Dufiné, one step. Oh, tough layup and tie got it to go down. And Greg Grinsteiner wants a timeout. 2.52 to go. Opening quarter of play on the BNC Bank scoreboard. It's a Hub International Insurance timeout. It's Four Winds Been a Walk in 11, Trinity 1. Back with more after this timeout on the PSP Network. Our stylists are trained to understand the uh, nuances of cutting men's hair. Less pomp, more adore. I'm Brittany. <laughs> Square face, wavy hair. Mid fade with a textured top. Finish it off with a hard part and taper that neckline, coach. Cowlick, what's the move? It's not just all about hard work here. Hit off, seven, pressure, poise, yeah. It takes expertise to be a sport clip stylist. Here. Ah. That's a spot right there, huh? Sport clips, the pros in men's hair. It's water. Boom, Agent Winston Otter. He's been called the human sponge. Well, Hub Air National Insurance is the leading North American insurance brokerage. Contact your local Hub agent, Josh Cattell and Michael Borman at 355-3100 for your personal business insurance needs. 11-1 our score, 10-point lead for Four Winds Menowakan. First quarter of play as Trinity out of the timeout as Luke Shobe controls. Now they come up high to Jake. Jake goes right elbow, now kicks it off to Jacobs, and he's going to be hammered. And they are going to get Kelson Kasia with the personal. His first. That'll be the third team foul, and Jace Kovash checks back in. Jake Schaub will trigger the inbounds. He does. Here's a hand back. Jacobs down the left side, the runner. That one hits the side of the backboard. No good, but run down there by Leffer. Now Leffer gets it, faces it up on Dang Dang. Dang Dang got a piece of it. Loose ball. Jacobs gathers. Corral shot off the glass. Rebound again, Leffer, he gets it out. And what are we gonna have here? We're gonna have a reach-in foul, I believe, underneath. Fifth. And that one's gonna go on Dufine. His first, that's the fourth team foul on Four Winds Minnewakan. And playing that kind of style of basketball, that's what happens. Ooh, here's a nifty left-handed teardrop shot by Jace Kovash. And the first field goal of the game goes to Kovash. It's 11-3. Two minutes to play, opening quarter on the BNC Bank scoreboard off a high screen goes Kelson Kasia, shot goes up. Ball's loose, he gathers his own rebound now to St. Pierre, dang dang with the left corner. Here's Kasia, he fires for three short. Long rebound comes out to Jace Kovash. Up the near side to Shob. Now Shob in the front court, Jacobs. He's doubled up, ooh, wide open was Leffer and they didn't see him. Around the wheel they go. Here's Luke Show. He attacks, and we're going to get a reach in. And that's going to be number two on Dufine. Fifteen foul, second personal. Dufine has got to come out, and coming in is Dalen Left Bear for Four Winds Menowakan. 11 3 are scored. Ooh, they tried to go back door, and it's going to be tipped out of bounds. Ooh, they're going to say that one went on. Oh. Yeah, I thought that one was off Four Winds Minnewaukee. Yep, that's the right call there. That's the right call. Good job by the officials getting together. St. Pierre will trigger it inbound, and Left Bear will bring it up the floor. Nope, that is not Left yep. Bear, that's Nestel. Yep, Left Bear checked back in, though, for four wins here at the break. He comes off the screen from Dang Dang. Now he gets it off to Kelson Kasia. Ooh, he misses the bunny, and rebound comes down to 
Thomas Jacobs. He's going to work it up the floor for the Titans in the right corner. They go to Kovash, now out high to Jake Schaub, now to Luke. Now Jacobs, inside they go to Fitterer. Leffer. Jacobs in the right corner. Top of the key, Fitterer. Good, tough man-to-man -to -man defense there by seven to shoot by four wins Minnewakan. Jacobs, head fake, now he goes out. Leffer, he's got to send one. Oh, that was uh, Kovash. That was short, and really it comes good, out two really forwards. Really defensive off. possession there. Sorry, Scott. That's all right. By four wins. And in possession, air ball shot up there by Kelson Kaja. Back with it comes Trinity. Oh, nice bounce pass. Head fake shot up and good by Jake Schaub. Jake 11-5, and Schaub's got three. 13 seconds to play on the BNC Bank scoreboard. Left bear. They look inside the dang dang, nobody home. Now they back out, now they reset. Now they attack, Nestel, off balance shot, short, rebound to the Titans, and that's gonna end the opening quarter of play here from the Dale Brown Classic on the camp, on the Minot State Dome. One quarter in the books as we go to break. It's four wins, Minnewakan walking 11, Trinity five. Back with quarter number two after this timeout on the PSP Network. Transformative for your small business. The best bank for your business will offer competitive fees and so much more. At BNC National Bank, our team is proud to offer you a helpful, supportive, above and beyond banking relationship. Starting to stress about the complexities of qualifying for a small business loan? BNC can guide you through the process with much less stress and likely far more success. Speak to one of our team members today. This broadcast on the PSP Network is proudly brought to you by Four wins been a walk and has it and they throw it away. Hey, if you're in the Magic City for the either of these two terms, be sure to stop by Planet Pizza. They've been probably serving the Magic City for over 25 years. They're the largest laser tag playground in the region. Mouthwatering pizza and wings and 30-inch galactic pizzas that are out of this world. Okay. Call an order now, 852-1700. Planet Pizza is out of this world. Ty Dassinger checked in for Trinity at the break and shot too strong from the left wing. Ball tipped out of bounds, as you said, Ty Dassinger comes in now. And one of the things that's going on here during these two days is they're allowed to bring up their JV team. So at the auxiliary Swain Hall, you got a full JV schedule going. So now you got to watch halves and quarters. Oh, and I suppose. During the day. Yeah, there you go. As Dassinger has it now on the right wing. Here's a takeaway by Nestel. He's going to go one on one. Leans in, shot too strong. Good follow there by Left Bear. One bounce, turns, spins, and scores. <laughs> 13-5 on the BNC Bank scoreboard. <laughs> Here's a takeaway. Here's the lead out. Uh-oh, clear the runway. Dang Dang rises. Oh, and he lays it in. I thought he was going to flush that one home, and Dang Dang's got seven. But it's a 10-point lead now for four wins. Metawakan at 15-5. Left wing, here's Dassinger, he attacks, jump stop in the paint, kicks it out to Fitter. Fitter now, Luke Schaub, the left-hander hands it off to Kovash, free throw line, nowhere to go. Ooh, nifty shovel pass there to Jake Schaub, too strong, rebound long, out two. Four wins, Metawakan. Kylan Kaja. Nestel enters it to him in the wing, top of the key, dang, dang. They look inside, left bear, he gathers, spin move, kicks left corner around the wheel. Kasia shot fake, now here's dang, dang with it. He's gonna attack, trying to create some space. Here's St. Pierre, right wing three, too strong. Rebound, weak side to Fitterer. 
Trinity having trouble getting things going offensively right now, but they're hanging around. They trail at 15-5. Four wins is just so aggressive, and then they're really good at getting into the passing lanes. Yeah, we've seen that year in and year out with this four wins. Been a walking walk team, especially last year in the state title game right here on the same floor. <laughs> Excuse me, jump shot from the right side by Shobe is no good. We've got Hubbard National Insurance timeout on the floor. Hubbard National Insurance located at 4204 Boulder Ridge Road in Northwest Bismarck. 546 to go on the BNC Bank scoreboard opening half. It is. Forward's been walking 15. Trinity 5 back after this timeout. We look forward to serving you here at your local community bank. Hey, BNC National Bank with locations throughout North Dakota, Minnesota, and Arizona. BNC National Bank provides you with banking and wealth management services for your business and family. Visit BNC Bank online today at bnc.bank. Here's a turnover now. Four wins thought they turn it over again, but no, Trinity gathers it. Here's Jacobs with it. Here's Shobe, now high left side. The handoff, Luke. Left wing three by Kovash. That one's no good. Rebound comes out. The Here's a lead out. Left bear. Gathers goes up. Oh, that's a good hustle play there. But they're going to say he got fouled. But a good hustle play there by Jake Schaub. And left bear will go up and shoot. Two, or will go and shoot two. Yeah, Trinity's pretty much had to run it all the way down to under seven, eight you know, seconds on every possession, and they're just not getting many good looks at all. First personal on Shobe, that's just the first team foul on Trinity. Like Left Bears free throw is no good. <clears throat> he will have one more. 15-5 or score, Beulah. Powers Lake to follow this one. Dufinay come back in here now for four wins. As Left Bear gathers, knocks that one down. 16-5. Nick Sobolik in for the Trinity. Yep, Sobolik just had it. Playing a lot of guys, Coach Grinsteiner is, is Sobolik. Yeah, he got to that second quarter, he might have had to wait. Round the wheel they come, Sobolik gathers again, he goes baseline, stops, cut off there, now back out high. Long three by Kovash, that rattles in and out. <clears throat> Good box out on the weak side there by Kelson Kaja, here's a turnover, Jake Schaub. Schaub rises up, shot too strong, dang, dang the rebound. <clears throat> here's Left Bear, he's gonna fire for three, that one rolls off, rebound comes down to Thomas Jacobs. Jacobs on the bounce, left corner they go to Sobolik. Sobolik looks inside to left for nobody there, now Jacobs on the reversal. Leffer, now here's Kovash. Kovash, same spot, he's gonna fire another one. That one's no good, good weak side rebound there. By the time the lead pass, Dang Dang finds Left Bear right down the middle, layup, got it for Dalen Left Bear. That all started with a box out by the shortest guy in the court with Keja both times. Very good job. 18-5, Foreman's been a walking by 13. Jacobs goes inside, now he gets the back out. Three ball from the left corner, no good. Boy, they cannot hit anything right now, can Trinity? <clears throat> dang Dang playing point guard. Gets it off to left bear. Nestel resets, enters it near side. That's Kelson Kaja. Dang Dang, top of the key, down the right side of the lane. Finger roll layup is no good. And loose ball, we're gonna get a foul, and that's gonna go on Dufine, and that's gonna be number three on Dufine. Well, there's a situation. Oh, no. Go ahead. 
That was Dufine, you're right. Yes, it was, so that'll be the sixth six team foul. And Dufine is gonna go to the bench and- Pierre, check back in. Muriel Dang checks in. Coaches told me that's actually pronounced Burrell. Burrell Dang. Burrell Dang? Yep, only just a freshman. Dassinger now near side to Luke Schaub. Schaub, ooh boy, almost a steal by Dang Dang. Inside, kicks out left wing. Here's Kovash, he fires, that one's short. That stand correct, that's Sobolik. Rebound down to four wins, been a walk in. <laughs> Good hustle play there by Dassinger. But it will remain with Four Winds Minnewakan. Make sure to vote for this week's Jersey Mike's Player of the Week on the PSP Network. Jersey Mike's on the PSP Network Facebook page. Jersey Mike's is a sub above. Really, really good subs. They are a sub above. Here's Dang to Dang. Dang Dang turns. Shot too strong, rebound on the weak side to Luke Schaub. Schaub into the front court, 214 or 212 left to play, opening half. Dasinger loses control, now gets it back to Schaub. He penetrates, free throw line, nowhere to go. Now steps in, oh, nice backdoor pass. Here's Fitter with it, Fitter stops. His shot's no good, we're gonna have a foul. That'll be his third, Kylan Kasia. Kylan Kasia with three now. Left Bear comes back in. 18-5 our score, 201 left to go here. Opening half a play at the free throw line is up and good by Cade Fitter. That's his first. Makes it 18-6 on the BNC Bank scoreboard. Make it 18-7. Trinity come with a little bit of trap here now. Yeah, ooh, and they turn it over. Dassinger. He gets it off to Shob Jake. He attacks with the right hand, no good. Then it's gonna be a blocking foul, and that one's gonna go on St. Pierre. Pierre. And that'll be the eighth team foul, St. Pierre's first. Yeah, they made this rule pretty easy now, and you're in that circle. It's gonna be a block, and you're the primary. Jake Shob toes the stripe for the Titans. Free throw on its way by the left-hander is up and good. Talking to Coach Grinsteiner, they got to play three nights in a row, Scott. They're playing here the next two days, and they're finishing their Rough Rider tournament against Bowman on Saturday night. Oh, boy. Schaub gets them both. He cuts it to 18-9. Dang attacks. He gathers and goes up and lays it in. That was athletic play there by Dang Dang. 20-9, to nine, a minute 35 to play. Here's Dassinger. Kicks it back out, Sobolik, he loses it on the drive. Run with them. Lead pass out to Kelson Kasia. He's double clutch shot. Oh, he got it to go, scored and won. Kelson Kasia hangs in the air, gets the hoop and the harm. Foul's gonna go on number 10, Luke Schaub, his first, team second. So Kasia at the line, shooting one, his first two of the afternoon. We said Foreman's been a walk and run the, ran the table last year, 27 and all. Knocked off a very talented Kindred Viking team for the state championship. Shob attacks Luke and he's gonna have a, that's Jake attack and has it poked away, subs coming in. Nestel here, for Wade Nestel back here for four wins, and looks like Thomas Jacobs back in for Sh uh, Trinity. 22-9 our score. Long inbounds, they go up to Leffer. They kick it into show. Ooh, nice 15-foot jumper there by J Jake Schaub. He's starting to heat up. 22-11, here's St. Pierre. 
He gets his first basket of the game. Just, and that's one thing he can't let this team do is answer baskets. Left wing jumpers no good by Luke Schaub. Here's Jake Schaub, he's gonna fire for three. That one's short, battling underneath is Leffer. Did you check with Grinsteiner? Is it Leffer or Lafour? It's Leffer. It is Leffer? Yep. Okay. Just wanna make sure we're getting it right. This afternoon's game brought to you in part by Presswitch Orthodontics, specializing in braces and Invisalign for all ages. We offer free consultation and financing options that make it easy to take your smile to the next level. Call 852-2646 or visit MinotBraces.com today to get started with a free virtual consultation pressed with Orchard, Prestwich Orthodontics. Leffer converts the first one. Jeremiah Jillick just checked in for Trinity. Second one is too strong. Here's a steal. Baseline, they go to Schaub. Now he finds teardrop shot. That's by Kovash, no good. Rebound batted out to the Titans. They're gonna play for one. They trail by a dozen at 24-12. Baseline, here's Jake Schaub. His jumper's up and good for Jake Schaub. Dang, dang on the buzzer. Oh, and he buries it. Dang, dang from the Beaver right in the mouth of the beaver and he knocks it down and we go to break or we go to the halftime break after that three by dang dang on the bnc bank scoreboard it's four wins been walking 27 trinity 14 we'll be back with our premier chiropractic intermission report after this timeout on the psp network Finding the right bank can be transformative for your small business. The best bank for your business will offer competitive fees and so much more. At BNC National Bank, our team is proud to offer you a helpful, supportive, above and beyond banking relationship. Starting to stress about the complexities of qualifying for a small business loan? BNC can guide you through the process with much less stress and likely far more success. Speak to one of our team members today. The right way to top a sub is with real red wine vinegar made from red grapes and no food coloring. And the right way to film it is in slow motion, obviously. Because authentic ingredients make a sub above. It's water, boom, Agent Winston Otter. He's been called the human sponge. Our stylists are trained to understand the uh, nuances of cutting men's hair. Less pomp, more adore, huh, Brittany? <laughs> Square face, wavy hair. Mid fade with a textured top. Finish it off with a hard part and taper that neckline, coach. Cowlick, what's the move? It's not just all about hard work here. Hit off, seven, pressure, points, yeah. It takes expertise to be a sport clip stylist. Here. Ah. That's a spot right there, huh? Sport clips, the pros in men's hair. Yeah, welcome back to the Minot State Dome and the Dale Brown Classic as we are at halftime of game number four. Four wins, Minnewaukan leading Dickinson Trinity 27-14 on the BNC Bank scoreboard. Welcome to our Premier Chiropractic Intermission Report. Dr. Kirk Mason, Dr. Cody Haugen, and Dr. Becky perry Darmers can be found at Premier Chiropractic ND.com. And again, we've got... Uh, well, we've got three more to go after this one. Uh, Powers Lake and Beulah will follow this one up. Shiloh and Thompson and then our Redeemers and North Star will round out uh, today's action. Again, tomorrow we'll be back here right with you on the PSP Network. 
It's the Hoopster Classic, and Perry, uh, again, uh, pretty good field for that. Some, some of these teams up here for both days, and and uh, certainly uh, the Hoopster Classic has certainly uh, taken uh, taken some stride uh, here uh, during the holiday season. Yeah, and it's been a nice thing for the teams. Uh, I talk to the coaches quite a bit when I'm here, and they all just say it's nice to come play somebody different, usually from a different part of the state that they may not see during the year. And, I think just different from today is DLB and Bishop Ryan and rugby and everybody else is back again tomorrow. So but those are three good teams that are coming in tomorrow. So. Yeah, we'll be back on the air with you tomorrow morning about 1040s. We'll have all seven of those games. Reminder too, uh, Todd Dombries and Chuck Claremont will be making their way back to the capital city and uh, they will have uh, live action for you from the BNC Bank uh, Mandan Holiday Tournament. That's always a fun one as well, too. But uh, Perry, we take a look at this first half, and and really, as you said, it's just two contrasting styles of basketball. Forwards been walking; <clears throat> they want to get out and go, and uh, they're going to get in there, get in your face, and guard you. And Dickinson Trinity, you know, and Greg Grinsteiner. Greg Grinsteiner is perfectly happy winning a basketball game, 38-36. Well, uh, and I thought they were making a pretty nice little run here at the end of the half, and. And Dang comes out and hits a three from, like you said, the uh, the tooth of the beaver out here, and uh, uh, it just kind of was a killer. But they had like a five-six old run there. But yeah, they've had a hard time getting shots off. But he's okay with that. Uh, he'll just keep reversing the ball, and maybe somebody will slip up defensively, and they'll get their look from there. Well, and you and you look too. You know, it's a different situation when you're when you're practicing and. You know, for, for as amount of time as they have with Mother Nature coming in effect, it, shooting in the Trinity Gymnasium is a little different than shooting in the Minot State Dome. I mean, you've got such that openness uh, behind the basket, so certainly that has a little to do with it. But nonetheless, you know, some of these teams have to settle in and and, and get used to that. So um, <clears throat> we'll see what happens in that second half as you're listening to the. Uh, Premier Chiropractic Halftime Report. Premier Chiropractic is focused on improving the health of the Minot and surrounding areas through the most cutting edge advances in natural health care beauty. We're at halftime, 27-14. Four wins Minnewa and leads it. We'll take a timeout. We come back. Perry will have the first half individual and team numbers. You're listening to the Dale Brown Classic on the PSB Network. what we do really comes down to combining different aspects of patient care. Here at Premier Chiropractic, we love combining soft tissue work, the adjustment and exercises together. We found that this gets the best results for our patients. We have three chiropractors to fit the needs of the entire family, a rehab area for our exercises and equipment for any athlete to improve performance. Give us a call and we will get you back to doing what you love. Are you moving your business or your home across the town or across the country? We know it can be stressful. To ensure your possessions arrive on time, intact and on budget, make your move with Jobbers Moving and Storage. Jobbers can help you with every aspect of your move. With our efficient step-by-step -step approach to move management, we can tailor a plan to suit your needs and schedule. With locations in Bismarck, Fargo, Minot and Aberdeen, Jobbers Moving and Storage is your choice. Visit JobbersWarehouse.com. It's Jobbers moving in storage. I'm a grateful person on a lot of levels. I've been given so many great opportunities. But most of all, even as a little kid, I was taught a set of values. Like tools for life, hard work, responsibility, and the key to making it all work, commitment. First Western Bank and Trust, you can bank on us. Ackerman Svold, your neighbors, friends, and family who are working for you. The local team with local availability and accountability for all of your engineering, architecture, environmental, transportation, and land development needs. Your project can rely on Ackerman Svold. Find them online at ackermansvold.com. When you start your project, talk with Ackerman Surveying and Associates. Our experienced surveying team guides you in the right direction with planning, planning, and lot and boundary surveys. 
the trusted name in land surveying, the trusted name in architecture and engineering is Ackerman Survey and Ackerman Esfold. Find them at AckermanEsfold.com. What you're witnessing actually happens. This is a sad story about bad math. Bad math? Does your online company include mounting? You can't beat the online pricing. When you have the mounting, the shipping, and all the extras, it's just simple math. We guarantee the lowest prices. Our Plus Plan is simply better, a less expensive way to buy tires. Thinking tires, think tires plus. Yeah, welcome back to the Premier Chiropractic Intermission Report. Scott Wood, Mancy Perry Hansen with you as we're at halftime between Dickinson Trinity and Four Winds Minnewakan. And for a look at the first half individual numbers, uh, here's Perry. Uh, Four Winds is led by uh, All State player Dang Dang. He's got 12, and he's followed up by probably a pretty good chance to be an All State player in himself. Dan the left there with 10. Keyshawn St. Pierre has two. Kelson Kaja has two and Ty Dufine has two for their total of 27. For Trinity, they're led by uh, potentially an all-state candidate there, Jake Schaub with nine. Jace Kovash had two, Kate Fitter had two, and Max Leffer had one. They, they only had four field goals in the whole first half. And so tough to get a lot of points. And they, they got their total of 14, but dang dang and left bear leading the way there for four wins. Hey, today's game brought to you in part by Roger Ward Moving and Storage. They've been proudly helping the region with their moving and storage needs since 1942. Find them online at RogerWardMovingAndStorage.com to schedule a move or to find a quote. Roger Ward Moving and Storage. Also, Northern Plains Heating and Air. They've all have Northern Plains Heating and Air has over 25 years of experience. These are heating and air experts. As the factory authorized dealer for Aerosfield, there's no other choice to seal your heating and air game other than Northern Plains Heating and Air. Find them online at northernplains.com. Well, both teams have made their way back out. Want to thank everybody for tuning in to the Premier Chiropractic Intermission Report. Again, Dr. Kirk Mason, Dr. Cody Haugen, and Dr. Becky Perry Domers can be found at Premier Chiropractic ND. And it appears that Foreman's been walking. We'll start the same way they started the game with Dang Dang, Left Bear, Nestel, uh, Kelson Kaja, and Kylan Kaja. And we'll see how Trinity decides to go. There's Luke Schaub. There's Jake Schaub. There's Kovash. Thomas Jacobs, as well as Cade Fitter, and Trinity will have the basketball to start the second half, trailing this one 27-14. As Shobe controls, comes near side. Luke to Jake, back to Luke. Now around the wheel they go to Jake Shobe. They set a high screen. Ooh, nice roll there, but tipped away by Dang Dang as Fitter had a wide open look at the hoop. Has good action on that wing over there, too, by Fitter and Schaub. Very good action, and then uh, Dang Dang did a really nice job with his hands up to make that difficult pass. Boy, he just makes things tough. Come across, come across, Passing man. lanes, he's just so long and so athletic. They get it inside to Fitter, he spin, turn, oh. follow away shot, no good, Dang Dang the rebound. Dang Dang showing some handles, he wants to go end to end, and Schaub almost picked his pocket, and he does. And Jake comes out of there with it. Here's Jake Schaub, he leans in, shot off the glass, rattles around and goes in. And the first two of the half goes to Jake Schaub, give him 11, and it's 27, 16. Nestel controls, hands it off to Kelson Cajun, now Dang Dang, now they go right side to Kylan. Now in the right corner, here's Left Bear. He's going to fire for three, and Left Bear answers the bell. Give him 12. Seems like every time Trinity makes a momentum type play, <laughs> four wins answers with a basket. Yeah, that's the one thing you can't do is you can't exchange baskets. Nice bounce pass down low to Show. Scort, and he's fouled. Nifty pass there from Kovash to Jake Show, and he gets the hoop in the harm. That's his fourth personal, Kylan Kaja. So I imagine Rick Smith, though he's not going to go to the bench, and Schaub. 
final five of Trinity's points here in the second half. Yeah, we haven't seen a sub come up to the table at all. Show gets a free throw. Pressure applied by Trinity. Right corner, that's Kylan Cage out high. They go to Kelson. Kelson on the bounce, now to Kylan. Now high post, they go to left bear. He kicks right corner, dang, dang. He spins, doubled up, now to Kaja. That's Kylan, he's gonna fire for three, in and out. Battled for by left bear. Good hustle play there, and they're gonna say it's gonna stay with Four wins Minnewaka, and then Nestel will trigger the inbounds. Here comes the sub. Yep, St. Pierre's gonna come in, and going to the bench will be Kylan Kaja with those four personal fouls. St. Pierre gets off the inbounds now to Kelson Kaja. He attacks, drops it down low. Nice pass, Nestel. Oh, he missed the bunny. Dang, dang, the board to put back in the harm. Dang, dang, battling down low. Gets the hoop in the harm. Well, he jumped the first time, and actually the ball stayed on the rim a little bit longer. But that just shows you how athletic he was. He was the first guy back up to get the, get the rebound again. And dang, dang, at the line to convert the old-fashioned three-point play, and he does just that. He's got 15. 33-19, our score on the BNC Bank scoreboard, 5.59 to play. Third quarter, here's a hand back. Ooh, Wade with the, Nestel with the pick. Here's Dang Dang down the left side. Dang, it goes up. Oh, and he misses the flush. Oh, boy, that was a quick move to the 10. Yeah, that. Uh... Woo -hoo. That would have been uh, that quite the rip there. He's able to get that one to go down. That one would have been on some Twitter reels here <laughs> later on. Trinity attacks with Jake Schaub. Now they go right corner to Fitter. Now here's Schaub with it. Jake attacks baseline. And I think we're gonna get a blocking foul. He's gonna go against Left Bear, his first, team second. That's second one for Left Bear. Substitution getting up off the bench. Dufine back in. 33-19, here's Schaub, the trigger man underneath. Oh, he gets a wide open Fitter. His shot is blocked. Nope, they're gonna say he's fouled. Two quick ones on left bear there. No, nope. nope. I think that Wade Nestel got that one. That's a third team foul. So to the line will be Cade Fitter. He, his only two points came from the free throw line in the second quarter, and oh, and he misses the front end. 33-19. Reminder: We'll have our. Final team financial advisors, shots crossover with the post game report. We'll pick our Sportcliffs MVP of the game, jobbers moving towards the game. We'll have a couple interviews as well. As Fitter gets one of two. Got a jump ball yep. situation coming back. So, jump ball, possession arrow in favor of Four Winds Minnewak and Nestel controls out high and it goes out of bounds. Trinity has extended the pressure a little bit here now. Second half. Yeah, they have. They trail by 13 on the BNC Bank scoreboard, 33-20. Nestel hands off. Here's a long three. That one's going to be an air ball by Kelson Kaja. Saved nicely by St. Pierre, but into the hands of the Titans. Here comes Luke Schaub with it. Schaub in the front court. Around the wheel, they come right side to Jake Schaub. He gets a screen, Fitter rolls, nice pass. Fitter one bounce, bodies his way in, reverse layup, blocked out of bounds. And it'll stay with Dickinson Trinity. Planning Team Financial Advisors helping clients work toward financial freedom. Shots Crossroads, your post came headquarters. Order online at shotscrossroads.com. And when you order online, order the 99. See if they go back to that screen and roll action again. Here's Schaub with it, crosses over. Now Schaub leaves it off for Jake. Jake's gonna fire for three, short. Dang, dang, the rebound. Dang, dang on the breakout. Ooh, Euro step move, layup, scored, and he's fouled. Boy, did he get from point A to point B in a hurry. 
Fittner gets his first personal, second team foul. 35-20, dang dang at the line. Free throw rattles in. 16. 36-20. At 18 already. Kobosh with it. Dassinger. Here's Luke Schaub. He fires a right side three, and Luke Schaub finally gets in the scoring column. Uh, Schaub. 36-23. High screen by Dang Dang. Here's St. Pierre with it. Works off the Dang Dang screen. Now backdoor pass Lepper. Nice poke away there by Fitter into the hands of Jake Schaub. Here's Luke Schaub. Three-point shot's going to be short by Kovash. Dang Dang comes out of there with it. He wants to run. He gets tripped up. And that one's going to go, I believe, against Dassinger. Ty Dassinger gets called for the foul on the trip. Second personal, third team foul. Jilic, Sobolik. 36-23, we'll have our MVP sport clips of the game as well. Sport clips will keep you looking the best. Check in online with the hair stylist today at sportclips.com. Jilic, Sobolik, and Leffer checked in for Trinity. And Here's a steal. Here's Sobolik with it in the front court. Wisely slows it up. On the trail is Schaub. He throws one up, and he's going to be fouled in the act. Is Jake Schaub, so he will go shoot two for Dickinson Trinity. Dufine checks in, and then he picks up his fourth right away. Dufine has got four. Fourth team foul, and Schaub misses the first one. Kelson Kaja back in now. He's got four personal foul. No, nope, I'm sorry, that's Kylan. Kelson's just got one. Second one by Schaub is up and good. 36-24. This is a 12-point lead. Here's Nestel. Shakes and bakes. Now here's... Dang, dang in the right corner. He's going to fire. It's going to be a long two. Yep. Oh, no, they're give him three. Okay. Mike County, he's got 21. Came in, came in averaging 35. I know they only played one game, but he might get there. 39-24, a 15-point lead. Jake Schaub with it on the right wing. Wants a screen, gets it. Now attacks in the paint, kicks it out. Luke, now in the right corner, Sobolik. Help out. Schaub on the left side, off the window, scored, and he's fouled. Luke Schaub, or Jake Schaub. Kelson Cage gets his second. Schaub will go to the line and shoot one. Well, he's had a nice third quarter. Yes. And he converts. I got him up to 16. Now he's got seven in the quarter. 39-27, just a 12-point lead now with two and a half to play. Here's Dang Dang in the right corner. He goes in the paint, kicks it left wing. Now here's St. Pierre. We're going to get a foul on the drive there by Dang Dang. Jake Schaub gets his second. Just a fourth team foul for the now Titans. Go out. Go out. Nestel lobs it out high to Dang. Yeah. Dang attacks, kicks right corner to left bear. Left bear goes baseline. We're going to get a blocking foul. I believe that's going to go on Fitterer. Yep, that is. The second. As. Boy, nice out of bounds play. You gotta get a good look here. Yeah, shot rolls in and out by Kelson Kaja. Here's Sobolek up the left side. Sobolek leans in, blocked away by left bear into the hands of Dang Dang. Nestel to Kaja. Kaja in the paint. Kaja, ooh, he has it blocked away by Fitter out of bounds, and it'll stay with Four Winds Minnewakan. 
Remember, we'll have our Jobbers Moving and Storage Moving the Game, which is sponsored by Jobbers Moving and Storage. Jobbers can help you move across town or across the country with locations in Bismarck, Minot, Fargo, and Aberdeen. Find them online at jobberswarehouse.com. Minute 54 to play, 12-point lead here for Trinity. Game number four of the Dale Brown Classic right here on the PSP Network. As St. Pierre now hands it off to Nestel. <coughs> Nestel trying to dribble through traffic. And they're going to get a foul. Sobolek, first personal. Thomas Jacobs back in. Kovash back in for Trinity. 39 27. This one's kind of slowed down a little bit. Yes. St. Pierre on a back door. Off balance shot, no good. They're going to get a blocking foul. I believe that's going to be on Fitter and St. Pierre will shoot some free throws. Yes, it is. It's going to be on Fitter. That's three on him. Seventh team foul on Dickinson Trinity with a minute and a half to go. This afternoon's game brought to you in part by Jersey Mike's. Make sure to vote for this week's Jersey Mike's Player of the Week on the PSP Network Facebook page. Jersey Mike's, they are a sub above. And St. Pierre's at the Serve Pro free throw line, 24-7 emergency service, trained technicians, advanced technology, fire and water cleanup and restoration. It's Serve Pro. St. Pierre with his third point. Makes it 40 to 27, 13 point lead. Luke Shobe controls in the front court, hands it off to Kovash. Now back to Shobe. Shobe, Jacobs, right wing, inside they go. Shot too strong by Leffer. <coughs> dang, dang. Nestel in the near side. Now up high they go to Kelson Kaja. Looking back door, no, nobody there. Good defense by Jacobs. Here's Dang Dang. Jabs right, goes right, leans in. Off the glass, too strong. Left bear the follow. His put back no good. Left bear the rebound again. Battling down low. <coughs> and now. Foul there. First personal, that's the eighth team foul. So to the line will be left bear with 53.8 to play, third quarter. Too strong and the long rebound comes out to left bear. As they holler out quick, does the coaching staff of Four Winds Minnewaukan. Here's St. Pierre looking inside. Now they get it to Dang Dang, now St. Pierre. Now back to Dang Dang in the short corner. Now St. Pierre, they play catch. Dang Dang's going to fire for three. That one's short. Good box out down low there by Luke Schaub. Four wins was looking for the high low again to Dang Dang, and they didn't get it to him. And as soon as he gets to the side, it's an automatic double right away. It's really hard to double when they're in the middle of the floor. Schaub slows it down. Trinity's going to play for one. Six seconds. Lefford, left wing jumper's no good. Rebound comes out to Kaja. Cage lets one fly, and that's going to end the third quarter of play on the BNC Bank scoreboard. Three quarters in the book. It's four wins, Minnewak, and 40, Trinity 7. We'll be back for the final eight after this timeout on the PSP Network. Many of our clients come to us already accomplished in their lives and on the right track. However, whether it's in response to a life-changing event or you are nearing retirement, you can sleep well knowing that together, we have planned for both life's opportunities and challenges. And no matter what happens, we are here to help guide you. I wasn't really thinking about the shots, honestly. It just, the shots came to me. Derek and Eric especially had some great drives, you know, which led some great kicks. Shout out to them. You know, it feels good. For you to come out here from a defensive effort against Eagle Staff, I mean, you're way smaller than him. Obviously, I mean, how did you get yourself pumped up for that? Well, you know, Coach, that's the thing that says height doesn't matter heart, and I strongly believe in that. You know, I got the heart, and it doesn't matter if I got the height or not. Love that line, good luck next week. Yeah, you got it. All right, great job. I don't have the height, but I got the heart. That was a pretty cool sign right there by Jagger Gundo. Back up to you guys. Yes, and now.
Yeah. 40-27 as we go to quarter number four of game number four, the Dale Brown Classic, and Trinity has the ball trailing by 13. Luke Schaub operates in the left corner, looking inside for a cutting. Kovash, now they find Jake Schaub, his free throw line jumper is no good, rebound into the hands of Jacobs, and he goes up and converts it, his first two of the afternoon. Trinity bringing the pressure again. 40 to 29. Kaja hands off to St. Pierre. Now here's Nestel. He handles now back to Kaja. And now they run the weave out high. St. Pierre's going to attack right down Broadway. Tiered. No, we, now we lobbed it up for I don't know what that was. Back the other way comes Jake Schaub. End to end leans in. Shot no good, but he's going to get a foul. And that's going to go on Wade Nestel. And that'll be his second. Team six, so Shob certainly been the offense for Trinity. He's got 18, looking for 19. There it is. I really like him as a player, Scott. I think uh, he's going to get a lot of votes this year. He's a potential All-Stater. Yeah, he's a, he's a nice player. 40-30, now they've cut it to 10. And now we're down to single digits. Got a Trinity-type score here, Scott, 40-31. Yep. Just the exact kind of game Greg Ginstern wants to play. Kasia in the corner to Dang Dang. Now back to Kelson Kasia. Bounces it near side to Nestel. Now back to Kasia. Kasia looks inside. Crosses over, gets in the paint, throws up a wild shot. Oh, dang, dang, right there, the follow and the foul. Oh, did he get up quick. Wow. Who he's tough to stop. Fitter picks up his fourth. Team's ninth. So dang, dang, at the line. And he converts. I don't know what the uh, Trinity kid's supposed to do, and the other kid just goes way higher than you. <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> he does a really good job of his verticality that I've noticed. He's always straight up and down. He doesn't he doesn't swat a lot or anything. Doesn't get in foul, foul trouble, at least today anyway. And, uh, seems to be disciplined that way. Shobe's shot is short, and back with it comes four wins been a walk in. 43-31. 6.15 left to play. Dang Dang controls. No attacks, leans in and scores. Whew, that's tough to stop. Yes. <laughs> they really like to get the ball to him out around that top of the key area where he's got some space to go either way. And pretty athletic. And kick. just like that, it's back to 14 with 5.52 to play on the BNC Bank scoreboard. as the Titans, not sure they're in a position when they can be this patient, trailing by 14 with about five minutes to play. Ooh, three by that, ooh, that, somebody opened the door on the north end. Back with it comes Dang Dang. He's gonna control it, spins in the paint, kicks it. Kasia wants to fire three, and he does. That one's short for Kylan. Rebound comes down to Fitterer. He gets it off to Shob and we're going to have a BNC timeout on the floor. I'm sorry, Hubbard National Church timeout on the floor. 5.15 to go in the ball game on the BNC Bank scoreboard. Four wins been a walk in 45, turning to 31. Back after this timeout on the PSP network. Right bank can be transformative for your small business. The best bank for your business will offer competitive fees and so much more. At BNC National Bank, our team is proud to offer you a helpful, supportive, above and beyond banking relationship. Starting to stress about the complexities of qualifying for a small business loan? BNC can guide you through the process with much less stress and likely far more success. Speak to one of our team members today.
Hey, Hubbard of National Insurance, contact your local hub agents. Josh Cattella, Michael Borman at 355-3100 for your personal and business insurance needs. Hubbard of National Insurance. As checking into the ball game now for Trinity, uh, Jeremiah Jillick in the ball game. Here's Luke Schaub with it. He goes right side to left side, now gets it off to Jillick. Now they get it off to Luke Show. He rises 15 footer from the right elbow is up and good for Jake. Stan Corrected. That's Jake Show. 45-33. 4.47 left to play in the ball game. Four wins been a walking. Number one team in the state of North Dakota, the defending state class B boys basketball champions. Errant pass run down by Dang Dang. Tend to shoot. I'm guessing he's gonna attack and he does. Jump stop in the lane, shot rolls off, rebound comes down to the Titans. And they get it off to Jake Schaub. Jake, here's Jacobs on the left wing. He's gonna get in the free, th free throw line. Now he dumps it down low, nowhere to go. And now back out high to Luke Schaub. Luke on the bounce, backdoor pass, Jake layup, got it. Ooh, nifty give and go there from Shobe to Shobe. Very nice body control by Jake there at the end as well. 45-35, now the lead back down to 10. Here's Left Bear. <clears throat> He's been quiet, had a pretty quick start for Dalen Left Bear. Now Rick Smith wants a timeout. It's a Hubbard National Insurance timeout on the floor. Call Hubbard National Insurance today for all your personal and business insurance needs. 3.48 to go in the ball game on the BNC Bank scoreboard. Four wins been walking 45, Trinity 35. Back with more after this timeout on the PSP Network. Oh, easy, easy. I think I'm good. You got my good side, right? <laughs> Not too many lights. I don't want to get fried before my time. <laughs> oh, it's eggtastic. You never know what dish you're going to end up in. My dream dish is a 99. It's so popular. Me and a fellow egg tag teaming with some crispy golden hash browns. Have you seen those hash browns? Those guys are shredded. <laughs> Throwing some diced ham, onions, and melted cheese. Oh, it's a party for your taste buds. Oh, here comes Chevy. Hold on, Chevy. Did you guys get everything that you needed? 99, here I come. Shots Crossroads. It's an excellent place to eat. BNC National Bank, your life is busy. We'll make managing your money easy with locations in North Dakota and Arizona. Visit BNC Bank online, bnc.bank. 3.45 to play here out of the timeout. Four wins been a walk in here. St. Pierre with it. Now here's Kaja. That's Kelson. Nestel in the paint. Back to St. Pierre. And they get it off just in time. Oh, as the That's horn it. goes off, Nestel buries a three. <laughs> I think about that is they had Dang Dang down on the block and he just basically was decoying. 48-35, oh here's a tie up. Nope, now Show worked his way out of it. Jillick, dashing her in the paint, jump stop. We're gonna get a bump down there and who's it gonna go on? That one's going to That's his third personal. So to the three, uh, serve pro three-point line will be Ty Dassinger. Free throw rolls around and goes in for Ty. Well, 48-36. Kovash and Leffer back in for Trinity. Second one is good for Ty from the serve pro free throw line. 24-7 emergency service, trained technicians, advanced technology, fire and water cleanup and restoration. It's serve pro. 48-27. Now foreman has been walking, really not in a hurry. And oh, and they turn it over. Dassinger pokes away, now he's on the lead out. Dassinger stepped through, move, oh, he missed the bunny. Shobe the follow, Shobe operates down low, he has it taken away. Into the hands of Kovash, his shot goes up, rolls off, but he's gonna be fouled in the act, and he will go to the serve pro free throw line. Foul number 24, Kelsey Kaja, his fourth personal, 
And that's four on Kelson Kaja. So at the line is Jace Kovash. 48, 38, back to a 10 point lead. And Kovash can take it under single digits here. Free throw, that one's too strong. Long rebound ripped out of there by Left Bear. Dang, look. Kovash gets one of two. Dang, dang in the paint, kicks St. Pierre. Left wing three on the way, that one rolls off. Rebound Kovash. Get a bucket here, we could make things a little interesting. Yeah, three would really certainly make things interesting as Kovash yeah, operates look. up high. Now to Luke Schaub, down low they go, inside, Fitter, Fitter, he's bottled up, operates out of the baby hook, up and good by Cade Fitter. And we are gonna have a, we are gonna have a Hover National Insurance time on the floor, 2.06 to go, this one's tightening up, four wins have been walking 40, Trin 48, Trinity 40, back after this timeout on the PSP Network. This broadcast on the PSP Network, is proudly brought to you by Now 48-40, and this is the closest that Trinity's been since it was 7-1. Full court pressure here, we'll see if they can get them a turnover. Am I stand corrected since it was 2-0. Yeah. <laughs> as they have perhaps some pressure of their own to the Titans. Here's Left Bear. Four wins been a walk and not in any hurry. Kaja hounded out high by Show. They look dang dang, now he gets it, dang dang. Now out high to Left Bear. Nine to shoot, dang dang. Six to shoot, he attacks, step through move. Oh, there's a wide open three by Kaja. That one's no good, Left Bear the rebound. Big rebound there, and now the shot clock resets. That's a big rebound by Lone Left Bear. Nestel, Nestel, Nestel attacks. Now here's Left Bear. Now to Dang Dang. Dang Dang attacks. Teardrop. No good. Left Bear, another rebound. Trinity's just choosing not to foul here. Yeah, they are, and they, they've had two rebounds, that, two big offensive rebounds, and now they got a foul with a minute to play, and that's gonna go against Sobolik. That's gonna be the 10th team foul on Trinity, so that will put Wade Nestel at the free throw line. That's the serve pro free throw line, 24 seven emergency service, trained technicians, advanced technology, fire and water cleanup and restoration. It's serve pro. Nestel's first free throw is up and good. You got as again, we will have a couple interviews as Perry will make his way down courtside. Second one is no good. 49 40. Back with it, that's Kovash, now gets it out to Luke Schaub. Schaub attacks, has it poked away and taken away. Here's a lead out to Dang Dang, he gathers, he goes up and sends it home, Dang Dang with the flush. Oh, you knew he was gonna get one, and that was an exclamation point one right there. 51-40, here's Schaub on the other end, that's Luke Schaub, or Jake Schaub. 
Dang Dang comes out of there with it. Estelle gets it across. Now he gets it off to KJ. Now to Dang Dang, 20 seconds. And it appears that Four Winds Minnewakan is going to bounce this one out, and they're going to win this one by a score of 51 to 40 over Dickinson Trinity. And there's your final horn, and this one's gone final. On the BNC Bank scoreboard, it's Dickinson, uh, Four Winds Minnewakan 51, Dickinson Trinity 40 as Perry's made his way down to the floor as that'll take us into our planning team financial advisor shots crossroads post game report as whether you're looking for a full service financial plan or planning for farm or business succession planning team financial advisors is here to help you work toward serving your financial goals visit us online at planningteam.com shots crossroads your post game headquarters or order online at shotscrossroads.com as Perry Hansen has made his way down courtside we're going to try to get a few words with Rick Smith as he gets win number two on the season. And right now, I think Perry has. Rick, let's go courtside in Perry. All right, Coach, uh, kind of nice to get a ball game in with all the weather cancellations and everything. Oh, for sure. Uh, I think the kids are getting sick of me. You know, we had probably 16 days of practice after our first game. And, you know, they get back on the floor, and then you got to play a team like Trinity or just a, is always just a machine out there defensively and offensively. And, uh, you know, it, it was it was just really good back get to be back on the floor. You know, Trinity is going to sh show us some things today that we're going to need to work on. Come next week, bring back the practice, which is always good for us. And uh, I thought uh, early on you guys had some pretty good sharpness to the game, and then you had some lulls, which I'm sure is due to the layoff. But it, like you said, it's just nice to get back. Uh, you're a pretty young team as well, so. Yeah, exactly. That's what uh, I've been telling a lot of people. We're still young, you know. I mean, we got one senior that plays a lot, one comes off the bench, and and then we got a lot of young kids, juniors and sophomores, and then a freshman that I bring in a little bit. But we're still young, you know. Uh, uh, the the tempo didn't go our way there for a stretch. Let Trinity stay in the game, and a lot of free throw shot, which is you know which we don't like, and uh, and which is that their type of game, but. You know, that was a good victory for us. You know, anytime you can beat a Trinity team, uh, we're going to take it. All right, thanks, Coach. I'm sure you like having this guy over here to your right a little bit. <laughs> okay, I got uh, Dang Dang here, and he's our uh, player of the game here. So Dang's a kind of nice, just like I talked to Coach Smith there, it's just nice to get back on the court play a game. Yeah, we've been practicing for like a long time, working hard, so it felt pretty good to get back uh, to the game. To see you at a game there with a nice dunk there at the end, and uh, that's always kind of fun. Did you get the ball out on that high post? You like to have that up there where you can go both ways? Yeah, it's pretty uh, nice to get to the post because like you got room to work with, so you could go left or right, or you could pull for a jumper. So it's nice with that space up there. Okay, well, congratulations on the game, and uh, good luck the rest of the season. We hope to see you down the road. Oh yeah, thanks. Well, there you have it, Rick Smith and Dang Dang. Certainly a, a very young group, but nonetheless, a team, well, make it 29 in a row for Four Winds Minnewaka as they win this one by a score of 51 to 40 on the BNC Bank scoreboard. Our Shots Cross, our planning team financial advisor, Shots Crossroads postgame report rolls on with more after this timeout on the PSP Network. Looking for a full service financial plan or planning for farm or business succession? Planning Team Financial Advisors is here to help you work toward achieving your financial goals. With locations in Bismarck, Garrison, and Center, our full service team of professionals are dedicated to helping you work towards achieving your financial goals. Visit us online, planningteam.com. Securities offered through LPL Financial, member of Finrun Sipic. Investment advisory services offered through New Edge Advisors, LLC, a registered investment advisor. New Edge Advisors, LLC, and Planning Team Financial Advisors are separate entities from LPL Financial. Our stylists are trained to understand the uh, nuances of cutting men's hair. Less pomp, more adore, huh, Brittany? Square face, wavy hair. Mid fade with a textured top. Finish it off with a hard part and taper that neckline, coach. Cowlick, what's the move? It's not just all about hard work here. Hit off, seven, pressure, point, yeah. It takes expertise to be a sport clip stylist. Here. Ah, 
That's a spot. Right there, huh? Sport Clips, the pros in men's hair. Are you moving your business or your home across the town or across the country? We know it can be stressful. To ensure your possessions arrive on time, intact and on budget, make your move with Jobbers Moving and Storage. Jobbers can help you with every aspect of your move. With our efficient step-by-step approach to move management, we can tailor a plan to suit your needs and schedule. With locations in Bismarck, Fargo, Minot, and Aberdeen, Jobbers Moving and Storage is your choice. Visit JobbersWarehouse.com. It's Jobbers. Moving in storage. Oh, easy, easy. I think I'm good. You got my good side, right? <laughs> Not too many lights. I don't want to get fried before my time. <laughs> oh, it's egg-tastic. You never know what dish you're going to end up in. My dream dish is a 99. It's so popular. Me and a fellow egg tag teaming with some crispy golden hash browns. Have you seen those hash browns? Those guys are shredded. <laughs> Throwing some diced ham, onions, and melted cheese. Oh, it's a party for your taste buds. Oh, here comes Chevy. Hold on, Chevy. Did you guys get everything that you needed? 99, here I come. Shots Crossroads. It's an excellent place to eat. Yeah, welcome back to our planning team financial advisor, Shots Crossroads post game report. This one's gone final, 51-40. Four wins, Minnewakan wins it over Dickinson Trinity. And for a look at the final game numbers, here's Perry Hansen. Uh, four wins was led by Dang Dang. He ended up with 28, followed by uh, Dalen Lethbear with 12. And Wade Nestel getting four. Keyshawn St. Pierre got three. And then a couple from uh, Ty Dufine and Kelson Kaja for their total of 51. And uh, Trinity was led by their All State candidate and Jake Schaub. He got 24, followed by Kate Fitter with uh, five. And then he got three from Luke Schaub, three from Jace Kovash, Thomas Jacobs chipped in with two, and Max Leffer chipped in with one for a total of 40. Well, a couple more things to do is we got to give out our jobbers moving and storage move of the game. They focus on the details of the process, however, losing sight of the big picture. Their efficient step by step approach to move management keeps everyone on the same page. Locations in Bismarck, Minot, Fargo, and Aberdeen. Find them online at jobberswarehouse.com. Well, Perry, I thought it was going to be a little hard to uh, <laughs> figure out this category than this one, but it was just a matter of time, and uh, Dang Dang uh, was able to get one in on that 200 flush. Uh, towards the end of that fourth quarter. Yeah, and I would have to agree with that. And it's a pretty special athlete to watch here in North Dakota. Yeah, and had he had got the one-handed tomahawk done, well, that would have succeeded. That is the play of the game. And then we've got to give out our Sports Clips MVP of the game. Sports Clips brings you the MVP of this matchup. Sports Clips is the home to the MVP haircut experience. Nothing comes close to making you feel like an MVP, quite like the MVP experience at Sports Clips. Tonight's Sports Clip MVP of the game is, well, Perry, you had a chance to talk to him. It's Dang Dang. He had uh, 28 points, number of rebounds, and just overall, you know, Left Bear was uh, making a push forward to the start of this game, but really Dang Dang just took control of this game and led Foreman's been walking to another uh, victory uh, for Rick Smith. Yeah, and he, like he said, you know, I talked to him. He likes that up there at the high post. He'd go both ways with it. And He's very, very explosive athlete, and uh, he can shoot the three, and that's a part that he's added in the last couple of years. He just makes him very, very hard to guard. Oh, and by the way, folks, he's only a junior. Only a junior. Well, that's going to do it for game number four here, the Dale Brown Classic. We'll take a timeout. We'll reset up here, and we come back. It'll be our fifth game of the afternoon. It will feature the, uh, the ranchers from... Uh, Powers Lake and the Miners from Beulah. You'll hear that one next right here on the PSP Network. Whether you're looking for a full service financial plan or planning for farm or business succession, Planning Team Financial Advisors is here to help you work toward achieving your financial goals. With locations in Bismarck, Garrison, and Center, our full-service team of professionals are dedicated to helping you work towards achieving your financial goals. Visit us online, planningteam.com. 
Securities offered through LPL Financial, member of FINRA and SIPC. Investment advisory services offered through New Edge Advisors, LLC, a registered investment advisor. New Edge Advisors, LLC, and Planning Team Financial Advisors are separate entities from LPL Financial. Our stylists are trained to understand the uh, nuances of cutting men's hair. Less pomp, more adore, huh, Brittany? <laughs> Square face, wavy hair. Mid fade with a textured top. Finish it off with a hard part and taper that neckline, coach. Cowlick, what's the move? It's not just all about hard work here. Hit off, seven, pressure, points, yeah. It takes expertise to be a sport clip stylist. Here. Ah. That's a spot right there, huh? Sport clips, the pros in men's hair. Are you moving your business or your home across the town or across the country? We know it can be stressful. To ensure your possessions arrive on time, intact and on budget, make your move with Jobbers Moving and Storage. Jobbers can help you with every aspect of your move. With our efficient step-by-step -step approach to move management, we can tailor a plan to suit your needs and schedule. With locations in Bismarck, Fargo, Minot and Aberdeen, Jobbers Moving and Storage is your choice. Visit JobbersWarehouse.com. It's Jobbers. Moving in storage. Oh, easy, easy. I think I'm good. You got my good side, right? <laughs> Not too many lights. I don't want to get fried before my time. <laughs> oh, it's egg-tastic. You never know what dish you're going to end up in. My dream dish is a 99. It's so popular. Me and a fellow egg tag teaming with some crispy golden hash browns. Have you seen those hash browns? Those guys are shredded. <laughs> Throwing some diced ham, onions, and melted cheese. Oh, it's a party for your taste buds. Oh, here comes Chevy. Hold on, Chevy. Did you guys get everything that you needed? 99, here I come. Shots Crossroads. It's an excellent place to eat. Finding the right bank can be transformative for your small business. The best bank for your business will offer competitive fees and so much more. At BNC National Bank, our team is proud to offer you a helpful, supportive, above and beyond banking relationship. Starting to stress about the complexities of qualifying for a small business loan? BNC can guide you through the process with much less stress and likely far more success. Speak to one of our team members today. The right way to top a sub is with real red wine vinegar made from red grapes and no food coloring. And the right way to film it is in slow motion, obviously. Because authentic ingredients make a sub above. It's water. Boom. Agent Winston Otter. He's been called the human sponge. Our stylists are trained to understand the uh, nuances of cutting men's hair. Less pomp, more adore, huh, Brittany? <laughs> Square face, wavy hair. Mid fade with a textured top. Finish it off with a hard part and taper that neckline, coach. Cowlick, what's the move? It's not just all about hard work here. Hit off, seven, pressure, points, yeah. It takes expertise to be a sport clip stylist. Here. Ah. That's a spot right there, huh? Sport clips, the pros in men's hair. The magic of what we do really comes down to combining different aspects of patient care. Here at Premier Chiropractic, we love combining soft tissue work, the adjustment, and exercises together. We found that this gets the best results for our patients. We have three chiropractors to fit the needs of the entire family, a rehab area for our exercises and equipment for any athlete to improve performance. Give us a call and we will get you back to doing what you love. 
Are you moving your business or your home across the town or across the country? We know it can be stressful. To ensure your possessions arrive on time, intact, and on budget, make your move with Jobbers Moving and Storage. Jobbers can help you with every aspect of your move. With our efficient step-by-step approach to move management, we can tailor a plan to suit your needs and schedule. With locations in Bismarck, Fargo, Minot, and Aberdeen, Jobbers Moving and Storage is your choice. Visit JobbersWarehouse.com. It's Jobbers Moving and Storage. I'm a grateful person on a lot of levels. I've been given so many great opportunities. But most of all, even as a little kid, I was taught a set of values. Like tools for life, hard work, responsibility, and the key to making it all work, commitment. First Western Bank and Trust, you can bank on us. Ackerman Svold, your neighbors, friends, and family who are working for you. The local team with local availability and accountability for all of your engineering, architecture, environmental, transportation, and land development needs. Your project can rely on Ackerman Svold. Find them online at ackermansfold.com. When you start your project, talk with Ackerman Surveying and Associates. Our experienced surveying team guides you in the right direction with planning, planning, and lot and boundary surveys. The trusted name in land surveying, the trusted name in architecture and engineering is Ackerman Surveying and Ackerman Svold. Find them at ackermansfold.com. What you're witnessing actually happens. This is a sad story about bad math. Bad math? Does your online company include mounting? You can't beat the online pricing. When you add the mounting, the shipping, and all the extras, it's just simple math. We guarantee the lowest prices. Our plus plan is simply better, a less expensive way to buy tires. Thinking tires, think tires plus. Yeah, welcome back to the Minot State Dome on the campus of Minot State University and the Dale Brown Classic as we get set for game number five of this afternoon and that will feature the Powers Lake Burke Central Ranchers out of District 16 and Region 8 as they will take on the Beulah Miners out of Super Region 7. Both these two teams coming in with a record of 1-0 on the season. And obviously the, the reason for that is Mother Nature, as Mother Nature certainly has not allowed uh, high school athletics to be in full swing like they hoped they were. But nonetheless, uh, we feel that we're back at it. And again, another matchup, uh, be interesting matchup between two teams that, well, if you look at this matchup, uh, Perry, you've got one team that lost a first team All-Stater uh, in Trey Brand, who's now brought his talents to this facility right here on Minot State University. And then you've got the other team who retain, returns a first team All-Stater last year, All-Region, also an All-State football player, and a guy by the name of Tyson Ingot, averaging 25.2 points per game, 116 steals, 119 assists. So certainly a, a, a difference of two teams. Bula trying to find a, a, a somebody who's going to be our guy to score the basketball. Well, Powers Lake, Burke Central, they've already got that guy. And he's the top returning scorer in Class B coming back in the state, and Mikey city has got a Really a high number of assists and steals, and so he, he just does it all here for Powers Lake. And uh, I've got them second in Region 8, but, uh, you know, we'll see. Maybe as the season goes along, and might sneak up, prove me wrong. Yeah, certainly depth will be an issue with Powers Lake as we'd like to welcome you inside the Shields pregame show. Shop sporting goods, hunting and fishing gear, clothing and more at Shields of Minot and Bismarck. Shields, our pregame sponsor, but uh, Powers Lake, as we said, a team last year that made it to the region final last year, and uh, Stanley upended them in that Region 8 final game. And, and again, the Beulah Miner is out of Region 7, and anytime you play in a Region 7 tournament, it's, it's probably worse 
than playing in the state tournament because the Region 7 tournament, you know, when you've got the likes of Dickinson Trinity, you've got Bowman County out there, you've got uh, the Beulah Miners, you've got Hazen. I mean, so you've got a lot of well-balanced teams, and certainly this Beulah team for the last number of years, you know, I've had Trey Brand and a number of other pieces to go with it, but this is kind of a refreshment maybe to say for Coach Jeremy Brand. And you never want to call it a rebuild in Beulah, but, uh, you know, I think, yeah, he's, he's got a kind of a fresh group here and a couple kids that played a lot for him a year ago. But uh, as a whole, this is probably one of his most inexperienced teams that he's had. Yeah, Trapper, some time. Trapper Skulski, a kid last year that re really was kind of the Robin to, uh, to, to, yeah. to Brant the Batman. And so certainly two guys that uh, scored the basketball uh, at, at will last year for the Beulah Miners, Trey Brandt leading scorer in Beulah basketball history, so certainly a, a talent. But uh, this one sets up to be a fun one, interesting one. Uh, looking forward to see what both these two teams can bring to the floor. We'll take another timeout. Starting lineups are next right here on the PSP Network. Powers Lake, Burke Central, and the Beulah Miners on the PSP Network. Back after this timeout. Yeah, welcome back to the Minot State Dome as this afternoon's game brought to you in part by Planet Pizza. They've been proudly serving the Magic City over 25 years of the largest laser tank playground in the region, mouthwatering pizza and wings, and the 30-inch galactic pizzas that are out of this world. Call in order now, 852-1700. Planet Pizza is out of this world. Also brought to you in part by Roger Ward Moving and Storage. They've been proudly helping the region with their moving and storage needs since 1942. Find them online at rogerwardmovingstorage.com. To schedule a move or to find a quote, Roger Ward, moving and storage. Let's take a look at the starting lineup. First of all, for the Beulah Miners, they'll go like this at one guard, will be Jack Coppelsloan. He's a 5'10 senior. At another guard spot will be Trace Beauchamp. He's 6'3 and a junior. At one forward will be Aiden O'Brien. He's 6'1 and a junior. And at another four, it'll be Champ Hedick. He's 6'3 and a junior. And in the middle will be the freshman at 6'6", Bennett Larson. Their head coach in his 15th year is Jeremy Brandt. For the ranchers from Powers Lake, Burke Central, they'll go like this. At one guard will be Tyson Ingot. He's 5'10 and a senior. The other guard will be Luke Fraunfelter. He's 5'11 and a junior. At one four, it'll be Grayson Schroeder. Schroeder. Schroeder, I'm sorry, Grayson Schroeder. He's six foot and a senior. The other forward will be Bo Kearsley. He's six two and a senior. And at another forward spot will be Jaden Bollinger. He's 5'11 and a junior. Their head coach is Jordan Carlson. And Jordan is in his 14th year at the helm. Powers Lake. The Ranchers were 24 and one last season. The Beulah Miners, 19 and five last season. 16 state class B appearances by the Beulah Miners and they had one title back in 2012. It was a short few years ago that we saw the Powers Lake Ranchers up here in the Minot State Dome in the state tournament. So it sets up to be an interesting battle here today uh, on the Minot State University floor as the ranchers take their final instructions. And they are in their home whites with maroon trim. Oh, there we go. Now we've got some numbers. Yeah, we the miners in the we royal. See these a little better in the last game. The royal with gold. So here we go, going out of that center court. That will be Bennett Larson. He'll go up against Kearsley. And Perry Smith awaits to throw it up. Not Perry Smith. Perry Olson. Perry Olson. Jeez, Luis. Tip is controlled by who? It's tapped out of bounds. Who tipped it up? What's going to be? 
Beulah basketball. So the Miners will start off with the first possession of the contest. As they get it inbounds to O'Brien. O'Brien goes left wing. That's Hedick. Now back up high to Beauchamp. <coughs> now here's O'Brien. Up high to Hedick. Hedick, left corner they go to Koppel Sloan. Down low they go to the big fella. Layup rolls around and goes back down for Bennett Larson. Got, him, got himself posted pretty low down there, and once you get it down there, it's tough to defend. Here's Ingot. Ingot's going to go coast to coast. Tough shot off balance, but he's going to be fouled. That's going to go against Bennett Larson, and that'll be his first, team's first. Boy, the return on that one by Tyson Ingot was quick. Yeah, he's, he's, you know, there's a kid that when they were here for the state tournament, he was playing as a freshman. Yeah, and you know, he, he, was, a, he was dynamic, or is dynamic on the football field and a bad injury kept him out most of the postseason or end of the regular season and postseason. So certainly as they co-op with Ray as Hedda, or uh, Ingot goes one for two and it's two one. Back with it comes O'Brien for Beulah. He hands it off to Beauchamp. Beauchamp now to Hedick. Hedick in the paint. Drops it off down low to Koppel Sloan, nowhere to go. Now out high, left-handed three by Beauchamp is up and good. 5-1, Beulah leads on the BNC Bank scoreboard early going, just seven minutes, a minute gone by. Here's Ingot, Ingot right down Broadway, layup up and good. Explosive kid. And Jeremy Brantz, how long is it? Is someone gonna guard that guy? He just makes things happen so fast. Here's a handoff to Beauchamp. Oh, that's Hedick with it, that's stand corrected. He skips it left wing. Here's Beauchamp, another one's up and good for the 6'3 junior. 8-3, Beulah by five. Ingot guarded by O'Brien. Ingot throws it in the, near, in the front court. Down low they go to Schroeder, his shot up no good. Rebound to Bennett Larson, says come back and get it. You wonder how many times uh, Coach Brandt had to hear that from other coaches the last few years. Uh, is anybody going to guard that guy? <laughs> yeah. Koppel Sloan kicks right wing. Oh, suitcase violation against Hedick. Turnover number one for the Beulah Miners. 8-3 our score, 6 7 a play, opening quarter of play. Today's game brought to you in part by Jersey Mike's. Make sure to vote for this week's Jersey Mike's Player of the Week on the PSP Network pa Facebook time. page. Jersey Mike's is a sub above and quickly Jaden Boeinger scores one, makes it 8-5. Almost a steal and running it down is Beauchamp. Beauchamp gets it off to Hedick. Here's O'Brien, a right corner three, too strong, rebound to Larson. Now he finds O'Brien, teardrop in the lanes, up and good for Aiden O'Brien. Ball kept alive by the 6'6", Larson, who's got quite a few inches on everybody out here on the floor, so. 10-5. Nice by him as a freshman. Fraunfelter, they go down low to Kearsley. Kearsley, turn shots no good, rebound. Up the near side comes Beauchamp. Beauchamp crosses over, gets to the 10, lays it up with the left hand and scores it. Beauchamp with a quick eight, makes it 12-5. Back with it comes Fraunfelter. He hands off to Ingot. Ingot, stop and go move, drops it down. Ooh, nice pick there by Beauchamp as he slid down low and picked it off. Beauchamp back the other way. Loses the handles and he turns it over. Taken out of there by Schroeder. He gets it off the ingot. They slow it down, do the ranchers. High post, they go to Kearsley. They cut off of him. Now here's Ingot with it. Ingot drops it off for Schroeder. Schroeder looks down low to Kearsley. He turns, now out high to Ingot. Ingot spins, kicks right wing Bullinger. He's going to fire for three. Bingo! Jaden Bollinger with five, and it's 12-8. was a nice job by Ingot there, making that happen. Draw Bur two a pitch. Here's a three, high left side three. That one's up and good by Koppel Sloan. 15-8, now on the other end. Quick move there by 
Schroeder to no avail. The shot, but it rolls off and he's going to be fouled. Champ Hedick gets the per personal foul. That's a first. Team second, Schroeder at the line, shooting. Free throw on its way and in and out and back down. Braylon Sherrado checks in as well as Taryn Larson. Larson had his nose busted. I see he's got that mask on. His butter and his brother was the one that did it. 15-10. Here's O'Brien with it. Looks down low to Larson. Off the screen, and boy, I'll tell you what, Beauchamp's got her stuck in automatic right now. Got 11 in the quarter. Not sure, is that a sister, uh, brother to the, to the girl that's really good here over yep. there? Yep, 17-10. Okay. Here's a right corner three. It's up and good by Schroeder. Schroeder for three. 17-13, four-point lead for the Miners. O'Brien back with it, crosses over, now leaves it Coppola Sloan. He's gonna fire one up, and that one's up and good. It's raining threes in the, in the uh, MSU Dome right now. I was gonna say Fargo Dome, you know that? <laughs> <laughs> well, as high up as we are, sometimes I wonder. <laughs> yeah, 20 to 13, Ingot controls between the rings now. And what are we gonna have? Off the ball here. Oh, that's going to go on Beauchamp off the ball, as Perry said. First personal third team foul as the trigger man will be Ingot. Goes out high. Probably going to get a screen and come back out here. Bullinger gets it off to Fraunfelter. Fraunfelter attacks, gathers his footing, now taken away by Beauchamp. Beauchamp down the left side, crosses behind the back. Beauchamp, left hand layup, up and good. And boy, it is the Beauchamp show right now. Quick return, here's on the other end, that's Fraunfelter, his shot rolls off. Rebound down, here comes Beauchamp again, 22-13. Koppelsloan, baseline, Beauchamp, left wing three. Ooh, that was short. Larson the rebound, Larson bounces, shot up, no good, but he's gonna be fouled. Oh, heat check there for Beauchamp. Yeah. Bo Kersley gets the foul. And we got a Hub International Insurance timeout on the floor. 2.28 to go. Hub International Insurance is a leading North American insurance brokerage is Hub. On the BNC Bank scoreboard, it's Beulah 22, the Ranchers 13, back after this timeout on the PSP Network. Right bank can be transformative for your small business. The best bank for your business will offer competitive fees and so much more. At BNC National Bank, our team is proud to offer you a helpful, supportive, above and beyond banking relationship. Starting to stress about the complexities of qualifying for a small business loan? BNC can guide you through the process with much less stress and likely far more success. Speak to one of our team members today. You know, when the crack staff in Beulah is listening to your broadcast, they correct you on a dime. As I want to thank Mr. Sinfender for the athletic director of, of confirming that. Harris and Trace are brother and sister. Oh. So there you go, huh? Yeah. As Larson misses that one. And I Terrence. Believe, I believe Harris is hoping to make some. Uh, Coming off an injury from volleyball, hoping to play a little bit. 23-13, our score, 222 left to go here. Opening quarter of play. Shoulder controls. Ingot, Ingot, step through move, running one-handed shot off the window and scores it, does Tyson Ingot. It's a strong kid. 20, yes, he is. 23-15. He probably heard Jeremy Brandt saying, will somebody take a charge on him? Here's yeah. Koppel Sloan. Now they go Beauchamp baseline. Now he kicks it in the right corner. That's Beauchamp. I stand corrected. That pass came from Hedick. Oh, there's a three up and good. Braden Sherrado. Braylon Sherrado knocks down a three. They've had some really nice ball reversal and getting some, some nice looks at the rim. And they're, they're knocking them down. 
26-15, good quarter here for the Beulah Miners. On the cut, Fraunfelter. That was contested, but he got it up high enough and scored it. Back and forth we go, 26-17. Back with it comes Beauchamp. Now here's Koppelsloan. Now Hedick. Oh, we're gonna get a jump ball as attacking was Beauchamp. Aiden O'Brien, sorry, Perry. That'd be Powers Lake ball on that. Aiden Parker, I think. O'Brien O'Brien com comes in, Beauchamp goes out. A little bit more scoring this game. Well, they had a chance to get the ball to Ingot, and I think he could have taken off there, but he didn't, they didn't give it to him. Shoulder controls. Left corner. Substitution in there. Lucas Parslow in for Powers Lake. Parslow, a 5'9 junior. They lob down low. Schroeder now kicks it out high to Parslow. Now back to Ingot. Ingot crosses over, gets in the lane. Ooh, athletic. Move there with a one-handed finger roll from the right hand comes off. Very good job by the Beulah defender, though, of making him go away from the basket. Koppel Sloan one more time, no good. Larson can't hang on to the rebound. It goes out of bounds, and it'll go back to the ranchers. This afternoon's game brought to you in part by Northern Plains Heating and Air. They have over 25 years of experience as your heating and air experts. <laughs> as a factory authorized dealer for Aerosteel, there's no other choice to seal your heating and air game other than Northern Plains Heating and Air. Find them online, northern-plains.com. 38.3 to go, first quarter, 26-17. Beulah leads the ranchers from Powers Lake, Burke Central. Here's Ingot, Ingot behind the back, on the bounce. Crosses over high right side. Now he kicks it left corner to Parslow. He tacks baseline, cut off there. Now, now they get it out. Yep, that's Justin Grubb just checked in. Shot up no good by Schroeder. And the rebound comes down to the Miners. They're gonna probably play for one here. Shot clock is off, game clock down to 13. Sherado controls. He hands it off to Koppel Sloan, and Koppel Sloan's gonna be tied up. Jump ball is gonna to go to the Beulah Miners. Let's see if Beulah gets back into that one flat set, and then they have options to go from there. They inbound it to O'Brien. O'Brien gets in the lane. O'Brien down the left side of the lane, goes up strong and scores it as time winds down, and that's gonna end the opening quarter of play as Aiden O'Brien gives, that's two more to Beulah. On the BNC Bank scoreboard, one quarter in the books. Beulah 28, the Ranchers 17. Back with quarter number two from the MSU Dome after this timeout on the PSP Network. This broadcast on the PSP Network is proudly brought to you by The right way to top a sub is with real red wine vinegar made from red grapes and no food coloring. And the right way to film it is in slow motion, obviously. Because authentic ingredients make a sub above. Yeah, the ranchers will have the ball to start quarter number two as they trail by 11 at 28-17 on the BNC Bank scoreboard. Ingot controls guarded by Koppel Sloan. And they enter it in the high post. That's Fraunfelter, and there's gonna be a double dribble called. That play just didn't, had bad timing from the get-go. He was supposed to get a little higher, I think, when he caught that. Champ Pettit cans off to Koppel Sloan. Here's O'Brien, top of the key. Here's Sherado, he's gonna fire right side. Three, bingo! <laughs> I mean, this, he's a good looking player as a freshman. Yeah, he's got some young kids here that look pretty good. Eh? 
29-17, right corner. Here's Grubb for three. No, nope, air ball. And rebound comes down to Hedick. He wanted to run, loses it on the other end. Fraunfelter, layup, up and good. Fraunfelter. 29-19, or I'm sorry. 31-19. Down low, turn shot rolls off by Bennett Larson. Quick return, here's Ingot. He gathers, off balance shot, no good. Rebound comes down to Champ Hedick. He gets it out to Sherado. Diagonal pass, O'Brien, he backs. Left corner three on the way, short. Rebound, Ingot. Here's a lead pass, Fraunfelter. He gathers. Kicks it out, left side three. Parslow is up and good. Thirty-one twenty-two now. Sherado, he's gonna fire from the left side again. That run rolls off and get the rebound. Ingot lead out pass to Parslow. He gathers, now finds a trail in Fraunfelter. Now the ranchers reset. Slow things down, comes a high screen for Ingot. Jump stop, pulls up off the window, too strong. Koppel slowing the rebound. That 10 threes already between the two teams, Scott. <laughs> Hedick, Koppel slowing around the way they go. O'Brien left corner. O'Brien, now to the big fellow Larson. He gets in the paint. Now Koppel slowing, thought about it. Now right corner, Sherado. And what are we going to have here? Blocking call on Grubb. First personal, second team foul. This afternoon's game brought to you in part by the UPS store located on South Broadway in Minot. They're open Monday through Friday, 830 to 7, and Saturday, 830 to 3. The UPS store located in the Marketplace Foods Plaza for all your packing and shipping needs. The UPS store. O'Brien down low or up high. They go to Larson. Ooh, boy. They had headache on the backside. They did. Kyle Hughesby checked in for Powers Lake. Good play here. Good strong move by Larson. That one comes off. Here's a breakout. Here comes Schroeder on the right side. He flips it up, and he's going to be fouled, and that's going to be on Aiden O'Brien. Fouls on number 10, Aiden O'Brien. That's his first personal. Fourth team foul. Free throw is up and no good by Schroeder. He will have one more. 31 22. The Miners lead it. Second one on its way is up and good. Schroeder goes one of two. 31-23, here's O'Brien. Hedick, around the wheel they go to Beauchamp. Down low, Hedick, he gathers, goes up and scores it. That's his first bucket of the afternoon. It's back door cut from the backside, I like that. Back to a 10 point lead now for Beulah with five minutes to play in the half. Left corner, Parslow, now out to Ingot. Ingot, quick move there, now Parslow, left corner, and oh, they're gonna get a blocking foul. He's gonna go against Trace Beauchamp, that'll be number two on him. Substitution coming in, here comes Taryn Larson. Koppel Sloan comes in. Good one coming up next as well, Shiloh and the Tommies from Thompson. Here's Parslow, now gets it off to Schroeder. Schroeder to Ingot. Ingot kicks right corner, here's a three on the way by Hughesby, ooh, boy, nothing. Somebody opened the door on the south end. O'Brien up the left side, Koppel Sloan, diagonal pass, good gather by Sherado as he went and got the ball and set to let the ball come to him, and in doing so, he drew a foul. First person with third team foul as that one goes against Parslow. Lob out high, they go to Larson. That's Taron. Left corner to Hedick. Now here's O'Brien, looks inside, nothing there. Now Hedick. Top of the key, Koppel Sloan. Thought about it, now he attacks. Finger roll layup up and good by Jack. Pretty impressed with Beulah here. Yeah, 
Ingot drops it down low. Ooh, missing everything there. That was Bullinger. Quick return. Here's Copplesloan. Step back three on the way. Bingo. Oh, Jack Copplesloan. 38-23. Jordan Carlson wants a timeout. 3.58 to go. Opening half of play on the BNC Bank scoreboard. It's a Hubbard National Insurance timeout. Beulah 38. Powers Lake Burke Central 23. Back with more after this timeout on the PSP Network. Every 10 minutes, three people in the United States will die from a preventable incident. More people are dying on our roadways and in their homes than ever before. But that's where the North Dakota Safety Council can help. Safety is our mission from the workplace to any place. We're a private nonprofit that offers more than 150 training courses that are dynamic, hands-on, and effective. From CPR and first aid to driver safety and even workplace violence preparedness, we want to make sure your loved ones come home safe each night. Go to ndsc.org to see how together we can make a difference. Hey, a reminder to stay tuned for our Premier Chiropractic Intermission Report. Dr. Kirk Mason, Dr. Cody Hogan, and Dr. Becky Perry Domery is going to be found at premierchiropracticnd.com and off the inbounds. We've got a foul that'll go against Koppel Sloan. That'll be his first. That'll be the team's sixth of the half. 38-23 our score. 3.49 to go. Jump stop, Ingot. Here's Schroeder in the right corner. He dribbles it out, now finds Ingot again. Ingot. Here's a three in the right side. That's by Hughesby. That one's short. Rebound comes down to the Miners. Ooh, here Koppel Sloan. Oh, flyby. Reverse layup up and good by Koppel Sloan. That is a really nice catch and finish. People don't realize how hard that is, what he just did there. 40 to 23. The Miners have it going on all cylinders right now in this opening half. Here's Hughesby with it. Between the rings, now comes near side left to Schroeder. Schroeder now to Ingot. Parslow on the right wing. Parslow now back to Ingot. Ingot, he's going to attack. Leaves it back. Here's Schroeder for three. That one's short. Rebound tipped around into the hands of O'Brien. Oh, he gathers it finally near the timeline. O'Brien goes baseline right. Nothing there. Now leaves it back. Go five out. Time out. Go out. Five out. <laughs> Coach Brand has what, got what a, we, Coach yeah. Brandt's got a play called five out, and so the referees thought he said timeout. <laughs> That's I know what that, it was. I, I know that because I had the same thing happen to me a long time ago, and I had to change that right after the game. But it was kind of funny. But here's O'Brien. Sherado back in the ball game. Koppel Sloan. Oh, O'Brien straight away three back iron. Oh, and he got the roll. <laughs> Aiden O'Brien with seven. Coach Brandt should take more time off between games the way they're shooting today. And Beulah by 20 at 43-23. Almost a steal there by Hedick. And it'll stay with the Ranchers. BNC National Bank with locations throughout North Dakota, Minnesota, and Arizona. BNC National Bank provides you with banking and wealth management services for your business and family. Visit BNC Bank online today at bnc.bank. Ingot has it swatted out of there by Larson. Koppel Sloan, lead pass Sherado. He gathers, oh, nice hustle play there by Grayson Schroeder, and it's tipped out of bounds, but it will stay with the Beulah Miners. Buell is doing a really nice job on Inga getting bodies to his driving lane. He's gonna either gonna have to jump stop score or kick it out or something a little bit different. Left corner, Sherado. Oh, offensive foul. They're gonna get Hedick, I do believe. Yeah, illegal screen. You think that uh, Jeremy Brandt is used to that as as other teams are trying to get bodies to his yeah. son Trey Brandt? Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Here's Ingot in the front court. His team trails by 20. He's been quiet. Ingot, Schroeder left corner. Now back out to Ingot. Tries to go high post, taken away there by Hedick. Gets it off to Sherado. Right corner, O'Brien. O'Brien drops it down low. Larson, he gathers, has it poked away, still fighting for it. Now taken away there by Ingot. Here's a quick outlet pass to Hughesby. Lay up on the other end. It's up and good by Kyle Hughesby. Kyle Hughesby. 
It's hard to put the ball on the floor more than once when you're down there in the post. 43-25, minute 22 left to play. Handoff, here's Hedick. Attacks the baseline, Hedick with the right hand, short. Ball's loose, who's got it, who's it off of? It's gonna go to the Ranchers with a minute 10 to play. 43-25, 110 to go in the opening half of play here from the Dale Brown Classic from Minot State University. Ingit walks it in the front court. Now attacks, Hughesby left corner. He'll try the left side, that one's no good. He has an end, he's 0 for 3 from the right and 0 for 1 from the left. Did you get that wind judged a little <laughs> better, I guess, huh? Or ask somebody if they can please close the door on the close, south end. Close the door. That's a better job by Inga getting into the lane and then finding somebody for an open three. They're just gonna make the shot. They'll be fine. Tough shot by O'Brien on the baseline. Air ball comes down to the ranchers in there for, that's Nick Erickson. Oh, and I got a 10 second count. Coach was calling out a, a play for Ingot, and he was letting the kids get set up. And he just didn't even realize that he wasn't across half court yet. <laughs> Shot clock is off. Miners by 18 at 43-25. <laughs> Almost a steal. Hedick, Sherado. Now a pie. Koppel Sloan. Here's O'Brien. Left elbow. Now O'Brien leans in, falls away. Shot up and good by Aiden O'Brien. He's a nice looking player. Yeah, he's. On the other end, the end one for Hughesby. That's going to go on Champ Hedick, and that's three on Hedick. So Kyle Hughesby will be at the line to shoot one, makes it 45 27. Make it 28 as Hughesby converts. Sherrata, ooh, Ingot take it away. Ingot from half court, and that one's no good, and that's gonna end the opening, ha or the opening half of this game as we go to break on the BNC Bank scoreboard. It is Beulah 45, Powers Lake, Burke Central 28. We'll be back with our Premier Chiropractic Intermission Report after this timeout on the PSP Network. The magic of what we do really comes down to combining different aspects of patient care. Here at Premier Chiropractic, we love combining soft tissue work, the adjustment and exercises together. We found that this gets the best results for our patients. We have three chiropractors to fit the needs of the entire family, a rehab area for our exercises and equipment for any athlete to improve performance. Give us a call and we will get you back to doing what you love. Are you moving your business or your home across the town or across the country? We know it can be stressful. To ensure your possessions arrive on time, intact and on budget, make your move with Jobbers Moving and Storage. Jobbers can help you with every aspect of your move. With our efficient step-by-step -step approach to move management, we can tailor a plan to suit your needs and schedule. With locations in Bismarck, Fargo, Minot and Aberdeen, Jobbers Moving and Storage is your choice. Visit JobbersWarehouse.com. It's Jobbers. Moving in storage. I'm a grateful person on a lot of levels. I've been given so many great opportunities. But most of all, even as a little kid, I was taught a set of values. Like tools for life, hard work, responsibility, and the key to making it all work, commitment. First Western Bank and Trust. You can bank on us. Ackerman Esfold, your neighbors, friends, and family who are working for you. The local team with local availability and accountability for all of your engineering, architecture, environmental, transportation, and land development needs. Your project can rely on Ackerman Esfold. Find them online at ackermanesfold.com. When you start your project, talk with Ackerman Surveying and Associates. 
Our experienced surveying team guides you in the right direction with planning, planning, and lot and boundary surveys. The trusted name in land surveying, the trusted name in architecture and engineering is Ackerman Surveying and Ackerman Esfold. Find them at ackermanesfold.com. What you're witnessing actually happens. This is a sad story about bad math. Bad math? Does your online company include mounting? You can't beat the online pricing. When you add the mounting, the shipping, and all the extras, it's just simple math. We guarantee the lowest prices. Our plus plan is simply better, a less expensive way to buy tires. Thinking tires, think tires plus. This broadcast on the PSP Network is proudly brought to you by Broadcast on the PSP Network is proudly brought to you by Welcome back to the Dale Brown Classic as we are at halftime of game number five on the PSP network here as Beulah leads Powers Lake Brook Central 45 to 28 if you're just tuning in. Glad to have you aboard on the PSP network as we started this out at about 1045 this morning. Game number one, Stanley Oliver TGU 60 to 30. Then it was Hazen over West Hope Newburgh 51-49 and then in a good one in double overtime Velva knocks off St. John's 74-67 and four wins Minnewaka and uh, defeated Dickinson Trinity by a score of 51-40. Two more to follow here yet today as Shadow and Thompson will follow this one and then we will round out our coverage with uh, our Redeemers and North Star and that will wrap up the 2022 Dale Brown Classic, and then we will turn our attention to the Hoopster Classic. But nonetheless, Perry, this opening half a play certainly impressed by Beulah. We th we talked about in the, in the pregame about you know who was going to be able to score the basketball. Well, it appears like uh, they've got about two or three kids that are going to show that uh, uh, head coach Jeremy Brandt that you know if, 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 you know we've got we've got a combo of guys that can go out and and, and get some baskets here for for this uh, for this basketball team and i've been just very impressed with their ball movement they got some athletic kids and they've got three kids getting some pretty decent points and i wouldn't be surprised if some other nights you'll see a couple other ones get some points as well he's got a nice balance this year he's he doesn't have a go-to kid like he's had maybe the last couple of years it's more of a balanced attack and 
You know, and that usually uh, toward, uh, that takes time to develop that. Well, I've been informed that uh, O'Brien uh, last year uh, was out most of last year as he had a, ling uh, a li knee injury, knee injury yep. uh, from football that uh, that you know didn't didn't do anything with, and and certainly, you know, he certainly would have been a great addition to that team last year. Uh, with his athleticism, but uh, certainly I think right now we're seeing that Beulah, they've got a good balance of kids. You know, they got some size. Um, they got some kids that can shoot the three. Uh, they've got some kids that can shoot the mid-range shot. So certainly, again, Beulah's going to be a team to be contended with, again, out in Region 7. No, I think Region 7, I mean, Trinity, you know, is going to be formidable. Beulah obviously looks good today. I thought I watched Hazen earlier today. They they got a nice squad, and then you got Bowman County. Bowman County sitting down there, and so you got four really good teams already that uh, I've seen this year. So it's going to be a fun Region 7. Well, Perry, why don't you take a look at the uh, first half individual numbers uh, for both the ranchers and the miners? Well, first of all, for Bueller, they're led by Jack Copplesloan. He's got 13. Next up is Trace Beauchamp. He's got 12. Followed by that Aiden O'Brien with a nice first half at 9. Braylon Sherado has a total of six. Champ Hedick got in a little foul trouble, but he, he got two. Bennett Larson had two, and Tara Larson had one. Beulah just had two free throw attempts, and uh, they converted one of those in the first half. And for Powers Lake, uh, they've got, they're led by Grayson Schroeder with six, Tyson Ingott with five, Jaden Bollinger with five, Kyle Hughesby with five. Luke Fraunfelter's got four, and Lucas Parslow had three, and they were five of seven from the free throw line. So that's the uh, and their their total is uh, 28. We've got a 45-28 score here with Beulah. Well, you're listening to our Premier Chiropractic Intermission Report. Uh, they're focused on improving the health of Minot and surrounding areas through the most cutting edge advances in natural health care today. That's Premier Chiropractic. Also. Today's game is brought to you in part by Presswith Orchidonics, specializing in, bra specializing in braces and Invisalign for all ages. We offer free consultations and financing options to make it easy to take your smile to the next level. Call 852-2646 or visit MinotBraces.com today to get started with a free virtual consultation. That's Prestwich Orthodonics. And also to Northern Plains Heating and Air, they have over 25 years of experience as your heating and air experts. As a factory authorized dealer for Aero Seal, there's no other choice to seal your heating and air game other than Northern Plains Heating and Air. You can find them online at northern plains.com As a reminder, Shiloh and Thompson to follow this one. And then uh, again, we'll be back on the air with you tomorrow. And also, we'll be on the air with you twice tomorrow as uh, Todd Domery's Chuck Claremont making their way back to the capital city, and then they will travel across the Big Muddy over to Mandan. It's the BNC National Bank Mandan Holiday Tournament, which should be a fun one as well. Got some new teams in that tournament as well. So lots of Class B basketball uh, this week on the PSP Network. Yeah, and I, I, the coverage you guys have had or we've had here has just been outstanding. It's uh, good these kids are getting a chance to get some uh, game time in with all the weather we've had. And yeah, you got to like that. A guy walks into the Spicy Pie when he rolls into the Magic City, and there you look up on the TVs. You got any connection with the Spicy Pie, Nick? <laughs> As there, the, there the games were right out of the timeout. The big fella, Bennett Larson, right out of the timeout, right out of the break, comes in and knocks down a two. Does Bennett Larson makes it 47-28? And a turnover on the other end. Here comes Beauchamp with a lead pass to O'Brien. O'Brien gathers in the paint, stops, dumps it down low. Larson shot fake, bounce, baby hook. That one's no good. I'd like to see him jump off two feet there. That would make that a little easier yep. shot. Yep, go up and flush it home. Here's Schroeder from 16. That one too strong. Rebound to Hedick. He gets it off to O'Brien up the far sideline. O'Brien in the front court now drops to Hedick on the trail. Beauchamp, Koppel slowing around the wheel. Here's Hedick for three. Short, long rebound. Here's Ingot. It's a foot race. I think Ingot's going to win this one. Ingot, layup good. He's got seven. Makes it 47-30 on the beat. Here's a steal by Ingot. And he Ingot win, again. He's going to win this race, too. Yes, he is. Make it two in a row for Ingot. Make it 47-32. Look down to write a score, and there goes Ingot back the other way. Now here's O'Brien in the front court. Gets a high screen from Larson, top of the key. 
Now Beauchamp, he gets in the paint. Oh, it's going to be a suitcase violation as he travels with the basketball. Braylon Sherrado checks in now. Sherrado, a 5'10 freshman. The two freshmen out here right now for Beulah. Yeah. That's a good sign if you're head coach Jeremy Brandt. Give the young kids some experience. There's Ingot again, kicks it left wing. Three ball on the way. That one rolls off for Bullinger and comes down to Koppel Sloan up the near side. Here comes Beauchamp. Now to O'Brien. Sherrado Sh with it. Now Sherrado. Larson. Ooh, you don't want him out there. Hands off Koppel Sloan. Step back. Straight away. Three. Roll. And he used the whole iron that time and got it to roll down. Did. Jack Copplesloan give him 16 on the afternoon. He's got four threes. 50 to 32. Ingot operates, now leaves it for Fraunfelter. Now dumps it off to Bollinger, not a Fraunfelter. Now here's a right wing three by Ingot. That one rolls off. Rebound to Larson, keeps it up high, kicks it out. And there's Ingot, those quick hands with a steal. Cross court diagonal pass, Schroeder now back to Ingot. Ingot, here's Schroeder, looks inside, now back to Ingot. Ingot now gets it off to Bollinger. Bollinger nowhere to go. Ingot left wing, wants a screen, didn't get it. O'Brien comes out and hounds him. Here's a screen, now Ingot goes baseline, dumps it down low, and we're gonna get a foul, and they're gonna get Bennett Larson with the body. That'll be his second, team's first. Reminder, we'll have our Shots Crossroads Planning Team Financial Advisors post-game report coming up. Off the inbounds, here's Schroeder. He gathers, goes up, and scores. Nice little look off the out-of-bounds play there. Here's Inget up here working hard with another one, just trying to get some change of pace going here. Planning Team Financial Advisors helping clients work toward financial freedom and Shots Crossroads get filled up on their delicious menu that includes the famous number 99. Order online at ShotsCrossroads.com. Team buses, you are always welcome. And we're going to foul in the front court. That's going to go against Ingot, his first. First team foul in the second half for the Ranchers. 50-34, 16-point lead for Beulah. O'Brien off the inbounds. Now Sherrado, here's Koppel Sloan. Beauchamp thought about it. Ball fake, now he puts it on the floor and he tries to go by Fraunfelter and in doing so, Fraunfelter gets called for the foul. First personal, second team foul. Get a new shot clock, and they inbound it. Ooh, could have had a foul there. Long three by Beauchamp is up and good. The lefty went scoreless in quarter number two, but now he's got 15 with that three there. Makes it 53-34 for the Miners. <laughs> Down low, Ingot, Ingot. Aiden and Bennett. Misses the bunny. Bennett. Bennett, Larson comes out of there with it. <laughs> and we're gonna get a foul called. Didn't see who that, who's that going to go on. Oh, he can get a three. Schroeder. Schroeder, his first, third team foul. Champ Hedick comes in. Taryn Larson. And Taryn Larson comes in for Beulah. 409 left to play. Oh, third quarter. Hedick drops it off. Sherrado kick left corner. Koppel Sloan. Now back, here comes Beauchamp, crosses over, and Beauchamp with that right arm sleeve. Now gets it off, head oh, nice bounce pass, Larson layup good, a good dime there. As Larson lays it in, he's got three. 55-34. Kersley shot too strong, rebound by Schroeder's up no good, rebound comes out of there to Hedick. Gets it off to Beauchamp, now here's Sherrado. Wanted to step into a three, here's Hedick, now Koppel Sloan. Long two, that one's short, rebound Hedick. Oh, and there's gonna be Fraunfelter on the box out. That'll be number two on him. That'll be the fourth team foul. Now coming in for Powers Lake will be Lucas Parslow. 
Seen a lot of kids with uh, from Powers Lake with their hands on their hips. And <laughs> yeah, they don't go real deep. Hedick attacks, leaves it for Coppola Sloan. Here's Beauchamp with it. Beauchamp rises 15 footers up and good. Boy, he's got a nice shooting touch, does Trace Beauchamp. Coming in averaging 13 points in that one game. You sometimes wonder when I was a coach, you used to kind of forget when kids were left handed. And he gets he just kind of goes that way quite a bit. 50, yeah, 57, 34. Almost a poke away there, but the ranchers gather. Now they try to go down low and they're gonna get a foul, and I believe that's gonna go on Taryn Larson. First personal, second team foul. This afternoon's game brought to you in part by Surf Pro, 24-7 emergency service, trained technicians, advanced technology, fire and water cleanup and restoration, it's Surf Pro. Interesting on the out of bounds. Uh, a lot of coaches will have the kid put their head right underneath the net so they don't get anything on the backside. Perry, how long has the Dale Brown Classic been around? Well, I think we've been doing this Hoopster and Dale Brown Classic. Uh, I think we're creeping up on double digits. Uh, Are you? The Hoopster Classic originally started in uh, Bismarck at the Civic Center. Mm-hmm. And rent got a little bit too expensive and things like that, so they moved it up here. My brother-in-law took over. He's just done a fantastic job of getting teams in here. Yeah, he certainly has. There's lots of activity there, and Ingot was finally able to corral it, go up and miss a shot, but he's going to be fouled. But certainly, no, a job well done by Scott Grakow and staff, I should say. How about that? Yep. Ingot converts, foul goes on O'Brien. That's his second. You know, I, I constantly get emails all summer long, and they want to see how they can get into the Hoopster Classic and the Dale Brown Classic. It's like you get two good games, and then you can bring your JV along, and you get to play in the JV side of it too. So you can bring your whole program up here and get games in. 57, nice yeah, that's a certainly a, a good environment for it. 57, 36. Left wing three by Sherrado, that one off the iron and rebound comes out to the ranchers. Schroeder. Right wing three, Parslow, and that one's up and good as Lucas Parslow knocks down a three. And we got a Hubbard National Insurance timeout on the floor. Hey. Hubbard National Insurance located at 4204 Boulder Ridge Road in Northwest Bismarck. Two minutes to go, third quarter play. Beulah 57, Fars Lake Brook Central 39. Back with more on the PSP Network after this timeout. Water. Boom. Agent Winston Otter. He's been called the human sponge. The right way to top a sub is with real red wine vinegar made from red grapes and no food coloring. And the right way to film it is in slow motion, obviously. Because authentic ingredients make a sub above. Fifty-seven thirty-nine. the Beulah Miners. Have led this one the entire game. The ranchers putting up a fight. Now they're going to apply a little bit of pressure. Go right back to him. Right back to him. As Hedick's going to run it in the front court for the Miners. Crosses over, tacks. Nope. Now he drops it off for Sherado. <clears throat> Sherado down low. Larson. He's doubled up. Bochamp top of the key. Now to Hedick, left wing. Oh, here's a steal by Ingot. Ingot read that one on there and left hand, uh, right hand <laughs> layup up and good. That's his third easy one of the quarter, 57 41. Nice little rebound there. By uh, Schroeder on the other end misses it, but he's going to be fouled. That's Hedick's fourth personal. Yep.
at the line will be Schroeder, and he misses that one. Koppel Sloan will come in for Hedick. Koppel Sloan comes in. hedick has got to go to the bench with those four personal fouls, and that's going to be the fourth team foul on Beulah. Ooh, and both free throws were missed there by Grayson. Quick return, Koppel Sloan on the baseline, nowhere to go. Now to Sherrado. Sherrado looks inside, nobody home. Now to O'Brien. O'Brien, Koppel Sloan. Oh, he gathers it. Little hot potato there by himself. Here's Sherrado with it. Works off the screen. Now in the corner to O'Brien. O'Brien, teardrop. That one's partially blocked, gathers it. Six to shoot. Koppel Sloan gets in the lane. Now O'Brien, right corner, steps into a three. That one's short. Rebound, who? And Ingot, and I think Ingot got a timeout. It's a Hubbard National Insurance timeout on the floor. 49.8 to go, third quarter of play. Beulah 57, Powers Lake 41, back after this timeout on the PSP Network. We look forward to serving you here at your local community bank. Well, heads up play there by Tyson Inglet on the loose ball. He calls a timeout, and the Ranchers will have it with 49.8 to play. As Inglet will casually walk it up the floor, and I hope he does get another 10. <laughs> yeah. Ingot operates out high. Ingot, ooh, oh, nice, nice pass play. down low, and Kearsley cannot finish it, but Ingot, nice deliver there. Yep. And Braylon Sherrado is going to get called for the foul, his first, and that'll be the team's fifth, but. Bo Kersley at the line will shoot two. Free throw too strong by Bo. My guess is Ingot's going to see a lot of this type of coverage all year when he drives the lane. Oh, there's He's just no gonna question have bodies, about it. Body's running at him, so boy, if I'm a kid from Powers Lake, I'm finding some real estate outside that three, and I'm going to start looking to get better <laughs> at that. And he misses them both. Does Bo? So shot clock is off. The miners can play for one. Koppel Sloan now dribbles it out up between the rings. Now looks. Finds O'Brien. O'Brien comes off the screen, turns the corner, nowhere to go. Now back to Sherrado. Sherrado now he gets it off to Beauchamp. Beauchamp works off the screen, left elbow. Now here's Sherrado. His straightaway three is no good. Koppel Sloan saves it to Larson. Koppel Sloan right corner on the buzzer. That one's going to be short. And that's going to end the third quarter of play here from the MSU Dome. On the BNC Bank scoreboard, three quarters in the books. It's Beulah 57, Powers Lake, Brook Central 41. We'll be back for the final eight after this timeout on the PSP Network. This broadcast on the PSP Network is proudly brought to you by... minutes to play in this one. A reminder to stay tuned for our Pine Team Financial Advisors post-game report. Shots Crossroads will have our player of the game brought to you by Sport Clips. They'll keep you looking your best. Check in online with the hairstylist today at sportclips.com and also we'll have our Jobbers Moving and Storage Moving the Game sponsored by Jobbers Moving and Storage. 
They can help you move across town or across the country with locations in Bismarck, Minot, Fargo, and Aberdeen. Find them online at jobberswarehouse.com. Ingot, right elbow jumpers up and good for Tyson Ingot. 57-43, quick return on the other end. Here's O'Brien from the left wing. That one rolls off, rebound comes down there to the ranchers in the hands of Nick Erickson. Now he brings it into the front court, jump stop on the elbow. Now back out Ingot. Fraunfelter, Parslow. Now here's Ingot in the paint and he flips it up, has it deflective run down by, deflected run down by O'Brien. Here's Koppel Sloan, he's gonna attack, leans in, shot, scored and he's fouled. Good fast break there as Koppel Sloan with the hoop and the harm. Makes it 59-43. Koppel Sloan's been running on pretty much any chance he gets, he tries to run out early. And he's gotten some buckets because of that, some open threes. Yep, and Koppel Sloan cannot convert the three-point play. Is Mr. Beater is in the house now. It's the whole Beater family here for the PSP network, man. Yeah. Gotta like that. That's what makes the ship float right there. 59-43. Here's Copplestone on the left wing, O'Brien. Here's Beauchamp, shot fake, stop and go move. Now up Copplestone, top of the key. He's gonna attack, kicks it off to Hedick back in there with those four fouls. He kicks right corner O'Brien, goes baseline, hangs, glides, shot no good, but he's gonna be fouled is Aiden O'Brien and he will shoot two. We have another in the circle of block and I think that rule when it was put in, Scott, was very good rule for the safety yeah. of the players. Kearsley gets called for the foul. That's his second, that'll be the team's sixth. Free throws up and good by O'Brien. Had nine in the opening half, just that's his first of the second half. He's got 10 on the afternoon, make it 60-43. Are we into the evening already? Yeah, we're into the evening already. 60-43, 631 left to play. Second one, no good. Long rebound comes out to Larson. That's Bennett, but he's going to be fouled on the rebound. That one's going to go against Ingot, his second. That's the seventh, seventh team foul. So to the line will be the 6'6 freshman, Bennett Larson. Sets it and delivers. Free throw up and good by Bennett. Larson at the line shooting two. Looks like he could actually stretch out even more of those. Yeah. That nice touch. He does. 62-43. And you can see that he's a little raw yet. You get him in the, you know, give him a yep. give him a year under his belt, and uh, he'll certainly. Do some positive things for head coach Jeremy Brandt. He's got some wide shoulders, big feet. I think he's going to grow a little bit. Ingot pulls up, shot too strong. Rebound Schroeder, his layup no good, but he's going to be falling on the backside. I think that's going to be it for Hedick. Yeah. Could just never get in a rhythm today if it's on him. He just, yeah. You know. Yep, so Hedick will fall out with two total points. Well, I'll have to see what's going oh, on. Oh, now they're, they're yeah. debating whether it's four or five. And well, they got four up on the board. Yep. On the scoreboard. And the scores table says he got five. There'll be some nights when I think Hedick's going to have some really nice nights for Beulah. So, <laughs> you know, he just could never get into rhythm today due to the fouls. But. Free throw by Schroeder's missed. Sixty two forty three. Second one is good. 
got some confirmation from Scott. He must have been listening. Graco. He, the Hoopster's been around for about 10 years. They think the Brown for about the last five or six. Here's Inga on another steal and Inga on another layup. He uses his body well. He has to at that size, but. What do we have? 60. What is it? 46. 62-46. Okay. On the other end, make it 62-48. Yeah. Shorter, shorter, get that one. Yep. That was shorter. All right, we've got a Hubbard National Insurance time on the floor, 5.37 to go. Beulah 62, Powers Lake, Burke Central 48. Back after this timeout on the PSP Network. Ackerman Esvold, your neighbors, friends, and family who are working for you. The local team with local availability and accountability for all of your engineering, architecture, environmental, transportation, and land development needs. Your project can rely on Ackerman Esfold. Find them online at ackermanesfold.com. When you start your project, talk with Ackerman Surveying and Associates. Our experienced surveying team guides you in the right direction with planning, planning, and lot and boundary surveys. The trusted name in land surveying, the trusted name in architecture and engineering is Ackerman Survey and Ackerman Esfold. Find them at ackermanesfold.com. Well, Jerry, Jeremy Brandt not happy <coughs> with that last 30 to 40 second exchange there, calls a timeout, <coughs> gets his kids settled down and we'll see what happens as they have the ball now and O'Brien controls and runs it into the front court where he's doubled up right away to Beauchamp. Ooh, boy, dangerous pass there. Ingram almost had another one. Here's Koppel Sloan down low to Larson. Larson's doubled up, now to Sherrado. Now to Koppel Sloan in the corner. Ooh, almost lost it, was able to gather it. and there's Ingot going for the steal. And Ingot's gonna pick up number three. And that's going to be the eighth team foul. So to the serve pro free throw line will go Jack Koppel Sloan, serve pro 24 7 emergency service, train technicians, advanced technology, fire and water cleanup and restoration. It's serve pro. Koppel Sloan. 18, make it 19. Makes it 63 48. Second one by Jack, and it's an even 20 for Jack on the afternoon. Get behind the ball. 64 48. Here's Schroeder in the paint, <laughs> leans in, and he's fouled from the back side. Or are they going to get O'Brien in the circle? It's either O'Brien or Larson. Yeah, I got O'Brien in the circle. Yep, they did. <laughs> Six team foul, but anyway, Schroeder will shoot two as that was in the act. 64 48 on the BNC Bank scoreboard. This one's up and good. Some of you may hear Brandt over there with a little feedback saying, Don't gamble. <laughs> Always kind of a pet peeve of coaches. And it's 14 point lead now for Beulah at 64 50 with 457 to play in the ball game. Koppel Sloan, top of the key. Ooh, boy, they had Beauchamp on the backside. Didn't see him, and they're going to get a bump out high, and that's going to go on Nick Erickson. That'll be his first personal. BNC National Bank, your life is busy. We'll make managing your money easy with locations in North Dakota and Arizona. Visit BNC Bank online, BNC. Dot bank. So Aiden O'Brien at the free throw line. His team leads by 14. They get 15 as Aiden converts. He's going to be a really nice player for uh, Coach Brant and the Miners this year. Yep, he certainly is. He's just wearing a leg sleeve. Interesting yeah. coming off of you know, a knee injury like he had. O'Brien gets them both. He definitely would have helped them a year ago. <laughs> 66 60 only a junior is O'Brien. Straight away three Schroeder that one's no good rebound comes out to Beauchamp he wants to run has it put nope, now he gathers it Ingot hounding him. Gets it off to Sherrado. 
Sherado operates. There's Koppel Sloan. Beauchamp. Looking back door. Oh, oh, how he got that one through there, I don't know, because there was three defenders right there, but he found an alley in good hands by O'Brien. Erickson gets called for his second personal. Tenth team foul on the ranchers, so O'Brien will shoot two. Free throw's no good. He will have one more, will Aiden O'Brien. Second one by O'Brien is up and good. Sixty-seven fifty. Shot on the other end is no good by Ingot. O'Brien left corner. They go Beauchamp. Beauchamp attacks at ten, and he's going to be fouled in the act. Will be Trace Beauchamp. Fraunfelter, the personal. Free throw up by Trace is up and good. Second one is also good. You got 19 now. 69.50, and we've got a Hubbard National Insurance time on the floor. Call Hubbard National Insurance today for all your personal business insurance needs. 69.50, our score on the BNC Bank scoreboard back up to this timeout on the PSP Network. Many of our clients come to us already accomplished in their lives and on the right track. However, whether it's in response to a life-changing event or you are nearing retirement, you can sleep well knowing that together we have planned for both life's opportunities and challenges. And no matter what happens, we are here to help guide you. Timeout, front filters, 15 footer comes off. Here's a lead pass to Larson, Koppel Sloan. Koppel Sloan wisely backs it out. O'Brien, now here's Beauchamp. Now Sherado sets between the rings for the Miners. He hands off to Beauchamp. Beauchamp picks his dribble up, now O'Brien. O'Brien goes baseline right, stops, and nope, they're gonna say he traveled. So turnover will go back the other way. 19 point lead for the Miners, 318 left to play. Hughes be coming back in for Powers Lake. Check it out for the Rangers, number 15, Kyle Hughes. What if it's a four point final? We can't execute a damn set. Here's Ingot. Behind the back, crosses over on Koppel Sloan in the paint, throws an up, scored. Oh, they're gonna say it's on the ground. They're gonna get Koppel Sloan with the foul. His second. Eighth team foul, so back of the line will be Tyson Ingot. Free throw up and good. 69. 51. Make it 69. 52 as Inga gets them both. I mean, he's up to 19 now. Champ Hedick, we might mention too, last year was state golf champ for the Beulah Miners. Taryn Larson, all state football player for the Miners. Over here and the then we got court. a turtle over in the backcourt. Erickson providing a little pressure. Jimmy Brant not happy with that. Again, we'll have a couple interviews, coach and player interview in our post game. Denied, Jack, denied, denied, Jack, denied. Here's a steal by Beauchamp. Beauchamp going end to end, left hand and finger a lip, no good, tipped out by O'Brien in the hands of Ingot. Back the other way, here's Schroeder, one bounce, layup, got it, as he crawled over the front iron. 
69-54. 2.35 to go in the ball game. Shallow and Thompson await in the wings. Beauchamp, O'Brien. Here's Beauchamp, short corner, now they go Koppel Sloan. Looking inside, skips it cross court. O'Brien now down low, Larson. Larson backs in, turns, point blank range, shot up and good by Bennett Larson. Tempo was better on that one, and he jumped off two feet. <laughs> Jeremy better results for him. Inga nice dumps it off, Fraunfelter, layup got it. And back and forth we go, and now it's a game of Y ball. 71 56. I can see how Ingot gets to 100 plus assists every year. <laughs> Parzlo checks in. I'm assuming he's the tailback in the football or is he the quarterback? Well, he's Mr. Everything. Really? I can tell you that. How's that? Okay. Koppel Sloan. Beauchamp thought about a three, down low to Larson. He turns baseline, shot. That one's short, rebound to Ingot. Ingot running. Ingot step through move. Finger roll layup, no good, but he's going to be fouled from behind by Beauchamp. Calls on number three, Trace Beauchamp, that is his third personal. Third personal, so. Ingot to the line to shoot two. Is he tough to find on the football field, too? <laughs> yeah, yeah, he does everything for him. And what do we have? Oh, I got a shot clock uh, issue going on. Shot clock malfunction will not give us time to tell folks to stay tuned to our post game show for uh, our planning team financial advisor shots crossroads post game show. The planning team financial advisors helping clients work toward financial freedom at shots crossroads your post game headquarters order online at shotscrossroads.com. Free throw by Ingots up and good. He's up to 20. Nice day. Ended up having a nice second half here. 71 57. Second one is up and good for Ingot. 71 58. Minute 25 to go. Koppel Sloan, O'Brien. Here's Sherrado with it. Now the handoff to O'Brien. Now back to Sherrado, jump stop in the paint. Now back to O'Brien. 10 to shoot. And the ball goes out of bounds, but it's going to stay with Beulah with nine to shoot. Substitutions coming in. For Powers Lake, Michael Crowder comes in. Grayson Reestead checks in. For Powers Lake. Koppel Sloan. Here's Beauchamp. Too strong. Rebound to Erickson. 55 seconds to play in this one. Ball's poked out of bounds by Beauchamp. Substitutions coming for Beulah. Check it in for the Miners. Logan Newberger comes in. Tucker Keller comes in. Justin Seiler checks in. Shane Schmidt checks in. So they empty the benches with 49.4 to play. Parslow will inbound it. Down low. Here's Erickson with it. Here's Parslow. Turn shot is up and good Michael by Michael Crowder. Bueller's got to shoot as Sherrado attacks. That one's short, rebound Parslow. In the front court they go. Reestead. Now here's Erickson, 10 seconds. Here's Reese, nope, that's Parsley. They lob down low, Crowder. He can't gather it, goes out of bounds with 6.1 to play. And it appears that's gonna be your final. 
as I'm sure Beulah is going to bounce this one out. And that's exactly what is going to happen as the Beulah Miners move the 2 0 on the season as they defeat Powers Lake Burke Central by a score of 71. 260. That will take us right into our planning team financial advisor Shots Crossroads post game report. Our planning team financials helping clients work toward financial freedom. And Shots Crossroads, hey, get filled up on their delicious menu that includes the famous number 99. Order online at shotscrossroads.com. Team buses are welcome as Perry has made his way down to the floor and he is going to get a few words with head coach Jeremy Brandt, I think Trace Beauchamp as well. And right now, I believe he's got head coach Brandt. Let's go courtside and Perry Hanson. Perry, take it away. All right, coach. Uh, started out shooting the ball really well, and uh, I was wondering if he needed to take a few more days off. We were kind of chuckling up there, but I'm sure there's a lot of things you'd like to see get better. Well, we did give him a lot of days off, you know. They got two, so. <laughs> but, no, you're right. We, you know, basketball is an easy game if it goes in the hoop, obviously, and, I, and we did. We came out and shot it really well, um, you know, and I thought that was obviously a key for us was it, you play with more energy, you play better on the defensive end. Everything goes a lot smoother when the ball goes in the hoop, and, and to get off to a good start was definitely important, especially coming off break like this. And I think uh, what he tomorrow now you get a match up with. Uh, you have been rugby tomorrow, which will be kind of a opposite. You know, they got a little more size, uh, probably a little more physical. Uh, so yeah, we're going to get kind of a different style of team tomorrow. But uh, you know, that's a good thing about coming here. You get to play two good teams in a great venue and on a, on a big floor. And I know our kids really like this opportunity, and as I do as a coach. So um, yeah, we'll have to try to get some rest and get ready for tomorrow. You got, so you got some young kids that I thought played some pretty good minutes for you, and you know, I know you're kind of re regrouping a little bit here. Oh, we do. You know, we're we're kind of strong or heavy with our junior, and then we got a couple freshmen that play significant minutes, and then you know we got good minutes out of Jack and uh, Taryn tonight as well. So, um, yeah, we've got some we've got some nice young kids, but we, you know we've got a couple seniors that do a lot of good things that maybe don't necessarily show up on the scoreboard so much as on my stat sheet, I guess, more so. And that's what those, I thought Taryn and Jack did a good job of those things tonight. Well, I appreciate it, and hey, good luck the rest of the way, and uh, have a good uh, good luck tomorrow. Sounds Thanks. Thanks Trace, uh, got our player of the game here. He kind of got off to a really nice first half there. Uh, shot the ball really well. Yeah, you know, we just got to come out. We just came out strong, got to start, hit shots, and then everybody will keep rolling. I always say some some coaches and I did it for a long time. They have a hard time figuring out if you're left handed because they keep letting you go to your strong hand. But uh, you, you, had a, you showed a touch from the three point land. You showed driving ability. I thought it was an overall. You showed a really nice game. You know, yeah, being left handed definitely does help sometimes. You know, not many people are left handed. It just gives the defense another look. Well, good luck tomorrow. I'm sure uh, get yourself some rest, and uh, rugby will be a pretty good opponent for you tomorrow. Yeah, they will be. They're a lot taller. Well, good luck the rest of the season. Congratulations. Nice game. Well, there you have it. Head coach Jeremy Brandt, Trace Beauchamp. Uh, nice game by Trace uh, here as Beulah wins this one by a score of 71-260 as our planning team financial advisor Shots Crossroads post game report rolls on with more and we come back we'll take a look at the final individual numbers we'll give out our sport clips MVP of the game which uh, probably is not a giveaway and we'll also hand out our jobbers moving in storage move of the game Beulah wins it 71-60 back with more on the PSP network after this timeout looking for a full service financial plan or planning for farm or business succession planning team financial advisors is here to help you work toward achieving your financial goals with locations in bismarck garrison and center our full service team of professionals are dedicated to helping you work towards achieving your financial goals visit us online planningteam.com Securities offered through LPL Financial, member of FINRA and SIPC. Investment advisory services offered through New Edge Advisors, LLC, a registered investment advisor. New Edge Advisors, LLC, and Planning Team Financial Advisors are separate entities from LPL Financial. Oh, easy, easy. I think I'm good. You got my good side, right? <laughs> Not too many lights. I don't want to get fried before my time. <laughs> 
Oh, it's egg-tastic. You never know what dish you're going to end up in. My dream dish is a 99. It's so popular. Me and a fellow egg tag teaming with some crispy golden hash browns. Have you seen those hash browns? Those guys are shredded. <laughs> Throwing some diced ham, onions, and melted cheese. Oh, it's a party for your taste buds. Oh, here comes Chevy. Hold on, Chevy. Did you guys get everything that you needed? 99, here I come. Shots Crossroads. It's an excellent place to eat. It's time for the Shots Crossroads and Planning Team Financial Advisors postgame show. Now for a look at game stats and analysis. Let's go to the postgame show. Second half, right? Well, welcome back to our Planning Team Financial Advisors Shots Crossroads postgame report as Beulah wins this one by a score of 71 to 60. And for a look at the final game, Individual numbers, here's Perry. Okay, leading off for Bulo finished uh, with 71. They were led in scoring by Jack Copleslow on the senior. He ended up with 20. Our player of the game, Trace Bullshamp, had 19. Aiden O'Brien coming off that uh, knee injury ended up with 13. Braylon Sherado had six. Bennett Larson chipped in with eight. Taryn Larson chipped in with three, and Champ Hedick chipped in for two. Uh, for a total of 71 and then Powers Lake was led by senior Tyson Ingot with 21 and Grayson Sherado had a nice game picking up 15 and then a few kids all about the same Luke Fraunfelter had six Lucas Parslow had six Jane Bollinger five Kyle Hughesby five and it looks like uh, can't read Scott's writing on which one is one. that yeah down here at the bottom oh that was uh, I'm sorry yes uh, he came in that was Michael Crowder Michael Crowder chipped in with two and yep. I apologize to him nope. for not getting that right right away but uh, that's my fault for a total of 60 so uh, that's your that's I guess that's your final totals it was 71 60 yeah and then we got to give out our jobbers moving and storage moving the game brought to you by jobbers moving and storage they can help you move across town or across the country locations in Bismarck Minot Fargo and Aberdeen find them online at jobberswarehouse.com Perry your thoughts on the move of the game well they had a possession in the what I believe was in the first half they reversed it a couple of times got a kick out to uh, uh, Aiden and uh, he had a step back three on that and I just thought that that uh, that was a really uh, kind of a good play to Aiden O'Brien uh, so that's my job is move of the game. Yeah we'll go with Aiden O'Brien on that one in the move of the game and then we got to give out our Sport Clips MVP of the game you saw that Sport Clips brings you the MVP of the matchup the Sport Clips is the home to the MVP haircut experience I think comes close to making you feel like an MVP quite like the MVP experience at Sport Clips. And tonight's Sport Clips MVP of the game is, well, you saw that. We gave it to Chase, uh, uh, Trace Beauchamp. He uh, had 12 points in that opening uh, quarter or opening quarter, opening half, Perry. You know, then he ended, finished with 19 points. Also, Coppel Sloan a good in that game. But I really thought Trace Beauchamp set the tone early for the Beulah Miners and got him out to that big lead, which is a lead they never relinquished and, and certainly played a big part in other areas uh, for the Beulah Miners. And I, I just, you know, like we were talking with Coach Brandt there afterwards, he definitely got off to a really hot start for him in that first quarter. Did set the tone, but I, I wouldn't be surprised if you're going to see some line scores later on in the year with more kids, maybe even different kids uh, stepping up and getting some points for Coach Brown. Yeah, well, there, yeah, there you have it as Trace Bullshamp is our Sport Clips MVP of the game. Well, that's going to do it as we have got five games in the books and we've got two more to go. Next up will be Shiloh and Thompson. We'll take a timeout on the PSP Network and we come back. We'll set you up between the Tommies and the Skyhawks. Back with more from the Dome after this timeout on the PSP Network for a full service financial plan or planning for farm or business succession. Planning Team Financial Advisors is here to help you work toward achieving your financial goals. With locations in Bismarck, Garrison and Center, our full service team of professionals are dedicated to helping you work towards achieving your financial goals. Visit us online, planningteam.com. 
Securities offered through LPL Financial, member of FINRA and SIPC. Investment advisory services offered through New Edge Advisors, LLC, a registered investment advisor. New Edge Advisors, LLC, and Planning Team Financial Advisors are separate entities from LPL Financial. Our stylists are trained to understand the uh, nuances of cutting men's hair. Less pomp, more adore, huh, Brittany? Square face, wavy hair. Mid fade with a textured top. Finish it off with a hard part and taper that neckline, coach. Cowlick, what's the move? It's not just all about hard work here. Hit off, seven, pressure, points, yeah. It takes expertise to be a sport clip stylist. Here. Ah. That's the spot, right there, huh? Sport clips, the pros in men's hair. Are you moving your business or your home across the town or across the country? We know it can be stressful. To ensure your possessions arrive on time, intact and on budget, make your move with Jobbers Moving and Storage. Jobbers can help you with every aspect of your move. With our efficient step-by-step -step approach to move management, we can tailor a plan to suit your needs and schedule. With locations in Bismarck, Fargo, Minot and Aberdeen, Jobbers Moving and Storage is your choice. Visit JobbersWarehouse.com. It's Jobbers. Moving in storage. Oh, easy, easy. I think I'm good. You got my good side, right? <laughs> Not too many lights. I don't want to get fried before my time. <laughs> oh, it's egg-tastic. You never know what dish you're going to end up in. My dream dish is a 99. It's so popular. Me and a fellow egg tag teaming with some crispy golden hash browns. Have you seen those hash browns? Those guys are shredded. <laughs> Throw in some diced ham, onions, and melted cheese. Oh, it's a party for your taste buds. Oh, here comes Chevy. Hold on, Chevy. Did you guys get everything that you needed? 99, here I come. Shots Crossroads. It's an excellent place to eat. Great smiles come from Vibetta Orthodontics. Vibetta Orthodontics is a certified Invisalign provider. Invisalign fits your budget and your lifestyle. Braces for children, teens, and adults with affordable monthly payments. Schedule your complimentary consultation and exam by logging on to vibetoorthodontics.com or by calling 701-839-6010. Great smiles come from Vibetto Orthodontics. In southwestern and south central North Dakota on any given day at any given moment, a Dakota Community Bank and Trust customer is logging in or signing on to do their online or mobile banking. We believe that community banking can blend both the past with down-home customer service in-house and the future with modern banking conveniences and technology for our customers anywhere, like here or here, all while honoring our long-standing tradition of community-first oriented banking here at Dakota Community Bank and Trust. Many of our clients come to us already accomplished in their lives and on the right track. However, whether it's in response to a life-changing event or you are nearing retirement, you can sleep well knowing that together we have planned for both life's opportunities and challenges. And no matter what happens, we are here to help guide you. This broadcast on the PSP Network is proudly brought to you by...
Here we go. Where? They get it into Doppler up the near side. Three, two seconds, one second. Doppler rises right wing. Three, bingo! Ho-ho! Anthony Doppler wins it at the buzzer! This broadcast on the PSP Network is proudly brought to you by... MSU Dome on the campus of Minot State University. Scott Woodman, C. Perry Hansen with you on the PSP Network. Uh, big shout out to our, my colleague, our colleagues, Chuck Claremont, Todd Domries for getting this thing started as they have made their way back to the capital city and uh, they will get things underway tomorrow at the BNC National Bank Mandan Holiday Tournament. But we've got two more to go here and seven more to go uh, tomorrow in the Hoopster Classic in our fifth game of the day. I'm sorry, our seventh game of the day. <laughs> you think I've been here all day? Oh, I have, but our seventh game of the day features a matchup of two teams. Sixth game of the day. There's seven games. Wow, holy cow. It's just a lot of games. Yeah, it's a lot of games. Our sixth game of the day features a battle of two teams ranked in the most recent Class B boys basketball poll. It's the Thompson Tommies out of Super Region 2 and currently ranked number seven in the most recent Class A boys, Class B boys basketball poll. They come in with a record of two and one and it's the Skyhawks from Shallow Christian ranked number four in the most recent Class B boys basketball poll as they come in with a record of 1-0. Last week, well, both these two teams were flopped last week as Thompson was four and Shiloh was five. But nonetheless, again, when you talk about Class B basketball, similar to the Trinity four wins, these are two teams you talk about. Thompson always, always raising Kane up in Region 2. Shiloh, well, um, 16 state title appearances, Perry. So certainly uh, these are two powerhouses in Class B basketball. Well, and, you know, and you listen to the people in Region 5, and they, <laughs> they want the three-class system because, uh, quite honestly, Shiloh would be the only one that would have to go into the uh, upper tier. And, and But it's still, you, you still got to, Still got to play the games. You still got to get there. I know Coach Miller pretty well and his staff, and they do a great job. Uh, they they do a great job. Not only have they got a little bit, maybe a slight advantage with numbers, but they do a really good job as well. And Thompson's always very formidable. They won a state title here not too long ago. And usually, if you're going to go to Region Two, you somehow got to get by Thompson to get 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 to the state. Well, and you talk about that state title uh, period that, that, that they won. Uh, that was in 2019. And guess what? They defeated Shallow Christian 59 47 in overtime uh, right here at the MSU Dome and Shallow, you know, they're they're 
their best finish obviously was 2019 where they got second uh, but you know they're in a they're in a run now uh, 2018 to 2022 uh, uh, making that state class B basketball tournament and certainly the one thing that eludes the shallow Christian Skyhawks is that uh, coveted state class B uh, trophy uh, so certainly it's something that they Brad Miller and his staff has on his mind uh, as uh, they kick off this 2022-23 season and they play an incredibly tough schedule they'll play four wins later on uh, in February uh, at Shiloh so if we're not too busy that night uh, I wouldn't mind coming doing that game I think that'd be a fun atmosphere over there but Thompson was supposed to play four wins here that was one of the games that got canceled and uh, rescheduled so we did have some pretty good matchups prior to this but weather has taken a lot of that away so yeah it certainly has well it's a mad battle of region two and region five as uh, we await the starting lineups for both these two teams. First of all, for the visitors on the scoreboard, uh, the Skyhawks uh, from Shallow Christian, they go like this at one guard will be Isaac Emmel. He's 5'11 and a junior. At one forward, another guard spot will be Kyler Klein. He's six foot and a senior. At one forward will be Caden England. He's six one and a sophomore. And at the other forward will be Cutter Seifert. Seifert, I'm sorry, 6'1 in the junior. And in the middle will be Joseph Wanzik. He's 6'7 and a senior. And their head coach is Brad Miller in his sixth year at the helm for Shiloh. For the Thompson Tommies, they'll go like this. At one guard will be Braden Wolfgram, 5'10 in the junior. At another guard will be Thomas Schumacher, 5'9 and a sophomore. At one forward will be Gavin Crockstead, 6'4 and a sophomore. And at another forward spot will be Drew Overby, 6'1 in the junior. And in the middle will be Carter Peterson. He's 6'5 and a sophomore. Their head coach is Brandy George in his 11th year. So this Thompson team, certainly a young team, and uh, they're, they're one of their, their better players. They're probably the best player on their team. Uh, Jacob Starcevic, uh, you know, averaged 13.1 points per game last year and and four uh, almost five rebounds and 39 threes well he will not be getting the start he's a 6'2 sophomore uh, but uh, nonetheless this Thompson team a lot of youth in that organization right now yeah and they've got an Overby kid that's a pretty nice player and a Peterson kid as well and kind of interesting uh, Thompson's maybe not playing starting their best player Starcevic and I look over and Shiloh sitting their top player possibly to start out with in Wanzek so Oh, they are. Yeah, and so uh, you've got two of the better players. <laughs> Not sure what those reasons okay. are, but uh, you know. It so uh, we we had that incorrect then on the uh, the show. We got them. Oh, they did have. Okay, it's going to be Atti Atticus Wilkinson getting the start. All right. Well, he's a, he's all a nice I got to do. Played a lot last year, so all I got to do is read the sheet <laughs> the correct way. Well, when you've been here for six games, sometimes then. Um, the eyes run together. A so it'll be Klein, England, Emmo, yep. Seifert, and Wilkinson for Shiloh. It'll be Overby, Wolfgram, Peterson, Schumacher, and Crockstead for Thompson. And the tip is controlled by Thompson Tommies. That's Schumacher with it. He gets it back out front to Wolfgram. Wolfgram will control for Thompson. He enters it on the right wing to Overby. Overby up high to Crockstead. Left wing three on the way. That one rolls off. Rebound down low is up and good by Carter Peterson. Some of the Thompson names are very familiar as some of the older brothers were and or relatives were playing on that championship team in 19. Back with it come the Skyhawks. Here's a skip pass to Emmel in the left corner. He's going to fire a three, and he buries it, does Isaac Emmel. So they answer the two, and it's 3-2 shallow in the early going. Back with it. Here's a three up, up high from Overby. That one bounces off, and rebound comes down to the Skyhawks. And controlling for them will be England. Man-to-man -man defense by Thompson to Klein in the right corner. They go Emmel. Emmel out high, straight away three by Klein. That one too strong, and good box out there by Carter Peterson. He gets it off to Schumacher. Schumacher in the front court on the right-handed hip high dribble. They look down low as they try to get Peterson on a post. Don't they go high low with Krogstead? 
Now back to Overby. Right wing they go to Schumacher. Schumacher down low, poked away as they try to go inside. Emil picks it up. Here's a breakout. England leading the charge. Drops it off Wilkinson, head fake. Wilkinson, point blank range, missed the bunny. Rebound comes down to Crockstead of the Tommies. A lot of contact, no, uh, no fouls called, so. Down low, Thompson, they go inside, turn shot up, point blank range is good by Carter Peterson, and he's got the first four for Thompson. 4-3 four, our score on the BNC Bank scoreboard. Thompson leads Shiloh. Here's Klein, Wilkinson around the wheel, they go to England, Emil. Operates in the paint, loses it out of bounds, and it's going to stay with the Skyhawks. Boy, I feel like you could drop a pin in here and hear it bounce. Yeah. They lob it into Seifert. Jump stop in the lane. England shot no good. Rebound. Peterson, he's tied up, rips it out of there. And he gets it off to... Wolfgram, they lob inside, up high to climb on the ladder is Krogstead, and he's going to be fouled on the way down. And I believe that's going to be on uh, Carter Seifert. Seifert gets called for the foul. First personal, first team foul for Shiloh. Triggering inbounds will be. Wolfgram, he gets it out high. Now they go inside Peterson. Peterson turns, ball high over his head, and he's got another two. Peterson six, shallow Christian three. I thought he could have just turned right to his left shoulder and had an easier bucket, but uh, still got it. Seifert. Done. Now they get out high to England. England operates. Here's Klein with it. Wilkinson. Emil. Down low they go, Addison, Atticus Wilkinson with a strong move. Makes it 6-5 and on the other end, turnover. Seifert coming out of there with it, gets it off to Klein. Klein guarded by Thomas Schumacher, sets the offense. England looks down low, had Wilkinson, didn't give it to him. Now they bounce it inside to him, kicks it right corner, Klein here's Emil, right wing three on the way, bingo, he's two for two. Good ball movement by Shiloh there. He had a little inside out action and a little reversal off of that. 8 6 our score on the BNC Bank scoreboard. Four and a half left to go opening quarter. Left wing is Schumacher. Now the right corner they go to Overby. Overby bounces baseline. Crockstead, 17 footer on the way. No good by Peterson. Rebound to the Skyhawks. Here's England with it. Klein down low they go. Seifert jump hook on the left block. Right block is up and good by Seifert. Seifert, I'm sorry. We'll get that corrected. Carter Seifert. Back with his overbeat for the Tommies. He throws up a wild shot from the right elbow. Rebound comes down to Klein. Shiloh switching post to post screens down here. And if Thompson here. gets wind of that, I think Peterson could get some. Some mismatch. Oh, there's the high there. school hideout by oh, boy. <laughs> Overby, and he missed the layup. Here's Klein, left corner three on the way. That one's short, long rebound run down by Peterson. He gets it off to Wolfgram up the, in the front court. They go to Schumacher, now back to Wolfgram. Around the wheel they come left side to Overby. Overby down low to Peterson. Peterson. As he tries to find a diving Crockstead, loses it, balls loose on the floor, and we're going to get a traveling call. We're going to get substitutions. Starcevic coming in for Thompson. Yep, Braden Tice the... coming in. Wanzek coming in for uh, Shiloh. Also in there is Wyatt Weston for Shiloh. So Wanzek. Now they got some size in there. Starcevic, boy, he's a big kid for a sophomore. Yes. Down low, they go to Wanzik right away, and he's double team, gets it back, fights for it, goes up, scores it, and he's fouled. Oh, that's just good work down low yes, it was. by yeah. Joseph Wanzik. Very patient, got his first shot blocked, but stayed with it nice. And 
Jumped off two feet going back. Now they got two bigs in. They bring Wilkinson back, so. Peterson gets called for the foul. Want to thank everybody for tuning into our Shields pregame show. Shields offers clothing, footwear, and gear for all your passions from fishing to fashion. That's Shields. Wanzik free throws up and good. And it's a one point lead now for Thompson at 10 9. In the front court, that's Tice. Left wing, Starcevic. They find a curling Tice, and he's going to be have it swatted out of bounds. It'll stay with the Tommies. Tonight's game brought to you in part by. Jersey Mike's make sure to vote for this week's Jersey Mike Player of the Week on the PSP Network Facebook page. Jersey Mike's is a sub above. Starcevic inbounds it out high to Tice. Now he goes to Wolfgram, now back to Tice. Tice, now he hands off, Whoa. oh boy. That was just a straight push there. Michael Fargoland. Well, there's fighting through a screen, and then there's fighting through a screen. <laughs> that one was a little bit uh, aggressive. First personal, second team foul. Yep. Thompson has it. They lead 13-6. Well, Peterson kid is really active. Yeah, he is. Wow, why do I have 10? I must have missed. I wonder if they got the wrong score. 2-4-6. I got, there it is. And Wanzik scores. Yep, it's 15 6. That's what I got. Okay. Timeout. We got a timeout on the floor. Hub International Insurance timeout back with more on the PSP network after this timeout. Bank can be transformative for your small business. The best bank for your business will offer competitive fees and so much more. At BNC National Bank, our team is proud to offer you a helpful, supportive, above and beyond banking relationship. Starting to stress about the complexities of qualifying for a small business loan? BNC can guide you through the process with much less stress and likely far more success. Speak to one of our team members today. Well, tonight's game brought to you in part by Planet Pizza. Uh, they've been proudly serving the Magic City for over 25 years of the largest laser tag playground in the region. Mouthwatering pizza and wings and the 30-inch galactic pizzas that are out of this world. Call in order now, 852-1700. Planet Pizza is out of this world. 15-6 is our score. Shallow leading this one. Out of the timeout, Wolfgram controls. Now goes up high to Peterson. Now they reverse it. Right side to Tice. Starcevic. Now they go to Krogstead. Now around the wheel, here's Starcevic with it. Jabs right, goes left. Jump stop in the lane, turns, hangs, fires, and that one goes in and rolls back down. Comes out and goes back down. Jacob Starcevic makes it 15-8. Shallow by seven. Thompson went to a 2-3 zone here out of the timeout. High post, Wanzik. Pitches right side to Fogerlin. Now Weston around the wheel they go. Seifert, and here's Wanzik down low, Wilkinson. He turns, point blank range, misses it. Peterson climbs the ladder, outlets to Starcevic. Starcevic on the move, in the front court they go. To Tice, now right corner to Starcevic. Starcevic on the bounce, backs down in the paint, kicks it left wing to nobody, and threw it right in between Tice and Crockstead. Oh, Wolfgram that was. Emil back in. Substitution coming in. Here comes Overby back in for Thompson. Thompson appears to be staying in their 2 3 zone. And Shiloh's got Wanzak right there at the high post. That makes things hard. He can make that shot. Yes, he can. Right corner. Here's Emil. He can make those, and he makes yeah. another one. His third three of the ball game for Isaac Emil. And we're just going to let him catch it there. It's going to be a long night. You won't want to stay in that zone very long. 18-8. Back with it comes Thompson. Jump shot by Overby from the left block is up and good for Drew Overby. Drew Overby. 18-10. 22 seconds to go. Opening quarter. High post Wanzik. One bounce. Looks. Kicks it. Taken away by Overby. Oh, oh pass, nice bounce. bounce pass. Yes, it was. Layup on the other end is good by Wolf Graham. And then we get a turnover, a jump ball. Check it in for the Skyhawks, number five, Kaden 
But it's going to go too shallow. Still important, though, is now you're going to get the ball coming out of the quarter. And that's sometimes is good for coaches. Shallow's going to play for one. Here's Weston with it. Weston, here's Klein, left wing three. That one short, rebound Emil. And he's going to be fouled. Braden Tice gets called for the personal foul. That'll be the third. 18-12 with eight tenths of a second to go. They get it in. Weston fires right side three. That's no good. And one quarter's in the books here. As on the BNC Bank scoreboard, as first quarter's in the books, it's shallow 18, Thompson 12. Back with more on the PSP Network after this timeout. I don't know where this goes. <laughs> I don't know. Are you sure it wasn't clicking and not a zoom, zoom? I think your quash litter bell's stuck. Do you even have insurance? If we soak it, so it should be good. <laughs> no matter how much you know or don't know about your vehicle, trust the experts at Tires Plus. Real answers from real mechanics. Inspections are free to ensure your vehicle is always in peak condition. Thinking service, think Tires Plus. It's water. Boom, Agent Winston Otter. He's been called the human sponge. If it's fire damage, Agent Fred Iyer. From burnt to unburnt, he does that. Right, a night's game brought to you in part by Roger Wood Moving and Storage. They've been proudly helping the region with their moving and storage needs since 1942. Find them online at rogerwardmovingandstorage.com to schedule a move or to find a quote, Roger Ward Moving and Storage. Here's Overby with it. He gets a right wing to Wolfgram. Wolfgram now Starcevic. Left wing to Schumacher. He attacks the paint, nowhere to go. Nice, nice dime on the backside and missing that shot. I believe that was Wolfgram. Yes, it was. It was Braden Wolfgram, but nice delivery there. Wilkinson it? picked up a foul there. Yep. Okay. Third team foul for Shallow, just two for Thompson. So Wolfgram at the line, shooting two. Wyatt Weston back in, makes it 18-13, shallow by five. Second one up and good. Eighteen fourteen, shallow by four, just underway. Quarter number two here. Weston controls, now he gets it off. We're gonna get a foul and they're gonna get, uh, that's gonna be Thomas Schumacher. Starkovic, I think they gave that to. Oh, they did. Starcevic. Starcevic gets called for the foul. <clears throat> the 6'2 sophomore. Thompson went back to man to man here. Yep, England in the paint, kicks to Klein, left corner. Klein, now down low, Wilkinson, one bounce, turns, point blank range, and he used the back iron and got to go down. He gets the ball that deep. He loves to turn to that left shoulder, and he's good. Here's Starcevic. Ooh, nice step through move there by the sophomore, Jacob Starcevic, and makes it 20 to 16. Klein, he operates, goes right down Broadway. Layup, got it. Did Kyler Klein. Now it's pace is picked up a little bit. They down, lob it down low. Peterson, he throws it away. Weston comes out of there with it. Three on one. Weston, ooh, England quit coming. Now England off balance shot's going to be no good, but he's going to get away with a blocking foul. They're going to get Overby on the block. England just, they had the break, and England just kept yeah. coming down, stopped coming down that left side and kind of flared out to the corner. Then he figured, oh, my guy's still going. I better go help him. Yeah, it looked like he had a chance to get all the way to the rim, too. What am I going to say? That was on the shot? Oh, boy. He passed the ball, so I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah, that, that, yeah I there thought he passed. Yeah. yeah, there we go. 
Again, good job by the officials getting together. That makes sense. England inbounds it, Weston, and they threw it out of bounds. Tonight's game brought to you in part by the UPS store, located in South Broadway and Minot. They're open Monday through Friday, 8.30 to 7, and Saturday, 8.30 to 3. The UPS store located in the Marketplace Foods Plaza for all your packing and shipping needs, the UPS store. Here's Overby with it. Overby, hot ball high over his head. High post they go to Starcevic. He goes down the left side, step through move, and he's going to be fouled. And I think that's going to go on Kyler Klein. It is his first personal fourth team foul against Shallow. 22-16, 6.23 to go, opening half. Long inbounds out to Wolfgram. Now they go down low, Starcevic. A size advantage there, he didn't yep. want to take it though. Here's Peterson, 17 footers up and good. The big fella steps outside, he's got eight. Pressed with his game so far. 22 18, Carter Peterson, 6 5 sophomore. Shot fake by Klein, he gets in the paint, now leaves it back for England. He's going to fire for three, that one's no good. Wilkinson, strong rebound, muscles it out of there. Jump ball, possession arrow stays. Let's stay with Shiloh. With Shiloh. Check it in for the Tommies, number 11, Brady Tice. Wanzik comes in for yep. Shallow. Tice comes in for <coughs> Thompson. England triggers it into Wanzik. He's going to step out and fire the three. Rebound no good. Starcevic the rebound. Starcevic leaves it off for Overby. Overby right down Broadway. Nifty dime to Peterson. A better block by Wanzik. Back with it comes Shallow in transition. Right corner, here's Emil for three. That one rattles in. He's got four. You go from a block at one end to a three on the other. 25-18. On the other end as Tice operates, down low they go to Peterson. He skips it left side, poked away, but into the hands of Overby. Overby operates, now back Starcevic. He gets it back to Overby. Overby turns, fires a long two. That one's going to be. Tip. <coughs> no tip. No Going tip. To Shiloh. Maybe that wind was blowing again. The doors are open. There's one senior on this Thompson team. Well, that, that makes my picks easier next year, Scott. That's why they're going <laughs> out here, right? <laughs> Here's England, he operates down the right side and has trouble getting to the 10 and it's gonna be poked out of bounds. And they're gonna say it's off of Thompson, it'll be shallow basketball. A lot of young teams here, I've seen a little. West Oak was really young, Beulah's young, Thompson's young. They lob down low to England and he's battled down low by Tice and they're gonna get Tice in the reach around. It's his second. 15 foul, substitution. Krogstad's back in. Krogstad back in, 6'4", sophomore. Inbound, here's Weston, right wing three. That one short, rebound tipped and into the hands of Overby. Overby wants to run, quickly in the front court, gets to the paint, stops, throws one up. Nope, suitcase violation, we'll go back the other way. He got going too quick there and traveled with the basketball, so it'll go back to Shadow with a seven point lead at 25-18. Tonight's game brought to you in part by Northern Plains Heating and Air, and has over 25 years of experience as your heating and air experts as a factory authorized dealer for Aeroseal. There's no other choice to seal your heating and air game other than Northern Plains Heating and Air. Find them online, northern-plains.com. Here's Wilkinson, top of the key. Oh, he had, the, had a high low there for Wanzak, just decided not to take it. England down low at Wilkinson. Wilkinson, he's doubled up, has it poked away. Now back to England. Left corner three, he's up and good for Caden England. Good inside out there. 10 point lead now for Shallow, 28 18. Just doesn't seem like they should be up 10. <coughs> no, it doesn't. I mean, it's just kind of a weird. Starcevic, ooh, head and shoulder move, teardrop in the lanes, up and good. Ooh, that was a nifty move there. A quarterback on the football team, they tell me he's pretty good too, is from what I understand. 28-20. So. He'll shoot that. 
Here's Wanzik down the lane, kicks in the corner to England. England fakes, gets in the paint, leans in, shot up and good. Tough shot there by Caden England. Caden England. I didn't see who got that one on the other end. I didn't either, I had my head down. That was Overby. He gets two, makes it 30-22. Wanzik, he's gonna fire the straightaway three and he rattles it in, does the big fella. Yeah, you gotta guard him out there. He'll shoot that. Quickly back, comes Overby. Starcevic thought about the three, now back to Overby. He's gonna turn and fire for three. That one rolls off, Wanzik the rebound. Gets it off to England. 2.55 to play, England. Seifert tries to go down low to Wilkinson, poked away by Peterson into the hands of Schumacher. Schumacher will run the offense between the rings. Now dribble entry right side, here comes the screen. Schumacher, now they go around the wheel. Left wing three by Overby is up and good. Three. 33-25. Kind of a gut check time here. I see a lot of kids with their hands on their knees. They down low, they look for Wands that can job. take it away. That's just good defense by Peterson. Here's a quick return. Here's Overby on the other end. Layup is up and good. And he had his here. hands on his knees there, Scott. Yep, here well, comes. I got a breakaway. I'm going to hustle down and get an easy one. Here comes Thompson, 2.03 to go. We got a Hubbard National Insurance timeout on the floor. Hubbard National Insurance. Call your local agents today. Josh Catella, Michael Borman, 355 3100 for your personal business insurance needs. On the BNC Bank scoreboard, it's shallow 33, Thompson 27. Back after this timeout. Well, the shots, honestly, it just the shots came to me. Derek and Eric, especially, had some great drives, you know, which led some great kicks. Shout out to them. You know, it feels good. For you to come out here from a defensive effort against Eagle Staff, I mean, you're way smaller than him. Obviously, I mean, how did you get yourself pumped up for that? Well, you know, Coach, that's the thing that says height doesn't matter for heart, and I strongly believe in that. You know, I got the heart, and it doesn't matter if I got the height or not. That line, good luck next week. Yeah, thank you. All right, great job. I don't have the height, but I got the heart. That was a pretty cool sign right there by Jagger Gundo. Back up to you guys. Yes, and now. Well, Thompson's starting to come alive late in this first half as they've cut that shadow lead down to six at 33-27 as Weston gets in the paint. Tries to operate, nope. And that's going to be a suitcase violation. There's too much activity there. And Overby leans over, and not because he's tired. <laughs> yeah, apparently when he needs a breakaway, he goes. Well, he took a knee, I think, to the wrong spot, did yeah. uh, Overby, so he walks it off and gets into the front court, and now Thompson turns and brings it up the floor, and that's Wolfgram controlling. They go high post. Peterson poked away, but he gathers. Here's Wolfgram with it now oh. to... Tyson, they lobbed down low and poked away. That's good defense. Elijah Bearstell checked in, got that ball on the deflection. Yep, he did. Elijah Bearstell in the game. Here's Weston with it. He pulls up, 15-footer short. Rebound to Peterson. Hand off to Overby. Now Peterson. Starts to Vic on the left wing. He goes baseline, stops, rises up, shot, rolls around, and goes in. Jacob, Jacob with a quick eight. 33-29. Here's Emil with it. Baseline Weston, nobody there. He tried to find Bearstail, threw it away into the hands of Emil. Klein operates, Klein attacks. Left-handed layup is up and good. Well, that was a nice drive there. Start out with a good shot fake and 35 29. That one's poked away. Check it in for the number four. Fogerland. Fogerland checks in now for Shallow. 37.3 to play, so Thompson will have to take a shot. Overby dribble entry on the right side. Gets a high screen now from Tice. Tice rolled who he had him, didn't see him. Down low, they try to go. Wanzik pokes it away. 
Ball's loose, Overby gathers it. Overby, right wing three on the way for Wolfgram's up and good. Defense turns into offense there. Yep. And it's 35-32, eight seconds to play. A little deliberate here, we need to get going if you're Shiloh. Klein operates and they're gonna get a blocking foul that's gonna go against Wolfgram, I do believe. Yes, it is. Not much harm in that, it's just gonna be ball out of bounds. When neither team's in the bonus. 3.4 seconds to play, 35-32. Shiloh leads Thompson by three. Klein inbounds and here's Wanzik. I, I don't know what he's waiting, I don't think he realizes. Now he turns and fires at the buzzer and that's gonna be the end of the opening half of play here from the MSU Dome in the Dale Brown Classic on the BNC Bank scoreboard as we go to timeout. It's our Premier Chiropractic and Admission Report coming up next. It is Shallow Christian 35, Thompson 32. Back with our intermission report after this timeout on the PSP Network. The magic of what we do really comes down to combining different aspects of patient care. Here at Premier Chiropractic, we love combining soft tissue work, the adjustment, and exercises together. We found that this gets the best results for our patients. We have three chiropractors to fit the needs of the entire family, a rehab area for our exercises and equipment for any athlete to improve performance. Give us a call and we will get you back to doing what you love. Finding the right bank can be transformative for your small business. The best bank for your business will offer competitive fees and so much more. At BNC National Bank, our team is proud to offer you a helpful, supportive, above and beyond banking relationship. Starting to stress about the complexities of qualifying for a small business loan? BNC can guide you through the process with much less stress and likely far more success. Speak to one of our team members today. The right way to top a sub is with real red wine vinegar made from red grapes and no food coloring. And the right way to film it is in slow motion, obviously. Because authentic ingredients make a sub above. It's water, boom, Agent Winston Otter. He's been called the human sponge. Our stylists are trained to understand the uh, nuances of cutting men's hair. Less pomp, more adore, huh, Brittany? <laughs> Square face, wavy hair. Mid fade with a textured top. Finish it off with a hard part and taper that neckline, coach. Cowlick, what's the move? It's not just all about hard work here. Hit off, seven, pressure, point, yeah! It takes expertise to be a sport clip stylist. Here. Ah. That's the spot, right there, huh? Sport clips, the pros in men's hair. This broadcast on the PSP Network is proudly brought to you by... This broadcast on the PSP Network is proudly brought to you by...
Well, welcome back to our Premier Chiropractic Intermission Report. Uh, as we are at halftime, uh, Shadow leads Thompson 35-32. Premier Chiropractic is focused on improving the health of the Minot and surrounding areas through the most cutting-edge advances in natural health care today. And, well, Perry, when you, when you put the number four team and the number seven team going head-to-head -head early in the season, yeah, I guess you, you, you never know what you're going to expect, but uh, nonetheless, I guess this opening half uh, looked like Shallow was in control, and then Tom just said, hang on a second, and here they came, and now they cut it to three at half, but uh, nonetheless, certainly two two teams that are certainly going to problem, they're gonna, more than likely going to make a lot of noise when it comes to March. I think, uh, obviously, Shiloh makes noise every year at five, and... Thompson's going to be really good. They tell me North Borders and I got a nice team and I was talking to some people down here earlier today and they said don't be surprised if Hillsborough's good by the end of the year and I said well I wouldn't be surprised ever if they're good but and Grafton's got a nice team so yeah two teams here and I actually had them four Thompson Shiloh seven in my preseason top 40 so they're pretty good teams when you can get in that top 10. Yeah, they certainly are, and you know, I, I tell you what, I'm impressed. This Thompson team uh, comes out, you know, and I mean, it's they they go junior, junior, sophomore, 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 and then starts if it comes off the bench as a sophomore, and and certainly, I mean, this is a team. I mean, you look down at these guys, you they're all sophomores. I mean, boy, the composure and 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 the way they play the bas the way they play the game, certainly. I mean, these guys are well above their years when it comes to basketball. And, and if you look at them physically, very mature looking kids for for sophomores. Um, Starcevich kid is pretty impressive looking sophomore. And I really like the Peterson kid. Uh, we've seen a number of young teams, like I said earlier, out here at this classic, and that's what kind of makes it fun. Yeah, a lot of young talent uh, in this one, and then you know you look at Shallow. Shallow comes out, and Emil, you know, he he leads the way. He knocks down a bunch of threes, and they've got the size in in Wanzik and, and Wilkinson, and then and then you've got England, and and so they've got a nice, well-rounded team. Probably one of the more better, probably one of the more well-rounded teams that I've seen that Shallow's had in in, in, a, in a number of years. And if you look at the kids that played in the first half, you saw. A couple of seniors playing in Wanzek, Klein, and Weston, but you know, the rest of them are back. Um, Amel's back. They got the Atticus Wilkinson kids back, so you know they've they've always got a pretty pretty good program there at Shiloh. Well, 35-32 at the break as a Premier Chiropractic halftime show rolls on with more. We come back. we will have a look at the first half numbers. It's Shiloh 35, Thompson 32. To top a sub is with real red wine vinegar made from red grapes and no food coloring. And the right way to film it is in slow motion. Obviously. Because authentic ingredients make a sub above. The best part about working at BNC National Bank is developing relationships. I love working with people. We've been here for over 25 years. We've grown just like our communities we're in. But we still have that personal connection with our customers. And that's why we can find the best solutions for them. It feels great seeing projects around the community and knowing we're a small part of making that happen. We're helping people buy their first homes. Plan for the future. From startups to big business. We're part of the community. And we're proud of it. Yours truly, BNC. And finally, Agent Smith. He's in charge of restoring your property to its original state. Well, Shallow won the first quarter eight, or 18 to 12. Thompson won the second quarter 20 to 17. And that's where we stand right now, 35-32. Shallow with a three-point lead. And for their look at the first half individual numbers, here's Perry. Hey, first of all, for Shiloh, they're led by uh, Isaac Emel. He's got himself four threes for a total of 12. The second behind that is Joseph Wanzek. Uh, he's got eight. Caden England chipped in with five. Kyler Klein had four. Atticus Wilkinson had four. And Carter Seifert had two. And there gets their total of 35. And we look up here at uh, Thompson and Boy, pretty balanced here. They got four kids that scored. They got one uh, Overby led them with nine. Peterson had eight. Starcevich had eight. And Wolfgram had seven for their 32. So that's pretty good balance getting four kids 
uh, pretty much right around the same amount. Yeah, real good balance by both those two teams. Tonight's game brought to you in part by Presswith Orthodontics, specializing in braces and Invisalign for all ages. We offer free consultations and financing options to make it easy to take your smile to the next level. Call 852-2646 or visit MinotBraces.com today to get started with a free virtual consultation. That's Presswich Orthodontics. Hey, have you been to Planet Pizza yet? I strongly suggest you do, as they've been proudly serving the Magic City for over 25 years, the largest laser tag playground in the region. Multiple-ring pizza and wings and the 30-inch galactic pizzas that are out of this world. Call on order now, 852-1700. Planet Pizza is out of this world and also Serve Pro, the 24 7 emergency service. Trained technicians, advanced technology, fire and water cleanup and restoration. It's Serve Pro. As we mentioned, uh, more basketball uh, coming up uh, tomorrow as we will have the Hoopster Classic. We'll start it off with Berthold and North Prairie. That'll be followed by Velva and Trenton, and then DLB and Trinity uh, will be game number three. Bishop Bryan will take on the Thompson Tommies. Uh, tomorrow about 3.30, and then Rugby and Beulah about 5, Shallow and West Hope Newburgh at 6.30, and then our Redeemers and Hazen will round out the Hoopster Classic, as you can see it right there. And then also tomorrow, uh, we're going to have the Mandan Holiday Tournament on the air for you. There's uh, lots of familiar teams there, the Holsteins, the Miners from Wilton Wing. Uh, you got the Botnell Braves, the Bulldogs from Flasher. Uh, who else we got there? Oh, the Glen Ellen Hebron Bearcats. Standing Rock. Standing there. Rock in there as well. So Todd Downrys, Chuck Claremont, we'll get that one underway for you uh, tomorrow afternoon right around, oh, 2.40, 2.45. Uh, that's the BNC National Bank Man and Holiday Tournament from uh, Braves Gymnasium in Mandan. Well, we've got 16 minutes to play in this one. It's a good one so far, 35-32, as Thompson will have the ball out of the halftime break as Wolfgang controls dribble entry left side. They find Overby coming off a set screen, and he misses the three. Long rebound run down there by Peterson. Taken away by England, battle for the basketball, it's loose. Who's gonna get the foul? Is it gonna be England or will it be Krogstead? It will be on Gavin Krogstead. Krogstead picks up his first. And that is the first of the half for the Tommies. Down low they go, Wilkinson, one bounce, turns and scores at point blank range. He's got six. Turning that left shoulder, he's got a really nice rhythm when he turns to that shoulder. 37-32. Here's Wolfgram with it. Wolfgram leaves it off for Starcevic. Lobs down low, Peterson. Starcevic cuts, gets out of the way. Peterson operates, reverse lamp. Oh, tough move from under the hoop. And Peterson scores it. He's in double figures, he's got 10. 37-34, back come the Skyhawks. Here's Wilkinson, top of the key, bounces inside. Now back to Emil. Emil, he's gonna fire for three, why not? Oh, that one rolls off. Rebound comes down to Brady Wolfgram up the far side, they go Overby. Overby back to Wolfgram. Wolfgram loses it on the drive and it's run down by Peterson. Starcevic straight away, puts it on the floor now. Dribble entry in the right wing. He's going to attack, spins, attacks, and he's going to be tied up. As I think we're going to have a foul. Is it going to be on Seifert? It is on Seifert. I thought that was pretty good defense. Seemed like he yeah, was I thought it was too. Standing straight up and down, but. Wolfgram will be the trigger man. And he lobs it, he gets it in to Krogstead. Now back to Wolfgram, down low, Starcevic on the block. He's gonna operate down low. Fakes right, turns left, shot rolls off. Rebound to Wanzik. He gets it off to England. To Klein, now they go down low, Wanzik, they're gonna get a reach around foul. Peterson just out of position there. That's going to be number two on Carter, and that's going to be the second. Second of the half. Tonight's game brought to you in part by BNC National Bank. Your life is busy. We'll make managing your money easy with locations in North Dakota and Arizona. Visit BNC Bank online, BNC. 
Dodd Bank, 37-34 on the BNC Bank scoreboard. Thompson by three. Stand corrected, shallow by three. Wilkinson and Weston check back in here during the dead ball for Wanzik kicks in the right corner to Klein. He sets, fires for three, in and out. Rebound comes down to the Tommies. Lead pass to Overby. Overby flips it up, going out of bounds. It comes up short. Good hustle by Peterson. Flips it to Overby. Overby, teardrop in the lane. That one's no good. Rebound to Wilkinson of the Skyhawks. And Weston slows it down for Shallow Christian with that three-point lead. And as it left side to Klein, looks inside to Wilkinson. He wants it. Wanzik says, nope, I'm going to fire for three and buries it. That makes him so dangerous. It's a difficult guard when you got the six, seven kid can hit the three and you got a post up kid <laughs> who had you buried down underneath the hoop. So 40 to 34 after the three by Wanzik. Here's Wolf Graham with it. Goes to Crogstead. Now it starts to Vic down low. Peterson, he turns. Tier, baby hook in the paint is up and good by Carter Peterson. Thompson get, does a really nice job of getting, uh, well, Shiloh keeps switching the screens and then they end up getting a mismatch and they get it inside to the Peterson kid. 40 36. Shallow by four. Wanzik and he tried to go to Emil. Emil zigged instead of zag and threw it out of bounds. Checking in for Shiloh, that's going to be Fagerland. <laughs> Schumacher comes in and a new player in there. Drew Odenbach. Drew Odenbach. But why not bring in another 6'5 kid? <laughs> Dime a dozen in Thompson, I guess. <laughs> Drew Odenbach, a 6'5 sophomore. Guessing he might have got a little JV run today, huh? Yeah, I'm guessing uh, he got some, and then you got Carter Seifert just checked back in for Shiloh, yeah. Starsevic turns, drops it down low. Odenbach right off the bench and gets two. One of the things you always said to a player is never help up, and that's exactly what happens when you do. And then you leave that guy wide open down on the baseline. Thompson cuts it to two at 40-38. Here's Wanzik on Odenbach. He attacks, leans in, and what are they going to have there? Wanzek showing another part of his game here, putting it on the deck and going to the left hand. And Odenbach gets a hoop, and then he turns, goes to plays defense and gets his first personal foul. Third team foul, so Wanzik will toe the stripe from the serve pro free throw line. 24-7 emergency service, trained technicians, advanced technology, fire and water cleanup and restoration. It's served pro as Wanzik knocks down the first one. 41-38. Wanzik sets, fires, that one's short. Starts if it comes out of there with it. Up the left side, they go to Wolf Graham. Wolfgram backs it out, looks down low. Nobody See home. If they can get Starsevich here in the block. Well, they try to go to Odenbach, tipped out of bounds by Wanzik. He's got a couple three inches on the kid guarding him. And Reminder, we'll have our planning team financial advisor shots crossroads post game report coming up at the conclusion of this one. Wolfgram attack spins. Ooh, nice head and shoulder fake off the glass. No good. Odenbach to follow. Can't convert. Wanzik the rebound in the outlet pass. He gets it out to Eli Thompson in the ball game now for Shiloh. Here's Weston. Oh. And we're going to have a traveling violation. Eli Thompson. A 5'10 junior. Peterson back in here now for Thompson. Here comes Wilkinson in. Thompson's going to go out just like that. Short run for Eli. It's an interesting lineup here for Thompson. They've potentially got three posts in. That'll move Starcevich out to the wing here. Yep. <laughs> Boy, I tell you what, that Fargoland, yeah. he's just running over people. Yeah. Still got the pads on from the fall. <laughs> All right, Wolf Graham brings it out, resets. Enters at left wing, Starsevic looks down low. There's Peterson. Turns baseline, nowhere to go. Now follow a shot, rolls off, rebound Wilkinson. 
Weston slows it down, 3.10 to go. Third quarter of the BNC Bank scoreboard, 41-38, Shiloh. Weston attacks, rises, 15-footer, short, rebound. Peterson. Break. Oh. And that was a dangerous pass there, not a good pass. It was tipped, the refs don't. Re yeah, I don't think, I don't, I don't know. I don't think they really know. They're all three looking at each other, but it looks like uh, Brandy, Shiloh's gonna get it. Brandy George is lobbying, lobbying for the tip, but he's not gonna get it, so it's gonna go back to Shiloh, leading 41-38. Yeah, well, I tried to change a lot of calls over my years too. So yeah, I've never seen I've never seen many of them. Percentage was really <laughs> low. <laughs> As England operates, and he's hounded by Schumacher, and that's going to result in a foul for Thomas Schumacher, his first. Fourth team foul already. Fourth team foul already for Thompson. Two forty-nine left to play, third quarter. England shakes and bakes, goes down Broadway. Ooh, if the finger roll layup there by Caden England, he's got seven. 43 38. On Left wing shot fake, step back three is up, and that's going to be short for Schumacher. Rebound comes into the hands of Shiloh. England operates, kicks right corner, Wanzik. He's going to fire for three, and he got another one. <laughs> you got a 6 7 kid out there on the wing. They're going penetrate, kick it to him. Yeah, that's. And he knocks down a three. And we're going to have a timeout. It's a Hubbard National Insurance timeout. Call Hubbard National Insurance today for all your personal and business insurance needs. 2.05 to go. Third quarter play on the BNC Bank scoreboard. Shallow 46. Thompson 38 back after this timeout on the PSP Network. This broadcast on the PSP Network is proudly brought to you by Water. Boom. Agent Winston Otter. He's been called the human sponge. A little run here by Shallow Christian. As they've upped their lead to eight at 46-38. Late in this third quarter of play as out of the timeout by Brandy George. We'll see what Thompson drew up in the huddle. Here's Tice with it. He's looking to get it down low to Starcevic. I would have given it to him there. Now he wants it. There you go. Now Starcevic's going to operate, turns baseline, leans in, shot too strong. The follow is no good by Peterson. He's going to be fouled. A good activity down low there by Carter Peterson. I'm very impressed with this kid. He's a sophomore. And Wilkinson. Peterson at the line. He'll shoot two. Free throws too strong. He's got 12 points on the evening. As Peterson at the serve pro free throw line. As soon as I am, I say I'm impressed with him, then he misses his free throw. I suppose that's a jinx. Serve Pro with 24-7 emergency service. Trained technicians, advanced technology, fire and water cleanup and restoration. It's Serve Pro as Peterson gets one of two. Overby did get back into the ball game here now for Thompson. 46-39. So. Oh, boy. Cypher loses the balance. Oh, nice oh, drop nice pass to Wanzik layup and got it. Gee, what a quarter Wanzik's had, 48-39. As Wolfgram sends the offense in motion, Tice, top of the key, Peterson. 
Now back to Wolf Graham. Here's Overby. He turns, fires for three. That one's short. Good box out there underneath by Wanzik. He gets it off to England. England under a minute to go. Left corner. Here's Emil for three. That one too strong. Rebound. Starcevic for Thompson. He runs it into the front court. Guarded by Seifert. Wants a screen. Now Peterson sets one. Starcevic down the lane. Jump stop. Leans in. Shot. And they're going to say no. He's going to be fouled by Carter Seifert. That'll be his third. And that'll be the team's third. So it'll be out of bounds underneath the hoop for Thompson. Long inbound to Starcevic. Starcevic skips it right side. Here's a three on the way. Wolfgram, and he buries it. 48-42 as Wolfgram buries a big three there. He's got 10. Shot clock is off. Shallow can play for one, and that's exactly what they're going to do. Here's Klein. He's going to go right down Broadway and in the way. Yeah, he's in the circle. Going to be a block. Yep, it's going to be a block, and that's Krogstead. I do believe. Nope. Tice. That's Tice. I'm sorry. That's his third. <coughs> Team fifth. So to the line will be Fogelin for Shiloh. Check it into the staff, number four. As Fogelin gets his first point of the night from the serve pro free throw line. Not surprised he took the ball to the hole, Scott. People ended up on the floor again, so. 49-42, <laughs> Fogelin gets them both. His first second point of the night. 50-42 our score, 15.4 to play, third quarter. As Wolfgram will control now for Thompson. They'll play for one. Enters it left wing to start, so he gets a high screen. Wants to go to the hole. Good D by Wanzik. Gets there, reverse layup, and blocked by Weston from the backside. And that's going to end the third quarter of play. On the BNC Bank scoreboard, three quarters in the books. It's shallow 50. Thompson 42. Back for the final eight after this timeout on the PSP network. So you're looking for a full service financial plan or planning for farm or business succession. Planning Team Financial Advisors is here to help you work toward achieving your financial goals. With locations in Bismarck, Garrison, and Center, our full-service team of professionals are dedicated to helping you work towards achieving your financial goals. Visit us online, planningteam.com. Securities offered through LPL Financial, member of FINRA and SIPC. Investment advisory services offered through New Edge Advisors, LLC, a registered investment advisor. New Edge Advisors, LLC, and Planning Team Financial Advisors are separate entities from LPL Financial. Reminder to stay tuned for our planning team financial advisor shots crossroads with post game report whether you're looking for a full service financial plan or planning for farm or business succession planning team financial advisor is here to help you work toward achieving your financial goals this is online at planningteam.com shots crossroads hey get filled up on their delicious menu that includes the famous number 99 order online at shotscrossroads.com team buses well you're always welcome at shots crossroads the final eight are underway as shallow will have the ball out of the quarter break. Fogelin goes up high to cipher it around the wheel. They go, here's Klein. Klein sets, fires straight away, three short. <coughs> Rebound, right place, right time was Fogelin, and a left wing three is up and good for Wyatt Weston. Those are tough when you get an extra yep. rebound. And well, Wyatt Weston, the first bucket of the night, makes it 53-42. Starcevic, he's going to get fouled as he's... Seifert, that's his fourth. Fourth team foul on Shiloh. Long inbounds comes out to Wolfgram. Starcevic on the left wing down low, poked away by Weston as they try to lob it down low to... 
Crockstead, and it's going to be off Thompson to go back to shallow. 53 42 our score here. Game number six of the day from the Dale Brown Classic in the Magic City. Here's Fagerlin. Gets a high screen from Wilkinson. Wilkinson rolls, gathers, spins, baseline, follow a shot too strong. Rebound, Fagerlin. Klein, here's Weston. Nowhere to go, and on the left side, now back out to Klein. Klein, oh, has it taken away by Wolfgram, and Wolfgram got, boy, he went for that one, and he got kneed right in the face, I think. Yeah. Bells at number four, Michael Fagerlin, his second personal. Fagerlin's going to pick up his second personal foul. Fifth team foul. Fifth team foul against Shiloh. Wolfgram's going to come out. Schumacher comes in. Schumacher will run the offense now for the Tommies from Thompson. Enters it to Overby. Overby goes baseline, rises up. Follow a shot, no good. Rebound weak side to Seifert. He gets it out. Weston up the near side. Here comes Fargolin. In motion three is no good. Rebound to Thompson. Two on one. Overby throws it up off the board. And I don't know if that was a pass to Starcevic. Overby saves it. All alone down low. Layup is good by Carter Peterson. It looked like he was trying to pass that to Starcevic. That's what I thought. It looked like he was trying to lob it off the board to Starcevic coming down the left side. 53-44. Weston sends Fargo in from the right side to the left side. Seifert looks inside to Wilkinson. Now to Klein. Klein operates, spins in the paint, nowhere to go. Step oh, nice through, step move through. up too strong. Rebound to Peterson on the weak side. Here's the lead out. Krogstead, Starcevic on the left wing. Gets a screen. Now goes baseline, rises up, shot. Partially blocked, I do believe, by Weston. Here comes Klein on the breakout. Klein, step through move is no good. Rebound tipped around. Who comes out of it? Wilkinson, right place, right time, layup and good. And Brandy George would like a timeout, and it will be a Hub International Insurance timeout on the floor. 5.24 to go on the BNC Bank scoreboard. Shallow 55 and Thompson 44. Back after this timeout. Come from Vibetta Orthodontics. Vibetta Orthodontics is a certified Invisalign provider. Invisalign fits your budget and your lifestyle. Braces for children, teens, and adults with affordable monthly payments. Schedule your complimentary consultation and exam by logging on to ViBettaOrthodontics.com or by calling 701 839 6010. Great smiles come from Vibetta Orthodontics. The right way to top a sub is with real red wine vinegar made from red grapes and no food coloring. And the right way to film it is in slow motion. Obviously. Because authentic ingredients make a sub above. Well, much needed time out there for Brandy George. Lead back to 11 for Shiloh and Thompson's got to make a move here quick as here's a right wing three no good rebound by peterson's up and good off the missed shot there by wolfgram yes 17 i got him for 17. 55 46 clock drips under five minutes to go on our bnc bank scoreboard lob inside wands oh boy good head and shoulder fake goes up scored and he's fouled Oh, what a move, strong move there by Jay Wanzik down low. Really good body control. Well, number four, Carter Peterson, his third personal. Carter Peterson gets called for the foul. That's number three on him. Number six for the team is Wanzik. Will attempt to convert the old-fashioned three-point play. He does just that from the serve pro free throw line. Thompson needs to put together a little bit of a run here. Yes, they do, and they need to do it quick. 58-46, and here's a poke away by Seifert. They appear more tired than Shiloh. And, yeah. And maybe that's what's going on here. 12-point lead. 
They lob in down. Starcevic, he fires cross court. Peterson trying to operate. Peterson flips one up, no good. Wanzik the rebound. He gets it off to England. England slows things up as they want to run a little bit, as much clock as they can. England are going to get an offensive foul. It's going to go against England. Good defense there by Braden Wolfgram. I like to see that once in a while you get the reward for a defensive player yeah, getting, that was, his, getting his chest in front of him and a lot of times they don't get that call in the open court. So Thompson needs buckets and they need him quick. As Wolf Graham controls. Starcevic. Down the line Wanzik. Ooh, good good head fake there. Got Wanzik to go for it and Starcevic finishes at the rim. First bucket of the second half. Yeah, he's got 10. 58 48. Lead back down to 10. Buckets England. and stops. That's what they got to get here. Dribble entry in the left wing is Weston. Goes left side to right side. Now Emil attacks. Nothing there. Now back to England. Now here's Weston with it. Looks down low. Wanzik. Wanzik turns. Oh, Peterson right there. Thou shall not enter thy lane, says Carter Peterson. And here comes Wolfgram back with finds Peterson down low attacks on Wanzik off the glass and scored it. Well Perry here's what we said they needed to run and right now. Oh, oh boy that could easily. Yes it could way. have been as Wolfgram some pressure defense and it goes off of Wolfgram so it will stay with shallow Christian with 317 to play and they lead 58 50. Here's Emil left wing thought about it. One bounce nowhere to go now Wanzik. England jabs now he goes left. Teardrop in the lane by England no good Wilkinson the rebound the putback swatted by Starcevic. Wilkinson battles for it and he's going to be fouled down low on Wolfgram. And Wilkinson will shoot two as that's Wolfgram's second. But that puts Shallon the bonus with that seventh team foul on the Tommies. Wilkinson's just kind of a lunch pail kind of a Yes, kid. he is. If he throw too strong by Atticus, he will have one more. Nice compliment, really, to the Wanzek kid. And Wilkinson gets one of two from the serve pro free throw line. 59 50 250 left to go in the contest. Entered high post now Starcevic pops out looks for Overby on the cut didn't give it to him. Now he's going to attack in the lane drops it cross court to Peterson Peterson nowhere to go turns shot rolls off rebound on the weak side to Weston. Weston with a nine point lead gets the play from the shallow bench enters it right side to England England Wilkinson around the wheel they come that's Klein Klein Wilkinson in the paint goes up hangs and scores. Stand your feet. Go jump for your face. 61 50 here's Overby 18 footers good and we're going to have a quick timeout on the floor. 2.09 to go in the ballgame on the BNC Bank scoreboard at shallow 61, Thompson 52. Back after this timeout. Water. Boom. Agent Winston Otter. He's been called the human sponge.
Hey, reminder, we'll have our Sport Clips MVP of the game. Sport Clips will keep you looking your best. Check in online with the hairstyles today at sportclips.com. And also, we'll have our jobbers moving and storage moving the game. They focus on the details of the process without ever losing sight of the big picture. Their efficient step-by-step -step approach to move management keeps everyone on the same page. Locations of Bismarck, Manhattan, Fargo, and Aberdeen. Find them online at jobberswarehouse.com. You'll hear all that inside the planning team financial advisor, Shots Crossroads post-game report. And about two minutes and nine seconds is what we have left to go here as some pr full court pressure is going to be applied here now by Thompson. They get it into Weston. Weston will control for Shiloh. Ooh, what a crossover move there was. Here's Klein, left wing three, and he rattles it home. Ooh, boy, that might be the dagger right there. 64-52. Peterson in the paint and he flips one up and scores it. This Carter Peterson. Sixty-four fifty-four. Shallow not in any hurry. We'll see if Thompson's gonna elect a foul. There's a poke away by Wolf Graham, but England runs it down. England. Almost threw it away, a nice pass. Wilkinson goes up and scores it. What a save by Weston. 66-54. Wolf Graham now to Starcevic. He gets in the paint, jump stop, now back Wolf Graham. Straight away three, that one too strong. Rebound to Wanzik. He's got to bounce it before he loses the balance. And Wilkinson there. Nope, they're going to say it's out of bounds. So it'll go back to Thompson with 49.8 to play. Substitution. Emil checks in now for Shallow. 66-54, 12 point lead as Thompson's got to go quick. Weston. Starcevic. Now here's Wolf Graham, three, and he's going to be fouled by England. And Wolf Graham's going to shoot three, not the foul you want to have with 38.6 to go. Second personal, seventh team foul on Shiloh. So to the line shooting three will be Braden Wolfgram, the 5'10 junior. First one's up and good. He will have one more, 66-55. Wolfgram sets, delivers the second one, and he got that one. 66-56. He'll have one more, the third one, and he hit the trifecta. 66-57, Shallow takes the Hubbard National Insurance timeout on the floor. Call Hubbard National Insurance today for all your personal and business insurance needs. You can find them at 4204 Boulder Ridge Road, Northwest Bismarck. 54 seconds to play, Shallow 66, Thompson 57, back after this timeout. Look forward to serving you here at your local community bank. The right way to top a sub is with real red wine vinegar made from red grapes and no food coloring. And the right way to film it is in slow motion, obviously. Because authentic ingredients make a sub above. Thirty-eight point six to play, sixty-six fifty-seven. As Thompson sets up their defense, I think Shallow actually took that time out. They want to set their offense up, so we'll see. Both teams in the bonus. 
Quick inbound, and there's a foul. And that one's going to go against Schumacher. His second personal, that's the eighth team foul on Thompson. So Shallow is going to be forced to steal this one away from the serve pro free throw line. England sets. And he delivers. Quick reminder for those of you leaving out of this game. It's getting quite slippery outside the goal. So please use caution for walking to your neighbor. 67 57. Second one's up and good. 68 57 as England gets them both. Starcevic attacks the rim, and what are we going to have there? We have a foul is going to go against Weston. First personal, eighth team foul. So to the serve pro free throw line goes Jacob Starcevic, the 6 2 sophomore. Free throws up and good for Jacob. He's got 11. 68 58. And he throws that one off the rim and it comes down. We're going to get a foul. It's going to go against Weston. Now, crafty move there by Starcevic as he throws it off the rim. And most more times than not, that doesn't turn out in the team's favor that does it, but that time it did as Weston gets called for the foul. And that will put Wolfgram at the line. And Wolfgram has been perfect from the free throw line in quarter number four. 68-59. Second one's good as well. 68-60. And we're going to have another Hub International Insurance timeout on the floor. Hub is a leading North American insurance brokerage on the BNC Bank scoreboard. Shallow 68, Thompson 60. Back after this timeout. Like all the shots, honestly, it just the shots came to me. Derek and Eric especially had some great drives, you know, which led some great picks. Shout out to them. You know, it feels good. For you to come out here from a defensive effort against Eagles staff, I mean, you're way smaller than him. Obviously, I mean, how did you get yourself pumped up for that? Well, you know, Coach has a thing that says height doesn't matter heart, and I strongly believe in that. You know, I got the heart, and it doesn't matter if I got the height or not. Love that line, good luck next week. Yeah, thank you. All right, great job. I don't have the height, but I got the heart. That was a pretty cool <laughs> sign right there by Jagger Gundo. Back up to you guys. Yes, and now... All right, bring it up, bring it up. Come on, come on, come on. Someone's got to call a play. All right, let's go. I ride Zoom, Spider 2, Y Banana. You don't like that one, okay. I ride 40 Power. No. Nah. Don't want that one either? No. Nah. All right, go kick off. Get out of here, let's go. First Western is your independent community bank with all the online conveniences you want and an experienced team you can count on. First Western Bank and Trust. You can bank on us. 68-60, they get it inbound to Weston, and just like that, Wolf Graham follows him. That'll be his third, and that'll be the ninth team foul. So it'll be a bonus situation for Wyatt Weston, the six-foot senior. <coughs> With 25.8 to play. And nobody at in the lane for Shallow and Weston buries it. Sixty-nine, sixty. Second one's up and good. Seventy to sixty as Weston gets them both. He's got five. Overby turns and fires for three. That one comes off. Peterson the rebound and the putback by Peterson. Peterson. 
70 to 62. Another timeout on the floor. We'll keep it right here. It's 16 points. Just a short timeout. 16.6 to play. Reminder: We'll have the Hoopster Classic for you. We'll have all seven games tomorrow on the PSP Network, and also we will have the opening round of the BNC National Bank Mandan Holiday Tournament. Chuck Claremont, Todd Domries will have all the coverage for you. We'll have wall-to-wall -wall coverage of that uh, from Braves Gymnasium. Should be some good matchups over there. There you see the matchups tomorrow on the Hoopster Classic. Started off with Berthold North, North Prairie right away at 11 o'clock in the morning. 16.6 to play here. An eight point lead for Shiloh. Klein gets it into Weston and Wolfgram bodies him up and he's fouled. That's his fourth. Well. Thompson's telling Shiloh, well, if you're going to seal this one away, you better do it at the free throw line. And so far, they've done a pretty good job as Weston goes back to the serve pro free throw line where he just made two. Make it three in a row. And one more, and he misses that one. 71-62. Quick three at the other end by Starcevic makes it 71-65 and a quick timeout. And again, we'll keep it right here as Starcevic makes the three and cuts it down to six with 7.9 to play and never say die in Thompson. As it's 71 65, and Shallow will be in the double bonus. On the next foul attempt, which I'm certain will be coming here, Shallow Thompson looking to get a steal and a quick hoop. The trigger man will be. Kyler Klein for Shiloh. And they got Wolfgram in the back in the front court of Shiloh as he's got four fouls. They don't want to lose him. And they get it in, and a quick foul there is going to go against Schumacher. Well, two free throws here ought about do it. So Weston's been the man here for Shiloh in this final minute from the free throw line as he goes back to the serve pro free throw line with 24-7 emergency service. Train technicians, advanced technology. Fire and water cleanup and restoration at serve pro as, as Weston gets that one. Makes it 72-65 and he gets the second one. 73-65 as that one goes up on the buzzer, goes out of bounds. It's clock stops with 1.2 to play. And Shiloh is going to move to 2-0 on the season as they are going to appear to win this one, 75-63. They bounce it out, and that one, this one has gone final as Shiloh Knocks off the Thompson Tommies by a score of 73 to 65. That takes us into our Planning Team Financial Advisors. Shots Grassroads Post Game Report. Planning Team Financial Advisors helping clients work toward financial freedom. And Shots Crossroads, your post game headquarters. Order online at shotscrossroads.com. Perry Hansen has made his way down to the playing floor. He's going to try to get a few words with head coach Brad Miller, and I believe he's got a player well as well in the likes of Joseph Wanzik. Had a good game tonight for Shiloh Christian, Brad Miller, and Brandy George shake hands at center court. And right now, let's go down on the floor and Perry Hansen with head coach Brad Miller. Perry, take it away. All right, coach, a nice win. Uh, 
I'm sure you'd like to see some things get better, but we're early in the season. Yeah, that's only our second game, and, and we're in and we're in week five, so we kind of figured we'd be a little rusty, and uh, so we're happy to come out here with a win against a good Thompson team. Yeah, they're a young team. I thought Emil got you off to a pretty good start, and uh, as usual, you got some pretty good balance from the rest of your kids. Yeah, we got a couple bigs inside that can score, and then uh, Isaac shoots pretty good, and we got some other guys that can do some things. So uh, we were really happy with uh, with uh, how it turned out. You know, I always like to see the old high low there, so I kind of like that action. But uh, overall, I thought it was a pretty good ball game for you. And uh, who's uh, who's up for you then tomorrow? We got West Oak Newburgh tomorrow. Uh, they're a young team, but they've got uh, that uh, Broughton kid that's got. Uh, tons of experience and he's really good and uh, so we're gonna have our hands full with him okay, well good luck coach I appreciate the time and uh, I'll speak here with Jay thanks okay, a lot thank Jay nice job uh, told me a little earlier you're coming off a little bit of strep throat from last week but uh, that overall uh, it's pretty impressed with your ball game you I know you can always shoot the three I saw you put it on the floor and go to your left a couple times tonight and but overall, you had a nice ball game. Thank you. Appreciate that. Yeah, like you said, coming off sickness, obviously great to be back and glad it turned out in our favor. So. I, I know you play a lot during the summer, and uh, you, you seem to kind of keep yourself out of foul trouble really well with your verticality and stuff, and you and Atticus together make a pretty nice team down in there. Yeah, it's nice having him down there, having someone else, taking some of the hits from the other big guys. I don't know. It's just great to have another big man like that. Well, get healthy here, and then uh, good luck tomorrow. Thank you. I appreciate it. All right, there you have it. As uh, it was Brad Miller and Joseph Wanzik as they are victorious here by a score of 73 to 65. Our planning team financial advisor, Shots Crossroads, postgame show rolls on with more after this timeout on the PSP Network. Whether you're looking for a full-service financial plan or planning for farm or business succession, Planning Team Financial Advisors is here to help you work toward achieving your financial goals. With locations in Bismarck, Garrison, and Center, our full-service team of professionals are dedicated to helping you work towards achieving your financial goals. Visit us online, planningteam.com. Securities offered through LPL Financial, member of Finrun Sipic. Investment advisory services offered through New Edge Advisors, LLC, a registered investment advisor. New Edge Advisors, LLC, and Planning Team Financial Advisors are separate entities from LPL Financial. Oh, easy, easy. I think I'm good. You got my good side, right? <laughs> Not too many lights. I don't want to get fried before my time. <laughs> oh, it's egg-tastic. You never know what dish you're going to end up in. My dream dish is a 99. It's so popular. Me and a fellow egg tag-teaming with some crispy golden hash browns. Have you seen those hash browns? Those guys are shredded. <laughs> Throw in some diced ham, onions, and melted cheese. Oh, it's a party for your taste buds. Oh, here comes Chevy. Hold on, Chevy. Did you guys get everything that you needed? 99, here I come. Shots Crossroads. It's an excellent place to eat. It's time for the Shots Crossroads and Planning Team Financial Advisors postgame show. Now for a look at game stats and analysis. Let's go to the postgame show. Welcome back to our Planning Team Financial Advisors Shots Crossroads postgame report. This one has gone final 73 65 as Shallow holds off the Thompson Tommies. And for a look at the final game numbers, here's Perry. Okay, leading Shiloh for Joseph Wanzek had uh, 20. Right behind him was Atticus Wilkinson making a nice one two punch inside there with 13. Isaac Emmel had four threes in the first half, got himself 12. Caden England ended up with nine. Followed by Wyatt Weston with all his points in the second half with eight. Kyler Klein picked up seven and uh, Michael Fogerlin picked up two for a total of 73. Leading the way for Thompson was uh, Carter Peterson with 23. 
Right behind him was Braden Wolfgam, uh, got 15. Jacob Starcevic got 14. Overby with 11. And Drew Odenbach picked up two for a total of 65. Well, Perry, we got to give out our Jobbers Moving and Storage Move of the Game. Tonight's Move of the Game is sponsored by Jobbers Moving and Storage. Jobbers can help you move across town or across the country. Location in Bismarck, Glen, at Fargo, and Aberdeen. Find them online at jobberswarehouse.com. Your thoughts? What? I don't know. I kind of like that uh, that loose ball situation where Atticus Wilkinson just was kind of in the right spot at the right time. He's kind of a lunch pill type worker, and it just fit him just perfectly. You know, that was a big bucket at that time. Yeah, so Atticus Wilkinson will get our Jobbers Moving and Storage move of the game and our Sports Clips MVP of the game. Sports Clips bring you this MVP matchup. Uh, they're home to the MVP haircut experience. Nothing comes close to making you feel like an MVP, quite like the MVP experience at Sports Clips. Tonight's Sports Clips game MVP is Joseph Wanzik with 20 points. I'm sure, a number of rebounds as well, but certainly had eight in that first uh, opening half. And again, he, uh, he got things going uh, for Shiloh Christian. And Perry, you know, you look at this uh, this game, battle of two teams, two teams in the top ten of the state class B poll, and and uh, we got what we expected, but uh, certainly, again, these are two teams that I think when it comes to March, they're going to make a lot of noise. Well, and I, I've seen a lot today where you can tell where teams just haven't had a lot of practice time and or game time, and I would expect to see them two teams. Uh, we could easily see them uh, in Bismarck in March. Um, Thompson's got probably a really rough road to go and Shiloh always has to battle with some good teams there in region five but uh, it wouldn't surprise me at all see them both there in March. Yeah well it should be fun. Well Perry that's going to do it for me as I'm going to step aside Nick Halber is going to step in and bring you home uh, with our last and final game of the day our Redeemers and North Star as we'll take a timeout and we'll reset the cockpit and we'll be back for game number seven of the Dale Brown Classic after this Extended timeout on the PSP network. I'm a grateful person on a lot of levels. I've been given so many great opportunities. But most of all, even as a little kid, I was taught a set of values. Like tools for life, hard work, responsibility, and the key to making it all work, commitment. First Western Bank and Trust, you can bank on us. The right way to top a sub is with real red wine vinegar made from red grapes and no food coloring. And the right way to film it is in slow motion, obviously. Because authentic ingredients make a sub above. This broadcast on the PSP Network is proudly brought to you by...
Hi, I'm Agent Simon Irv Pro with CRSF. What is CRSF? We're the Cleanup and Restoration Special Forces. Hoorah! We're SurfPro's first responders to your property's disaster. Admit it, you're no good at handling disaster alone. Like when you got dumped in high school by Janet Fillmore. She married three-time world champion yodeler Jovan Bovic. With the Janet disaster, you didn't have a team. Now, you have a team. Elite Surf Pro operatives highly trained in disaster cleanup and restoration. If it's fire damage, Agent Fred Iyer. From burnt to unburnt, he does that. But oh wait, it's water. Boom, Agent Winston Otter. He's been called the human sponge. But Simon, what about mold? Agent Marlon Old. He holds the world record for fastest mold remediation. And finally, Agent Smith. He's in charge of restoring your property to its original state. So if you sprung a leak, lit your curtains on fire, or your insulation looks like weak old bagels, call SurfPro. In southwestern and south central North Dakota on any given day at any given moment, a Dakota Community Bank and Trust customer is logging in or signing on to do their online or mobile banking. We believe that community banking can blend both the past with down-home customer service in-house and the future with modern banking conveniences and technology for our customers anywhere, like here or here, all while honoring our long-standing tradition of community-first oriented banking here at Dakota Community Bank and Trust. Ackerman Svold, your neighbors, friends, and family who are working for you. The local team with local availability and accountability for all of your engineering, architecture, environmental, transportation, and land development needs. Your project can rely on Ackerman Svold. Find them online at ackermansvold.com. When you start your project, talk with Ackerman Surveying and Associates. Our experienced surveying team guides you in the right direction with planning, planning, and lot and boundary surveys. The trusted name in land surveying, the trusted name in architecture and engineering is Ackerman Survey and Ackerman Svold. Find them at ackermansvold.com. people across the great state of North Dakota. Some of those people have been working all day long here at the MSU Dome, including the staff putting on the Dale Brown Classic, and boy, have they done a fantastic job here today as we've seen some of the top teams in Class B basketball across the state of North Dakota here at the Dale Brown Classic. We've already had six games played today on the floor of the MSU Beavers here at the MSU Dome. It's time for game number seven, and it should be a good one here today as the Bearcats from North Star take on the Knights 
for Barring Deemers. Good evening and welcome into our Shields pregame show. I'm Nick Holberg. Thanks for joining us here tonight on the PSP Network. We'll be joined by the Hoopsters' very own Perry Hansen in just a moment here on the PSP Network. This is our Shields pregame show here tonight. Shields of Minot and Bismarck has everything you need for all your passions, from fishing to fashion, you name it, Shields is dedicated to offering you the best retail experience. You can shop sporting goods, hunting and fishing gear, clothing, and so much more at Shields of Minot and Bismarck. And a bonus from Santa Claus and my in-laws this year. Combined, I ended up with like $200 of gift cards from Shields. You can't beat it. Oh, jeez. You got to thank them so much at Shields. They bring you the pregame here tonight where the Bearcats and Knights come together in the nightcap of the Dale Brown Classic here at the MSU Dome. We'll bring in my broadcast partner, Mr. Perry Hansen, right now. And Perry, you look at days like today, and a day like tomorrow where the Hoopster Classic will take place in a tournament that you put on, and obviously you have a big foothold in this Dale Brown Classic as well. Overall, for Class B basketball fans in North Dakota, it doesn't get much better than this. Obviously, the state being region tournament time, but this is the next best thing, and today really has not disappointed. No, and I, I think if you're just a fan in general of basketball, um, what a great thing to just come out and watch. A lot of ranked teams. Uh, Brother-in-law Scott does a great job of inviting teams in every year and a lot of them are sometimes the same programs but uh, those programs are awfully good but uh, getting to watch a North Star team here that a lot of people probably wouldn't be able to have a chance to see they've got a Hagler kid there that is outstanding I'm looking forward to watching him play and you got a local school here in our Redeemers and the young team there they're just trying to rebuild a little bit so yeah it's just cool to see a lot of teams and uh, a couple more ranked ones coming in tomorrow with Bishop Ryan and and um, we'll see some good matchups tomorrow as well. It should be a lot of fun here uh, in the nightcap of the Dale Brown Classic. Here's a quick recap of what we've seen today at the MSU Dome. Action started this morning at 11 o'clock this morning. We had Todd Domries and Chuck Claremont on the air for the first one today. We're Stanley down to TGU 60 to 30. It was West Hope Newburgh, the Sioux, that lost to the Bison from Hayes at 51 49. Velvet St. John was the game of the day. St. John, the Woodchucks, receiving votes against the Defending state champions for 11B high school football, the Velvet Aggies. That one went into two overtimes today. 74-67, the Aggies from Velva had the upper hand. It was the number one ranked team in all of North Dakota. The four wins, Minnewaukee, uh, four wins Minnewaukee taking down Dickinson Trinity, who's receiving votes in the polls right now. And 51 to 40 was the score there. Four wins did not disappoint. Beulah down Palmer's length, 71 to 60. Number four, Shiloh just got done defeating number seven Thompson 73 65 any big surprises here today in your mind Perry no uh, you know Scott and I were on air here this last couple games and we talked about the youth that we've seen here it's uh, a lot of young teams and uh, here's a couple more here that are gonna you know sport out some younger kids again playing it's nice to see that youth uh, in the in the in the basketball world you know Velva's got kind of a little bit older team but uh, other than that uh, everybody's pretty young so I've, I've been impressed so far. When we come back we're going to have our official introductions here tonight. We'll look at some of the youth that's in this lineup here tonight as the Knights from Ari Deemers on a region six take on the Bearcats from North Star on a region number four. Eric Schaefer's got the official introductions when we come back to the Shields pregame show here at the MSU Dome. The Knights and Bearcats with a combined 4-1 record on the year come together tonight at the MSU Dome for the final game of the Dale Brown Classic. Tomorrow, the Hoopster Classic and Van Den Holiday Tournament can be seen on the PSP Network as well. Well, we're going to send it down to Eric Schaefer for the official introductions for the Bearcats and the Knights here at the MSU Dome. Third forward, a six-foot-four-inch junior, Number zero, Carson Simon. 
And another forward, also a six foot four inch junior, number three, Parker Simon. At guard, a six foot four inch junior, number four, Dane Hackler. At forward, a six foot three inch freshman, number 12, Hunter Hackler. And at guard, a six foot senior, number 14, Owen Curdy. The Bearcats are coached by Jesse Hope and assisted by Jake Hangler and Aaron Pearl. And right now, the home team on the scoreboard, the Arden Evers Christian School Knights. Starting at a guard, a six foot one inch senior, number three, Noah Erickson. Also at a guard, a five foot nine inch senior, number five. Center, a six foot three inch sophomore, number 10, James Weekly. At forward, a five foot ten inch freshman, number 23, Colin Swenson. And at center, a six foot four inch sophomore, number 33, Andrew. Well, there you have it, the official introductions tonight as we get sent and ready for the seventh and final matchup here of the Dale Brown Classic 2022 edition. Dick Holberg alongside of Perry Hansen from the Hoopster Magazine. It will be North Star. The Bearcats in white, uh, excuse me, in red with black trimmed out here tonight. It's the Knights from Ari Demers in their white trimmed out in blue and silver. What can we expect in this showdown here tonight, Perry? Well, I think we could have two evenly matched teams. Uh, I expect this to be a pretty good game. I'm, like I said, I'm really looking forward to watching the Hagler kid play, and I know uh, Couple nice players from our Redeemers as well. So this, I expect this to be a hard fought game. No one, no way Erickson off the opening tip tonight. Got it to Francis. He's gonna crash down towards the baseline. And Francis goes to work here for the Knights. Kicks it up top. Here's the shot on the opening possession of the ball game. That one missed for Jace Weekly. And we go back the other way now for the Bearcats who go to work setting it up here is Carson Simon. Simon kicked it upstairs here is Comes away now to Dan Hagler. This is a player that we talked about as one of the tops in North Dakota coming back after he averaged over 20 per night last year. His average coming into tonight, Perry, well, 35 isn't too shabby in the first three nights that they played on the season. And he's had some highlight reel dunks too. And so, yeah, I kind of look forward to watching him so early in the year with these numbers. Knights with possession here. Weekly kicks it up top. Here's a move and a jump shot that rattles in and out from the elbow. Ball's going to be picked up by the Bearcats. Nobody on the board yet to the BNC National Bank scoreboard. Here's the opportunity for the Knights now as they bring it back to the other end of the floor, taking it down up off the glass, not getting the friendly roll there as it rolls out from Colton Francis. And the Bearcats set it up here as they go to work again with under seven to play in this first quarter of basketball. Well, we talked about it earlier on here today off the air. And you may have talked about it with Scott Woodman in the previous two broadcasts here tonight, Perry, but these teams haven't had a whole lot of reps and gameplay on the season due to Mother Nature, just the way that the season's played out. It seems like today some gas has kind of come out of the tank pretty early on for most of the teams that we've seen here today at the Dale Brown Classic. And we're off to a slow start here. We're a couple minutes in. We don't have a basket. Both teams kind of look tired already. and. I've seen that in all seven games today. I've seen a lot of hands on the hips and knees. Well, I've got energy here tonight. I don't know how I've yeah, been able to muster here all day long. He's doing a great job. It's been a fun day here at the Dale Brown Classic. Always get up for a matchup with North Star and Ari Demers, region number four, region number six on the line here tonight. The Bearcats coached by Jesse Vaughn. He's in his eighth year. How about the name Brock Teets on the other side? Third year with the Knights, and he's a name that's been inside of region number six and district number 12. Kind of a legend up in these parts here in the Magic City area. 
That ball goes up from the left hand an attempt from weekly no good outside three attempt coming can we crack the ice here tonight not yet weekly another attempt side of the rim board pulled out of there the Bearcats have it again and it's Parker Simon that dribbles it up across the timeline with the help of Dane Hagler and Hagler's got it here kicks it over to the near side off to Curdy. Curdy drops it in down low Bearcats go to work. Our Redeemer's playing a little bit of zone here early in the year, and I can guarantee you coaches have not worked on zone offense a whole lot. There's a jump shot, three-pointer, count it there. That one falls in for Owen Curdy. He's got the first points of the ball game, a three-pointer, and the Bearcats are on top of this one by a score of 3 nothing. Under five to play here in this first quarter basketball. BNC National Bank scoreboard has the Bearcats on top. And they changed the scoreboard on us here tonight, so we do apologize. We'll get that fixed for you folks in just a quick moment. Three attempt from Ari Demers off the mark as that one airballed on out of there from Noah Erickson. And it's 3 0 Bearcats leading Ari Demers here like, on the BNC National Bank scoreboard. It's like Brent Dilley and uh, Garris Westland checking in for North Star. If you're wondering where North Star is, it's a combination of Kandu and Tolna area. They've been a co-op for quite some time. Tomorrow you got North Perry coming in, brand new co-op there. That's uh, Rolla and Roulette. They had a really good football season, so they got some decent athletes. They're combined for the first time. The co-ops and the way that that is shaped up across North Dakota always interesting with the new proposal for the three class system. We'll see a bunch of that go away is probably what we'll end up seeing. Is that right, Perry? I, I think you'll still see a lot of the co-ops. So really, the co-ops aren't really affecting the uh, the way the classes are set up at the current system, but we'll see uh, You know, with the proposal the way it is. I think they got that separated out pretty good. They don't need to go down that political highway right now on the no. pros and cons of whether you're for or against that, but it's in the works as we speak right now. Yeah, we could spend a whole podcast on that. Yeah, we certainly could. Great job on the Jordan Wilhelm podcast, by the way. It was fun to listen I enjoy to you. that, yeah. Talk to Jordan Wilhelm about your time yeah, with the neighbors on the basket. Erickson gets on the board. Noah Erickson's got his first points of the ball game. Boy. Bucket and the foul on the other side as Hagler goes up and he scores his first two of the ball game and he's got a chance at the old fashioned three point play coming up here. And Hagler one for one from the free throw line he gets that one to fall. Four point lead here for the Bearcats on the R.A. Deemers Knights. North, North Star's playing a little 1 3 1, kind of a half court trap right around the half court line. Don't see that very often. They drop back into it in the half court defense as well. I will, I will guarantee Coach Teets has not worked on that a whole lot, not this early in the season. Bearcats with possession. Nice opportunity there on the give and go from underneath. Parker Simon had the chance on the reverse but he was unable to finish under three to play here in the first quarter Knights with possession again as they set it up and work it around young basketball team at R.A. Demers a team that is outsized for the most part except for the big weekly kid in the middle here that you see here in 22 23 but that really has kind of been the name of the game. We could touch on that just a bit more when we come back here to the MSU Dome. 6 2 on the BNC National Bank scoreboard. Bearcats from North Star are on top of the Knights from Ari Demers here at the Dale Brown Classic. This broadcast on the PSP Network is proudly brought to you by.
back to the MSU Dome for the Dale Brown Classic. Game number seven of seven here today. And game number seven of 26 this week on the PSP Network. It will be a busy one. That's for Class B basketball, by the way. Then we've got more Class A coming your way this weekend as Minot High goes down to Legacy on a makeup matchup on New Year's Day after Mother Nature's wreaks some havoc here in this 22 at the tail end of the 22 season. You ever seen anything like that, Perry, uh, with how bad she's played I, with us this year? I coached for 30 some years and I just have never seen this many cancellations in one week. Give it go on their end of the floor and up and in with it. Westland's got his first two points of the ball game. He comes in off the bench, averaging 3.3 per nine through the first three. He scores, puts the lead to eight to two. North Star on top, and then Ari Deemers tosses the ball away. And you know that Brock Teets can't be satisfied right now with the way that Ari Deemers has handled the basketball. Well, and it, it, North Star, if, if for those of you, I mean, you're watching here, if they're getting makes, after makes, they're going 1 3 1. After misses, they're playing man to man, so it's probably got our redeemers a little off balance. Pretty good look there for Hagler. Jason Sharpie with the call underneath the rack. Second personal, second team foul on our redeemers that will put the Bearcats to the free throw line. Hagler again, he's one for one from here in the early portion of the ball game. Check it in for the Bearcats, number 12, Hunter Hagler. Number that one doesn't fall. And for the Knights, number three, Noah Erickson, number 23, Owen Swenson, number 10, Chase Dinkler. That's Swenson and uh, Er, uh, Erickson checking back in for our redeemers. Do apologize. We've got a. We know our scoring system is down right now. I'm getting it fixed for you folks here on the PSP network. But look for the. Oh, got a foul on the rebound. Looks like it's going to go on. Got, officials are going to get together here. Come out of this with. Uh, okay, foul number 12, Hunter Hagler. That's his second. And second team foul, and they'll get the ball out of bounds. So, because of the second foul, they got to bring in a sub, Darren Parker Simon, coming back in. BNC Bank scoreboard reads 9 2, Bearcats on top. Ari Deemer's having some trouble with. Accuracy early on here with 83 seconds remaining in our first quarter of basketball. Egler charged with the foul, first personal third team foul here on the Bearcats. Well, you remember back to 2011, and Perry, you're probably a guy that does remember that time, but you look back to 2011, that was a good year for North Star as the state champions in North Dakota. They defeated. Grafted 63-55 in that matchup to win the state championship back in 2011. If I remember right, they were led by a Lindo kid at the post and probably another Hagler. It seems like I mentioned this one time on Woody's show. I think the Haglers have been playing up there for either on the girls or boys for a long time. Well, Jacob Hagler, 2,828 points all time in his career. There's a dropped in three pointers. It's dropped out as Bryce Fibeto nails it from downtown. And Ari Deemer's back within four. And then they let Narstar run the length of the court without anybody there and end up falling. And Simon here has got a chance for an end one. Parker Simon's got two more here in the ball game. I should say his first two here in the ball game. Chance for the old fashioned three point play and Simon sinks that one nothing but then Simon sits right now with three points. It's a seven point lead here for the Bearcats. Yeah you talk about 
2,828 points. Number eight all-time for Class B scores in North Dakota. That was yeah. Jacob Hagler right at the rack. Well, they got a sister, I believe, Danielle, who's, I think, a senior this year. She's got a lot of points as well. Not easy to crawl into that top 10 all time at Class B basketball in North Dakota when it comes to scoring points. You go through that list and you know the Hoopster magazine and your publication the Hoopster you do such a great job with that. I mean for a guy like me that not only just you know lives and breathes athletics and sports but somebody that also works in this industry to be able to find that information out and use those bits of knowledge it really is something special and going through that book I'm always amazed at most of the records and stats in there of how long those are going to stay in place for a lot of those people and to stay in the top eight I would guess that Hagler is going to be in the book probably for the rest of time. Kid, right. Kids cut him down around four seconds. Now three, now two at the horn. There he's will be a foul. Whistle here. He's going to get free throws. Coming is underneath the rack there, getting the arm up. Jace Weekly. Bryce Fibetto that actually gets charged with it. Do you have any records of that book? Probably if they had a turnover one, I probably would make that <laughs> one. But uh, I played for my dad back in the day. and. I always tell people I was a lot better. I just couldn't get along with the coach, but uh, we, we, my dad and I got a good chuckle out of that. I wasn't blessed with a lot of speed back in the day, so I could shoot a little bit. Man, Dan. Man, Dan high, Mandan high school. Man, high school, yeah. Second one, no good there for Hagler. That's how our first quarter comes to an end. Seven points, the difference. Region number four on top of region number six of this one. North Star leads our redeemers on the BNC National Bank scoreboard. It's 12 5 with one quarter complete. North Dakota High School basketball, the Dale Brown Classic, live from the MSU Dome right here on the PSP Network. Remember where this goes? I don't know. Are you sure it wasn't clicking and not a zoo, zoo? I think your quash litter bell stuck. Do you even have insurance? If we soak it, soak, it should be good. <laughs> no matter how much you know or don't know about your vehicle, trust the experts at Tires Plus. Real answers from real mechanics. Inspections are free to ensure your vehicle is always in peak condition. Thinking service, think Tires Plus. Well, the newly renovated MSU Dome here in Mina, North Dakota. Primetime facility for high school and college basketball in our state. And so many great memories inside of this place and some memories being made today at holiday time, at the holiday time of the Dale Brown Classic as some of the top teams and players from North Dakota got together today for the Dale Brown Classic. Nick Holberg and Perry Hansen, Perry from the Hoopster Magazine on the call with Yours truly here tonight. Where would you rate the MSU Dome compared to some of the others? Obviously, the Civic Center's up there, and one of the best. But the Dome, where does it rank in North Dakota for you? You know, with the with the improvements they made, you find a you know a much nicer place to watch a game. Uh, with the mezzanine now on that first floor like that, you see a lot of people sitting out on the on the edges up there. I think you know I've always kind of liked the Civic Center, and what's nice about that site is. You got the two gyms right in there at the same time so you can host like the WGA and you know we get to the three class system that's probably going to be a place that's going to get used because you can just walk across the hall and see games. So but I really like watching games in here with the new improvements they've done a lot I, I went to college here this is. The new seats everything is just nice in here. Yeah if you haven't been into the MSU dome since they took that. Level two, if you will, the middle level of this dome, it took the cement walls down and created into it bar seating. You really have missed out on something special. There's Hagler. He's got his six points of the ball game. And the lead continues to grow here for North Star. They lead 14 5 on the BNC National Bank scoreboard. Big turnover there as it's taken away off the steal. Jump shot. Can't get it to fall. Rebound comes away to Francis, who started that play. Corrected it was Noah Erickson, rather. Ball's going to come back up top as 
Erickson's going to get it again. He calls out the shot, sends it into Francis from the elbow, kicks it outside. Three attempt coming off the side of the iron there for Colin Swenson. Ball's picked up here by the Bearcats, so they're going to go to work on it. Dished off outside the arc, three attempt. That would look good from here. Just a little bit short rebound, pulled down by North Star. Now Ari Demers comes away with it. Out of there came Andrew Eby, and Eby moved it forward. Another three attempt coming. This one off the mark again. Colin Swenson unable to net that one coming into tonight. He's averaged 11.5 through the two games that Ari Demers has had, one and one on the season. North, yes. North Star with a full time out here. He's going to call a stop of the play from Jesse Bones. 14 5 on the BNC National Bank scoreboard. It's North Dakota High School basketball. The Dale Brown Classic from the MSU Dome. The Bearcats lead the Knights. Come from Vibetta Orthodontics. Vibetta Orthodontics is a certified Invisalign provider. Invisalign fits your budget and your lifestyle. Braces for children, teens, and adults with affordable monthly payments. Schedule your complimentary consultation and exam by logging on to vibettoorthodontics.com or by calling 701-839-6010. It's water. Boom. Agent Winston Otter. He's been called the human sponge. Nineteen and five last year for the Bearcats from North Star. Finished first in the district. Fourth inside of region number four. They look to get back to the state tournament coming out of that super region this year. There's a shot that is off the mark on that attempt. However, the ball will come back to the Knights as they'll inbound back underneath their own hoop. Yeah, and a lot of people probably don't realize they this is their first year. Region four is going to the super region now. So we're just down to six and eight is the only two left that are not super regions anymore. Well, both of the regions that are on display here tonight. Region number six for our redeemers. There's some teams that are ranked inside the top 10. Delax Burlington in region number six. And of course, Bishop Ryan, the Lions, who made a trip again last year to the state tournament. But how would you like to play in region number four with teams like Four Winds and St. John? This year, maybe not Langdon, the team to beat, but in the years past, they certainly have been. Anytime you have to play the Indians ranked number one, you know you're going to be in for some dogfights. Uh, they, they've been here a lot of years. Three attempt, front of the rib, no good. I'm not sure where they fall into that, if they fall into the upper group or second group, or if they stay in the lower group. I'm not sure, I guess I'd have to research that, but probably some teams that are hoping they go up. Yeah, I'm, four wins, I believe, will be in that middle group, according to the what numbers. I've, okay, well, that, that would make, yep. Yeah. What I've seen in red. That middle group of that three class system is going to be some entertaining basketball. There's no doubt about that. Shot clock down to six. Shot gets off here. It's physical down and deep. And we'll have a stop of the play. There is a foul called underneath the rack. This is going to be charged on who? It's going to be two shots coming here. Fall is on number three of the Knights. That's oh, Noah Erickson. It looked to me like two North Star kids battled for the same rebound, and that's going to be Erickson's second foul. That could become a factor later on. Lance McKeefe talking to Brock Teets right now. That right underneath the Dale Brown Classic logo on your screen. Lance McKeefe, very known referee in this part of North Dakota, well known around the state as well. He was selected as the official of the year just within the last two years. And I go ahead. I was just going to say one of the good ones, of course. Yep, absolutely. And I should add region three is also not a super region this year, too. So thanks to the uh, text message I just received. So I appreciate that from Coach uh, Jangula down there at Linton. Francis has his first points of the ball game coming here in the second quarter. I maybe could have scored that one. He had a clear lane right to the rack and he put it up and in off the left hand. 
Bearcats working around up top. Bisbee calls the shots from here. Sends it in. They go back out. Shot clock's down to 12. Bisbee's got it again. Works it to the top of the key. Over to the near side now for Simon. Back to Bisbee. They need to shoot. Down to two seconds on the shot clock. Nothing but net drain from downtown. Parker Simon has six. Make it seven now in the ball game. Three of the first quarter. He's got a three-pointer and one from the free throw line here in the second. And it's 18-7 on the BNC National Bank scoreboard as North Star in the driver's seat to dominating a bit early on here tonight. Yeah. Great possession for them the last time. Really long one and ended up with a three. That's when you're trying to defend that, that just gets it starts to wear wear you down. Early on in the season, some of these opportunities, look at that feed down it deep. Bisbee's gonna finish it as that one was sent down low for Simon. He's gonna get the assist on it. And Bisbee's got his first points of the contest. Sophomore Charles Bisbee on the board. Lights with possession here. Talk about these matchups early in the year, especially against some top tier opponents from across the state of North Dakota. It gives you an opportunity to work on some things early on of the season, but I think it's probably fair to say that everybody comes into the MSU Dome with the same goal in mind, and that's coming out of here with the wins. Absolutely. A lot of bragging rights on the line. Ball's taken away, Bisbee's got it again. Baseline kicks it up top. Their cats are going to slow it down again. Three and all on the season for them, and playing like a well-oiled machine right now. That shot's off the mark, however, for Parker Simon. Simon averaged 10 points per night last year. Right now, averaging just under seven. Weekly's up and in, and Chase Weekly's got his first points of the contest, according to my tallies here tonight. Yep, that's his first two. They needed a bucket. They, uh, Went a little dry there. North Star was starting to get away from him. Francis dribbles through the lane. Kicks it up top. Stopping, popping, three, no good. Off the mark there from Noah Erickson. It's a good look seeing how North Star's walking the ball up. They, they, everybody just looks tired right now out here. Hands on the knees, hands on the hips. Slow possessions. Not only have games been postponed to the early portion of the season, but when school's postponed, you're unable to practice as well, and I think that's got to be a factor, especially right around the holiday time. You add that into the mix as well, and maybe that conditioning not quite there yet early on of the season. Rolls off the rim, rebound high up off the glass, but a foul's going to come here, and drawing that one is Hunter Hagler. Another one. Hagler. Six foot three, ninth grader goes to the free throw line. 11 point lead here for the Bearcats. Trying to add to it is the freshman. That was pure. Well, you're right. There's plenty of substitutions coming into the ball game on both sides now yeah. as we near the end of our first half and get closer to that premier chiropractic intermission reports. Here at the serve pro free throw line, Hunter Hagler, serve pro with 24 7 emergency service. Train technicians, advanced technology, fire and water, cleanup and respiration. It's serve pro. I've used it before, serve pro, and that serve, for, serve pro free throw line. Active early on here tonight for the Bearcats, and they extend the lead to 22 9 on the BNC National Bank scoreboard. Full court presses on here from the Bearcats. Knights having trouble there. And back the other way with the break. This is Simon. Missed it right there to clean it up. However, putting it home, Dane Hagler adds two more. Oh, boy. Our Redeemers is really struggling. And oh boy, that's an athletic looking play there. And he went down hard. We'll see if he gets up here. That's Dane Hagler again. And a player that was all district and all region last year. He goes down and crashes in hard. Hagler four in the first quarter. He's got himself six here in the second quarter and a chance now for his 11th point so far here in the ball game as he goes to the line at the serve pro free throw stripe for the old fashioned three point play. That was a hard hit. Yeah, he went down pretty hard there. You hate to see that. 
he's back up and knocks down knocks down his free throw. So our redeemer is really struggling here against the pressure. 27-9 right now. Ari Deemer's trailing in this ball game. And the Bearcats not taking their foot off the accelerator right now. Here's a three attempt. Off the mark. Francis had the rebound on the offensive board. Here comes Hagler back the other way. Two on three, nice laying play. it up and in. And Carson Simons got his first points of the contest. And North Star, it keeps changing the look on the type of pressure it is, which is really confusing our redeemers. They're making adjustments for one, and then all of a sudden it's a different one, so. And when you got a young team, that's this time of year, that's gone. That's awfully hard. Another for forced turnover there as the Knights toss that one out of bounds. Well, we talk about Dane Hagler coming in here tonight, Perry, and a kid that averaged 20 last year per night. Talk about him being all district and all region, but one of the most impressive stats for him, 125 assists last year. That's number two coming back at Class B basketball. At the buzzer, here's the attempt. Ooh. In then out. And we're through one half of basketball here on the PSP Network in game number seven today in the showdown, and it's all North Star early on in this one. Time for our premier chiropractic halftime report. Premier Chiropractic focused on improving the overall health of Minot and the surrounding areas through the most cutting edge advances in natural health care today. Find them online, Premier Chiropractic ND.com. Well, when we come back, we'll break down our first half numbers. Talk a little X's and O's with Perry Hansen as well and what Ari Deemers could do to try to combat the Bearcats offense and defensive pressure that they put on early on here tonight at the break 29 9 a 20 point lead for North Stone on the BNC National Bank scoreboard. The magic of what we do really comes down to combining different aspects of patient care. Here at Premier Chiropractic, we love combining soft tissue work, the adjustment, and exercises together. We found that this gets the best results for our patients. We have three chiropractors to fit the needs of the entire family, a rehab area for our exercises and equipment for any athlete to improve performance. Give us a call and we will get you back to doing what you love. Finding the right bank can be transformative for your small business. The best bank for your business will offer competitive fees and so much more. At BNC National Bank, our team is proud to offer you a helpful, supportive, above and beyond banking relationship. Starting to stress about the complexities of qualifying for a small business loan? BNC can guide you through the process with much less stress and likely far more success. Speak to one of our team members today. The right way to top a sub is with real red wine vinegar made from red grapes and no food coloring. And the right way to film it is in slow motion, obviously. Because authentic ingredients make a sub above. It's water. Boom. Agent Winston Otter. He's been called the human sponge. Our stylists are trained to understand the uh, nuances of cutting men's hair. Less pomp, more adore, huh, Brittany? <laughs> Square face, wavy hair. Mid fade with a textured top. Finish it off with a hard part and taper that neckline, coach. Cowlick, what's the move? It's not just all about hard work here. Hit off! Seven, pressure, points, yeah! It takes expertise to be a sport clip stylist. Here? Ah. That's a spot! Right there, huh? Sport clips, the pros in men's hair. The magic of what we do really comes down to combining different aspects of patient care. Here at Premier Chiropractic, we love combining soft tissue work, the adjustment, and exercises together. 
we found that this gets the best results for our patients. We have three chiropractors to fit the needs of the entire family, a rehab area for our exercises and equipment for any athlete to improve performance. Give us a call and we will get you back to doing what you love. Are you moving your business or your home across the town or across the country? We know it can be stressful. To ensure your possessions arrive on time, intact and on budget, make your move with Jobbers Moving and Storage. Jobbers can help you with every aspect of your move. With our efficient step-by-step approach to move management, we can tailor a plan to suit your needs and schedule. With locations in Bismarck, Fargo, Minot, and Aberdeen, Jobbers Moving and Storage is your choice. Visit JobbersWarehouse.com. It's Jobbers Moving and Storage. I'm a grateful person on a lot of levels. I've been given so many great opportunities. But most of all, even as a little kid, I was taught a set of values. Like tools for life, hard work, responsibility, and the key to making it all work, commitment. First Western Bank and Trust. You can bank on us. Ackerman Svold, your neighbors, friends, and family who are working for you. The local team with local availability and accountability for all of your engineering, architecture, environmental, transportation, and land development needs. Your project can rely on Ackerman Svold. Find them online at ackermansfold.com. When you start your project, talk with Ackerman Surveying and Associates. Our experienced surveying team guides you in the right direction with planning, planning, and lot and boundary surveys. The trusted name in land surveying, the trusted name in architecture and engineering is Ackerman Survey and Ackerman Svold. Find them at ackermansvold.com. What you're witnessing actually happens. This is a sad story about bad math. Bad math? Does your online company include mounting? You can't beat the online pricing. When you add the mounting, the shipping, and all the extras, it's just simple math. We guarantee the lowest prices. Our plus plan is simply better, a less expensive way to buy tires. Thinking tires, think tires plus. Bearcats lead the Knights at the end of one half of basketball. Welcome into our Premier Chiropractic Halftime Report. Premier Chiropractic ND.com. Premier Chiropractic, our family's choice for chiropractic care in the Magic City. You can find Dr. Kirk Mason, Dr. Cody Haugen, and Dr. Becky Perry Dombries at Premier Chiropractic ND.com. They've got you covered at Premier Chiropractic. Well, that first half of basketball belonged to North Star. They lead 29-9 through two quarters of play here tonight. And we'll go through our first half stats in just a moment. But when you look at this opening round of the uh, opening round of our winter and holiday tournament special, if you will, this one, the biggest blow away that we've had so far yet. What will it take for our redeemers here in this second half to come back in and that would be my first question out of the gate for you here in this intermission report does Ari Demers have an answer for the Bearcats now in the locker room after the first half of basketball well, I know one of the things is uh, if they can get the ball advanced a little bit further against the pressure with that first pass and if they can't then they got to get a guy behind all the time so that they always have a safe pass an outlet pass rather than trying to throw it through crowds or hit cutters sometimes North Star is doing a good job matching up to the cutters but you know it, it's it's just tough when you got a young team and I without without getting a lot of practices in it's got to I'd I'd almost uh, I'd be pulling my hair out uh, probably or it'd be grayer than it already is after that if I had a young team and had had to face something like this this early in the year but um, but we'll see here. They got to get some shots knocked down too. Obviously, with only nine points, it's tough. But 29 on the other side here for the Bearcats and their offense. Are you impressed with North Star here tonight? Yeah, they do. They do a lot of little things well and uh, create a lot of points off the turnovers they've been getting from our Redeemers. You know, if you just took this to a half court versus half court, 
probably wouldn't be a whole lot of difference. There might be a 14-9 or 16-9 type game, but uh, they've gotten quite a few points, I think, off the turnovers or created good looks from that turnover. So, um, yeah, not a, not a real deep team, but uh, got some good athletes. And they're, they're playing well. Time for our first half stats brought to you by Planet Pizza. They've been proudly serving the Magic City for over 25 years. Largest laser tag playground in the region with mouth-watering pizza and chicken wings. Don't forget about their 30-inch galactic pizza that is out of this world. You know, call and order now at 852-1700. Planet Pizza brings you the first half stats. And with those numbers, here's Perry Hansen. Well, I had, uh, for North Star, I had Hagler with 13. Um, and then Parker Simon followed with seven. And then they got a host of kids around that two and three. Carson Simon had two, Garrett Westland had two, Charles Bisbee had two, Hunter Hagler had two, and I got Owen Curdy for three, giving them a total of 29. And then for uh, our Redeemers, uh, we had four kids make it to the scoring column. They had Noah Erickson with two, Bryce Vibetto hit a three, so he has three, Colton Francis and Jace Weekly each chipping in with two for a total of nine. And yeah, we're at 22 seconds here. I'm looking at the clock and our Redeemers either wasn't notified that uh, the three minutes was up or Coach Teets is having a little extra time with them at halftime. Well, at a certain point here, they do start to flirt with a technical foul probably though too however right well I would think so um, I'm seeing the uh, referees are indicating did you tell them and so maybe they're going to run up here and get them real quick but you know you, you speaking of Brock Teets I, I, I was in that WDA for so long I coached against him he was a nice player for mine and high it's good to see young kids that that you know you you coached against you know, turn around and give something back to profession in a coaching standpoint well, and he's done such a great job inside of region number six and a guy that's well respected around these parts for sure. Ari Deemer still nowhere to be found on the floor yet. Jason Sharpie's got the basketball in his hand waiting to throw the ball up here. Now the Knights come back up onto the floor. And as they do, we'll take a look at our Class B basketball media poll here that came out just yesterday. Four wins at the top of the list. Central Cass. Bishop Ryan, Shiloh, Bowman County, Grafton, Thompson, North Star, Hillsborough Central Valley, and North Border uh, listed on this list right now. And any real surprises here when you look at this, Perry? A little bit. Um, I'm surprised Hillsborough's maybe ranked as high as they are. I know they had kind of a, they had quite a few kids graduate, but Colts Rodfold just does a, such a good job. They're in that tough region, region two. I mean, Thompson's good out there. North Border's good out there. Hillsborough's always good by the end of the year. Um, Grafton, um, we got a lot of a lot of good teams out that way. I know uh, I have a Twitter and a Facebook page. Looks like we got a minute or two here. I got a Twitter and a Facebook page, and we post our polls. We post the media polls each week. And then on the left-hand side of my column, I post the Hoopster preseason ranking in the top 40 or indoor Class A, top 16. But I get a lot of ribbing for that because <laughs> currently I got like a team and it's 28th in my preseason in the top 10. But that's what's great about Class B basketball. Well, you never know what's going to happen and who's going to emerge. That's the thing about high school sports when you look at players that really the uh, – the reality of it is girl spurts and how many kids are putting the time in over the summer and who's throwing the hay bills at some of these places and who's getting big and who's put the work in. Well, with all the weather delays and everything, I got to find it's hard to believe to really have something to draw on with some of the teams. And we've had some, Thompson was supposed to play four wins. That was a miss, you know, a match that a lot of people like to watch. A redeemer switch into his own defense here, maybe try to slow North Star down a little bit. Well, they are. Uh, actually, they're going what we call, that uh, didn't work, but uh, they're actually running what we call a box and chase. And so what they're doing is they're in a box set with four guys, and then they chase Hagler everywhere he goes. So he gets man-to-man -man coverage. And you'll see that quite often when one team has a really solid player. Three attempt coming here. There's some good start. Juice for Noah Erickson. He hits from downtown. He's got five down to lead. Ari Deemers 
in the contest. It's 31-12 on the BNC National Bank scoreboard. Big Hill still to climb here for the Knights. Inside, turnaround, left-hander no good. That one blocked in deep by Andrew Eby. Here come the Knights again on the quick break. Stopping for three off the window. That one's in. I don't know if Colton Francis called it or not, but he's going to count it. Five points for him, another three-pointer, and back-to-back -back threes with a stop in between for the Knights. Put some life into their bench. Yes, and then uh, now they're in a 2-3 zone, and but just maybe it was just because the kid did the wrong thing. He followed Hagler all the way through the zone, which led me to believe it was box and chase. How about that give and go play down oh, in nice deep there. out of the fingertips for Dan Hagler and Hagler's got a game high 15 as he puts it off the window and scores. There's that guy behind that I was talking about and they got a much then they got a release down here on this end so nice job so far from uh, coach Teets. EB's going to put home his first two points of the ball game. 33-17, Bearcats on top. The number eight ranked team in North Dakota. Dominated in the first half, 20-point lead at the end of one and fouled inside was Hagler. He went up after the give and go play again as they found something special down in deep to free him with the open look underneath the rack. And open might be used a little lightly there as he was whacked as he went up for it. His first foul here on on uh, Jason Weekly. Hagler adds another one. 16 now for him. Brought that up earlier in the first half, and then we went to our first half break in the Premier Chiropractic halftime report, two for two here in the second half from the line. 125 assists for a kid that scored 35 threes last year. He had 78 steals to his resume. And had 20 per night, that 125 assists really goes to show you that he is a team first attitude kind of a guy. And when you have your leading scorer that isn't afraid to dish it out a little bit, certainly helps the cause across the board for the crew that Jesse Voigt is in charge of here for North Star. Uh, great job. You know, you got the arc rule now, and if you watch, if we get the replay here, he is one step outside that that circle and taking a charge. That's that's pretty impressive. Well, he's got the, he's got the ball in his hands a lot. So yeah, when he get you got 125 assists. Uh, if I'm playing with him again, like I said in the last game, I'd, I'd I'd pretty much try to get myself open and get myself a pretty good look every time down. He's going to draw two to three when he drives. Hagler here sends it inside off the window is. up and in and another one there. Carson Simon with four. A lot of kids would just shoot that shot right there. Very nice find by him. Touch on the arc rule just for a quick moment underneath the rack. A lot of people maybe not exactly up to date with it. Well, if, if you look on the floor, you see a kind of a half circle right there in the lane. And uh, if you're the primary defender and you are in that arc, it's going to be a block every single time. And and even a, the secondary defender part gets a little confusing, but um, they even argue a little bit about the primary defender, but it's it's for safety. And it just made it a lot easier for officials. Um, a lot of times we had a lot of, a lot of plays where a kid would drive into the lane and a kid would be standing right underneath the hoop taking a charge. Well, where's he supposed to land um, from a safety standpoint? Parker Simon went down awkwardly. Kind of limping a little bit here. Hopefully he's going to be okay. Grabbing that left ankle here, Perry. And he goes to the free throw line. Jesse Volt, the head coach here at year number eight, talking with Lance McKeefe right now on whether or not number three in red here, Simon's going to be able to take the shot. He will. Obviously bothering him pretty good there. Simon's going to yeah. put it through the hoop. He's probably going to have to come out here. I'd... Coach is going to let him shoot the free throw, though. But he's got to make it. If he misses, he's got to stay. Unless Lance decides to. Yep. Okay, that's the right thing to do by an official. I, I, I like that. That's, uh... Into the ball game here for the Bearcats, Cubs, Hunter Hagler. 
Out checks Parker Simon. Hopefully he's all right. 38-17 on the BNC National Bank scoreboard. It's Bearcats and Knights here tonight to the final game of the seven we've had on the docket at the Dale Brown Classic. It's been all Bearcats. They look to add more now. The ball's going to be taken there by E.B. as he pulls down the board. The Knights go to work on offense. Big thanks again to the UPS store tonight, bringing you the showdown of the PSP Network. UPS store located in the Marketplace Foods Plaza on South Broadway. A minor big block from E.B. He went up and slammed the door. Time left in the ball game, but the Knights need some points and some possessions that they can come out on the positive end here with some stops on the That's other side of the play. floor. There's one right there and up and through the rack. For the points was Noah Erickson, and Erickson's got five here in the second half, seven total. He leads the way for our Redeemers. Inside look here for the Bearcats. Step back, this one off the mark. Bounced around off the rim there for Hunter Hagler. We're gonna have a push fall on Dilly. Big thanks again to Roger Ward moving and storage. They've been proudly helping the region with their moving and storage needs since 1942. It's a long time. Find them online, rogerwardmovingandstorage.com. Schedule a move or find a quote. It's Roger Ward moving and storage. They bring you the ball game here tonight along with our friends at Northern Plains Heating and Air. Northern Plains Heating and Air has over 25 years of experience. As your heating and air experts, find them online, northern-planes.com. Well, some pressure here from the Knights on the other side of the floor as Vibeto causing some havoc and some issues there for the Bearcats, but they've got real estate and time now, but a timeout coming here. Or no, that's not the call. I do apologize. Yeah, second violation. Uh, we had, they got the rebound and Right now, as for officials, they've kind of made it easy. You just look at the shot clock, and once it hits 25, you can blow your whistle. It's no longer basic. Well, you still kind of have the hand count, but officials now with three men are taught to look up at the scoreboard. Here's Mike Pro Beto up top. It's probably better than fans don't have to scream at them when it's at 24 and they don't have 10. And Nothing but net there as that one dropped in for three. No, Erickson's got his second three-pointer here in the second half. Got eight here in the second half. 229 ticks away here in the third quarter. Inside, another stop from EB. The Knights have possession, fighting their way back into this ball game. Trying to at least. By Benno up top, he's gonna dribble drive, runner in the lane, no good. The board's down and deep here for the Bearcats tonight, really have been the name of the game, especially on the R.A. Deemer's offensive side of the floor here tonight. Doesn't seem like a whole lot of secondary opportunities as the boys in red have come down with the boards for the most part here tonight to this showdown. Simon's gonna try and come back in the game. We got a timeout here, so. R.A. Deemer's. And Brock Teets call a timeout. 38-22 on the BNC National Bank scoreboard. North Star on top of this one. Stylists are trained to understand the uh, nuances of cutting men's hair. Less pomp, more adore, huh, Brittany? Square face, wavy hair. Mid fade with a textured top. Finish it off with a hard part and taper that neckline, coach. Cowlick, what's the move? It's not just all about hard work here. Hit off, seven, pressure, points, yeah. It takes expertise to be a sport clip stylist. Here. Ah. That's a spot right there, huh? Sport clips, the pros in men's hair. It's water. Boom. Agent Winston Otter. He's been called the human sponge. Big thanks to Hub International Insurance bringing you the timeouts here tonight and all day at the Dale Brown Classic. Hub International Insurance for all your personal and business insurance needs, it's Hub International Insurance. Hub is the leading North American insurance brokerage. You can contact Josh Cattell or Michael Borman at Hub International Insurance for all your personal 
and business insurance needs. It's 355 3100. And that's Hub International Insurance. Well, our Redeemers scoring some more points here in the second half. They've made some changes, but the Bearcats from North Star, the number eight ranked team of the state right now, continuing to move and groove just a bit here in the showdown as there's a foul underneath the rack. If you're Brock Teets, are you happy with the turnaround a bit here in the second half uh, compared to the first? Still obviously uh, not 100%. Handling yet. the pressure a lot better. And, and uh, you could tell they're a young team because they make a nice play but just don't finish the basket or the possession and then it just makes it so hard to keep coming back. But well, they play hard. Eby's got another steal there. By Beto off to Eby. In the lane, puts it up, and Eby's got four now in the contest, all coming here in the second half. Lead cut to 14. Now, now earlier I said something about a box and chase. Now, if you watch, if people watching here, number five is just going to go wherever Hagler goes. And the rest of them are kind of staying in a box format. So occasionally it'll look different. Up top, three attempt coming. Too much on it. Rebound off the window. No good. EB was in after it. Freed it up to the near side. By Beto goes behind the back. And here come the Knights across the timeline. Angle hard had possession. Comes back away now to Francis. Francis in the lane. Little runner. No good. Board pulled down and off the glass. It came for Bisbee. And Bisbee. Drops it off to Hagler, the all region and district player, and he brings it across the timeline. And you can see your fans out there if you're watching the video feed. Watch number five. He's just going to go wherever Hagler goes. He's number four in red. I'm sure he's seen this before. <laughs> but. How do you like that assignment coming into tonight? Hagler, six foot four on the other side. Francis at five foot nine. They're battling each other. They're letting them play down there, but. Maybe it's done a little bit. Got North Star to take a shot with three seconds to go on the score clock. If now, if I'm North Star, I get uh, I just run Hagler to the top of the key and let him start with the ball up there, and then and then run whatever you got to run from your offense from there. Maybe start with the screen. 38-24. Bearcats on top. The X's and O's of the game of basketball. We've seen plenty of them here today. At yeah, we have. The Dale Brown Classic. What will Brock Teets come up with as we enter the fourth and final quarter of day number one of our holiday tournament coverage? Right now, it's North Star on top of our Redeemers on the BNC National Bank scoreboard. Final quarter is next. Really thinking about the shots, honestly, it just the shots came to me. Derek and Eric, especially, had some great drives, you know, which led some great picks. Shout out to them. You know, it feels good. To come out here from a defensive effort against Eagle Staff. I mean, you're way smaller than him. Obviously, I mean, how did you get yourself pumped up for that? Well, you know, Coach has a thing that says height doesn't matter heart, and I strongly believe in that. You know, I got the heart, and it doesn't matter if I got the height or not. Love that line, good luck next week. Yeah, thank you. All right, great job. I don't have the height, but I got the heart. That was a pretty cool sign right there by Jagger Gundel. Back up to you guys. Yes, and now. Tonight's ball game brought to you in part by our friends at Prestwich Orthodontics. Prestwich Orthodontics specializing in braces and Invisalign for all ages. We offer free consultations and financing options to make it easy to take your smile to the next level. You can visit MinutBraces.com today to get started with a free virtual consultation. It's Prestwich Orthodontics bringing you the ball game here tonight on the PSP Network. Nick Holberg and Perry Hansen from the Hoopster Magazine. How many years has the Hoopster been in publication, Perry? 41, this is year 41 for the boys and uh, 31 for the girls. And, and I coached for 30. The county, now I guess if I count my last couple uh, middle school years, I got talked into that, but uh, 31 of those. Uh, so it's, basketball's been a part of my life since day one dad was a coach and the hoopster obviously being a part of it. Great job. Continue that if you absolutely can. There's so many people around the state that love that magazine each and every year that it comes out. I'm one of them. Uh, people in North Dakota support this that project every year and it just amazes me and I can't thank them enough. I 
full court pressure on here. Eby's got it across the timeline. Dishes off Francis. He'll stop and put it up. Francis off the side of the rim. Bearcats have possession now. There's going to oh be a boy. stop of the play. Is that is Hagler over on the far uh, side? Is it Hagler? Disley, Disley. No, that's two kids. Simon's trying to come back and play on his. I'm not sure if that's a good idea. You got a 14 point lead and he's still limping pretty good. Number three. So they've got another day ahead of him again tomorrow. So he seems to be a little bit better, but we'll. I'm sure we got sports medicine coverage here, so. Seven on the dot to play here in regulation. 38 24 Bearcats lead. Hagler kicks it over. Three attempt, no good. Offensive board again, this time put up by Simon, taken away by the Knights. Off to the corner, Francis steps back. That one's short underneath the rack there, and waiting for it, putting it up and in. And Noah Erickson to the right place at the right time. Picks up another field goal here. Pair for two and a pair for three here in the second half. He had two total in the first half of basketball. He's led the way here in the second half of Noah Erickson. Has 12 of the contest. Dane Hagler leads all scorers in the ball game. He's got 17 according to my count here tonight to this showdown between Region 6 and Region 4 at the Dale Brown Classic. North Star calls a timeout. We'll take one as well. 624 left here in regulation. It's North Dakota High School basketball. The Dale Brown Classic here on the PSP Network. Smiles come from Vibetta Orthodontics. Vibetta Orthodontics is a certified Invisalign provider. Invisalign fits your budget and your lifestyle. Braces for children, teens, and adults with affordable monthly payments. Schedule your complimentary consultation and exam by logging on to vibetoorthodontics.com or by calling 701 839 6010. Great smiles come from Vibetto Orthodontics. Thirty-eight twenty-six. Bearcats on top. Ari Deemers fighting back and doing what they can after being down twenty-nine to nine at the end of our first half of basketball. Ari Deemers held to only nine points in that first half here tonight. Three attempt coming. Follow the place as Jason Sharpie in. We'll have three shots coming here. Well, Prestwich Orthodontics again brings you the ball game tonight. Visit MinotBraces.com. It's Prestwich Orthodontics. Take your smile to the next level with Prestwich Orthodontics. From the free throw line, that one's up and in. Here for Hunter Hagler, and Hagler's going to have another one that goes off the front of the rim. All three of his points tonight have come from the free throw line, Perry. Yeah. 6-3 freshman. Here's his third attempt coming. Trying to get confirmation from somebody to tell me if all these Haglers that have played are all the same family or if they're cousins or. Quarter for Francis, no good. Board pulled down, Hagler's got it here, the run of gun. Dropped off over on the left side, ball kept in play after the block. Eby's got it, Eby tried to force it up the middle, ball taken away here by North Star. Hagler now, Hagler's gonna drive in, puts it up off the window, he scores and he's fouled. A chance for an end, old fashioned three here, he took a lot of contact there. Number three, that's his 19 for Dane Hagler. Averaging 35 and a half coming into tonight with eight rebounds and five steals coming into this fourth matchup of the year for him. Hagler adds another one to his resume here at the MSU Dome. Dane only a junior. 
Scary thought for everybody inside of region number four. Yeah. You had him at the start of the year, the Bearcats at number 13 in the preseason poll. One of the top 20 teams at State of North Dakota for Class B boys basketball. That trip that is a season from the start of the year to the end of the year, so much can happen. So much fun to be a part of some of these epic runs all the way to the state Class B tournament. Yeah. This ball's gonna come over and back here on Ari Deemers and the Bearcats will get it back here. Yeah, I'm, I've already heard of some major injuries to, well, we had St. John here earlier and they lost their point guard to a football torn ACL the last game of the football playoff. So he's out for the entire year. He was a vital part of their team. You hate to see that from high school kids. It's gonna be a fall in deep. Francis is gonna be charged here, and Francis is gonna be charged with his third personal. That's the ninth team foul on our redeemers here in the second half. Sends Dane Hagler to the free throw line. And Hagler floating around 90% here in the ball game from the charity stripe. There's number six from the Serb Pro free throw line here tonight. Serb Pro again for fire and water cleanup and restoration at Serb Pro 24 7 emergency service. Serb Pro, proud supporter of North Dakota High School Athletics. Little runner in the lane. Nice move that was put up there, but Swenson was unable to finish on the play. Bearcats right now, if you're the head coach, Jesse Vogt, do you look to just take some air out of the basketball at this stage of the game? Well, I think I think the defense that our Redeemers is choosing to play has done that. You know, the last few possessions, it's, it's like you're at 10 now. Three attempt, that one's nothing but net. Curdy's got his second three-pointer of the contest as he buries from downtown. Brock Teets is going to call another timeout here. This timeout brought to you by Hub International Insurance. Call Josh Cattell or Michael Borman today at Hub International Insurance. 355-3100. It's Hub International Insurance for all your personal and business insurance needs. 47-26, Bearcats lead on the BNC National Bank scoreboard. This broadcast on the PSP Network is proudly brought to you by... week's player of the week on the PSP network player of the week on the PSP network each and every week brought to you by our friends at Jersey Mike subs Jersey Mike's is a sub above try them on North Broadway in the Magic City we want to thank our friends at Northern Plains heating and air for bringing you the showdown here tonight as well northern plainscom your heating and air experts nor their choice to seal your heating and air game the Northern Plains heating and air and the UPS store located on South Broadway and mine, it brings you the matchup here tonight as well. The UPS store for all your packing and shipping needs. It's the UPS store. And while we're at it, don't forget about Planet Pizza. 25 years of serving the Magic City with both watering pizza, chicken wings, breadsticks, you name it. They've had these stuffed breadsticks at Planet Pizza. They truly are out of this world. Uh, I've had them, yep. I don't know, you and I maybe aren't the Two that are going to go in and play laser tag together, but I tell you what, yeah. my kids sure love it. Counted and the foul is up and in. Dane Hagler's got himself two more. 
Pat Hagler is going to go to the free throw line as falling out of the ball game here for our Redeemers is Colton Francis. That's going to be Noah Erickson. Oh, I'm is, sorry. Yeah, no, that's fine. Francis checking in, so, but uh, that's one of the better scorers for our Redeemers. It'd be hard to get some points. Come back from 23 down here with only about four minutes to go, a little three and change. I'm looking over at the North Star bench and uh, the Hagler, or not Hagler, but the Simon kid just checked out. He's starting to limp quite a bit more, and the Disley kid is has already got ice on his ankle, so North Star could be a little thin tomorrow if they start losing players tonight. EB inside, double teed, step through, put it up, no good. Three and a half to play here in regulation at 50 to 26. Score of the BNC National Bank scoreboard. Nice play, just couldn't execute. Credit North Star's defense with some of the woes here tonight for our Redeemers, unable to finish under pressure inside. But you look at what North Star has been able to do down in deep, you can see why. Balls up top again. Bearcats working around. Shot clock down to two. Here's a three attempt coming off the front of the rim. Eby's got it. We're going to have a jump basketball coming here as aggressively uh, going in. Westlander, is it going to be a foul charge? I think he's going to get. I think he's going to get Westland with a foul here. You are correct. That is right. But they're not in the bonus yet, so our Redeemers will get the ball. It's only their third team foul of the second half. Good job by them to. Two timeouts remaining on each side. Bearcats in the bonus, however. Falls are 10 to 3 right now. Our Redeemers with 10 with 245 left here in quarter number four. Ball's last touched here by our Redeemers. It's going to go out of play. And I, I didn't realize this till now, but North Star is not playing tomorrow. So unless they've got some makeup games here the rest of the Christmas break, they'll be heading back tonight. Evie from downtown. Didn't fall. They might need that time with a couple of kids banged up with ankle injuries. Weather today in the Magic City, about 35 degrees. Boy, was it nice outside. It was like a absolute heat wave when I went outside here today. That one's up and in. There for Carson Simon, and Simon's got himself six here in this showdown tonight. Yeah, we get 35 degree temperatures, and I'm spending the whole day inside a gymnasium. Yeah. It's supposed to be 50 below inch or something, isn't it, when we have those days? I couldn't agree more. EB again downtown, just a bit short. Yeah, a lot of tired kids out here right now. This is unfortunately with sometimes when you see injuries too, so. A buck 45 left in regulation. On the BNC National Bank scoreboard, it's 52-26. North Star on top of Ari Demers. Join us for our planning team financial advisors and Shots Crossroads post game show that comes up right at the conclusion of this showdown here tonight. Harry Hansen is going to go down and have our conversation with a winning coach here tonight and our player of the game down court side coming up in just a few moments. 91 seconds from now to be exact. We'll be right back at it tomorrow with the Hoopster Classic. Here at the MSU Dome, seven more games of boys class B basketball tomorrow. And, and. The Mandan Holiday Tournament kicks off tomorrow as well. Todd Domries and Chuck Claremont will have the call of all four games tomorrow from the Mandan Gymnasium. There's a bomb from downtown as Lion Weekly hits for his first points here tonight. He's got three. Final minute of play here in quarter number four tonight from the Dome. 52-29, Bearcats are going to improve here to 4-0 on the season. Ari Demers is going to fall to 1-2. The Knights will play tomorrow. We'll go through that full schedule of what we can expect tomorrow here at the MSU Dome, home of the MSU Beavers, the NSIC. 35 seconds to tick away. Shot clock was down to 3. Be a shot clock violation. And Ari Demers will get the ball back. 
Shots Crossroads here in the Magic City on the 2 and 52 bypass east. Opened after the game. Team buses are always welcome. Keep that in mind when you come to the Magic City. Shots Crossroads where you can order online. Pick it up at Shots Crossroads. Fantastic stuff at Shots Crossroads. All right, kids, get ready to count them down. We're at 14 right now as that one drained. As Overby hits from downtown. Barrett Overby with a three-pointer. There's a foul underneath the rack, and it's Chase Weekly that's going to get charged there. 2.5 seconds remains here in the ballgame. Well, Perry Hansen, floor level right now. He gets set and ready for our conversation here after this showdown. Two more points up and in. Sorry, one more point up and in here for Westland. Three for him total in the ball game. And that's how it will end tonight. 53-32, the final score here tonight as the Dale Brown Classic comes to a close here on the opening day of our holiday coverage here on the PSP Network. Number eight team in North Dakota, impressive here tonight on the defensive side, impressive on the offensive side as well as they take care of Ari Demers tonight, 53 to 32. Again, stick around for our Shots Crossroads and Planning Team Financial Advisors. Post game show, it starts right now here on the PSP Network. Plenty of stuff to come your way here tonight with the Planning Team Financial Advisors at Shots Crossroads. Post game show, we'll have Perry Hansen on the floor with the winning coach of the ball game here tonight. We're going to take it down to the floor. Here's Perry's got Jesse Vote downstairs on the floor. Okay, we got uh, Coach Vote here in uh, hard fought battle there. I'm uh, got to see a lot of changes in defense, so I, I'm sure it was uh, just a nice to get back on the court after all these weather delays. Yeah, you know, we've it kind of felt like we were playing more basketball games than we were having practice, but. Um, yeah, you know, we, we changed some stuff up a little bit tonight. We challenged some of our kids, um, you know, with, with the effort. And, you know, we were, uh, we finally got chased in the second half, kind of threw us for a loop there. Um, you know, we, we're coming away with some stuff that we know uh, we need to work on to get better at. Um, you know, it took us a while to get going tonight. Um, you know, we, we, we turned our press up a little bit there and uh, got uh, a few easy bu buckets off of those um, and took off from there. I thought I thought you did a pretty good job. It seemed like you were changing things up a little bit on that on that press a little bit with some of your kids and young team like that. That that that's a good that's a good way to go about things. Yeah, you know we've got all sorts of different stuff that you know we, we like to try and mess around with. Um, you know, and the changes of just trying to figure out what we're gonna do when who is on the court. Um, you know, and that was kind of just our thought process there tonight. And I noticed uh, you're not playing tomorrow. When's the next go around for you guys? Uh, we are off game wise until next Thursday when we start our Ramsey County Invitational. Okay, and it looks like with a couple kids maybe going out with some ankle injuries, you're going to need some time there. Yeah, we, uh, we we don't have enough bodies for kids to go down. So hopefully uh, they heal up quickly and, you know, they got a week off before we have to play again. So we're going to need them. Okay, good luck, coach. And I'll bring Dane in here. So good luck. Thank you. Dane, nice ball game today. Uh, got to see your probably, according to coach, your first box and chase for the year. Yeah, the first one of the year. Last year it happened a lot, but finally he figured out and started chasing me. And I noticed you went inside to the post because you had a little bit shorter kid guarding you there. So um, I'm sure you're going to come up with some different angles as you go forward. Yeah, I kind of have to find some new spots there. First time this year, obviously. So I couldn't really find the open spot. Double team sometimes, but we'll work on it in practice and figure it out. Yeah, well, I just kind of wish you guys safe travels and good luck the rest of the year. And I enjoyed watching you play for the first time. So thank you very much. That's Perry Hansen down on the floor with head coach of the Bearcats, Jesse Vote, along with our player of the game here tonight, Dane Hagler. Well, let's head deeper into our planning team financial advisors at Shots Crossroads post game show here tonight. Planning team financial advisors at Shots Crossroads. Proud to bring you North Dakota High School Athletics here on the PSP Network. Perry and I will break down this matchup tonight. We'll also have our move of the game and our player of the game, the MVP, brought to you by Sport Clips. We'll do that when we come back to the MSU Dome to put a cap on it here for 
day number one of our holiday tournament coverage on the PSP network. Final in the final game of the day here today at the Dale Brown Classic. 53-32, the Bearcats take down the Knights. Whether you're looking for a full service financial plan or planning for farm or business succession, Planning Team Financial Advisors is here to help you work toward achieving your financial goals. With locations in Bismarck, Garrison, and Center, our full service team of professionals are dedicated to helping you work towards achieving your financial goals. Visit us online, planningteam.com. Securities offered through LPL Financial, member of Finrun Sipic. Investment advisory services offered through New Edge Advisors, LLC, a registered investment advisor. New Edge Advisors, LLC, and Planning Team Financial Advisors are separate entities from LPL Financial. Oh, easy, easy. I think I'm good. You got my good side, right? <laughs> Not too many lights. I don't want to get fried before my time. <laughs> oh, it's egg-tastic. You never know what dish you're going to end up in. My dream dish is a 99. It's so popular. Me and a fellow egg tag teaming with some crispy golden hash browns. Have you seen those hash browns? Those guys are shredded. <laughs> Throw in some diced ham, onions, and melted cheese. Oh, it's a party for your taste buds. Oh, here comes Chevy. Hold on, Chevy. Did you guys get everything that you needed? 99, here I come. Shots Crossroads. It's an excellent place to eat. It's time for the Shots Crossroads and Planning Team Financial Advisors postgame show. Now for a look at game stats and analysis. Let's go to the postgame show. Final tonight. Final game of the day, 53-32. The Bearcats from North Star, the number eight ranked team of the state, takes down unranked Bishop, uh, I'm sorry, Ari Deemers. Those are fighting words, I'm sure, for those two schools. you got to be careful inside of region number six, what you say. They co-op on the football field, but when it comes to the hardwood, you don't say stuff like that around here in the Magic City. Welcome into our post-game show brought to you by Planning Team Financial Advisors and Shots Crossroads. Whether you're looking for a full-service financial plan or planning for farm or business succession, Planning Team Financial Advisors is here to help you work toward achieving your financial goals. Visit us online, Planning Team. Dot com. Don't forget about Sean's Crossroads as well. Their famous number 99 will get you fueled up. Their menu includes that number 99 and so many more great things. Order online, shotscrossroads.com. Team buses are always welcome. Well, Perry, great job down on the floor. Great job tonight on the call with Scott Woodman. See and fun working with you here tonight. Denny, any last thoughts on this one before we get into the numbers and some of the uh, storylines that we've got to get to? Overall, were you impressed with North Star here tonight, the number eight team I, in the state? I was. Uh, I was. I thought uh, they're a hardworking team. Obviously, the Hagler kid is uh, probably a lot of things are going to run through him. They're not real deep, but uh, I think they're worthy of uh, getting the votes that they're getting currently. And uh, like you said earlier, that's a tough region for them to come out of. But uh, you know, I'd, if, I'd like to just take a quick opportunity and thank you guys here at the PSP Network for providing the coverage that you do all not just here the next two, you know, the next day or two here in the Mandan holiday, but throughout the year. And, you know, in the end, we're all in kind of in it together to do things for kids. And I, I really appreciate that. And a quick shout out to my brother in law who puts this together every year. <laughs> It's a, we got a waiting line. I mean, people like to play in this, and I know he's got the girls one coming up here this weekend. I know you guys aren't covering, but that's okay. If you're a fan here of, in Mina, you can certainly swing down and uh, watch some girls basketball at the auditorium, I believe the 29th and 30th. So just got some good teams coming in for that as well. Yeah, well, we thank you for, for doing what you do with the Hoopster and, of course, helping us out here. Our mission is promoting local athletes at, we did that here today with seven games. We'll do it again tomorrow with the Hoopster Classic and the showdowns tomorrow that will take place. We'll start tomorrow morning at 11 a.m. Berthold and North Prairie will open things up. Velva takes on Trenton DLB 
They're receiving some votes right now. They take on Dickinson Trinity also receiving some votes. How about Bishop Ryan in the top four in North Dakota? They take on Thompson in the top 10. That's going to be a big one tomorrow. Rugby and Bueller are going to play tomorrow. That should be a good ball game as well. Shiloh and West Hope Newburgh. There you get some more ranked opponents playing. And then R.A. Demers takes on Hazen tomorrow night. That's the Hoopster Classic here at the MSU Dome tomorrow. And then the Mandan Holiday Tournament taking place in Mandan. That's brought to you by BNC National Bank. Full day of coverage tomorrow as well, starting at 3 o'clock. Todd Domries and Chuck Claremont will have the call of the showdowns on the PSP Network that is a tournament format down in Mandan this year. Again, for the BNC Bank, uh, BNC National Bank Holiday Tournament in Mandan. If you're a fan of Class B basketball, you really can't have a much... Uh, uh, more packed schedule than this week, especially when you can sit at home and, and watch on the PSP network. It's going to be a fun week all together. Perry, you have some stats for us here for this ball game here tonight. I do, and uh, starting with uh, North Star here, Dane Hagler led him with 25, so his average will only go down to 30 roughly a game, so that's, that's a little bit of a drop off, but uh, he led him with 25, and then Parker Simon, uh, Chipped in with eight, and Carson Simon got six. And Owen Curdy hit a couple of threes to give him six, and uh, Garrett Westland got four, and uh, Hunter Hagler got his three all at the free throw line, and then a couple of kids, uh, Brent Dilley had two uh, to kind of round out their scoring there. And uh, that total is 53, and for our Redeemers, a little better in the second half. They were led by Noah Erickson. Pretty much all his points were in the second half. He got 12. And then it was kind of a bunch of kids around that five spot. Colton Francis had five. Andrew Evey had four. A couple of kids with three in White Weekly and Farron Overby and, and Bryce Vibetto had three and then uh, closed it out with Jace Weekly for two. But uh, our Redeemers will be fine as the year goes on. They've got some growing pains to go through here at the beginning. So Young team that falls to one and two. The Bearcats improved to four and oh on the season. And, you know what? Uh, it was a fun one here tonight, and there's a, a Move of the Game award that we hand out each and every night. This Move of the Game brought to you by our friends at Jobbers Moving and Storage. Whether you're moving across the town or across the country, Jobbers has locations in Minot, Bismarck, Fargo, and Aberdeen. Find them online, jobberswarehouse.com. It's time for your Jobbers Moving and Storage Move of the Game. And you can tell me if I'm wrong, but that full court press really was kind of the move yes. that comes to mind for me in the first half as the Bearcats held the Knights to just nine points in the first half. Is that a fair call for a yeah, move of the I game think tonight? Yeah, absolutely. I think we can give it as a team-wide thing. Uh, that, absolutely. Uh, they did a great job of mixing up that coverages a little bit and uh, kind of kept that young team off balance. There's your Jobbers moving in storage move of the game here tonight. Jobbers, again, located in Minot, Bismarck, Fargo, and Aberdeen. Moving across town or across the country, Jobbers can help you with all your moving and storage needs. It's the move of the game brought to you by Jobbers moving in storage. Final order of business tonight, the MVP of the contest brought to you by Sport Clips. Sport Clips brings you the MVP here tonight. Somebody runs away with 25 of the next closest to the ball game. Comes up with what was the next high eight, I believe it was. Kind of hard to go against a kid that we highlighted before yeah. here tonight. But uh, Dane Hagler certainly would be my vote for that award here tonight. Absolutely. Very good choice. He's He has to go through a lot of extra with the, uh, getting the extra defensive attention that he gets. He's going to be in for a lot of physical battles all year long. Congratulations, Dane Hagler. The Bearcats from North Star, our MVP of the contest. Closing thoughts on tonight's and today's Dale Brown Classic here at the MSU Dome. Well, it's just great. I mean, like I said, you got seven games here today, seven more tomorrow, and uh, you got uh, PSP is going to be really busy doing the Mandan holiday. I, I uh, appreciate again what you guys do, the hard work you do, and what a great facility here, and the staff puts on a great show. And, and uh, it's good, good, good. We got to see some good games. We had an overtime, double overtime game. We had kind of a buzzer beater with Valva or Hazen this morning, and. You know, just got to see some good basketball today. It was a fun one today across the board. Perry, thanks for joining us here. Always great seeing you. Thanks yep, for doing what you it. do. Yep. Final recap of the day. Stanley takes down TGU in the first one, 60 to 30. Hazen Downs, West Hope Newburgh, 51-49. That was a bit of a nail biter. 
Not as much of a nail biter as game number three today, however, as Velva needed two overtimes to take down St. John, who's receiving some votes. Velva won 74 67. The number one ranked team in North Dakota won by 11 over Dickinson Trinity, who received some votes in the most recent media poll. That was a 51 to 40 game as the Indians and the defending state champions continued to roll. Beulah took down Powers Lake 71 60. Shiloh took down Thompson. That was a matchup between number four Shiloh and number seven Thompson today. It was the Skyhawks that won 73 65. And in the nightcap tonight, number eight team in North Dakota, the Bearcats from North Star took down our Redeemers 53 32. Big thank you to Todd Dobries and Chuck Claremont for their work earlier on here today. A job well done. Big thank you to the Beater family, Peyton Beater, Jenny Beater, Brandon Beater, Brock Beater. We sure appreciate all of them for their help here today. They were here for the entirety of today's matchup set. The MSU Dome, it's been a long one. We started about 12 hours ago here on the PSP <laughs> Network with our pregame show. Scott Woodmancy came in and did a fantastic job as always. And a big thank you to Perry Hansen for joining us here and doing a great job. Again, my friend, fantastic stuff. I appreciate it and I wish I could come tomorrow, but uh, unfortunately, got a family, I would say unfortunately, got a family Christmas to attend, so. Hope you guys keep things in line and uh, appreciate, like, yeah, appreciate the coverage. Absolutely. We're going to have fun tomorrow starting at 11 a.m. Join us for the Hoopster Classic from right here at the MSU Dome. Scott Woodmancy will have the call the first three tomorrow. I'll take the next four and then we'll head into a bit of a break before some weekend action as well. But don't forget about that Mandan Holiday Classic either. Final time here tonight to the nightcap. It's the Bearcats from North Star that take down the Knights from Ari Deemers 53-32 on the BNC National Bank scoreboard. Nick Holberg signing off from the MSU Dome here tonight. We'll see you tomorrow at 11 a.m. Until then, please have a good night and God bless. For a full-service financial plan or planning for farm or business succession, Planning Team Financial Advisors is here to help you work toward achieving your financial goals. With locations in Bismarck, Garrison, and Center, our full-service team of professionals are dedicated to helping you work towards achieving your financial goals. Visit us online, planningteam.com. Securities offered through LPL Financial, member of Finrun Sipic. Investment advisory services offered through New Edge Advisors, LLC, a registered investment advisor. New Edge Advisors, LLC, and Planning Team Financial Advisors are separate entities from LPL Financial. Our stylists are trained to understand the uh, nuances of cutting men's hair. Less pomp, more adore, huh, Brittany? <laughs> Square face, wavy hair. Mid fade with a textured top. Finish it off with a hard part and taper that neckline, coach. Cowlick, what's the move? It's not just all about hard work here. Hit off, seven, pressure, poise, yeah. It takes expertise to be a sport clip stylist. Here. Ah. That's a spot right there, huh? Sport clips, the pros in men's hair. Are you moving your business or your home across the town or across the country? We know it can be stressful. To ensure your possessions arrive on time, intact and on budget, make your move with Jobbers Moving and Storage. Jobbers can help you with every aspect of your move. With our efficient step-by-step -step approach to move management, we can tailor a plan to suit your needs and schedule. With locations in Bismarck, Fargo, Minot and Aberdeen, Jobbers Moving and Storage is your choice. Visit JobbersWarehouse.com. It's Jobbers. Moving in storage. Oh, easy, easy. I think I'm good. You got my good side, right? <laughs> Not too many lights. I don't want to get fried before my time. <laughs> oh, it's egg-tastic. You never know what dish you're going to end up in. My dream dish is a 99. It's so popular. Me and a fellow egg tag teaming with some crispy golden hash browns. Have you seen those hash browns? Those guys are shredded. <laughs> Throwing some diced ham, onions, and melted cheese. Oh, it's a party for your taste buds. Oh, here comes Chevy. Hold on, Chevy. Did you guys get everything that you needed? 99, here I come. Shots Crossroads. It's an excellent place to eat.